What, dude, boomer sites are like fucking horrible. <laughs> like, it's cool when you use like real investors, I guess. If you're if you're on like, so like I use Vanguard as opposed to kind of the meme apps. I haven't used the meme apps, but I'm guessing their user interface is probably a lot nicer. Fucking navigating this Vanguard shit is cancer, dude. I get lost half the time. I'm on this fucking site trying to figure out like how to look at anything. Christ. We only heard half of what you said. Your mic kicked in halfway. Wait, is that true? Mel, I'm streaming. Yeah, is that what you call them? Wait. Is, is this actually, so I'm looking at Vanguard. It says that my rate of return, is this, is that rate of return basically just, are these numbers right? Dude, investing is awesome. It says that my rate of return on my portfolio is 25.5% for the lifetime of my Vanguard balance. That's pretty good. Holy shit. Over what period? Um, over five, six years? From 2014 to 2020? Um, I can't go into more details. If you were in the morning call, you'd know more about what I was talking about, but... You gnome fuck! Am I charging for the morning call? Yeah, well, okay, Origi it's only like 65 cents a day. Originally, I wasn't going to, but like people were like, dude, there's so many people in here, and I don't know how to like moderate or mute anybody, or I couldn't think of anything else but charging money for it, so. Oh my god, they have, wait, I can't use some of the items? Because, what? Wait, wait. This game is pretty cool, chat. Do any of you have a link to the speedrun boards, or maybe a video showcasing the run? What? Ban the fucking multi lovers. Silent buggy, then the fuck. So unlucky, then the fuck. Oh. <clears throat> Wait, for future reference, morning calls can't be at 1 p.m.? The morning call is at 10 a.m. What are you talking about? He's confused because it ended at 1 p.m.? No, it ended at 11. I just ended it like seven minutes ago. What are you talking about? Last time I seen something. What time is it? Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This whole time, I've said I've been living in California. I fuck my times was up. I've actually been living in Hawaii for like the last year and a half. Um, because of the money that I've made off the morning call, I thought it would be more appropriate if I positioned myself a little bit closer to the east. You know, I want to be involved in those Asian markets, um, get into a little bit of Forex. And I find that being in Hawaii allows me to be a little more connected to that time zone. Sorry. So you were thinking I was in PST. Am I bad? <clears throat> I... Alright, good man. あ、いいね。人に迷惑をかける人間。目も悪いことができなくなるよ。まずは地球の掃除と思って、凶悪犯の名前を書き続けたの。やがて誰も悪いことができなくなるよ。そして罪を受けて当然な悪人が心臓
I don't even know what's I don't even know what's funny about this. This is just this is just somebody just made a minute and a half meme. It's just pure unfiltered truth. <laughs> I don't understand. But thank you, I guess. No, it's a fixed size the portal, right? So the portal radius is twenty inches. In meters, this is a radius of 0 0.508. Which using pi r squared, we can calculate the square meter uh, area of the portal to be 0 0.810731 meters, right? Now, I can also calculate the volume of the water. I know that. Oh, he thought he was going to move like fucking 200,000 gallons of water in like a fucking one inch hole or some shit, right? And cause like 7 million pounds of force per square inch or some shit to come out. <laughs> This sounds like, um, anybody know the song, is it In Discipline? I tried, uh, I really did give King Crimson a chance. I just could never hear any of this music though, past their first album. But this is, uh, it reminds me of this song a lot. In the Wake of Poseidon was good, no? I think In the Wake of Poseidon was somewhat accessible. The thing was is that like King Crimson's first album was ultra accessible. I think as long as you have like a base level appreciation for music, you can listen to the first King Crimson album and find like one or two songs you like. Like I think most people can listen to like Moonchild and think like, oh, this sounds nice. Or most people can listen to like In the Court of the Crimson King. Is that the name of that song? I know that's one of the lyrics. I, at the very least, because Kanye West sampled it, so you can be like, oh, cool, I recognize that. Except for the Moonchild 10 minute of ambient memes. Okay, I'm pretty sure that was only on like the bonus fucking extended album or some shit. I don't think that the normal track is 10 minutes long. But yeah, there's a lot of weird shit. Um, Do you see the Sophie accident? No. After watching your interview with the stock guy, you basically became Socrates of our time and age. You upset influencers just by asking legit fundamental questions. They're going to execute you in the end, I'm afraid. Well, you know, <clears throat> I'm somewhat of a Socrates myself. Thank you. True. Can I get some ladies bouncing here? I remember on my LSD trip with Melina, one of the things that I talked about that was very scary to me was... it. it it, I'm gonna, okay, 2021 is also gonna be the year where I'm not gonna be as humble because I've done that for the past like three or four years and I don't think I give myself enough credit or I think that I don't give enough people enough shit. People seem to think I'm really mean. I don't think I've been that mean to people. This year, I'm gonna be a little bit more mean to people, okay? Um, one of the things that I talk about with Molina, something that scares me, is I legitimately wonder if every single person is just fucking insane, is like absolutely fucking crazy. And it feels like I have a gift in, ex in bringing that out in people and just like showing somebody like, hey, look, you're a fucking crazy. Like Casey Tron comes to mind. Like she existed on this platform for what, six, seven years? I don't think anybody would have thought that she was capable of diving into trench warfare on Reddit for 200 comments deep. I don't think anybody would have thought that. What the fuck? And now it makes me wonder, it just makes me wonder if every motherfucker is crazy. Or maybe it is me. Maybe I'll figure it out at the end that it's actually just me. Do you think you can make chill people like Nim crazy? I hope not. I've actually hung out with Nim in real life. Nim seems like a really cool, really chill. But Nim seems like not a streamer. Like, if you talk to Nim in real like streamers are just fucking crazy, weird people. Nim seems like a super chill, really well adjusted. Like, he hangs out. I'm not trying to dox him. Like, he hangs out with friends in real life a lot. Like, Nim just seems like a really awesome, chill, cool dude. I've, I've, like, I've never seen anything. Um, 
I've never seen anything to the contrary for that or heard anything to the contrary of that. Hey Destiny, I just wanted to oh what? Here we go. I thought I was just going to Dono. You're not going to trap me bud. Hope you got your LSF clip dude. Wait, is Bastia trying to say, um, the Kalinske is a Q on her? Thank you, why don't I? I don't think Kalinske is a Q on her. Wait, what? Wait, what is this though? You're the dumbest motherfucker on the planet. QAnon is pure horseshit. As a, it's an elitist cabal because Robinhood got a billion dollars from hedge funds for stopping purchases of GME and AMC, and Google deleted 100,000 negative. Wait, they didn't get a billion dollars from hedge funds for stopping purchases. They got a billion dollars to resume purchases. The whole reason why they took that line of credit out. Also, that billion dollars didn't come from hedge funds, did I? I thought they came from banks. Let me, but I can check where it came from exactly. Oh, hedge funds might have bought shares, I guess. Raised more than a billion dollars to help meet rising demands for cash stemming from frenzy trading, blah, blah, blah. Robinhood Network in recent days. Thursday's fundraising came together in a matter of hours. The Robinhood received an early morning message from Clearinghouse asking for a sharp increase in deposits for that day's trading. A quantity of people familiar with the matter. Robinhood executives felt they had the resources to cover their request. They worry that similarly high increases in the ensuing days could potentially expand the company's finances. Robinhood also, oh, okay. So Robinhood borrowed $500 million from its banks this week. They raised an additional $1 billion in capital afterwards. But the money that they raised was so that they could resume trading, not so they could stop. Kalinsky has this exactly backwards. This is why I don't feel bad about going hard on Kalinsky. And this is why I'm disappointed when you guys fall for his stupid fucking shit, where he says like, oh, I would talk to Destiny, but he's too mean. This is the exact same fucking excuse that Stefan Molyneux used to dodge me time and time and time again. He has no problem with people being mean. He doesn't give a fuck about that. He's just using it as a little baby brain's excuse because he knows he's fucking full of shit and he's never going to talk to somebody in an adversarial manner that actually knows what they're talking about. Um, Kalinsky will only ever t like circle jerk with other people that agree with him or talk to dipshits that disagree with him. Um, 100%. But people that are falling for him saying like, oh, well, I respected Destiny. I looked up to him and then he said mean things about me, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, okay, dude. You realize you'll probably isolate yourself even more if you go hard. The thing is, is that like when I go soft, I still isolate myself. Like my conversation with the stock guy yesterday was like a gloves on, very careful conversation. Except for like, I think I said two like kind of mean things because I was just getting tired of it. Like, so why waste time going soft? Like, it seems like a waste of time. I, like what you guys say, is, what other people consider like going soft is more like don't call anybody out for anything ever and just circle jerk and suck everybody off like all day, even if you disagree with them. Like. Normal America is crazy, but aftershock makes me want to rip my hair out. There were multiple points where you took the most uncharitable Would position towards him. Wait, what do you mean? Caught up in copying Contra so much that she copied Contra's gender identity too. Be too spicy of a joke. Asking for a friend. That's a that's a quite the spicy joke, my friend. <clears throat> Trying to cut yourself on that edge. Holy shit. I mean, you did kind of allude to him being a stock guru. That Because he sells himself as that, okay? Fuck out of here, dude. Fuck off with this shit. I was so gentle on him, okay? Like, look at the fucking intro to this guy's fucking YouTube channel, okay? Tell me this isn't a guy... Tell me this isn't a guy fucking selling himself. Breaker of chains. 
I want to teach people how to grow fuck you money. But that is what I want to do. Because you are, you are conditioned to not know how to grow money, save money, make money, or invest money. For a specific reason. So you always work in your bullshit fucking job, your 9 to 5, 35 fucking years. So you're too old to enjoy your life. Just to be able to pay off a bunch of goddamn interest and a bunch of debt and you're stuck in. Because it's a perpetual cycle with a rich kid racer. You are feeding into it. So what I want to do, as, as the, the mother of DJ, is that I'm here to teach you guys how to not get caught in a fucking cycle and not have to do this shit. I'll get rich today. Oh, there it goes! Fair game till I die, baby. Like, come on, how are you going to say this guy doesn't advertise himself as, like... When he would go on a tirade and be like, I'm doing this to educate people, yeah, I might be an entertainer memeing on it. He basically admits to your points, but you went hard on him being a stock guru. I just think you could have been much more nice. But the problem is that he sells himself like every other scammer does, right? Like, he hits, like, e like and I don't want to say this to him, but he's hitting every single scammer red flag. You realize that, right? Oh, I didn't want to do this initially, but, like, you know, I started doing it full time, you know? Oh, well, initially it was free, but I had to make it behind a paywall because people asked me to do it. Like, oh, not even giving, like, the fact that it's 20 bucks a month, but he's like, it's only 75 cents a day for less than the cost of a cup of coffee. Like, it's every fucking scammer red flag. Like, damn, come on, dude. I was so fucking nice to him in this conversation. Like, and he gets mad because I just want him to not act like he's out here, like fucking Mother Teresa doing a charity drive. Like, asking, acting like, oh, I just help people. But no, motherfucker, you make money off this shit. Don't lie about it. I don't give a fuck at what you call it. I don't give a fuck, like, if it's, I don't even care if it's illegal or not. I'm not. That's not what I'm here to talk about. But don't sit here with this, like, oh, all I do is I talk to people about how to manage their 401ks and I had to put it behind a paywall because my people wanted me to because I don't know how to mute people in a Discord. Like, oh, come on, dude, stop. Don't, like, I can't deal with that. I've tried, I honestly, I tried. I tried in the past years that I was just going to be nice to everybody and, like, deal with shit like this. But, like, nah, dude, come on. This guy's cashing in six figures on his little fucking daily newsletter while he's got fucking trailers on his YouTube channel saying he's going to get you out of your 9 to 5. Like, get the fuck out of here. Don't, you can't lie to me that hard, okay? Like, we're, I'm, we're all in this business of making money, all right? Chill. Fuck off with that shit. Like, this guy is literally, this guy has an audience with one of the most popular politicians in the history of all of fucking mankind, okay? And he's at, and he's upset because I'm asking him a couple questions. Like, get the fuck out of here, all right? Some, that's some bullshit. You think this crazy shit applies to everybody or only people online? I think that everybody just like parrots around a bunch of like headlines they've read about everything. I guess it's like, or at least all the large content creators do. Why are there so many comments on LSF threads every time? Probably because my jerkers enter the threads and then anti jerkers enter the threads and you guys fight with each other. <laughs> oh, that would be my guess. Can we go through your LSF thread on stream? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Apparently other streamers do this where they like read through LSF's to their but I feel like if I do it, I feel like they'll ban me from LSF. I did think it was funny that like every time any of my drama shows up, there are like serious conversations to be had about banning all drama. Like I had one thread yesterday that went up on LSF. If they didn't remove it. Oh yeah, I had one thread that goes up and they're like, all right, we need to talk about all this drama. Okay. We got to get it out of here. <laughs> like that's okay. Sure. But that's funny. Have you seen what Lewis Rossman has been saying about the stocks? Yeah, he's just parroting all the meme positions. I just want to, like, not talk about stocks anymore, okay? I already know this is going to kill me for the next week, and we're probably going to be talking about it for the next week.
Also, just as a real quick, just as a real quick red flag, anytime you hear somebody say the term manipulating the market, you can almost rest assured that you could ignore every other thing they're going to say because it's such a stupid, weaselly fucking term. Literally everything manipulates the market. If you and some friends, if you buy or sell one share of any company ever, you are manipulating the market. If anybody talks about a company ever, they are manipulating a market. If you raise or lower the wages of your employees, you're manipulating a market. If you raise capital for a company, you are manipulating a market. Literally every single thing you do influences the market. Like as soon as people talk, when you short a stock, you're manipulating the market. Like, okay, well, when you buy a stock, you're manipulating a market. When you buy derivatives, you're manipulating markets. Like when you do literally anything, it influences the market. Like, Like every security just represents the aggregate knowledge about what the company is worth now and what it might be worth in the future and what people might be willing to buy or sell it for in the future. And every single thing that somebody does, like, manipulates this. Destiny being disingenuous or just autistic about definitions again. Okay, dude. Smiley face. Hi. Not to say that there aren't some ways that are legitimately fucking with markets. So, for instance, like um, a form of illegal manipulation, I believe, is going on to like media and lying about a company in an attempt to drive up or down the shares of a company or like actually lying on your balance sheets or lying on your filings or whatever. This is kind of pog. Why, why the fuck is somebody coming out as transpog? Spectre, five dollars. Uh, I mean, Can I mean, like, we ban the weebs in YouTube chat? Cool. Smiley face. It's cool that they're accepting their identity or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't, it's not pog, I don't give a fuck. Stop manipulating the stock market of children's shoes with your tiny feet, you manlet. Nice. Love you, buddy. Is it illegal to rally a group of people to buy a stock for the purpose of shooting up the price? My understanding is that if you're doing something explicitly without talking about the fundamentals of the company, just to, to like move up or down a stock, I think that's legal. But we can actually just read about this. Let's find out. Um, what is illegal stock manipulation? Let's find out. Ben MC, five pounds. Ban me. Good one. Market, okay, so on Twitch chat, market manipulation is a crime though, right? Usually people referring to acts that would be considered crimes, but this is the problem. Yes, market manipulation, like manipulation in a legal sense. I don't know how they legally define it. That is a crime. That's true. But the problem is people will use manipulation when they talk about everything, which gives you the impression that it's a crime. People say, oh, well, when you short a stock, you're manipulating the market. It's like, well, you kind of are, but that's not like market manipulation. That's not illegal. Shorting is not illegal. Like that's that's my issue with when people use that term of like um of like manipulation. It's like okay, well, what do you, what do you mean by that? Oh, okay, cool. <clears throat> Investment fraud comes in many forms. Whether you're a first-time investor or have been investing for many years, here are some basic facts you should know about different types of fraud. Yes, but when people say the shorters are manipulating the market, they're saying that they shorted GME on a scale so large it was only impossible to hedge funds. It doesn't seem like their criticism is that it's illegal, but that the hedge fund managers are able to throw the weight around to the detriment of existing companies. But we just saw that that obviously didn't happen, right? If you try to short something and you're ultra wrong about it, you're going to get fucked. Like, and that's what happened. Like... Isn't the argument that shorting should be illegal? Yeah, some dipshits will try to go that far to say that shorting should be illegal. But as soon as you talk to them a little bit about it, they, you understand that they don't know what shorting is or they don't know why shorting might be important or they have no real opinion on it. They just think it's bad for reasons or whatever. Dr. K getting in. Oh, no. Please stop. Everyone on the internet. Oh, God. Only because people made a point of intervening in any other scenario where people don't take notice the company would have gone under. You can't just short any random fucking company and make it go under. That's not how that works.
right? It's dead. Steam has destroyed it. No life. Look at all the evidence. There's no fucking confirmation bias. GameStop is dead. That's not confirmation bias. That's like a completely logical mind. And then who showed up? We fucking showed up, baby. We showed up and we said, no, it ain't. Fuck you. Hedge funds? Fuck you guys. You guys have billions of dollars? Well, it's a good thing that this stock is like 50 cents so I can buy like a thousand shares of it. And this is why you should not kill yourself. Because GME, baby. Let me tell you what. GME. If you don't trust my story, if you don't trust any of the other stories, GME to the moon and back, boys! To the moon and back. Don't let the world convince you that you... Can well, but what's going to happen in a week or two when GME stock is like trading for fucking $5 a share? <laughs> I don't know if it's going to go. That's a future Dr. K problem. Why might shorting be important? Why is stock market efficiency important to the common good of humanity? So the argument is that, so when times of like bull markets, when the whole market is rising, right? Stocks might get a little bit inflated or they might be a little bit higher than maybe people would otherwise trade them at. So shorters are important because shorters can be an important way um, to discover like what the actual value of a stock market. People might do a lot of research and say, I think this is overvalued, I'm gonna short it. Like this is all like an important part of the market where the market tries to settle on like realistic prices for securities to, to, um, to, to kind of control the amount of like rubber banding back and forth that we go on, on securities. Like this is one an argument given for why um, shorting is important is because it helps with price discovery. It gives you more accurate um, understandings of maybe what a security ought to be worth. Can you give a layman friendly explanation of shorting? I feel like the reason why I don't usually do this is because I feel like there's a million other people like that do this. But if, if you want like an explanation, okay, here's like, this is what shorting is, okay? Let's say that I have, let's say this guy has a bubble, okay? Let's say this bubble is worth $10, okay? Let me mute these, hold on. Fuck you, Stephen. I was happy to believe- I asked my other billionaires was ready to blame the financial aid when I really lost money and I just went down for Okay, let's say that this guy has a bubble, okay? Let's say that his bubble is worth $10, okay? Let's say that I think that this bubble in one week is gonna be worth $2, okay? So step one is I wanna borrow your bubble, okay? Wait, 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 hold on actually. We're gonna just call this bubble um, A, sorry or we'll call it bubble B, B for bubble, okay? <clears throat> I wanna, okay, let's say that his bubble is worth $10, okay? I wanna borrow this bubble and I'll give it back to you in a month, all right? So he's like, okay, well give me like, there's probably like a commission or fee or something you pay, we'll say, we'll say we pay like 50 cents, okay? So I'm gonna borrow your $10 bubble I'm gonna give you a fee, we'll say 50 cents, okay? So right now, I've paid, we'll say 50 cents, negative, here you go, negative, this is my current balance, okay? Negative 0 0.50, okay? Now, let's say that now that I have this bubble, I'm going to sell this bubble immediately, okay? So, hold on, let's put this over here, here's our stock market, okay? I'm gonna take this bubble and I'm gonna sell it immediately. Boom, boom, okay, boom. Now once I've sold that bubble, now I'm up, we'll say I sell it for the full $10, okay? Now I'm up and now I have $9.50, cool. Now let's say that I agree to return that bubble to him, okay, in like a week. Now let's say that the price of this bubble falls and falls and falls. Let's say that the price goes down to $5 per bubble. Oh shit. Well now what I'm gonna do is before I give the bubble back to the guy, I'm gonna buy it back from the market, like bloop, now I buy it back. Now I only paid $5 to get it back. However, this leaves me with $4.50 and then I'm going to give his bubble back to him. Here you go, bloop, and then I return his bubble. So what happened is, is this guy, he had the rights kind of to a security for a long time. He lent it to somebody and then they gave it back after a week. Now the guy that borrowed it thought that the price might go down on it, so he borrows it, he sells it immediately, then he buys it back near the execution date or the end date of the option or whatever, and then he returns the, op the, the not the option, of the short, sorry. Then he returns the, the security to the guy, and now he's made money. This is, how, this is theoretically how you make a money on a short. On a, make a money, how you make a profit on a short, right? 
Something I don't understand: when a hedge shorts a stock, who are they borrowing from? Other hedge funds? Uh, they could be borrowing from anybody. I don't know who the I don't know who lends shorts. Uh, other financial institutions. I don't know if it would be. Um, I don't think it would be clearing houses themselves. Um, Rage Pope would know. What's in it for the lender? Um, I think normally the lender is going to be charging a fee for lending out the security to other people. And then that fee is going to go up or down based on the volatility of the stock and what they expect the stock to do, right? Wouldn't the value of a stock go towards its real value regardless of shorting or not? Does shorting accelerate things somehow? Well, shorting can slow down. Like sometimes stocks can grow massively in a short period of time and then go down massively in a short period of time just because people are very emotional when they trade. Like markets aren't like the most hyper rational fucking things when it comes to evaluating a company or whatever. Why do people even say this is a bad thing? What's wrong with that? Because people don't know what shorting is, so they don't understand it. People say that if you short a ton, if you basically what people, they, okay, let's be genuine, not genuine. Let me try to be, um, let's steal men this. So what some people will say is if a company goes out and they massively short another company and then they tell people they've massively short it, what's gonna happen is everybody's gonna start selling because they're gonna think that the company is bad and they're gonna drive the price down of the stock is what they're going to say. That's why people think that shorting ruins companies. I unironically think most people heard of shorting from the big short and they just associate with the 2008 crash. Yeah, that's what I think Rob did because Rob kept talking about shorting as being like, he felt like shorting was the reason why the 2007 crash happened, but that's not true at all. My, I, I don't know enough about like the banning of shorting afterwards. My understanding is that like they, they stopped all sorts of trading like right after that crash happened. They didn't stop shorting because like shorting caused it. They just stopped all sorts of derivative markets after the, um, after the, the financial crisis for a while. I, fuck, I say 2007 or 2008. I used to say 2008, and then somebody kept correcting me that it was 2007. Sorry. 2008. Well, no, hold on, because now I checked Wikipedia, and it says the financial crisis of 2007-2008. Fuck you, Proteus. Okay, we'll say 2008 from now on, all right? Isn't it kind of fucked that Robinhood can literally force the price of a stock to go down by only allowing people to sell it? Well, other people are still able to buy it. Um, I mean, you still set your sell price. Are you considering shorting Jimmy yourself? Fuck no, I wouldn't touch that shit. That's super volatile. And the, pr the cost that you're paying for those contracts now for, um, I don't think... I don't even know if you can short it right now, but the price you pay for like doing any options trading on it is like the it's massive right now. Why do people bother with buying these sorts of stocks at all unless you're a pro? Well, because you because doing well normally you should only do this if you're like a pro, right? I don't even know if most people will give you the option to do it, because another op another thing that can happen. Let's take our bubble back, okay? So let's go back here. So here's the problem that can happen, okay? Let's say that you owe this bubble back in a week, all right? Let's say that you, boom, sell it immediately, you make your $10, right? Now you've paid your little fee, your interest is 50 cents, you've made $9.50. Well, let's say that a week or two weeks or three weeks goes by and the price of the security is actually going up and up and up and up. And let's say through some crazy twist of events, let's say that the security actually costs like $20. And now it's time for you to, to return the stock. Like, well, fuck. Now when I buy it back, if I buy this back for $20, well, fuck me, now I've actually lost money on my investment. I had, I did have 950 in the bank, but now I had to spend 20 bucks on it. Now I'm in the hole 1050. And theoretically, if this stock goes up and up and up and up and up and up and up more, my, my downside is theoretically unlimited. It's limited to the amount of currency in the, in the planet, right? Because this stock could reach a trillion dollars a share and I would still have to return it, right? Now, there are ways that you can hedge against this risk. Um, my option, my understanding of options is still pretty poor, so I'm going to try very hard not to butcher this, right? But something you could do is I could do this option, sell it on the market, or I'm sorry, I could do this short where I sell the security immediately knowing that I owe it back in a week. But what I could do is I could put 
I could buy calls on it so that if the security goes up to a certain price, let's say it goes up to $10 and, or let's say it goes up to $12 a share, I could buy calls that give me the option to buy that stock back if it reaches $12 a share so that I limit my, my downside basically. But now that's gonna incur a higher fee for me, right? Because now I've gotta pay a fee to buy calls, call options on the stock. So you, you can use options in ways to actually limit your risk. They're not just used to YOLO all of your fucking, you know, attendees money under one. You could, you could buy calls here to limit your downside. Okay, well, if the stock goes to 12.50, I've got contracts, I'll execute them, that's my strike price. So the, the theoretical worst, out I could be here is, um, you know, buying it back for 1250 because I have options to do it. That's one thing you could do. Now, why hedge funds do or don't do that? I, my guess is you probably wouldn't want to do that because you're now you're looking at a lot of premiums. You're, you're paying out a lot of fees and you're cutting into the amount of money you could theoretically make on the trade. Um, but I mean, like that would be like a safer way to do it. But I mean, obviously at the end of the day, you have to weigh that risk yourself. I don't know what hedge funds normally do. I don't know if hedge funds, um, ordinarily hedge their, um, losses with options or not. I, I don't know what the normal training is. I'm not a hedge fund manager, but. What if it climbs so high that the shorter can't afford to buy it back? Is the lender just shit out of luck? If the option goes so high that you can't buy it back, then you are supremely fucked. You are either going to have to become insolvent as a firm, meaning you're gonna have to liquidate all of your assets and pay them back. Well, hold on, there might be more complicated measures or agreements made to do this, but my understanding is that like, you would, you would have to start liquidating all of your other positions so that you could return the stock that you need to do. Like, you can't just like, because, because the alternative there is that like, either, either the firm, either the, either the guy that, bar somebody's gonna get fucked here. Somebody has to get fucked, right? So one of two people are probably gonna get fucked. It's either gonna be this guy that borrowed the share. So he's either gonna have to sell all of his other shares. He's gonna have to close all of his other positions. Maybe you sell your stocks or whatever in other positions so that he can buy back this stock and pay it back. Or I guess he goes insolvent, declares bankruptcy, and then the lender themselves get fucked. And they're holding the, the, the dollar on it or, or holding the buck on it, the buck stops on them or whatever, yeah. What's the difference between shorting and put options? So options are, so a, 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 a short is when you actually borrow the security or you have the rights to borrow the security and then you sell it and then you buy it back and then you return it. That's like a, that's a, that's a short. Um, a short, a short sell is not an option. So options um, like calls or puts are basically contracts that I think are normally bundled at 100 shares at a time, is a contract that says you have a right to buy or sell this stock at a given price. That's what an option is. An option is essentially giving you the option to buy or sell a stock at a given price. So on an option, the only thing you can ever lose on an option is the premium, meaning the amount that you actually spend on it. So if I buy the rights to buy or sell a stock, I'm gonna have to pay money. I'm gonna have to pay a premium for the option to do that. But that's all I can lose. My down, my upside, it, well, depending on the type of option, the upside could be unlimited. Um, and then the downside is just your premium. If, if the option, if the, if the stock doesn't move in the way that you wanted it to, so if you buy calls and the stock goes down, or if you buy puts and the stock goes up, then you just lose all the money that you spent on the premiums, on the right to buy or sell the this, this stock at a given price. That's it. If you sell options, you have infinite downside. Um, is that true? That might be true. If you sell an option, do you have infinite downside? I thought if you sold options, aren't you only ever out the security? Could you, how, could you explain that to me? How, if you own the underlying security and you're selling options against it, well, unless you're selling options and you don't own the securities, then it seems like you could be out completely. They mean if you write the option, you can have, you can have covered options. Okay, yeah, so if you're selling options to somebody and you don't own the underlying security, then you could have potentially unlimited downside. You could be exposed to unlimited risk, yeah. If, you, if you're selling options that you don't own the security for, which that might be the normal case. I don't know normally if options are sold by people that own the underlying security or not. I'm not 100% sure on that. This is hard to know, but I was wondering if you know how it's possible that 140% of the float is short while most of the shares are held by people not lending it out. I understand that. Okay, sure. Let's talk about this real quick, okay? Let's say that there are 10 shares of a company, okay? Let's say that 10 bubbles exist, okay? Let's say that 
five, sh let's say that six shares of that company are owned by employees and they're never going to trade. Okay. Let's say that four shares are available for trade. Let's say that of those four shares, let's say that this guy borrows four of them because he wants to short them. And he's like, cool. Then let's say that he sells those four shares immediately. Then let's say that the next guy that gets them, let's say that he shorts them as well. Well, now you have, and then let's say that after that happens, let's say that the next guy gets them and he shorts them as well. It's like, oh, fuck it. Well, now you have 120%, I believe, right? Of your 120% of the market is shorted on this share, even though only four shares are being shorted. They're just being shorted by multiple lenders essentially. So even though the majority of the market, even though the majority of the market is not actually shorting, right? The short interest can be very, very high. There is no naked shorting going on here. There is nothing illegal going on here. It's just that you could lend the share to somebody else and they could short it as well. Is that really allowed? Yeah. As long as everybody's got collateral, everybody's positions are covered. You can short, you can continue to lend it. Yeah. I think the argument is that this shouldn't be able to happen. Why? Is there a way to tell if a short percentage is over 100%? It's only the type of shorting and not a naked short. Naked shorting should never be happening because that is illegal. I, I don't know. I don't even know the mechanics for how you would naked short. A naked short is basically when you, when you, a naked short involves you selling a share that you don't own and then returning a share that you don't own. I don't know how you do that. I, um, I know that it's super illegal, but supposedly there are like crazy loopholes to do this that some people might illegally abuse, but it shouldn't happen. Like, yeah. What happens if the original owner wants to sell their stock? Well, they can't do that. If they've shorted it to somebody else, they've got a contract that says they can't sell until they, they need the stock returned to them, right? Someone would lend you a share that they don't own, then you sell it. Yeah, I understand. I'm just, I don't know how somebody lends you a share they don't own. That's what I don't understand. If it's like a digital thing that like happens or, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's why somebody, so Hephaestus is saying it's just a number in a database. You could fuck up and sell more than you're allowed to. Yeah, that's, so I don't know if like naked shorting is just like a byproduct of like some digital manipulation where you're like, oh yeah, here's the share. Like I entered it, blah, blah, blah on a spreadsheet, but they don't actually have it. But as long as like the, the short moves in the way that you expect it to, you'll still make money and it'll be okay because you can just go and find another, uh, you can find another one of those stocks on the market somewhere, buy it, sell it, do all that shit. By the way, one thing the stock guy said was right. Some big casinos would give their high rollers credit sometime. There's a Lewis Thoreau doc that explores it. That sounds interesting to me. I'd never heard of that before. It's possible. But if, if that does exist, it must be incredibly exclusive. Like this is not a normal thing available to most people that go to casinos. Because my understanding is that if somebody was like taking out credit for a casino, at our casino at least, that was owned by Harrah's or Caesars now, they would kick you out because you're like, you're like engaging in irresponsible gambling. They'll just kick you the fuck out. How can a company be shorted 150%? What does that mean? Wait, that's what I just explained, right? When a stock is sold, is it always person to person? So I am not gonna pretend like I have the best understanding of this because it's all incredibly fucking complicated. Um, Rage Pope can probably do a much better explanation than me in explaining this. But like, as, insofar as what I understand, the way, that, the way that a transaction works is you have a person here, okay? Person says, I wanna buy a stock, okay? So they use a brokerage, we'll say like Robinhood, okay? And they say, Robin, I want to buy a stock. Okay, so let's say, okay, cool. I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy GME. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> they say to Robin, I want to buy GME. Robin says, okay, cool. We'll do that for you. Then what Robinhood does is Robinhood, they collect your deposit. Okay. Robinhood will go to a clearinghouse. Now in this case, Robinhood owns its own clearinghouse. It's a separate firm, but they, it's all run by the same people. But like Robinhood will go to their clearinghouse, and the clearinghouse will say, okay, cool. We want to. Um, we're going to buy this security for this customer. Now, there's other more complicated stuff that happens in intermediaries here. So people like market makers are involved in, in this type of shit. That's, I don't think that's important. But then what happens here on the other side is another clearinghouse will be involved with another brokerage firm involved with another 
person involved, right? So what happens on this side is the clearinghouse will find the security, they'll buy the security. Now it takes two days for those trades to settle, meaning however much is being bought here, the clearinghouse needs to have two days worth of money to, to, to basically front the money for all of these trades, right? Now, when they buy a security, let's say they buy a security for $100, right? The clearinghouse will say like, hey, Robinhood, um, we're gonna buy this for you. We need a little bit of collateral, okay? Because one, we don't wanna keep that much money in reserve, and two, we just wanna make sure that we're being safe and our risk tolerance is good. Robinhood will be like, okay, yeah, here's like 20%. We'll give you $20, right? So Robinhood gives them $20. Um, they hold on to a little bit of collateral. Um, then they buy the security and then the security is sent back to the customer. Now, the customer doesn't see any of this. When you buy a security, you have it immediately. You get it right away. Like, oh, cool, I have the stock immediately. But that's not actually what's happening. It's taking days for those trades to settle in the background. But what happened with certain stocks is that the, the stock became so volatile and the, um, the, the amount of trading became so high that the clearinghouse to cover its ass is like, hold on, we need to hold way more collateral for these securities. If you want us to buy this shit for you, we're going to need you to pay us like we want 100%. We want you to give us all the money for this. Now, Robinhood isn't going to have funds clearing from customers instantly. They don't have all of the money on hand to deal with the billions of fucking trades that are coming in from people that are trying to buy these tickers. So Robinhood doesn't have the collateral to let the clearinghouse go through with opening new positions. When I say opening a new position, I just mean buying like a new security, right? So Robinhood has to come back to the customers and say, hey, listen, hold on. Um, we're going to have to stop you from buying these stocks. We, we can't do it. We don't have the money for it. The clearinghouse is asking for too much collateral. They're asking for way too much collateral, and we don't have the cash on hand to give them as much money as they need to actually let your trades go through. So we have to stop buys on this. Now, you don't need to, you don't need to stop sales because you don't need collateral for a sale, right? They're just like selling the security to somebody else and the money comes back. They don't actually need to front money for the collateral. That's why buys were stopped. And um, that's why buys were stopped and sales weren't. This is why when we look up what the Robin Hood guy says, um, Robin Hood stops trade. What, what was the CEO's statement on this? <clears throat> I don't know if I'm able to find. Uh, Our decision to temporarily restrict customers from buying certain securities had nothing to do with a market maker or a market participant or anyone like the, that putting pressure on us to ask them what to do. It was entirely about market dynamics. So they're talking about two things here, I think. Market dynamics means the volume, so the new number of people coming in, and the collateral that's being, or I'm sorry, they're talking about the volume, so the new trades coming in, and they're talking about the volatility of this stock because it can go up and down so much, right? Um, it was entirely about market dynamics and clearing house deposit requirements as per regulations. The deposit requirements are the collateral. And as the volume increases and the volatility increases, the collateral goes up. Robinhood doesn't have the money to secure the trades, so trading stops. Does that make sense? Am I understanding this right? Uh, Mr. Destiny? Oh, hey, what's up? What's up, man? Did I interrupt something? Um, I'm just, I'm trying to explain some of this because there's so many stupid fucking memes going on about this shit. What's up? Okay. Right, but I'm done now, so. How you doing? What's up? Good. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this Kyle Kalinske tweet. Um, let yeah. me just read the tweet out. And since you seem to be a little bit more informed on these market mechanisms, maybe I thought you could explain a little bit more in detail about what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So his, t his tweet says, in response to Bastiat's tweet, which I assume you saw, right? Yeah. Um, he said, LOL, you are the dumbest motherfucker on the planet. QAnon is pure horseshit, as I've stated a thousand times. It's, a, it's an, quote, elitist cabal because Robin Hood got a billion dollars from hedge funds for stopping purchases of GME and AMC, and Google deleted 100,000 negative reviews. Organized rigging equals cabal. Uh, yeah, so there's two huge problems with that. And I think you go out to point <laughs> uh, one, at least one of these was that like, per, I'm pretty sure that it's pretty normal that you that companies will delete like massive influxes of negative reviews. That, that type of thing yes. is like pretty normal. Um, and then the second thing is that Robinhood got a billion dollar cash infusion so that they could keep those trades going. It was for the exact quite, opposite reason. That's quite the claim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's not what happened, right? So what I read was that there were these two hedge funds uh, Ribbit and Sequoia, 
that uh, that that essentially bailed them bailed out Robin Hood. But it wasn't because it, like it did like these two these two uh, hedge funds. It's not like they were shorting GME and AMC. <coughs> yeah, and real quick, they did it. They did it in return in exchange for equity in in the company. I don't. I don't know if I don't know if that was the case. If if they're buying parts of Robinhood for equity, um, that that might be the I, case. That's what I read. Okay, that's sure, that I might read. be the case. But the, the reason why Robinhood is trying to raise money here is so that they could continue those trades. The problem is that Robinhood doesn't have the cash necessary to put up as collateral for all of the new buys that people are coming through with. So they're trying to raise more money so that they can go back to allowing people to buy those stocks. So they're raising money for the exact opposite reason that Kalinsky says they are. They're not raising right. money to shut the trades down. They're raising money so that they can keep the trades going. Right. And and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but trading resumed after they got that bailout, right? Um, it's possible. I haven't followed whether or not trading resumed, but that would make sense. Once they have more cash on hand, then they can put up the collateral for those trades. So, yeah. Yeah. I think the thing with Kalinsky and Crystal Ball is y you can be sort of generally right that the system exists in a way that is sort of rigged against people that don't have a lot of money. But when you strictly appeal to that kind of sentiment and then you, you know, try to prove your, your claim by pointing to uh, absurd accusations like Robin, <laughs> Robin Hood getting a bailout uh -huh. in, order, in order for them to stop trading... And Google deliberately deleting a hundred thousand. Like, why would why would Google do that? Like, what would yeah. the incentive be for Google to delete a hundred thousand negative reviews in order to what protect Robinhood? Like, what is their mm -hmm. stake in Robinhood? How does that even make sense? Yeah, and my my problem is that like we never get to actually talk about the real problems. Like, we have so much anger and rage that's just totally misdirected that like nothing is going to get done from this. And like, this is the problem. I don't know if you saw. I talked to the stock guy yesterday. Like, my biggest problem with people is that I'll ask people, like, oh, well, like, what do you think happened here that's so wrong? Like, what new regulation do we need? Like, do you think an illegal activity happened? Do you think something moral happened? And no one actually has any answers for any of that. Now, some people on Reddit might type a paragraph at you, but they don't understand what they're talking about. But if you talk to any other content creator, they're not even going to do that much because they know they don't understand what they're talking about. And that's really, right. really, really frustrating to me because, like, it's just a, it's a total misuse and exhaustion of all the anger that people just have in general against the system, but nobody actually knows where to direct it. So you get these losers yeah. at the top that are making money off of all of this anger that aren't giving us any real solutions or even giving you good descriptions of what's happening right and i kind of like it, it it was a little hard to not buy into it a little bit on the first day when mm -hmm. the trading halted like you, you sort of had these thoughts like well, what kind of conversations is going on in the back end For but sure. then as the days progress and more information comes to light then all of a sudden there there ends up being a pretty reasonable explanation um for for how things went down mm -hmm. um and it just feels like the peak of of laziness especially someone like Kalinsky, man, he's been doing this for what, like over a decade? And it, it's his job to be super informed. It's, on he's issues. not super and informed. He, Kalinsky consistently gives dog shit level zero takes on every single issue that he's presented with. I don't know how he's tricked so many people. He's legitimately dumber than Tim Pool. I don't know how Kalinsky has managed to fool so many people into thinking that he knows anything about anything. Ooh. I don't know about that. I, well, I would stake my entire reputation on it. The, the guy will. dumber than Tim Pool? Yeah, easily, for sure. 100%. He, I want to give you an opportunity to make a case. Can you do that? Or is that something uh, that you on like, cuff? Um, I, I, so for the two specific examples that I can think of, um, and if we were to go through any of his material, because I don't remember every example offhand, but if we were to go through any video of his, I'm sure I could find you example. I, I can think of three. So like one was the um, one was the Amy Klobuchar thing that was just unforgivable. All of his rhetoric surrounding that. So when Amy Klobuchar came out and said that Trump canceling the uh, the bailouts or, or I'm sorry, canceling the checks and asking for 2000 when Kalinsky said, or I'm sorry, when Klobuchar said that was an attack on the American people, Kyle Kalinsky oh, made it right. sound yeah, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yes, unforgivable. Yeah. And that is that a level of ridiculous. laziness that is just unreal. All you have to do is watch like two minutes. You don't even need to watch the whole interview. Just watch two minutes right. of it and you can see exactly yeah. what she's talking about. So that alone, if somebody were to engage in that, that alone would reduce the credibility to almost zero for me because it shows me that you're not doing any research in what you're doing and you're propagating misinformation. Um, that was right, one thing. But t t mm -hmm. I mean, I would say Tim Pool is way worse. I mean, you went on his podcast. Yeah, but Tim Pool, at least, here, the thing is, is that I feel like I could make Kyle Kalinske cry in like five minutes. For Tim Pool, it would take me like an <laughs> hour or two to get there because Tim Pool at least has like fuck tons of conspiracy shit to back up all of his shit. Kalinske is just stupid. Like, that's the difference. Is that like, that's why I say he's dumber. Like, I think that Tim Pool is probably more harmful because he propagates the conspiracy shit. Regardless of who's dumber or not, I'm just saying Kalinske is a really, really horrible person for media and he does a huge harm to like this entire arena with all of the crazy shit that he talks about. When he was one what of the was people that? that was showing up saying that like, oh, America shot down a plane over Tehran or whatever when that when that plane got shot down in Iran or whatever did he get on that train yeah too? he did 
and it's oh, like, yeah. and, and he and he tried to compare it to the one that we'd shot down prior to that over the Strait of Hormuz, and or, I don't know yeah. how to pronounce it, but like it's a geography problem. If you look at where Tehran is in Iran, like this is a totally yeah. different situation. Like we, we would have to be in Iranian airspace shooting down planes to do this. But I like think he I did watched that. your video on that. Yeah, back there's in the day when you posted on YouTube. Yeah, there, there's like he'll do he just he'll jump onto every other like crazy Twitter headline bandwagon and just propagate it along with the rest of everybody else, and he doesn't fact check anything he talks about. Most of the shit he brings up, I just I hate him. Fuck, I hate him so much. Oh God. There's a it's a brand of faux populism that really bothers me. There was a bit of that going on this week with Elizabeth Warren too. Did you see that quote that she did, that she said that was totally taken out of context? Um, like she she had said something in response to this entire GME trading Robinhood trading deal. Mm-hmm. But what she was saying was that uh, the little essentially what she was saying was that these smaller private investors need there needs to be more protections. There need to be more mechanisms to protect these people. Mm-hmm. But the way that it was phrased and the headlines that popped up as a result of that made a lot of these gamers think that. She wasn't backing them mm-hmm. on, you know, what was going on when really she was just addressing the extreme volatility of these stocks and how how much damage economic damage that can do to a lot of people that maybe have like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, some kind of a you know vested interest in it. Yeah. The um, um, oh, fuck. What was I just thinking about? Oh, oh, the uh, there, there's a popular clip floating around, too, that everybody has been repeating as well, uh, where you have I think it's some guy on MSNBC is saying that like these. Um, these retail traders are ruining everything and blah, blah, blah. And it's an attack on rich people in the United States or something. That clip is actually just cut together from two totally different segments of that, of the larger interview. There was a Twitter thread on it where, um, Interesting. yeah, like basically they just, oh, it was CNBC. Sorry. Yeah. Where pe- he, the guy was talking about like buying his new tax policies or something. And somebody cut that video together to try to make it sound like that the guy oh, was wow. talking about retail traders and not Biden's policies. And it's like, wow. Jesus Christ, it's unbelievable, dude. There was also the thing that Biden, Biden, in the context of an 18-minute speech that he gave, uh, uh-huh. detailing his executive flurry of executive orders that he signed uh-huh. related to COVID, and then also he more broadly discussed his um, his his uh, COVID policy that he wants to end up passing through Congress as well. Uh-huh. And somebody took a, a like a like a it, it was literally like an 18-second clip of him saying, and I think the exact words were, "There's nothing that we can do to change the trajectory of this virus for the next few months." Yeah, which I I will agree is poor wording. But mm-hmm. it was it, it wasn't him saying I give up, you know, I'm just going to tell people to wear a mask and that's it. Mm-hmm. it, it, had, it, it and, and people took that clip and started spreading it around to mean or, or to suggest that he was basically giving up. Exactly. And, yeah. And, and not doing it, even though, it, again, this was in the context of a speech where he was detailing his fucking plan. Mm-hmm. It was the most disingenuous bullshit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw it spread spread by primarily blue MAGA people. I didn't see a lot of. I mean, granted, I don't follow a lot of like MAGA. MAGA Something that left leaning people spread, though, another out of context clip from Joe Biden is that nothing will fundamentally change for rich people. The most Mm -hmm. fucking. And it's like if you listen to the speech, I know. And it's like and the thing that drives me the craziest is that like when I argue with my mom about things and I never hope to change her opinion, obviously, at this point, like I have to concede so much ground right away because she has a point that there are a lot of left leaning people that just blatantly fucking lie about a lot of shit. And it's like, yeah, okay, mom, I understand you. Like, yeah, the media is lying about it, but I swear the stuff about Trump is not a lie. Like, it makes my position look so fucking weak that I have to be in bed with it. I don't think it's as endemic as as the the sort of it is ultra endemic. Maga- Here, like, here's another quick example that I'll give, and and I, every time I give this, there's always more people in chat. It's like, wait, I didn't know that. I've given this example like 50 times over the past month because it's one of the drives me the craziest. There are still people that think that Breonna Taylor was lying in bed sleeping when she was shot by the cops. Like, there was a tweet that went out over this that had like half a million fucking like likes on it. It's like there is so much misinformation out there about literally every fucking thing, and 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 it people seems like kind of an. Inc- isn't that kind of an inconsequential detail, though? It's no, that? it's not though. That's the problem. Is it like it? It, it because like the thing is, here, here's like a here's like a. I don't want to say this is life advice. It sounds really condescending. If something really bad happens and you exaggerate it, people aren't going to believe anything bad happened. That's the problem, right? What oh, happened to Breonna Taylor was unbelievable. Cops shooting through fucking windows in an apartment. That shit is crazy. You just have to talk about that. But when you start making up lies like, oh, well, she was in bed sleeping when a cop executed her. But it's like, wait, what the fuck? Well, now nobody's going to believe anything that's said, right? This is like literally the Russia disinformation 101. Is The goal isn't to make bad stuff sound credible. It's just to make everything sound not credible. Right, and when you and lie about things, on Twitter is, now somebody on Twitter is probably crafting a tweet thread about how you said that Breonna Taylor deserved to get shot or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like it's yeah, and it, it makes my job so much harder because then when I have to talk about shit that's actually fucked up, people are like, well, why do people lie about this? Why do people? I was like, okay, fuck, I don't know why people exaggerated. That's really dumb. But what actually happened is bad, and it's like, well, what happened? You know, like everybody's saying different stories. Like, yeah, fuck, like. 
I wish people could just have like more fact-based discussions because holy fuck, it drives me fucking crazy. Holy shit. And now, well, and now because of the populated online, people on the left engage in it just as much as people on the right. There are just as many conspiracies, just as no, many delusions, just as no, many crazy out of context quotes. So. Absolutely. I, yeah, for sure. No way. 60, 60% of the, I think it's like 60 or 70% of the Republican Party believes that the election was stolen, that it was rigged. Sure. Like I don't, I don't, I don't see. I mean, t- like, t- you know, tap me on the shoulder when you see that level of delusion. What of percentage of people? Left. Yeah, but what percentage of people on the left legitimately feel like, for instance, um, that like every single politician is in the bed um, of some like corporate lobbyist and they don't represent the people at all, and all of the legislation that comes out is literally just like corporate driven or whatever. I, I would argue that that's like think, a similar level of conspiracy. Non, I think that's a nonpartisan position, though. I, I feel like you know that that sort of. Populist rhetoric is, has, has been a mainstay in American politics since the... How, okay, well, here, sure, here's, here's a more co- comparable example. How many people think that the DNC was directly involved with stealing the election from Bernie? How many people thought that right. Obama was making calls behind closed doors? Okay, now that one I will grant you. Mm-hmm. That one I will grant you that there, it's probably a significant, significant portion. I don't think it's 60 or 70%. It might not be that percent, I, sure. Maybe just the loudest voices online. I don't have hard data on that one. Sure. It, it's yeah, probably I just the loudest voices that I hear online, unfortunately, are all like the socialist shit is like the populist popular stuff now online so that's like the the loudest shit we hear online but well i wanted to ask you again because like you um you you typed out something in the dms and helped me understand a little bit more but maybe for my audience or for maybe people in your audience that haven't heard it can you talk a little bit about the um collateral debt obligations that that uh robin hood had that preempted the the halt of the, <coughs> the 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 buying yeah sorry so the the basically the quick explanation is that like when you buy a stock somebody else has to put up money for that stock in order to buy it because it takes a couple days for the trades to clear. And what happens is, is as more and more people buy things and as the price of the volatility of the stocks increases, people need more guarantee that you're actually going to go through with buying the stock, right? They need more collateral. Uh, the people Can you that- talk about what a clear- clearinghouse is real quick and just kind of briefly explain that? Okay, sure. Um, so basically, if you're a customer and you go onto a brokerage, um, you tell them that, hey, I want to buy like a security. The brokerage has to go to a clearinghouse, and then the clearinghouse are the people that actually like buy and sell the security. Now, when the clearinghouse buys or sells the security, they have to put up 100% of the money needed to, to purchase the actual stock. Now, mm-hmm. when they do that, they usually ask for a little bit of collateral from the brokerage because they're like, hey, we're putting up all the money to buy this. We need some collateral for you until like all the funds clear and everything. And like the brokerage will put up some collateral and then they basically get the security and then they make it so that the customer has possession of that security. Well, as uh-huh. the volatility of securities increase and the massive volume increases for people trying to buy shit, the clearinghouse, um, the clearinghouse needs more collateral and the brokerage doesn't have the collateral to front for that, for all the new trades coming in. And then what happens is, is the brokerage has to say, okay, hold on, we have to stop trades on certain stocks because we just don't have the money to fund it. We can't put the collateral up for it anymore. And that's why they started reaching out to, Robinhood took like, they tapped a $500 million line of credit from their banks, and then they got a $1 billion uh, um, infusion, I guess, from a couple other capital firms in order yeah. to try to make it so they had the money necessary to do these trades. I had people in my in my mentions saying that the two hedge funds that that helped to 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 infuse cash into Robinhood were short selling positions on uh, on uh, on GME and AMC. I didn't see any. That might be true, but literally like tons of asset managers and tons of hedge funds all have positions on GME right now. Like that's not surprising at all. Um, right. Yeah. Here is like. Um, sorry, because it's also this is like just a side thing that triggers me people feel like the little guy is the one that's making all the money here um these are all the other hedge funds with positions in gme right now um it's not little guys making money off of hedge funds it's hedge funds making money off of hedge funds uh, there might be a few little guys on wall street bets that are sitting at the top of this ponzi scheme that are going to get out rich but most of the retailers buying in are probably going to get fucked and the the real people making the money right now are the huge asset managers like blackrock or all of these other hedge funds that have big positions in gme as well Okay. Well, I appreciate that clarity. I'm not like when it comes to um, economic issues. That's probably like my least interesting, the the, the topic that I'm least interested in. Mm-hmm. And so uh, a lot of this stuff was going over my head this week. But then as I started to sort of un- unpack things a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, it sure seemed like it doesn't mean that the people that were, uh, you know, the the retail tr- the uh, the what do you call them retail traders that had the the their their um when they halted the the ability to buy that stock it doesn't mean that people weren't like rightfully upset or that they weren't kind of fucked on some level but it also doesn't necessarily mean that the most nefarious conspiracy uh is is what's going on behind the scenes like there can be 
a reasonable market explanation for why these decisions were made mm -hmm. that don't involve fucking Google calling up the White House, who then fucking called up Robin Hood or wh whoever. Like, the more I started reading into the, like, the Kyle Kowinski takes, mm -hmm. the less sense that it made. It yeah, and I'm getting people any... arguing that are literally, like, these fucking, these hedge funds that are managing billions of dollars in capital are fucking calling Discord, asking them to ban, like, fucking channels. Like, you, like th these guys are, like, BlackRock or whatever, like, calling up. Like, these huge, people managing trillions of dollars of funds. Like, we, Discord, you need to shut down the channel. You need to shut down the Wall Street right. Bets channel. Like, it's out of control. Like, there's just no fucking way. It's delusional. It is a little... It's it's conspicuous timing, but it does also make sense when you consider the fact that all of a sudden you had this subreddit in this Discord channel that was getting national headlines uh -huh. overnight. So if there was a lot of uh, you know hate speech or directed harassment or anything going on within that Discord, it uh -huh. does stand to reason that it would be detected much quicker in lieu of the national scrutiny that this that this group was uh, yeah, of course. Was, was undergoing at the time. It's like all the people that started to like delist like all of the Nazi shit or whatever. It, it's like they just either didn't notice it or there wasn't like public spotlight attention on it until like something happened. Like it doesn't take a grand conspiracy. It's not Zuckerberg in the background, you know, calling GoDaddy and telling them to, to kick people off their registrar or that they're not going to host domains. Right? It's probably just like when all the attention is there, when the spotlight is there, and then people are like paying way more attention because they don't want to get fucked for it. You know, they don't want anybody giving them bad, bad publicity over it or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna watch the rest of that hippy dippy podcast from last night. Oh um, God, so. I'm I'm after just <laughs> I'm never going on anything. I, I, I watched the I watched the end of it. You were, you t you talk quite a bit. You get yeah. <laughs> well because I don't talk for the rest of it that much. I try not to interrupt as much on the panels. So I feel bad, but that I don't think you should go on anything with this panel based with the Rob guy. That dude is certified fucking insane. Um, I don't know if you've gotten to the point yet where he's saying that like the reason why old people were being put into nursing homes and murdered was so that Democrats could get a win on Trump. Like the yeah. guy is actually yeah. fucking crazy. And on panels, yeah. I can't respond to him because I'm like, I would be interrupting every other person. It's really frustrating. Holy shit. Yeah. That Rob dude is crazy. You, he was the one that triggered you the most. I get pretty triggered by Aftershock, to be honest with you. I get I mean, triggered by Aftershock. Like, Aftershock just comes off to me as like standard crazy whatever conservative but rob like has all of the he's like a he's like a q or type person like where you you might say like oh well that's not true and you're like well actually if you look at this tweet dated back from 2012 and it's on the yeah. 17th different twitter account you can actually see that this was linked by hillary's own and it's like oh f i don't fucking know if that's true or not like holy shit yeah, you know, yeah. um yeah he's, he's I, I did catch some of that I, ca I caught like the last like hour or so and I thought I was going to be, I thought the, the, I think the last hour is when you talked about this stuff that was going on, the stock trading stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to tune out and then I ended up listening and that's when you ended up going off, I think the most. Like you, yeah. You it's screaming pretty loud yeah. It's really obnoxious. Part. But. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you for, um, mm -hmm. you know, explaining this to me. I, I, I actually do really appreciate that. So yeah. No thanks. problem. Also, there are a couple of uh, your general chatters that have huge fucking problems with things upset. If you're they mad. Do, there's so many up. that don't like you. And now, I, everybody and I, in I, every I Twitch chat doesn't like me. It's just a thing. I don't know if it's because the sun got so big and his audience fucking hates me or if it's just the general rise of the popularity of like the socialist bullshit online um, that like makes a lot of people hate me. But like, yeah. Like there's people, so real quick, anybody that mentions anything about naked shorts has no idea what they're talking about. There's zero evidence that anything was naked shorts sold ever. That's just not, oh shit. Whoops, sorry, hello? Uh, no, I left on accident. Oh yeah. Was, yeah, go, J yeah, just, yeah, sorry. there's a whole bunch of people in your chat, or there, I saw at least one guy bring up like naked shorts. There's no evidence that anything was naked shorts sold at all. People are mad about it for no reason. There's literally no evidence of it happening. Um, there is, yeah. there were a couple other comments that i don't remember but yeah if anybody's ever mad yeah you can always hop in my journal lobby and argue with me about things but um yeah people usually just try to say that like i'm an, i'm a neoliberal and then like run away or some shit but yeah I, I will say there's a significant portion of my audience that really cannot stand you. Yeah, and I know. Yeah. I've, I've, I've just made peace. With, I've, I'm trying to make peace with them in a yeah. sense where it's like you're just going to have that opinion and that's just going to be the thing that you do. But I, I'm not going to mm -hmm. agree with you on on every one of your takes there. So. Mm -hmm. I didn't want you to think that I was cultivating this anti destiny No, that's right. I'm used to it. Don't worry. My, Even my Dr. K's yeah. audience fucking hates me. <laughs> I don't know how, but yeah. I don't know who that is, but yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, buddy. Well, enjoy All the rest right. of your weekend. Have fun. Be careful, okay? Bye-bye.
okay. Um, anyway, what's up? Legit question, why doesn't the brokerage have money for higher collaterals? If I'm buying the stock, I already deposit the full cash for that transaction. Um, just because it takes time for money to move around. You said Dr. K's chat hits, but what do you think about Dr. K? Um, he's, from everything that I've seen, Dr. K seems like a really cool dude. Now, he might be a horrible guy, and I just don't know it, but everything I've seen about him seems cool. I remember when someone got mad at me for saying, fuck Destiny, and they got timed out. Thanks, text-to-speech, at Hutch. I want to support someone who says the N-word, and you unironically calls for the mowing down of protesters. Call me one trick pony. Oh God, Hutch is gonna suck Destiny's dick the entire stream. Fuck Destiny. Destiny's a reputation. Destiny's the loves Ben Shapiro. I don't care. I don't care how to get someone else instead of the shit stain. Fuck you. You can block me. Nothing's time. I'll chill when Destiny's gone. Oh fun. The Destiny fans are here. Haha. Get fucked. Holy shit. Who are you? What's up? Hello? Slug, you're in. Oh, he deafened. Mel? Hi. What in the Mel are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you fighting people? I am not fighting. I don't know what I'm going to do today. Oh. Fuck. Quit crinkling that wrapper. Oh, shit, sir. Seems to me the entire problem could be fixed with faster settlement. Why does it take two days to clear? The T223 rules where we need to go. It's yep. 21 after all. Oh, yeah. I don't know why these are. Supposedly, these are just archaic like rules that are from an earlier age or something. Hey, what's up? What are you here for? Yo, I was just listening the other day about uh, naked shorting. And uh, I think he slightly mis-explained uh, it. Okay. Generally in finance, naked just means um, unlimited losses, right? If I sell naked calls, I'm not covering my calls. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait, real quick. So yeah. naked doesn't mean unlimited calls. Naked just means your position's not covered. Or I'm sorry, naked doesn't, like, and your position not being covered means that you theoretically have an unlimited downside, right? But naked doesn't, uh, right, isn't that? Yes. Yeah, okay. Traditionally. Um, with shorting, it's slightly different. It means that you can't um, locate a share to actually short. So w if you have a brokerage that's not Robinhood, you can agree to let your shares be lent out. Um, and then you get the fee that the hedge fund or whoever's on the other side of the trade agrees to pay as part of the shorting agreement. Um, now, what naked shorting is, is when you um, enter the short without someone actually agreeing to lend out their shares. Now, I will agree that there isn't um, evidence that naked shorting has necessarily occurred, but I just want to, I just don't understand why no one can actually accurately explain what naked shorting is and why it's illegal. Wait, so here's a question that I have. Um, what, how, how do you sell something without even having the ability to buy it? How are you actually able to make it show? Let's say I wanted to do this and I know it's illegal. How would you actually fucking do that? Um, so you would just go to a clear... You, so generally, retail investors never short because it's just not a good risk-reward trade. So it's mostly done by institutions. So they would go to whoever they're using as their clearinghouse or whatever mm -hmm. and just say, hey, I want to short this share. And it's up to the clearinghouse to find shares for them to short. And I don't know if they naked shorted or what i'm just well yeah but my I, question is is like because in order for a short to work you have to sell the share at the initial yeah 
Yeah. So how do you sell a share that you don't have or can't find? That's my question. So you you actually don't have to sell it. That's generally. You, you could just hold on to it, but and you could actually lend it out again. Co- yeah, but my, like, my, yeah, I understand that. It, you could you could theoretically do that. Yeah, I'm just saying, how do you do anything with a share that you don't own? That's the part that I don't understand. Um, it will it'll just show up in your. So it it's just like all of a sudden you receive it from the clearinghouse like it, your account your whatever and that's just what happened like i it's not like i ever do this but i just no i'm not I'm asking like, if you do it i'm just asking let's say that i want to yeah. i want to short a stock and i but i don't want to cover my position so the, the implication there is that i'm selling the stock somewhere but i don't have it and i don't know where i can get it from i'm just going to assume that i can get it to return it to somebody else later but how do i do that initial sale do I just tell the clearinghouse, you, like, can you just mark me down for one sold share and they just digitally do it even though there's no underlying? You say I want a short, you borrow it, it shows up in your account, and then you immediately turn around and sell it on the market. Well, yeah, but, like, that's not naked then. you actually, If you have the security, then you're covered, right? Um, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And so what I'm saying is that that the nakedness of it is that the the clearinghouse is lending you a share that they haven't actually located so you can just google well but then at that point then but then you're not committing the you're not committing the crime then the clearinghouse would be if the clearinghouse is yeah yeah i agree okay all right well anything else you want to chat about no no no. i just wanted to say this has been like a frustrating situation i've been like really dialed into it for a while and it's like wildly miss talked about thing generally um i don't disagree with much of the shit you said um that wall street that's post about people fucking exercising options in order to get shares was the fucking stupidest thing i've ever seen what well, was working wasn't um, it What's up? I mean, it was working, wasn't it? They were able to get shares by executing options that they were buying. No, uh, you could just hold the you could just hold the option and the um, the uh, clearinghouse or market maker who sold you it is going to delta hedge against the like. Once you enter that contract, they are buying shares to cover and all you're doing is losing extrinsic value by exercising the call well but they don't care about the the value of the options they just want the physical securities but they just they they couldn't buy the securities but they found that by buying options and then executing the options they were able to get the securities if that's your goal then i mean technically that works right but but once you enter into that contract the market maker is going to buy the shares anyways so why lose money exercising the call when the shares are already getting bought? Does that make sense? Why lose money executing the call when the shares are already getting? Um, <clears throat> oh, no, you're right. Because if the price is going to go up anyway, then why not just wait until the contract expires yeah. or whatever? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, why would you execute it? Yeah, yeah you're just, right. No, 100% you're right. Yeah, I understand. Money. Sure. Because, yeah, because, I mean, you could buy it or you could execute it and then sell it yourself, but why would you do that? You're just paying, a, like, the premium for the contract for nothing then, right? Right, exactly. Uh, there's a ton of disinformation by people who know nothing about finance, and it, it's been frustrating. I've been dialed into this trade for a long time. I've done pretty well off it, but I'm certainly worried about a lot of people who are, like, moralizing the market, which I think is a really stupid idea. Um, and they're like, I'm going to hold to fucking zero. And I'm like, I'm like, no, try and make money. I don't know. I, it just seems stupid. Okay. All right. I love you. Okay. Stay safe. Yeah. I love you too, buddy. Bye. What do you want? Okay. What do you want? Holy shit. Oh my God. Okay. Hi. Um, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Hi. Um, so yeah, no, uh, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm 19. 
Um, this is this has been a life changing event. Uh, I went from um, a couple thousand dollars to six figures. Mm -hmm. um, reduced like most of my exposure, but I'm still holding. Um, and I'm guess uh, like I I just thought that the, that stock guy or the stock guy was like a terrible um, spokesperson for anything regarding like our side, quote unquote our side of the argument. Um, so I guess like. Do you have my disagreements with you? Or just like, do you think it's uh, why do you, do you think ever do you not think the short squeeze is gonna happen next week? Uh, I, I don't know. The reporting from I think Bloomberg is that Melvin has closed most of their positions. I don't know how long what the current short contracts look like. I have no idea. Well, so like, wait, do you think it's gonna happen? Yes, then why did you close your positions? I, I, uh, to reduce exposure, I still have positions. Yeah, but it sounds like you've closed the majority of them. If you think that the squeeze is going to happen next week, why'd you do that? Why aren't you still holding? Oh, because I'm not, I'm not like, some people have like much bigger diamond hands than I do. I mean, like I went into this with, with, uh, um, with. Yeah, I, I understand that. Do you understand my frustration though? When somebody comes in and they're confidently telling me like, oh, I know that the shorts are still open. Oh, I know the squeeze is going to happen. It's like, oh, well then why'd you sell everything? No, but so it I'm seems like you don't believe I, that, right? Sure, no, no, no. But what I'm trying to say is that I don't think a lot of us are, I think there's two aspects of this. First of all, um, for example, I am not um, like, there's a reason I closed like certain positions because I think you should reap, like cover your ass, like your principal, um, reap some type of profit, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to hold and you think it's going to happen, well, have something in there. And so that's why I, I obviously sold some of it. But I think that the general understanding is that, first of all, Melvin can just be saying that they closed their short positions. We're not going to know until February 9th is my understanding. That's when we would get that uh, updated uh, like information. Um, um, so we're not going to know until February 9th. And basically, like we had certain price targets we had to hit um, every Friday to try to like expire a bunch of calls in the, in the money, right? So I'm essential. Uh, so and we did that. Uh, we did that all the way up to 3:30 was like the best. Uh, 3:30 was like the best we could have asked for in, uh, to close on Friday, and so I just don't understand. Like I'm generally confident about this. Um, that's why I still have like a lot riding in this. Um, uh, that like basically I'd say like I I sold of all my profit I sold 50%. I have 50% riding, but that 50% is like a lot. Like um, I would say. Um, the other aspect of this is like the social like narrative of it where it's i don't think that it's only uh about like oh just making money at this point there's a lot of people who are just in this to try to like drain uh costs like these hedge funds billions and to your point that you said like oh well blackrock and a bunch of these other other hedge funds are on our side and have invested into uh, gamestop and they're making billions off it and um but that i don't think i think that's kind of missing the point because it's not about like um it's not a like okay so what they're riding on our backs we are also making like ridiculous profits and we're just a bunch of ki uh, people on on reddit right and so there's like um like we're not gonna just like there was no way that if if we were going to trigger a short squeeze or we were going to do this that like a hedge fund that there wouldn't be a good amount of hedge funds that would be like, okay, well, I mean, we're going to throw in on, on, uh, on the side of the retail, uh, investors here. And like, in fact, that's just beneficial to us because I mean, it, it just further increases the chance of a short squeeze of triggering. Who do you think is going to lose the most money percentage wise by the end of all this? Um, percentage wise. Oh, I definitely think, uh, um, like the shorters in this situation. You don't think the, the shorters, this, they, you don't think the retailers that are tr that are all buying them now that are going to lose their ass when the stock drops to $20 a share? You don't think they're going to be well, the ones I getting the most part? I think we're going to $20 a share. Wait, what do you yeah, think it's I going think it, to? I think it will collapse back down, but I don't think it's going to go back down to 20. I mean, minimum, like, I think minimum, I, look, my, my hope, I think that if when it does collapse, I'm hoping for something anywhere between 50 and 100. Um, you think it's going to have 2.5 to 5 times the valuation it had a month ago? Well, yeah, because then uh, by this point, there wouldn't be the short interest that there was before, right? You would have, like, uh, uh, I'm assuming at this point, like, GameStop would have, like, utilized, um, like, GameStop will have opportunities to raise cash from this. GameStop has a new breadth of, like, 
public uh, uh like a, a public brand um their their financials are coming in soon and they have had a great quarter um i think that uh like ryan cohen and and the and like the the restructuring wait of the board, are you you realize that on wall street bets when they type we like the stock you know that's just supposed to be the meme position right you're not you're not actually supposed to like the stock well, it, well, I, I think you, yes, it is a meme position, but it's also a lot of people like the stock. Like, N no, I, nobody likes this no. stock over $50. Nobody does. Right now, it's no, all speculation. No, no, okay, to be clear, let me say that uh, people like the stock to lo uh, hold long. There's people on Wall Street Bets that you can find that, like, have put, like, a million dollars. In, in, in our whole are gonna sure. hold long. but people that yeah. are going in on this when it's over like 50 when it's over a hundred dollars like there's no way that these people are in just because they like the stock they're here to speculate because they want to make a lot of money in the squeeze. sure but i think i also think like what's the problem with that these people under should under these people understand that i mean like well, okay i i mean that's part of it i they understand that uh i think like this is a free market they've been uh like we identified a a a opportunity for a short squeeze. I think like there was due diligence done here. Like yeah, it is a lot of memes, but like behind this, there's a lot of people putting a lot of time and effort into like researching this stuff. So, um, yeah, no, I I, I don't think that retail at the end of it, because um, if you if you buy shares, I mean like here's the thing, like retail, there's Wall Street bets people who might be call, uh, buying options and stuff like that. And then there's retail who's buying shares. Shares at the end of the day, like you can hold that. And if, if GameStop takes the opportunity to um, to raise funds from this and and to like really like wipe out their billion dollar debt or restructure their business entirely, well then this is a long term play. I mean they want to go e commerce, they want to enter the like PC market. Like these are all a lot of things. That, like um, I just I don't see. Uh, yeah, I understand. Can, wait, can yeah, I ask you an important question? Out. Yes. Pepe or Yi? Pepe. Okay, just checking. Um, I think that's just because I it's it's been in my life more. I understand. All right. Okay. Well, hey, do you have any final words for us? Um, thank you for talking to me. It's insane that uh, it's really crazy actually talking to you and. Uh, hopefully we can talk about other stuff because I've plenty of disagreements with you. But yeah. I also like I love your content and you're you're an incredibly like I'm a little bit further left than you mm -hmm. and you have uh, you're really good um, to like test my ideas with and like a whole, like essentially bounce ideas off of because uh, like Kyle Kalinensky for example I I actually I used to be pretty like right wing mm -hmm. uh, I found his uh, his content and he essentially. Uh, help move me away from that mm -hmm. and essentially like put me into a position where i'm like a generally like i like bernie warren um stuff like that sure. um yeah and and so you are also like this moderating like uh moderating force um yeah moderating voice i guess where it's uh you serve to like uh bounce off a lot of the uh possible misinformation that comes from uh, those like more populist areas sometimes. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate it. Um, I'm giving you a hard time over um, selling a stock because you, you sound really confident that the squeeze is still happening. But um, I think it's a really, really good idea that you sold. So that's congratulations on that. If you made a fuck ton of money, you should feel really proud of yourself. Don't lose it all trading like a fucking dipshit over the next month. Um, so oh, no. yeah, oh, no, if you made not. a lot of money. Congratulations on that. That's really good. Um, it's good that you sold. So have fun. Peace out. Stay safe. Be careful. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Have fun. Uh, okay, I'm not, I'm not dragging people. I don't know why I did this. I'm not debating on veganism. Philosophy too. It's not happening. Hold on, I'll be back one sec, and then I don't know what we're doing.
Well, 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 well. What is naked short selling? I've seen that meme a lot. It's when you trade with no clothes on. It's considered illegal. I agree with all your points, but isn't it an issue that when RH and others stopped retail from buying stock instead of suspending all trades, they created an asymmetrical market that had a huge influence on the stock value, even if it was a justified decision? Um, it's possible. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe the stock is going to fall anyway. MC, 20 pounds. Could you double this for me and make me richer? Thanks, Destiny. Kyle Bunk, $5. GameStop crash? More like GME Pain Olympics. Ben MC, five pounds. Quit talking and play Fortnite poggers. You gnome fuck! Scott Bradley, four dollars and ninety nine cents. When we gonna get a t-shirt with one of these awesome paint designs you keep making? Who own a meme? Moose Star for 225, $5. Will the rock market go kaboom boom? Ask your mom. Scott Bradley, $4.99. Ooh Twitch chat sucks ooh all my homies hate Twitch chat ooh ooh. Ye wins again and again 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 Ben MC five pounds DGG sucks Twitch chat sucks YouTube chat does not I have shorted moot on merch.com Combo for you or I crash this stock with no survivors. In five, four, three, two, one. <sighs> okay, I think we're starting. I think I leave on Monday because I'm taking a little meal-cation. So I think we're going to do cyberpunk when we get back. Um, I think I think I want to set it up on my new computer so that I have like the um, so I have like all my graphics card and everything set up. So I think today and tomorrow we're probably just gonna jerk off on stream. What is this? Hold on. Why did she buy this fucking hand? No down, do everything. So if I give you my money, right, are you gonna double it or? It's, sir, it's a zero percent guaranteed return. It's perfect. Oh, so I get nothing back. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> it's, wait, wait. It's zero percent return. Wait. Okay, so what is what's your stock right now? How much is the first stock to buy? It's, it's through the roof. I'm sorry. Look at the graph right here. There's 2020. Here's 2021. It's through the roof. Through the room. Nice. Yes. And so you guys just all of a sudden overnight just went over a billion over stocks. It's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very busy right now. I got calls to answer. Okay. The handheld mic is good memes. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> We hear a lot about fake news, but in the United States, we're facing a much bigger problem. We've reached a point where we no longer agree on basic facts. And if we can't agree on what is objectively true, how can we tackle big issues like improving education, the economy, or the environment? The Rand Corporation, a nonprofit, nonpartisan research institution, found a complex set of phenomena at work. Truth decay happens when people disagree about basic objective facts. People no longer trust credible sources of information. Opinions drown out facts. And the line between opinion and fact blurs to the point where facts are not only disputed more, but rejected and ignored. We've seen a similar phenomenon at least three times before in U.S. history. But the increasing disagreement over basic facts is something new. It's unique to our time and has been escalating since before 9-11. Our brains are hardwired to reject information that contradicts our beliefs. Round-the-clock news and social media spread information, real and fake. Political and economic polarization make it hard to talk to each other. 
and a strained education system struggles to keep up with a rapidly changing information system and to provide us with the critical tools we need to recognize false information and resist bias. Intentionally or not, the agents of Truth Decay make the problem worse and often do so for political or economic gain, leaving us unable to have serious debates. Okay, cool. You gnome fuck! The Redditors are now trying to push silver. Trying to pump some new shit after they lost money using the same narrative as last time. Yikes. You gnome fuck! Imagine subscribing to Vacation Andy who doesn't believe in WSB's crusade. T wins and DGGL underscore two? Perspective philosophy, five pounds. Debate me on socialism then? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I love you though. A Wall Street leader in a frenzy this week after young traders on Reddit decided to hedge their own bets on the stock market, resulting in Struggling companies like GameStop seeing their stocks skyrocket in value and causing massive losses for wealthy investors. Now, at the insistence of Wall Street, trading platforms like Robinhood and TD Ameritrade are restricting trades, thereby allowing certain traders like hedge fund managers to keep buying and selling normally, but freezing out all of this. This is why I don't really like AOC. Um, her Most of her factual takes are just dog shit. She's like a good cheerleader for, um, I don't mean that like in a, she's a woman cheerleader, like men can be cheerleaders too. She's a good cheerleader for like leftist causes or whatever, but factually, most of her takes are usually bordering on dog shit um, when it comes to anything to do with econ or finance, unfortunately. But. Twitch meta explosion soon. Well, we already saw this trend. Welcome to the long awaited NoPixel 3.0. A completely reimagined crime and make yourself some illicit games. There is serious cash to be made. Steal a car for scrap to trade, rob a liquor store, deal drugs, hit a bank, or shoot big and become a criminal kingpin. Let's say you want to earn some cash but not get your hands dirty. Run a meth lab. And perfect your strain or even craft deadly weapons. Strain and get your hands. Dirty. Why does this look so much like rust? Run a meth lab and perfect your strain or even craft deadly weapons to sell. Once you've earned your cash, spend as you will on new opportunities. Buy a new home, purchase a car, and splash on some new upgrades to compete with the top dogs in the underground street racing scene. Gun it too hard though and you might just find yourself needing life-saving medical treatment. Which is why the doctors and EMS are here to help. The economy is an integral part of San Andreas. To stay as a thriving state, the new financial system will ensure the state doesn't drop on its knees. But fear not, players can elect a new mayor to lower taxes, or get creative and not heed to the will of the DOJ. Abolish taxes entirely. If you take that route, watch your back. The cops don't just patrol, they'll snoop on you if they suspect you of bending the rules. Characters old and new will have to start from scratch. A server wipe will provide the opportunity for everyone to start anew on an even playing field. The devs have been hard at work to build an immersive world and will continue to code new mechanics and implement new 3D assets, including new vehicles, environments, and clothing. <laughs> what was it? Um, <laughs> one of my favorite... One of my favorite lines of all time was the uh, cyberpunk dev when they were like, didn't you say the cars were going to be customizable? And the guy was like, well, kind of. They come pre-customized. <laughs> oh, fuck. That was a good-ass fucking meme. Holy shit. <laughs> Do 
Do you think Robinhood is at least partially responsible for giving the excuse that they were protecting their customers by restricting trading? The, that excuse was weak. We all know they had issues with filling trades due to liquidity. Well, I mean, like, in a roundabout way, they're true. Like, they are protecting customers, because the worst case scenario, there are so many counterparties involved in all these trades that it, at some point, somebody's going to be left holding the buck, and it could be a customer. It might be that you're on Robinhood, and you go to sell a stock, and you don't get paid for it, and you can't sell it, because there's, like, counterparties are, like, not meeting obligations or don't actually have the cash on hand to pay you out or don't have the securities to trade. So, like, on one end, you could argue that, like, these regulations do protect customers. It's not wholly wrong for them to say that they're protecting cus customers by holding trades. Um, did anybody think that, um, oh shit, wait, hold on. I'm buying this Dyson Sphere game because we're not doing anything for the next two days. This might be, this might be a scolding hot take. This might be a scolding hot take. Oh my God. Are you ready? Scolding, not scalding. Wait, is it? I thought it is. Is it scalding? No, it is scalding. It's not scalding. Shut the fuck up. It's a scalding hot take. I think this is actually going to be a hot take, okay? This is actually going to be a hot take, all right? I think that the music in Attack on Titan is not very good. I think it's actually quite bad. They have like the intro to the part of season one or whatever. Sounds good but most of the music is just like either loud choirs or wholly forgettable piano shit in the background that nobody fucking remembers. Like all of you can sing like the the opening, but past that there's like the there's like the one choir like da 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 or whatever and then like after that it, everything is ultra fucking forgettable. How the fuck does an anime like that not have any fucking character themes or anything? I don't know. Or maybe there are character themes and I just don't remember any of them because all of the music is so unbelievably fucking forgettable. I see the <laughs> we already watched Dude, this. I'm refreshing my line. Robin Hood and my money won't refresh me. Oh, what just happened? Did a nuclear bomb go off somewhere? I'm, well, I'm concerned. Yeah, this this is an opportunity. Okay, it's now at point six. Are you oh, oh, no. What is happening? So Why is this happening? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> This has got to be market manipulation. This is I, something. That I just put twenty thousand. I see the dip. <laughs> Dude, I'm refreshing my Robin Hood. Thoughts on the John Burke guy from last night? Uh, you know, I feel really bad. I started to lump him in with the Rob guy, and I don't think that was very fair to him. Um, the John guy might sound like he might actually be interesting to chat with. Uh, he does come across as like, this is a standard libertarian, which is a little bit annoying. But um, I don't think he was anywhere near as horrible as the Rob guy. Oh my God, that Rob guy is on another level of like horrible. Attack on Titan music is God tier and based.
here. Imagine getting knocked down by an ambulance. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? It's not. It's not. Wait, this is so fake. There's no fucking way that he could fucking survive this. This is one of the fakest things I've ever seen in my life. And if you actually slow down the camera and you look at it, it's a fucking puppet. Notice, and then notice the, notice the cut here. See, it's not actually him. It was fake the entire time. Someone died. Everything raised will go to the UK charity Crisis, which helps support homeless people. This is especially- Wait, no one cares about this. Hello? What? What's up? Nothing, have you beaten Sekiro yet? I beat it today. I didn't do the Demon of Hatred or whatever, but I did beat it. Why? I haven't done the Dark Souls bosses or anything. What are the Dark Souls uh, bosses? I haven't played Dark Souls ever. So the Dark Souls boss, I would say, would be, be like the Demon of Hatred. So you seem kind of cringe. Were there any other Dark Souls bosses? Uh, Dark Souls bosses are like bosses you have to fucking like dodge. I don't know. I can't think of any others. I thought the ape was a Dark Souls boss. Did you, um... Oh, okay. I felt like the second Al guy was so much harder than everything else in the game. Uh, yeah, I, I agreed with that, actually. I was said that the Al was the hardest fight in the game. Just because um, of the dumbass fucking powder bullshit was triggering the fuck out of me. He was my favorite fight of the game, though. This guy wasn't too bad. No, he, uh, well, he's yeah, the only thing I hate is having to redo forms is so fucking obnoxious. Uh, what do you mean redo forms? Like, do the whole fight over again? Yeah, like when there's a stage yeah. one and you've got to kill like some yeah. easy dumbass stage one. Yeah, I, I was I was getting really really triggered by fighting the first guy over and over and over again because he's just like he's just fucking annoying. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, it was a fun game. It was okay. I might play Dark Souls next. The Demon Souls like remake the isn't out, right? Uh, it is on PS4, right? Oh, is it the Demon Souls remake? I don't know about remake, but I know that Demon Souls is out on PS4 or PS5, whatever it is. Wait, is it? Oh, wait. Oh, what the fuck? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's on the PS5. It looks really cool. Why was there no... I thought... Shouldn't there have meant... Everybody more? was playing it. Were they? When? Were you... you mean, oh, maybe it was when you were doing your canvassing shit. Like, unironically. Oh, so maybe. So you just, like, kind of missed it. It was good. Or, it wasn't good, but it looked good. Wait, did you play it? No, no, no. It looked good. I haven't played it yet. I don't have a PS5. Are PS5s gettable now? Why don't you go try and buy one? I could. Oh, after uh, you beat whatever fucking game you're gonna play, I challenge you to Minecraft speedruns. No, God, fuck no. Oh, you're scared? Oh my God. Yep, I'm scared. Yeah, you scared. Open force and stream. Uh, yeah, I know. There was a clip earlier of him playing it. Okay, chill. Can't believe Nick tried to fuck us again in D&D. tried to just wipe us. <laughs> you guys triggered the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> oh, my get God. Week, It'll be fine. I just didn't have the right spells for that shit. Yo, I... What happened? I thought... So... I thought Nick's thing was a huge fucking swimming pool of water that would come out and wipe away everybody. But and it got one it person? Like a, it got one fucking person. Yeah. So. But to be fair, it did kill that person. Well, it downed them at least. At the very least, it downed them, yes. That's right. Next week, we're going to get fucking vengeance, and we're going to bring back the wizard person to the capital and have him squeal. It'll be sick. 
be like a triple win. That's I still think seven. that's super scary, but do you think it's so? your amulet. This it would just be so scary if you vengeance amuleted mm -hmm. them and then they were like in the center of the fucking. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we would wait. Oh my what? god, the first thing what we should do is um. Oh, 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 oh I'm is getting a, a brain, brain blast. I'm brain blasting. We need to go back to the stables where our horses were being holed. We can get a piece of hair out of the fucking um, brush or whatever. That plus like our intimate familiarity should mean we should be able to 100% scry on the horse that we lost, right? Uh, yeah, no, that's a good Yeah, that's so if we scry idea. on the lost horse, we can see where we'll that figure is. Figure out where they are. Yep, and then if they're in our lands, or like if it doesn't look like they're out over in fucking yeah. mystery or wherever the fuck, then you can vengeance them and then we'll find them. Then we can vengeance and get them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring them back. I think it's like a win-win-win, because we go, we get XP, we help out our land, mm -hmm. and we bring someone back um, who is intimately familiar with Scoria's shit. Mm -hmm. And we still have a lot of time, yeah. Yeah, we have... And I'm like really weeks. close to both of my levels too, so... It would be really I'm really good. close to the next level, and so is Nick. I think we're... Nick's 2,000 XP away, and you're 1,000, and I think I'm 300 from Fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll have double hits, which will be sick. What if for experience, what if we had a tournament arc? What if the McGarrys, in order to find a fourth fighter, decided to host a <laughs> tournament, a fighting tournament, to see the strongest we warrior bring in viewers and Wick Prime with Arantha their builds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're fucking sick. If you level up one more time, can you kill the blue dragon? Nick seems to think we can, and I think we I can think once we, we can get that shield. Oh, uh, maybe, yeah. I think once so we, we get have that to shield, practice it with three times, we need to choose like the weakest fucking dragon. Yeah, so we'll do it with the two red ones, the baby ones, and then we'll go... I still think killing them is really scary. It is kind of scary, yeah. I, I do agree with you on the... the Scoria might know shit then. Also, I think they might be a lot more defended now, because it seems like uh, Scoria's forces are near there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe they're a little bit more scary. Yeah, I think we're going to have, by the time we fight Scoria, I think we're going to have like six attacks around when we fight her. That'll be pretty fucking good. Wait, do you still play TFT? I do not. Oh, how was uh, Baldur's Gate? Did you enjoy it? Um, it was okay. It was super, super similar to the Divinity Original Sin thing. Yeah. They went really overboard on trying to make the game look good. Well, I say overboard, I mean it looked really good. Yeah, I'm excited for it to come out in three years. Do you expect you to be level 9 by the end? Yeah, I expect to be level 9 by the end. I think these dragons are going to have to give fucking massive XP, though. It's going to be very fucking funny when we kill a dragon and Neil's like oh you all get 20,000 XP and we're like Neil we got that for killing vampires are you doing uh I don't know what it's called fucking cyberpunk today no I'm probably gonna start it next Monday because okay. I want to set my computer shit up. Um, I downloaded this Dyson Sphere program, so I was going to chat with chat and then play this dumbass fucking game. What is Dyson Sphere? It's Factorio in space. <laughs> Based. It's got a 10 out of 10 on Steam. Wow. What the fuck? Dogs are just fucking... I don't know. Chat, Steve and I aren't going back to the rift anytime soon. What the fuck? 
Throw one up, Moodin. See if you, see if you got no, it. I don't want to. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Finish that sentence, motherfucker! I dare you. Wait, Yo, shout out something. to Shwarma Fury in the chat. I don't remember. <laughs> Just going through messages. All right. Um. You in the stock guy on speaking terms? <laughs> you don't think so. Me and who? The stock guy? You think you're on speaking terms anymore? What stalker guy? Stock. The stock. A stock guy? What are you talk? What the fuck are you talking about? The stock guy. Can you just use the name? What do you mean? Which guy? No, I can see your face. You're trolling. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. He probably hates me. How often do you change your bed sheets? Oh, you know, once a week, of course. No, every two weeks, yeah. No, that's disgusting. Once a week, for sure. Sorry. Yeah, every day. Oh, anime music video. Thank you, guys. That's just what I wanted to watch right now. Who linked this? Which pedophile did it? こいつは右。で、お前何なんだ。もしかして宇宙人なのか。宇宙人なんだそれは。これからはお互い協力し合い生きることだ。それ以外に道はない。最近さ、変わったね。僕も。Oh This is a harem anime chat. What is Parasite? This must be one of the best animes ever. I haven't heard anything good about this anime. You haven't heard anything good about Parasite? No. It's supposed to be a, a really good anime and a really good manga. What do you mean? Well, I don't get recommended this shit. Oh, well. Is it as good as the ping pong anime chat? Wait, what is this stuff about Twitch's embeds being fucked? I use an embed on my side. Has it had this purple screen it. of death shit? People have said yes, but I don't see it. I don't know why. Destiny, you are thinking about the movie. No, I'm not thinking about the movie, you dumb fuck. Parasite is a, or at least when I was looking at recommended animes, it was like a super ultra heavily recommended anime. Oh, it's because I don't have ads because I'm not partnered. <laughs> Ah, oh, hell yeah. Good job, guys. Get him to play something? Jesus fuck. Chat, should we ban Fenson? What do you oh, guys think? Shit. Introducing Hungry Jack's minis. Tasty little burgers that are so cute, they come in pairs. There's cheeseburger minis and rodeo minis. Oh, is that and White right Castle? Get a mini plus four fries and a small coke for just $4.95. Hungry Jack's makes it better. <laughs> very special little girls. Next on 60 Minutes. Jesus Christ. Can you... I don't know if you can laugh at that. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did you see the one? Oh man, what was the really bad? There was a news one where they were about to play something. It had to do with black issues or black rights or whatever, or something. It was like a black issue. And they had like a, it was like, we're gonna cut now to talk about this issue. And it was literally like a commercial for KFC or something. It was like really bad. Do you know what I'm talking about? Seems like a fucking onion sketch, though. Fuck. Oh. Speaks in terms of critique and criticism without speaking about specific policies, proactive policies. And that's what we need to hear. When you offer the African American community and offer the country more broadly uh, the depth. Uh, in terms of policy prescriptions of a single sheet of paper filled with a few talking points, that is insufficient. And so we need to hear very specifically what would he propose to do in Chicago mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, the challenges in Los Angeles or Cleveland or any other American city. And note here, the concerns of African Americans uh, are not uh, particularly unique in this regard. Americans more broadly concerned about, about gun violence. What we've heard from Mr. Trump uh, have been a series of tweets as opposed to a series of policy prescriptions. We're 70 days out from the election. We're waiting to hear from him serious proposals with respect to serious problems. As you know, Hillary Clinton says that Trump's campaign is appealing to a fringe in the Republican Party that is racist. I want to listen to part of her speech with you and then get your reaction. So here it is. Sure. I am the extra crispy colonel. And my extra crispy five dollar Philip is a tasty. Absolutely. We're going to play, but let me just talk where uh, apparently the, the word was from Hillary Clinton that a fringe element has effectively taken over the Republican Party. The paranoid fringe now calls itself alt right. There has always been a paranoid fringe in our politics steeped in racial resentment, but it's never happened. How did this guy? He almost lost it. He was close. He, laughed, yeah. he was close. Um, Absolutely. We're going to play, but let me just talk where uh, apparently the, the word was from Hillary Clinton that a fringe element has effectively taken over the Republican Party. The paranoid fringe now calls itself all. I don't know if this is real or if this is fake. This is an old one, but. Crazy Idaho woman is considered a medical miracle. Laura Esterman was struck by lightning nearly a month ago, and she was considered officially dead. Thankfully, CPR from her mom revived her heart, but she laid in a coma for two weeks, and then she defied all odds and woke up. Well, obviously... There was a problem with that tape. She doesn't really sound like that. She doesn't remember the accident, but the evidence is clear. I am so sorry. Laura's learning to walk again after the lightning burned her legs. And we'll have more on that story and hopefully get that tape fixed for you. Jesus. Now this just in, police uh, officers in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, were asking people to be on the lookout for a man who robbed a store. And I think... Yeah, I think we do, we do have his description. Can we take that? Let's take his description. This has to be fake. There's no way this is real. Okay. This is the guy they're, uh, they, want, they wanted people in Pennsylvania to be out on the lookout for. He's got, uh, he's got a nose and some hair that goes like that, and he was, uh, he was wearing a hat at the time of this particular... This is fake as ...particular fuck. crime. He's got kind of a... Get this shit out of here. You see Westgate Band again? Yeah, he was pushing it. Nearly. Now back out here live. The goal is it. to get... Oh, no. Not this one. The runway back open late Sunday with about 100 flights a day canceled because of this runway closure. The reopening can't come soon enough. Live here at SFO, Claudine Wong, KTVU, Channel 2 News. All right. Thank you, uh, Claudine. We have new information out this noontime concerning one of the teenagers who died in that crash landing. San Francisco police are now confirming 16-year-old Ye Mong Yuan was hit by a fire truck. Police say she was on the ground and covered in the foam crews had sprayed to douse the fire aboard the plane. Coroner is still trying to determine the cause of death and whether she was already dead. 
when the truck hit her. We have new information now also on the plane crash. KTVU has just learned the names of the four pilots who were on board the flight. They are Captain Sum Ting Wong, We Too Lo, Ho Li Fook, and Bang Ding Ao. And the NTSB has confirmed these are the How? names of the pilots on board flight 214 when it crashed. We How did nobody catch this? To determine exactly what roles each of them played during the landing on Saturday. Investigators will be using a lot of high... So I'm not, this is why diversity might be good now sometimes. This just in, police, uh... Wait, hold on. Is this... Somebody said... ...to the sketch, no doubt. So Almost a point. Stands about five feet four inches tall. There it is. Get a good look for yourself. Oh, and now I'm getting word that police actually caught this guy. Thanks to the sketch, no doubt. So, here's a picture of the real guy next to the sketch that led to his arrest. Where's the pointy chin? It's uncanny, Lisa. <laughs> uh, the, the guy uh, on the left is now charged with two counts of theft. Is being held in the Lancaster... Sketch. This is... That was actually... The meme. It has to be a meme. It's a pretty good sketch. Right after the break, we're going to interview Eric Weihenmayer, who climbed the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. But he's gay. I mean, he's gay. Excuse me. He's blind. So we'll hear about that coming okay. up. Okay. As we head to the break, a look at the... Wait, how did she fuck that up twice? He's gay. I mean, he's gay. Excuse me. He's blind. So we'll hear about that coming okay. up. Oh, my God. Do you remember there was like a good morning show where the guy starts going off into some fucking crazy weird shit? Um, oh God, I don't remember if it was a good, if it was like a morning show. Was it on Fox? Fuck, where is the clip? It's been several months since Rachel Soda, and we found church. Now, this is South Europe went to school. Really fascinating. If you like what you. Wait, did they get this clip taken down? Oh, no. Fuck, okay, describe it. They start talking about like some DNA thing or whatever, and one of the anchors just goes off of some weird shit where he's like, oh yeah, that's because like Swedish people or whatever don't believe in race mixing like we do in America. Their genes are pure or something. He just like, it was like some very fucking weird tangent. It was like, what are you? Oh wait, I think somebody linked it, thank you. Speaking of spouses, yes. did you know that being married is healthy for you, at least when it comes to Alzheimer's disease or dementia or things like that? This uh, group did a study. They first interviewed uh, middle-aged people around 50 in the 1970s and 1980s, and then they came back to look at them 21 years later. Those who were married at that point in their life, in the midpoint of their life, ended up having much fewer cases of Alzheimer's than those who are divorced, yeah. single, widowed, etc. I'm, I'm kind of conflicted on this one, because on one hand, I think my wife keeps me sane because I, I lose everything and she helps me find it, but yeah, I leave cabinets too, huh? open. Did, 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 did your husband leave cabinets open? <laughs> that I first leave, thing you said. <laughs> losing things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But, but I leave these cabinets open all over the house. I come back in the room and they're closed, and so sometimes I think I'm losing my marbles a little bit. Then I realize she just likes to come behind me and She's just close things you, and put Mr. things Riggs. away. I just, I'm just amazed that they thought about doing this study in this, uh, by, they, by interviewing people in the 1970s and the 1980s. Little the average age is 50, and they see that they keep it together. I find this, uh, I find this somewhat... 
Go different, ahead. leave it to the Finns and Swedes to come up with something. <laughs> that a little Don't look at me, Val. I, because that, that's a, we are, we're, we're a, we're, we keep marrying other species and other ethnics and, and are other. Are you sure you're not uh, suffering from right, some of the, right. um, I mean, the, the causes Swedes, of dementia right see, now? See, the problem is getting the, Swede, the Swedes have uh, pure genes. Because okay. they marry other Swedes, because that's the rule. Finland, <laughs> Finns marry other Finns, so they have a pure society. In America, we marry everybody. Okay. So we marry Italians and so Irish. So this study does not apply. Does not apply to us. Huh. You Amazing are a scientist. Amazing deduction, kill me. Scientist. Right. That's a, those are, those Dr. Are, kill me. That's how is. I feel. He's going full JonTron out of nowhere. Uh, right. Thank you for filling us in on that, right. Let's uh, see Italian Irishman. Jesus. Here's like an actual customer out here. Uh, oh, I supposedly this kid is like the, the guy's son or whatever. So this is kind of like a staged meme, I guess, but... Here's like an actual customer out here. Uh, what's uh, what's the best kind of firework to buy? Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? Where are your parents? Kids sketchy. Back to you guys. You gotta look out for feral children this time. Feral. <laughs> they come out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like weather boy. What's Very going good. on? Yeah. What? I don't. That was a little uncalled for, but you know, you're supposed to respect your elders. to say their final goodbyes to this fallen Louisville police officer, D.D. Mega Doo Doo, I'm sorry, Mangudu. This is a meme. That's got to be fake. That's got to be fake. No, I think... No, you think what, Mooton? No, I think that one's real. No. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to ask this question. Um, I'm quite surprised it hasn't came up during the debate so far, considering it's about war. Um, does the panel think that a person has the right to kill another person? Well, uh, thank you for giving me probably the most difficult question of the night. Uh, and as a difficult question, does someone have the right to take another person's life? Well, the answer to that differs greatly depending on the situation. For example, if you were in a, a kill or be killed situation, the answer is very different than if you were a you know a serial killer. You know, does someone have the right to to kill another person? Now, a few things Excuse you have me, to sorry, sorry, sorry. I suppose I'm not making myself clear here. I'm only asking for a yes or no. Sure, sure. I totally understand, but it is a difficult question and, and it requires an answer. That uh, is... Yeah, just a yes or no will suffice. Um... Yeah, like I said, I completely understand, but it isn't as simple as a yes or no. You know what you have to answer? How simple do you want it? Yes or no? Well, to, to answer your question, if I may be allowed to answer your question, you're asking me to, you know, does someone have the right to take another person's life? And I'm trying to say, well, it, you know, the answer, it, it differs greatly depending on... No, no, depending no, 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 yes or no, yes or no, yes or no, you can't even, can't even answer yes or no. Sure, I, can, I completely understand, but it isn't as simple I'm as just that. asking for a yes or no. Do you think someone has a right to kill another person? Yes or no? <laughs> yes or no? Look, I'm trying to answer you, I'm trying, but you're asking me to give a yes or no. It's very difficult to give a yes or no to that type of question. How is it a difficult question? I'm only asking for a yes or no. I, I know, but it isn't as simple. It's, the answer can't be as black and no, white no, no. as... Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or okay, no? Okay, 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 okay. If you were in the circumstances... Yes or no? <laughs> yes or no? Yes, you can't even answer yes or no. Yes or no? <laughs> what, what do you want me to say? Do you want me to just say yes? Do you hmm? want me to just, huh? just say... Hmm? What? Hmm? Hmm? Huh? Show you your wink. <sighs> Topper, eh? Well, okay, no more YouTube videos. Linkers, out. Like me. You could also do the last ending in a second. get a safe file, then choose to help Owl on the first time we do the assure ending. Um, you know, we could do that. Or... Or we could fuck your mom! <laughs> what the... Fuck! Sorry. Melina! Stop being so loud. Yeah, bitch.
Nice. Dude, my cat wants food, but it's not eight o'clock. Are you being on the schedule for a reason? Uh, yeah. These motherfuckers need schedules. Why? Do they uh, lose discipline? Oh, the Doug Defender has logged in. Why? Why bring that up? Yeah, why bring that up, Stephen? Yeah, why because you bring I it up, because Luke. Because... He wanted to farm some of Mega Wolves, like, and don't let it get to uh... you. He doesn't farm many of those. <laughs> Isn't that true, Chet? You have been on the table like 15 times, and I put you down each time, and you just keep coming back. Do you know how to actually get the cat to stop going on the table? Do you want the secret? Yeah, what's the secret? You just have to choke it a little bit when it gets on the table. <laughs> just yeah, wrap your hand around it. <laughs> stop. You're going to get yourself banned. <laughs> in a video game? He was kidding. He was kidding. You were talking about your cat in Rust, weren't you? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Wait, what are you talking about? Who suggested the squirt bottle? Dan? Or is it somebody else? Uh, I don't know if anybody suggested that. Or somebody suggested like a can of compressed air. Oh, compressed air. Yeah, I've heard that works. There's a thing you can get that's an automated uh, compressed air canister that just yeah, It's like fucking $40, to... though. I'll just spray it myself. I thought the funniest <laughs> thing was um, Aslan got to the point to where... Because I would use a squirt bottle because I don't want to get up and make him get off the counter. He would jump on the counter, and then when you'd raise the squirt bottle to squirt him... He'd jump off? No. He would just oh. hunker down and stare at you. And you had to <laughs> squirt him like four, five, six, seven, and he would just sit there and take it and like glare at you. And then eventually you'd have to get up and move him. Like such an asshole. Okay, dude. <laughs> Why the fuck are my two options like fucking Chinese and English? Why? I mean, that's the future, man. Yeah, true. Mo the investment's worth it because if you're not around to constantly do it, it you're not. It's not like training them, so that will well, kind of train them to just. I'm gonna have to buy multiple ones because I'm gonna need one on my desk and one in my kitchen in two different spots. Cause it's not that fucking big, right? Yeah, it's up to you. I'm really gonna spend that hundred dollars? Wait, holy shit. Melina asked me this question and I, I didn't have an answer. <laughs> Why is it colder in higher elevations? Does anybody know the answer to this? I don't know the answer, but I thought it was because the air was thinner. I don't fucking know. Is the air like so significantly thinner at like 7,000 feet elevation? as opposed to 2,000 feet elevation, that it's gonna cause like a 40 degree difference in temperature and Fahrenheit? Yes. <clears throat> the Earth's atmosphere pressure, which is related to the number of molecules per... At 8,000 feet in elevation, water boils at only 92 C. Oh, okay, I guess it is significant, jeez. Yes. What sex cats did you get? A male and a female. Neutered in spade. Does the breeder require you to do that? It's not a breeder, it's a shelter. Oh. Wait, you got two Sphinx from a shelter? They're not Sphinx, they're just normal cats. Oh. Why did I think you got Sphinx? Wait, did you show them the pedigree cats? you got yet? Shut up. There's no pedigree. They're mutts. Wait, what do you mean? The person, you said that the person that sold it to you said that they pedigreed all their cats that they had going out. No, there's no pedigree, Steven. They're just fucking cats. Their names are Neko, Mamushi, and Sensen. Ooh, cultural appropriation. Not a good look, man. <clears throat> Problem, shoulders. What? Wait, does Nick have perms in my Discord? Uh, I 
I think he. I actually have no idea. I don't know one way or the other. I'll fucking. Lose I thought him. he's been in here before. I can look. Hold on. Okay. Is there a way I can turn down the volume? Yes. Yeah, he does. He does. What is this game? Trust uh, me, you don't want to know. It's futuristic Factorio. Oh. Milo! What? Just the Illini sound. Apparently your donos are muted, Steven. Okay, catching up on him. Good luck. You gnome fuck! I mean, who wins? Exactly. Any time. Anyeka Numeren, five dollars. Let's try this again. CT 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 is my new fav noise. CT 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 bone meme CT 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 Oh, this is a really good one. Oh, this is a really good one. Your take is shit. Peppy mods. Cuss no tears. Ben MC, five pounds. No anime has good music, well, no anime had good anything actually, weebs out. You may find it's different from our home life. Should Nuclear take bleach as much as it's shown in trash as the best I'm fucking Austin anime. We'll bonus meme, fuck bonus memes. Who wins King Kong or Godzilla? Oh my god, am I winning? Wait, am I supposed to go somewhere? Everything here this is like is fucking. As this doesn't look like Factor at all. It is. No man's guy. We'll explore this cluster step Dark it actually looks fun. By using Wrong. Resources here to Wrong. Construct the Dyson Sphere to provide None energy into the center brain to maintain homeland, starting from scratch. Halo Two. I have chosen a designated planet for you to start the mission, which has necessary. Because you separated her from her father too early. Now please drive the space capsule to the planet. How do I do that? Scott Bradley, four dollars. Scott Bradley is a cents. warrior. Moot on you are my favorite small streamer. Keep it up, you'll make it someday. You gnome fuck! Am I supposed to crash into this planet? What if I miss? Now you are about to reach the destiny. Why are you a mega woman? Hey Destiny, I got a great idea. How about you come canvas in Oklahoma? Just under 40 are registered Democrats. We voted yes for state question 788,802 and we win all but one special election in 2017. Oh my god, this is No Man's Sky. What the fuck? <clears throat> okay. Oh wait, Scott Bradley said I'm his favorite streamer. Thanks, Scott. This is Icarus. A lightweight industrial mecca. You gnome fuck! You I was here for the first day of this autistic game, game Angel Thump. Bonus meme. Blobstinny. Alright, I gotta go feed the cats. Good luck with this new. Alright, good luck with the pedigree. Stars and There's no pedigree. If I say I love you, will you say it back? Sure. Bye, I love you. Stay safe. Now try to recycle the space capsule. Right click on it to recycle. Okay, I don't need. This fucking racy in the corner telling me what to do. You can use the same operation to collect resources, such as trees, gravel, etc. In the meantime, hold down shift and right click to give a series of commands. You receive several items after recycling the space capsule. Click the inventory button in the lower right corner of the screen to open the cabin to view them. I already am a god at all of these games. Why does this guy think I need him to walk me through it? 
Right click to split items. Hold a shift to pick up. You can hold down mouse middle button drag to rotate the angle of view or slide the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Hold shift to pick up. It's not working. You oh, can no fuck! Oh. Hello. Hello. Yet you have not unlocked the construction menu, which will be done automatically when complete any technology research. Click the technology tree button at the bottom right of the screen to open the technology tree. Dude! Activate a research. Shut up! What is the replicator? What in the f Basic raw material used to produce various iron components. Iron ore. Well, what is this shit? This is goddamn copper. How do I access my inventory? E. Is Megatron the final boss in the game? Ask your mom. Oh my god, what was that menu? Hold on, chill. Alright, okay, can I put this? Dude, look at my goddamn robot. I'm a fucking massive god. Fucking Voltron. Fucking Megatron over here. I'm just gonna leave this shit on overnight. Oh, wait. What's the name of this game? Dyson Sphere Program? dude i'm already beating this whole game okay how do we turn this shit off Ben MC, five pounds. You're still tiny in real life, don't get too excited. Uh, that's not what your mom said. <laughs> Steven, if you're going to make us watch this shit, at least put on a background video. Oh yeah, we can watch that Contra video or something. Hold on. Let me just make sure I know what I'm doing. Technology. SCV ready crops Dini in the rear with the gear. Hey Destiny, it's me Brad Scottly Scott Bradley's evil rival. Fuck you Scott, I D beat the shit out of you and DGG Twitch chat just one. What about the philosophy TV? I, that person is a fucking moron. I could give a fuck less about what they have to say about literally anything, so no, I'm good. Um... Um... Keeping that in mind, I would say my favorite player from the past is probably myself, like three, four years ago. Uh, and then... So in what kind of Magnus aged 23? Is that on the app? Yeah, 23. Yeah. Hour and thirty minutes. Bubble, oh bubble, toil and trouble. Fire burning cauldron bubble. Something wicked this way comes. Magical deeds are afoot, dear readers. Magical darkness. A 
must. <laughs> Joanne, I want to talk to you, Joanne. What is it about Joanne's? I can't catch a break from these people. So, now that 2020 is finally over, I think we can let the record conclusively show that it was a year homest is bad. And on top of everything else that was going on, truly the last thing we needed was the author of Harry Potter coming forward to announce there's two things she can't stand, bigotry and the transgenders. Ow. Elderberry wand. You can no Turgid. I'm here for my destiny will call you buddy. Please deliver. Okay, buddy. Ice Dragon, Lumos. Can we afford spells? Is that in the budget? Expecto Patreon. So you've probably heard by now about Joanne Rowling's transphobic tweets. Unless you've been living under a rock, in which case, get back under that rock, sweetie. There is nothing good going on up here. It's not worth it. Or maybe you heard that all Joanne did was say biological sex is real. And now crazy gender ideologues and trans activists are trying to silence her. This is cancel culture gone too far. This is a witch hunt. Celebrities are under attack. This is the new Salem. This is Orwell's nightmare. This is a painful topic for me all around because as a transgender woman, I am honestly hurt by a lot of the things Joanne has said in the last year. But I also know what it's like to be the target of a Twitter mob. And I realize that to most people, complaining about being canceled, it sounds incredibly whiny and self-absorbed. Like you'd especially think that rich and famous people like JK- Hold on, I need to make this guy shut the fuck up. How do I turn off the tutorial guy? So that he doesn't interrupt us. Everybody start their timers five minutes till he asks Chad what to do. What? I'm literally, what are you talking about? I'm the literal person that plays these games more than anyone else in chat. Scott Bradley, $7. Congrats on beating Sekiro, buddy. Bonus meme. What was I saying? I think it had something to do with a bonus meme. Hum. Was it? Pick it up from the inventory. Any yumpers? selected on gathering of construction menu to build it. Magni Thor Bjornsson, 750 Oh yeah, I have to mute Donna, sorry. Asking for a tutorial on how to turn off the tutorial. Okay. Rolling would be above staying up alone at night reading mean things people say online. But you think wrong. See, you underestimate the fundamental sadness of the human condition, and no amount of fame and money is gonna fix that. You know, fame alienates you from other people. It dehumanizes you in the eyes of the masses, which can actually make you feel more alone, even when people are worshiping you as a goddess. Never mind how it feels when they're hunting you as a witch. The truth is that unless you've personally experienced infamy, being shamed and shunned on a scale the human brain can't really even understand, then you just don't know what it's like, and you don't know how you'd react in that situation. But Joanne knows, and when I see her getting trashed on the TL, there's a traumatized part of me that's unironically triggered by watching people cancel her, and I want to protect. My nurturing and compassionate nature sometimes gets the best of me. But there's also a part of me that you wants to join the trashing. How could you- machine for covering more veins. I can't make him shut the fuck up. There's no way to turn him off, is there? Game play. Well. The more veins covered, the faster the ores will be gathered. If you want to ignore grid snapping, Try holding down the shift key. What you do this to me, Joanne? I did not come out of the cupboard under the stairs for this. So what I want to do in this video is take Joanne's pain seriously and treat her like a complex human being, while also being critical of the things she said about the transgender question. And I also want to explore where the Twitter mob is coming from, because they're in pain too. And don't they also deserve our understanding? So without further ado, let's go in with a Mac 224 tapered blending brush and see if we can find the truth. Switch and flick. 
need to keep it within the power coverage area and supply it with power facilities in order to maintain its normal works. So is the author of Harry Potter a bigot? Well, she certainly seems invested in the belief that she is not a bigot. What vice do you most despise? Bigotry. In looking over Joanne's tweets, I don't think the average person would see any problem with what she's said. However, I mean, not to be condescending, Sorry. but I feel like the you know, average person's the understanding power. of transgender no, is still a little bit... I don't really get the whole trans thing. Like, why can't you just be a feminine man? I don't know, Amber. Why don't you be a feminine man? Who knows, you could be missing out. So we're gonna go through the things that Joanna said about trans people, but I don't want this to be just a drama video Tesla or a video Tower. saying, cancel Harry Potter, drag her. Like I wanna try to do something a little bit more meaningful than that. So I'm gonna use JK Rowe as a case study in bigotry and see if we can maybe learn something about what bigotry is, how does it work, and how do otherwise good people get drawn into it? And if we can make any progress on any of those questions, well, for once I think I'll actually have earned my Patreon budget. So keeping in mind our very serious and educational purpose, let's spill some shade, throw some tea. So this all started in 2018 when Joanne liked a transphobic tweet and followed an anti-trans account. Now, in the interest of giving Joanne as much benefit of the doubt as I can, I'm not gonna admit this as evidence because I don't wanna do guilt by association. Strike it from the record. That was fun. I like hammering things. The real story begins in December 2019 when Joanne tweeted the hashtag I stand with Maya, referencing Maya Forstadter. Maya Forstadter is an English consultant who lost her contract with the nonprofit she worked for after she did transphobic tweets. And Maya has been kind enough to compile them all for us in her thread titled Allegedly Transphobic Tweets. Well, let's take a look and see how alleged they are. Yes, I think that male people are not women. I don't think that being a woman or female is a matter of identity or womanly feelings. It is biology. Another says, Some people believe that a person with a penis can be a woman. Some, a majority, don't. Neither group should be discriminated against in everyday life, but in situations involving taking your clothes off with strangers, integration of the two groups is not possible. And there's a cartoon of a hairy-armed, hairy-legged, burgeoning trans woman flashing her penis at cis women and saying, It's all right. It's a woman's penis. So we're looking at a standard transphobia starter pack. Everyone born female is a woman. Everyone born male is a man. Trans women are predators who prey on women. And I'm being oppressed for speaking the truth. Is this what you want, Joanne? You want to put the sorting hat on humanity and divide us up into little houses? Well, what if I'm a Gryffindor trapped in a Hufflepuff's body? What then, Joanne? What then? Okay, so why does Joanne stand with Maya? Well, if the tweet simply said, I stand with Maya without further explanation, you could give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she just doesn't think people should lose their job for having bigoted opinions, even if she disagrees with those opinions. But if that's all she was saying, I wouldn't be making this video, would I? The full tweet reads, Dress however you please. Call yourself whatever you like. Sleep with any consenting adult who will have you. Live your best life in peace and security but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. Hashtag I stand with Maya, hashtag this is not a drill. Now I'm guessing that to most people, this tweet at first glance doesn't seem transphobic. It might even seem supportive of trans people since as she said we're allowed to dress however we want and call ourselves whatever crazy thing. But there's a couple things about this that don't sit right with me. First is the phrase force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. Sex is real is a pretty dishonest summary of what Maya said in her discrimination complaint, namely, I believe that it is impossible to change your sex or to lose your sex. Girls grow up to be women, boys grow up to be men. No change of clothes or hairstyle, no plastic surgery, no accident or illness, no course of hormones, no force of will or social conditioning, no declaration can turn a female person into a male or a male person into a female. If Joanne had said Maya had been fired for claiming that a person born male could never be a woman and a person born female could never be a man, 
that would have been more accurate, but it would also sound contentious and obviously anti-trans. Sex is real is a euphemism designed to present Maya Forstadter's transphobia as a simple statement of fact, basic common sense, which only crazy activists and ideologues would oppose. Transphobes love to play this game where they pretend that trans people just don't understand basic biology. That's our problem. As if I didn't start taking female hormones because I'm acutely aware that my body is not the same as a cis woman's body. That sex is real. You will never be a woman, Nathan. Every cell in your body is male and has a Y chromosome. Really? That's crazy. How'd you learn so much about science? You know, I don't really feel the need to have a second X chromosome. I get by with one. I make it work. I actually like the Y chromosome. I think it's a little more dainty, you know? It's uh, a little softer, a little more petite. The X chromosome has a lot of extra appendages, don't you think? And I don't need any more of those, thanks. No trans person thinks it's possible to change chromosomal sex, and to pretend otherwise is to argue in bad faith. When we say that someone is a trans man or a trans woman, we're talking about psychological and social identity. So when transphobes say sex is real, they're not actually contradicting anything most trans people believe, except by implication. When transphobes say sex is real, what they mean is only chromosomal sex matters. They mean they don't believe in transgender identity, which they trivialize, calling it dressing up, fashion choices, whatever you want to call yourself. When Joanne says, dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, she's belittling what it actually means to be trans, reducing it to a change of name and costume. It's similar to the language of casual homophobes. For example, the homophobic equivalent of Joanne's tweet might read, choose whatever lifestyle you want. Indulge your sexual preferences with any consenting adult in the privacy of your own bedroom. But force Christians out of their jobs for stating that marriage is between a man and a woman? Hashtag I stand with Kim Davis. A penis and a sausage cannot make a baby. Checkmate the gays, it's just science. Homophobes trivialize what it is to be gay. They refer to it as sexual preferences, or a lifestyle, or what you do in the bedroom. We don't tell straight people to keep their lifestyle in the bedroom, but we should. Clearly, the straights are not oppressed enough. Being gay is more than what you do in the bedroom. It's also who you love. It's part of who you are, part of your humanity, and that's something that stays with you outside of the bedroom. So to dismiss it as sexual preferences is homophobic. Likewise, being trans is not a costume I take off at the end of the night. It's not a fashion choice. It's not a pet name some people call me. It's part of who I am as a person, you know? It's part of my humanity. And Do you really agree with this analysis? Wait, what's been said so f Wait, what? Everything so far sounds pretty basic. What's been said so far that's disagreeable? It's also the kind of body I have, a transsexual body. So telling trans people to dress however you want is not really a supportive statement. Unless you're supporting YouTubers wearing Louis Vuitton socks in their videos apologizing for being racist, which is not valid and is in fact a hate crime. YouTubers are constantly dragging each other because we see ourselves reflected in the other and we can't stand the sight of it. So after the Maya Forest Hour tweet, Joanne was silent about trans people for six months, but she took up the cause again in June 2019, to first to complain about the use of the phrase people who menstruate in the title of an article trying to include trans men and non-binary people in a discussion of period poverty. That same night, presumably in response to her Twitter mentions being lit up by leftist teenagers who think Stalin did nothing wrong, but Rachel Maddow is a war criminal, Joanne pleaded with <laughs> again repeating this slogan and that sex is real, adding, It isn't hate to speak the truth. And concluding with another backhanded statement of support. I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I there's no way to turn off the tutorial guy, okay? Jesus. If you were discriminated against in the base. Her Twitter mentions being lit up by leftist teenagers who think Stalin did nothing wrong, but Rachel Maddow is a war criminal. Joanne tweeted a thread, again repeating the slogan that sex is real, adding, It isn't hate to speak the truth. 
and concluding with another backhanded statement of support. I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. <laughs> if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans? If? Widespread discrimination against trans people is well documented. In fact, the same week as Joanne's tweet, the Trump administration removed non-discrimination protections for trans people in healthcare and health insurance. So are you marching with us or not, Joanne? There's a lot of stuff in these tweets that might seem innocent enough to the average person, but which to someone who understands bigotry against trans people raises a red flag. Bigotry always has a history, and in order to understand bigotry, you have to learn that history. Prejudices are made up of tropes, stereotypes, narratives, arguments, which we aren't born knowing, we have to learn them. No one is born thinking that the gays are destroying the family, or that women are naturally subservient, or that the Jews are trying to control the world economy. So if you aren't familiar with these prejudices, you might not notice anything wrong with them. He never said he hated the Jews. He is simply concerned about the overrepresentation of Jewish people in media and banking. <laughs> but if you're aware, woke if you will, then it kind of rings alarm bells when you hear someone repeating bigoted talking points. When I see Joanne tweeting about how trans people think sex isn't real, and they're erasing same-sex attraction, and they're silencing women, alarm bells are ringing because I recognize these as familiar transphobic talking points, specifically TERF talking points. Uh -oh. TERF means trans exclusionary radical feminism. God, are we still talking about this? I promise, this is the last time. So TERFism is a, it's a hate movement that disguises transphobia as feminism. Bigotry has a history. The foundational TERF text is feminist professor Janice Raymond's 1979 book, The Transsexual Empire, The Making of the Sh Male, in which Raymond argues that, quote, All transsexuals rape women's bodies by reducing the real female form to an artifact, appropriating this body for themselves. She claims that trans women are agents of the patriarchy who, quote, merely cut off the most obvious means of invading women. This book set the general tone for feminist transphobia, and I bring this up because I want to give you a sense of how this kind of transphobe talks when they're not afraid of Twitter backlash. Typical male narcissist, Nathan manipulates his cultish audience into thinking he's the victim of the big old meanie turfs. If you keep calling me Nathan, I'm gonna call you Nigel. Cheerio, old chap. <laughs> or whatever you people say. Here's the thing, Nigella. Bigotry can be mean, yes, and it usually is when bigots think they can get away with it. But it's vital to recognize that being mean is not the essence of bigotry. Bigotry can be hateful, yes, but specifically, bigotry is hate that poses a political threat to the target group. The fundamental problem with TERFs is not that they're mean, it's that they're politically reactionary. They want to reverse the progress of trans liberation. In the final chapter of The Transsexual Empire, Raymond lays out her solution to the trans question, quote, The problem of transsexualism would be best served by morally mandating it out of existence. I believe that the elimination of transsexualism is not best achieved by legislation prohibiting transsexual treatment and surgery, but rather by legislation that limits it. I would favor restricting the number of hospitals and centers where transsexual surgery could be performed. The kind of counseling to pass successfully as masculine or feminine that now reigns in gender identity clinics only reinforces the problem of transsexualism. She goes on to argue for alternative feminist consciousness raising therapies, admitting, I am not so naive as to think that they will make transsexualism disappear overnight, but they would at least pose the existence of a real alternative to be explored and tried. So like homophobes, TERFs have historically advocated a kind of conversion therapy aimed at eliminating transsexual identity and behavior. And like the anti-abortion movement, they recognize it's not yet politically practical to completely make illegal a medical procedure they don't like. So they settle for making it as difficult as possible to get one. 
In 1980, Janice Raymond authored a report to the Department of Health and Human Services repeating her arguments against transsexualism, which was cited in the 1981 decision that Medicare would not cover transition-related health care. That decision wasn't overturned until 2014. So there's real political consequences to bigotry. It's not just a matter of being mean. Polite bigotry can be just as dangerous. Unlike Janice Raymond, J.K. Rowling seems totally convinced and very intent on convincing all of us that she's a totally progressive LGBT ally who loves and supports trans people, while in the same breath, spewing transphobic arguments. She's constantly saying things like, I know and love trans people, but I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. At the same time, none of the gender critical women I've talked to hates trans people, on the contrary, many of them became interested in this issue in the first place out of concern for trans youth. A lot of people have a hard time noticing this kind of bigotry, and I think one reason for that is that our common understanding of bigotry is very narrow. People think of bigotry as like judging a group instead of an individual, which is of course a horrible thing to do. I don't care for the English. They're sick, sick people. Or people think of bigotry as hate something inhuman and monstrous. So when people hear the word bigot, they're expecting someone like Lord Voldemort, some uber Nazi who despises love and friendship. But the problem with the Nazis was not that they hated love and friendship, right? They believed they were defending German blood and soil against Marxist Bolshevism and Jewish contamination. And what were we supposed to do? Not defend the Reich against Polish atrocities? That's how a Nazi actually thinks, right? It's not that they hate friendship. No, they have their own internal logic of victimization and so- Right, real quick. Does this energy circuit help with passive production of power? Because it says it increases the recovery speed of mecha core energy, but it seems like it recovers some without anything. No? Okay. Is there no way to increase your passive generation? All right, sorry. Self-righteousness. So when you reduce bigotry to a caricature of pure hatred, you obscure that bigotry is a deeply human problem. You know, sometimes people criticize me for empathizing Makes with bigots, running, but I believe that understanding bigots is the best defense against becoming one yourself. Because when you dehumanize the villains, you become unable to recognize the villain within. How is she though? She needs a hot toddy is what she needs. Metal straw because I love the environment. The, I've talked about this like a ton in the past. One of the most annoying things that people do is they dehumanize other people. And the problem when you dehumanize people is um, you, you lose the ability to see that people can be bad and you just attribute all of it to like some inhuman, like unfathomable thing that's like so far removed from anything that could ever happen to you. Um, so for instance, like the, well, God won the argument, I guess. The, the go-to was like Nazis, right? Every Nazi was a horrible, evil person. Like this is a horrible, evil thing. And it's like, well, hold on. No, these are all human beings. Like, I think it is better for us to understand what it takes for people to become something rather than to pretend that like only monsters can do a particular thing. Um, it's a really stupid, it's one of the few things semi-politically that Jordan Peterson talks about that he's completely correct on. Um, yeah, dehumanization is something that a lot of people do to everybody for dumb reasons. I'm so good. I'm really fucking good. The idea that bigotry is simply hate, I call the Westboro Baptist Church theory of bigotry. It's the idea that bigots are people who outright say, we hate you, God hates you, and we're all marching around with signs about how much we hate you. Like the bad guys in that Taylor Swift video. <sighs> Taylor Swift. Everyone wants to be a gay icon now. Well, I don't. I don't want to be a gay- Wait, is Taylor Swift gay? Is that a thing I missed? Gay icon, I'm just stuck with you people. Oh, okay. Just kidding. Shade never made anybody less gay. Uh, this isn't Shade, Taylor. Shade is JK Rowling telling trans people, sleep with any consenting adult who will have you. And bigotry is a lot more complicated than just hate. And the video for You Need to Calm Down is just so emblematic of this misconception. Taylor takes the subject of homophobia and turns it into yet another song about haters. But in the real world, Backwoods hillbillies stomping around with misspelled signs are not really the problem. The most dangerous bigots are highly sophisticated and powerful people 
And yeah, there are still blatant homophobes who say it's an abomination. These perverts are spreading AIDS. They're destroying the family. They're recruiting children. But these days, it's much more common to hear. Of course, I love gay people. Some of my best friends struggle with same-sex attraction. But it's not homophobic to not want LGBT ideology promoted in schools to children as young as three years old. Why, it's a full-on assault on religious liberty. I make a convincing homophobe, don't I? There's really two different styles of bigotry. They express the same prejudice, but they're very different in tone. I'll call the two styles direct bigotry and indirect bigotry. Direct bigotry is openly contemptuous. It's a bigotry manifested in slurs and outright discrimination and demonizing the target group and calls for shunning, subordination, or even violence. Whereas indirect bigotry manifests as concern or debate about a host of proxy issues. It's often defensive in tone rather than offensive. Frequently the claim is that a once needed liberation movement has now gone too far, but it's now the activists who are the new oppressors, who are disturbing law and order with violent and chaotic protests, who are victimizing and silencing innocent people by calling them bigots, who are infiltrating the media and replacing good old fashioned entertainment with politically correct propaganda. And of course, Ordinary people are too intimidated to speak out against it because cancel culture is out of control and free speech is under attack. The direct bigot is always frothing at the mouth, ranting and raving about predators, perverts, invaders, rapists, brutish animals, vermin, rats, roaches, contagions. Whereas, the indirect bigot is always defending something, always a knight in shining armor, defending women, defending the children, defending marriage, defending freedom, defending the family, defending our values, defending common sense, defending tradition, defending civilization itself, defending God. He's all powerful, but he could really use your help, Mary. I think a lot of people take storage, a borderline heroic view of themselves. And indirect bigotry flatters that self-image. Indirect bigotry often cargo. replaces the actual people it targets with some big abstract concept. Instead of Jewish people, they claim to be against Zionist occupied government. Instead of women, they claim to hate feminazis or the friend zone. Gay people are depersonified as the gay agenda. Trans people become transgenderism, gender ideology, trans activists. What they're really against is equality, but they don't say that. In fact, they may not even think it. One of the biggest problems with people that are, she might get into this, the people that do kind of like the stealth bigotry or whatever, is it's hard to tell if somebody is knowingly doing it versus if somebody is like, just that's just the way they are and they don't necessarily mean anything by it. Um, that was one of the issues that I had last night when I was talking to Rob and John. I don't think that John, I don't think the John guy, I don't know, but I don't think he's like a crazy conspiratorial thinks Democrats are trying to like murder people. The Rob guy, however, does think that. But both of them outwardly will appear similar because Rob will play dumb. But um, it, it's hard to tell if Rob is just playing dumb or if he's just trying to be a little bit more um, under undercover about his actual position, which is kind of annoying but they tell on themselves when they react with instinctive hostility to anyone who agitates for change. It's not racist to think that Black Lives Matter thugs shouldn't disrespect the national anthem. A book called The Anatomy of Prejudices by Elizabeth Young Boole really helped me with this video. One of the points she makes is that a lot of the time, bigotry is backlash. Ideologies of desire are, generally, backlashes against movements of equality. They are regressive prejudices that reinstate inequalities and distinctions when the force of movements for equality has been registered and, often unconsciously, rejected. Prejudice replaces social barriers of another kind. Bigotry is not just the psychological state of hating a group of people. Bigotry is political. It's a reaction to changing demographics or to liberation movements or to changing power relations between groups. A lot of casual misogynists don't exactly hate women in the literal psychological sense. It's more that they feel threatened by the prospect of the social and political equality of women. In fact, I would argue that feeling threatened is the distinctive psychological experience of bigotry, much more so than feeling hateful. So bigotry is reactive. 
and it changes along with the circumstances it's a reaction to. 1950s misogyny still has some things in common with 2020s misogyny. For example, a lot of men still feel some need to control women's sexuality and women's bodies, but it's also changed a lot as gender relations have shifted in the last 70 years. The idea that women are naturally suited to domestic servitude is a lot less prevalent than it used to be. And transphobia is a prejudice that's getting much louder. Because do you really believe people feel threatened? Um, yeah, sometimes actually I do. I actually think a lack of security and, and people feeling threatened is can be a big explanation for why some people are so opposed to certain things. Um, and it's one of the, I've had to learn a lot about this. Um, so, cause like for instance, so for me, I generally don't care what other people do. I generally don't feel threatened by other people living in a certain way. Um, so it's hard for me to imagine sometimes why other people will get so fucking upset if somebody else is like, gay or trans. But I think the problem is that for a lot of people, it's not enough that they want to live their own individual lives and that they want to have their own individual like ideas about things. They need to feel like the society around them supports and reinforces that. So if you have an idea of like what a man should look like or what a man should act like or how a man should be, and society is sending conflicting signals about that, you're not secure enough in your own definition of what it means for you to be a man or what masculinity means. Because now that society is giving you a, a bit of a conflicting view on it, you feel the need to change society to conform with your own views. So I, I do think that if a conflicting message is given in society about what something is or ought to be, and you disagree with that, some people can't live with that dissonance, or they can't live with that disagreement, and they need to force society to kind of bend to their own personal um, takes. That's how, that's how it feels to me. I, I could be wrong, maybe people don't, but I, I'm pretty confident in that. As in the last decade, trans liberation has increased our visibility. People are running into us at work now. They're having to use our pronouns. They're seeing us in politics or in media, and not just as laughing stocks or monsters like we used to be, but as actual characters. And a lot of people are not very happy about it. They feel threatened. That must be super fucking hard for you. Prejudice replaces social barriers of another kind. So JK Rowling frames her position as, I am just saying the fact that sex is real. It's not hateful to say a fact. Why is everyone so mad at me? A fact can't be bigoted. And I agree that a fact cannot be bigoted, but a fact on its own doesn't mean very much. Usually when we discuss facts, we're using those facts to tell a story. And facts can be used to tell bigoted stories, you know? So something that's like, so something that's very important here, um, and I've gotten a better perspective on this actually because of somebody introduced me to the concept of historiography, right? So when, when you are reading something um, or, or studying like history, you, you never actually study every single fucking fact related to some event, but instead you're reading some kind of some kind of facts that have been laid out to present like a certain story, right? Now, so this is the difference between like history and historiography, right? Is when we tell a story, we tell it from like a particular perspective, right? So if I wanna read about like World War II, or if I wanna read about like the Civil War, right? And let's say I start studying, I'm not gonna get the name of every single person that's involved in this conflict, right? Instead, I'm going to get the names of a few particular people. Now whose names we decide to talk about is a process that we're engaging in where we're already changing the presentation of the information to tell a particular story from a particular perspective. And it's super ultra important to recognize that there is some degree of subjectivity or some exercise in philosophy that happens when you begin to selectively present facts. Um, it's one of the reasons why it's so frustrating when somebody says, facts can't be racist. Fact well, sure, they can't be, but the facts that you present are going to be selected based on a particular reason, and that reason might be racist. Um, like you can tell a whole bunch of facts that aren't wrong or bigoted, but you can put together facts to make a bigoted story. You can put together facts to make a racist story or facts to make hateful or evil or whatever. Or even you can put together certain facts to be misleading or to give somebody an incorrect picture, even though the facts are all correct. Um, as, as like we, nothing, the idea that Unless you're literally working in, in, in fucking computer databases or some shit that's just amalgamating every piece of information ever. Like, there's some selectiveness that goes on with the type of information that we're looking at. And it's important to understand that that selective way of looking at information is going to, um, 
it is just is it going to change the way you view things. Um, and that process is very subjective. Anytime somebody pretends that they're like some ultimate purveyor of objective truth and blah, 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 like you should be, yeah, be careful about that. Suppose someone tweets the fact that the homicide rate is higher for black Americans than white Americans. I'm gonna ask, what story are you trying to tell with this fact? What political goal are you trying to support? One way indirect bigotry works is by camouflaging political struggles as intellectual debates. When Joanne says sex is real, she sounds like she's staking out a position in the trans debate, which is then presented as an intellectual conflict about the metaphysics of gender instead of what it really is, which is a political conflict about the social equality of transgender people. And the effectiveness of that- Is there no truth we can point towards then, then on any given point, or am I dumb? Kind of. I think it's just important to recognize that we're starting from a subjective frame of reference where we can't analyze every single particular thing. It's kind of like when we do the portal debate, right? Well, what object is truly stationary and what object is truly moving in any particular frame of reference? Well, it depends on what you're looking at, right? Like from the perspective of a spaceship, the spaceship is stationary and Earth is the one moving away from it. Earth and the rest of the solar system are moving in a particular way from away from it, right? From the frame of reference of the planet Earth, the spaceship is moving away from the planet, right? Um, it, it's the same when, it ta when we talk about like presenting or talking about any particular set of facts, right? Like, well, facts exist and they are, they can be hopefully true depending on what your, um, depending on what your theory of truth is, right? Hopefully facts can, can be true. Um, but j just because you're presenting true facts doesn't mean that the story that you're making with those facts is some objectively true story. I don't know if that makes sense or not. That strategy is actually a reason I'm not a huge fan of the slogan, trans women are women. And this is just my opinion. I don't speak for any other- Oh fuck, is Natalie about to get fucking destroyed for this? I haven't seen any of the responses to her video yet. Trans people, but there's a couple things I don't like about it. One is trans men and non-binary people matter just as much as trans women, but you don't as often hear trans men are men or non-binary people are valid. <laughs> Doesn't really work, does it? The other problem with trans women are women is it tends to invite the response well, what does it even mean to be a woman? Define womanhood. And now you're immediately getting baited into some bullshit semantic debate about what is a real woman. A real woman. How do you know you're a real woman, Amber? What if you're in the matrix right now and in the real world, you're biologically male? The tables are turned. It doesn't really matter, does it? This is metaphysics and life is too short for metaphysics. You know, I've been down this road too many times Fucking already true. and I always end up having these dead end conversations about gender performativity or worse, conversations about what it means to feel like a woman. Well, the truth is I don't feel like a woman. I don't think anyone feels like a woman, honestly, except a certain subgenre of gay men and possibly Shania Twain. Probably not even her anymore, honestly not since the early 2000s. You know, some questions should be dissolved rather than solved. That's what Wittgenstein said. That's right, we're dragging Ludwig into this. Sometimes the only way to answer a question is to realize you're asking the wrong question. How do I know I'm a woman? Well, look at me. Oh, I rest my case. The monitor's over here. It's what I'm looking at when I look over here. I like to check in occasionally, see how I'm doing. Look, trans people can't even agree among ourselves what gender is. In fact, if you even try to answer the question, you end up enraging some part of the community who feels excluded. So no, trans people are not trying to force an ideology on people. We don't even share an ideology within our own community. What we share are a common set of political struggles against discrimination, against harassment, against excessive medical gatekeeping against exclusion from public life. So what would be a better slogan than trans women are women? Well, ideally something that includes all trans people and something that evades pointless philosophizing about biology and what is gender and who is true trans and what is a woman really? You something that centers what actually matters, which is freeing trans people from the stigma and discrimination that have historically prevented us from becoming equal members of society. So I know it sounds kind of outdated, very 1970s, but 
I personally like the slogan Trans Liberation Now. It's short, it's sweet, and instead of prompting Define Womanhood, it prompts people to ask, what do you mean liberation? Liberation from what? And then you can say, well, I'll tell you. And now you're talking about politics instead of talking about semantics. Isn't that better? I feel like trans culture is just so obsessed with reassuring ourselves that we are valid that we sometimes forget that the end goal of a political movement is not validity, it's equality. That's what we're supposed to be fighting for. So instead of asking, does JK Rowling think we're valid, which like, who fucking cares if she thinks we're valid? Well, maybe I care a little bit. But instead, why don't we ask, is she or is she not an ally in our struggle for equality? Doesn't that just bring reality back into focus? Isn't it so much better to have a concrete political project in front of you instead of sinking into this scholastic gender theology? Trans people are a population of people who have a right to equality and to freedom from discrimination. We are not an ideology that's up for debate. But that's how J.K. Rowling frames the trans question. Not as a struggle for equality that she opposes, but as an ideology that she disagrees with. I'm just saying that sex is real. Is that all you're saying, Joanne? Holy shit, ContraPoints confirmed? Gonna be streaming on Twitch soon? I'm so sorry. Load of fire in the prefect's bathroom. Moaning Myrtle, hey, how are you? I wonder if that inspired my love of baths. This bath is actually really nice. It's a lot of milk and a lot of rose oil, Epsom salts, just kind of everything that's good in baths all together. I don't wanna talk about bigotry. I wanna talk about baths. Can this just be a video about baths from now on? <laughs> Oh, fine, I'll do my job. On June 10, JK Rowling published an essay to her website, which on Twitter she titled Turf Wars. Oh God, if this is the one we read, I think this was the one where like halfway in, it's like, yeah, this is actually chill. I feel good that she sticked her position on this better. And then I think she just goes full fucking turf. Like, oh God, what are you doing? Oh no. Which was just awarded the Russell Prize by the BBC for its brave display of unyielding transphobia, I guess. The essay is several pages long and outlines her reasons for speaking out on sex and gender issues. I refuse to bow down to a movement that I believe is doing demonstrable harm in seeking to erode women as a political and biological class and offering to cover predators like few before it. We should, um, fuck, we should... Should we read this? I think we read the essay on stream and it was actually... I feel like the intro to the essay, the first few paragraphs is like pretty good. And then she just like she just jumps off the deep end and it's like, oh my God, um, yikes. Where do I even begin with this one? Well, let's pick some highlights. Woman is not a costume. Woman is not an idea in a man's head. Woman is not a pink brain. My liking for Jimmy Choo's or any of the other sexist ideas now somehow touted as progressive. Oh, well, my mistake. Here I was, thinking I was a woman. It turns out I'm just a man who likes expensive shoes. What a whimsical misunderstanding. Okay, well, that's it, everyone. The channel's over. Thanks for the likes and comments. I I'm gonna head out now to the, uh, the Jimmy Choo store, and then I guess I'll cut my tits off. <laughs> Joanne! <laughs> Joanne! This is madness, Joanne. When you throw open the doors of bathrooms and changing rooms to any man who believes or feels he's a woman, and, as I've said, gender confirmation certificates may now be granted without any need for surgery or hormones, then you open the door to any and all men who wish to come inside. So look, I understand that some women are anxious about the- I still feel like the easiest way to solve this problem, the easiest way to make everybody walk back on this, is to just get some big, burly trans men and just march them into women's dressing rooms. Like, I feel like you would, I feel like people would change their opinion in literally one encounter where you have a, a big, burly, fucking facial hair trans man is in, the, is in the changing room. And then a cis woman is like, what the fuck are you doing in here, you piece of shit? And like, oh, 
Well, I have a vagina. I'm a, I'm a trans man, but I have a vagina. So, you know, you said we should go to our own dressing room. So I'm just going to chill in here with you. Is that cool? <laughs> Like I, I feel like you would, I feel like you would flip them immediately. The the strange thing when you talk about trans, when you talk about trans issues, and also trans people, at least online, are very guilty of this too. Trans trans people and cis people never talk about trans men. They don't exist to anybody. Literally, I don't know why that is the case. Um, but when when it comes to cis people arguing about whether or not whether or not like trans women should be allowed in bathroom. It's always, they're always talking about trans women. They're always talking about men who, biological sex male or whatever, that identify as female, that identify as women. That's the only thing that, that trans people talk about. Or I'm sorry, that's the only thing that cis people talk about. And then when trans people talk about, um, trans people talk about issues, they only ever talk about trans women. They never talk about trans men. So for instance, when we talk about like Olympics, right? Um, you know, trans people are very quick to point out, oh, well, trans women should be allowed to compete with cis women. Trans women should be allowed to be compete with cis women. It's like, okay, well, what are you gonna do about trans men? Because trans men will never be competitive in anything ever. A, a trans male is, is probably never going to be able to compete at the highest levels with a cis male. Are you just gonna fuck that whole group of people? Like literally nobody ever talks about trans men ever. <laughs> like it's very weird to me. I don't know why, but yeah. It's almost like it would be interesting if the reason is because like toxic masculinity and patriarchy even carries into trans discussions, but yeah thought of predators in bathrooms. And believe me, I don't want to share a bathroom with a predator any more than you do. Why are all my rose petals on this one side? Come, some of them need to come over here. Come here. I've redistributed the petals. Socialist icon. But this talking point that gender change on legal documents will enable predators to enter bathrooms, it doesn't really make sense because gender policing in public bathrooms doesn't involve smelt, legal documents. Which can smelt like, when was the last time you had to present a gender certificate to gain admittance to a public bathroom? No. It feels like a strangely outdated conversation to be having during pandemic lockdown. Like, it's also, this is also really weird, and I don't know if other, like, European countries would ever do this, but, like, you can now click um, the thumbnail button in the lower left corner of the screen. I hate this guy. I actually hate you. View mode. Um, like, in, I, I know the very least in Sweden, like, they have mixed bathrooms, and like nobody cares, nobody loses their mind. Like, I don't know why we can't just do this in other countries. Like, just who the fuck cares? Like, who's in whose bathroom? Like, people talk about bathrooms like they're some weird fucking like rapist force field. Like, you're a woman and you're running through a fucking school, and some guy's trying to rape you, and you just run into the bathroom and you're safe. It's like, oh, thank God, my safe haven, the woman's restroom. Like, nobody can hurt me here. Like, it's such a weird fucking way of like viewing restrooms. Like, what the fuck? Like, it, I, I don't know. Like this idea that like. This idea that like we have mixed restrooms or something, everybody's gonna start raping and killing each other is just so mind-bogglingly fucking stupid. <laughs> oh my god. Like, imagine using a public bathroom. Imagine being in public. What do you mean by shared bathroom? Like women and so like at least in Sweden there'll be these big rooms and then in and the big room there'll be like a door behind every bathroom and then there'll be like sinks out in the public area and like you just enter the door and you use the bathroom. Like at least in Stockholm, I don't know, maybe in other places. And it seemed like I don't know. The first time I went in, I got scared because I saw a woman walk out one. I was like, fuck, am I in the wrong area? But it was just, no, it was just like a unisex bathroom. It's not a big deal. I've been reading this book called Female Masculinity, which is about the experiences of butch women. And there's a section here called The Bathroom Problem, which describes how women's bathrooms tend to operate as an area for the enforcement of gender conformity. The author, Jack Halberstam, who's assigned female at birth and presents masculine, describes routinely having security called on him for using the women's bathroom. Having one's gender challenged in the women's restroom is a frequent occurrence in the lives of many androgynous or masculine women. Indeed, it is so frequent that one wonders whether the category woman, when used to designate public functions, is completely outmoded. Queer literature is littered with references to the bathroom problem, and it would not be an exaggeration to call it a standard feature of the butch narrative. And that's very interesting to me because as a feminine trans woman, I have not once been questioned or had the authorities called on me in a women's public bathroom in the entire time I've been using them. Which yep. And then imagine seeing somebody like Natalie in the male bathroom. You'd be like, what the fuck are you doing here? This is wrong. Like people never think through any of this. Trans issues are unreal. Like it's such a good way to expose somebody that's like spent like any amount of time thinking about any of these issues whatsoever. It's especially funny when you run into like a facts over feelings. Some of the stuff I was getting Sargon to like admit to, which props to Sargon, at least he was actually owning his positions. But like, um, 
when Sargon is literally saying things, because because I'm asking him, like, wait a second, you think that like being a woman means like being able to give children? What about like an infertile woman? Does this challenge that category at all? And he's like, well, I guess they're less of a woman then if they can't do that. And I was like, wait, oh, okay. I didn't know you were actually gonna bite the bullet on that one. Well, hold on, now I gotta stop and think for a moment. Like, Jesus. several years now. So when Joanne Rowling, a feminine heterosexual woman, calls for more bathroom policing to protect the lesbians or whatever, it just seems ignorant of the way bathroom policing actually works. Like, is she just so famous that she doesn't use public bathrooms anymore and she forgot how they work? How much could one bathroom entry certificate cost, Michael? Ten dollars? Women's bathrooms are policed according to femininity, not chromosomes. And there's no practical way to change that short of stationing a genital inspector in every stall, you know, just to make sure no one's privacy is violated. That's a, that's a very good idea, Joanne. That's very good. Ironically, radical feminists aren't even trans exclusionary. They include trans men in their feminism because they were born women. Isn't it ironic that supposedly transphobic feminists think that trans men are women? Hello, operator. Could you get me Alanis Morissette? I have a new incident to report. So look, I could keep refuting points made in Turf Wars, which is basically just a series of common transphobic canards we've all heard a hundred times before. But I want to focus in particular on some passages that I think are very revealing about the psychology of transphobia. What is it about the transgenders? that some people feel threatened by. Well, Joanne Rowling gives us a lot to work with in answering that question. You know, Joanne being a TERF is mostly terrible for trans people, but maybe the silver lining is that the most famous novelist in the world having a public transphobic breakdown is providing a wealth of insight about the interior world of a transphobe. In Turf Wars, Joanne claims her interest in the trans issue is intensely personal. And she has two reasons why it's personal. The first is she thinks that if she had been a child today, she would have been trans. Someone would have transed her. You know, people are being trans to left and right these days. It's a reasonable thing to be concerned about. Trans people, we're always on the lookout for the next person we can trans. That's all we want to do. It's trans people. I, have to, I, transed, <laughs> I trans four people this morning before I ate breakfast. She thinks that she would have been recruited by the transsexual empire and forced to take hormones by the dark cabal of endocrinologists. And in support of this speculation, Joanne rehashes a bunch of transphobic tropes about social contagion and a quote, 4,400% increase in girls being referred for transitioning treatment. And that sounds pretty alarming, right? 4,400%. But you have to keep in mind that 10 years ago, only 32 assigned female patients under 18 were referred. And by last year, that number was 1,740, with the biggest increase happening five years ago, you know, the transgender tipping point year. So that is a big increase, but it corresponds to the biggest ever increase in trans visibility. So it does make sense. And there's 11 million children in the UK. So let's say 5.5 million girls and 1,740 is 0.03% of that. And considering that around 1% of adults are some kind of transgender, 0.03% of kids is not really an alarming number to me. If anything, you'd expect it to be higher. But part of Joanne's problem here is that she seems not to really understand what being trans is. The writings of young trans men reveal a group of notably sensitive and clever people. The more of their accounts of gender dysphoria I've read, with their insightful descriptions of anxiety, dissociation, eating disorders, self-harm and self-hatred, the more I've wondered whether if I'd been born 30 years later, I too might have tried to transition. The allure of escaping womanhood would have been huge. If I had found community and sympathy online that I couldn't find in my immediate environment, I believe I could have been persuaded to turn myself into the son my father had openly said he'd have preferred. Fortunately for me, I found my own sense of otherness and my ambivalence about being a woman reflected in the work of female writers and musicians who reassured me that, in spite of everything, a sexist world tries to throw at the female-bodied. It's fine not to feel pink, frilly and compliant inside your own head. It's okay to feel confused, dark both sexual and non-sexual, unsure of what or who you are. 
Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. And let's start by making a list of things being a transgender man is not. Having anxiety, having dissociation, having an eating disorder, doing self-harm, doing self-hatred, a viable way to make your sexist father proud, not feeling pink, not feeling frilly, Matrix not lab. being compliant, feeling confused, feeling that require them dark, feeling sexual, the feeling non-sexual, feeling unsure of who you, you are. Okay, so you can be a trans man and experience you some or even all of these things, but none of these things the are what being a trans man is. Wanting to take testosterone to masculinize your body and to literally live your life as a man is not the same as the typical struggles other girls go through. Joanne is projecting her own memories of troubled adolescence onto trans men and then saying, oh, clearly they were going through the same things I was, just someone persuaded them to transition. It's a limitation of human empathy that sometimes when we're trying to understand what someone else is feeling, the best we can do is to project our feelings onto them. And sometimes that's a misrepresentation. Sometimes other people are experiencing things that we have never experienced. So we have to invent explanations about why they're not behaving the way we think they should. Someone is persuading them to transition. But this fear-mongering about kids being persuaded to transition is just not how things work. From the way transphobes talk about it, you'd think whenever a little girl on the playground picks up a toy truck, an endocrinologist pops out from behind a tree and says, We've got a nonconformist on our hands, Johnson. Stand by, I'm gonna trans him. <laughs> but this is the narrative that transphobes are pushing, in particular about young transmasculine people. Last year, a transphobic screed of a book came out that is essentially to transmasculine people what the transsexual empire was to trans women. It's called Irreversible Damage, the Transgender Craze Seducing Our Daughters. Chapter 1. Again, Jesus. Laying it on a little thick, don't you think, Abigail? The argument is that female to male transgenderism is an infectious social disease, which is literally the argument Hitler made about homosexuality, but okay, great. I think a major problem with media coverage of trans issues is that not enough attention is paid to transphobia against trans men. Like after the JK Rowling story oh, broke, shit. Daniel Radcliffe came out and said, transgender women are women. And that's very nice of him, but a huge section of Joanne's essay is about trans men. In fact, she spends more words on trans men than on any other topic. So I think it's worth looking in particular at that. Something I've noticed is transphobia against trans men is not the same as transphobia against trans women. There's a lot of similarities, but they're really two different prejudices, and they come from different psychological places. In the same way that lesbophobia is different from homophobia against gay men. For trans women, I would say the distinctive experience of transphobia is being simultaneously treated as a pornographic female fetish object and as a dangerous male predator. The ultimate sex demon, this kind of incubus succubus who will ravish your wife and trap your husband. Your polygamous commune will be devastated. Whereas I feel like trans masculine people- Wait, <laughs> was it, it was, was it Big Joel? No, no, it was that one lefty economist guy. Did he imply that I'd watched his video pre-stream to copy? Like, no offense, his video was good and the arguments are good, but they were very basic. But he, he was saying that I copied his video or, or no, no, that I watched this video off stream to copy his ideas so that when we watched it on stream, I could pretend that they were my ideas. Holy shit, that was some People good memes. People are less vilified, but so infantilized. I guess transphobes view trans men as women, so a lot of misogynistic tropes still apply. So much for transitioning to escape sexism. The story is often that these vulnerable, confused girls can't possibly decide for themselves what to do with their own bodies, so the courts must intervene to take control. Which is exactly what just happened in the UK, where trans youth under 16 will now need not only the approval of a doctor, but will need to seek a court order in order to get puberty blockers. And the justification given for this mirrored exactly Joanne's concerns about fragile, vulnerable teenage girls being unable to make informed decisions. In her essay, Joanne says, I happen to know a self-described transsexual woman whose 
older than I am and wonderful. Although she's open about her past as a gay man, I've always found it hard to think of her as anything other than a woman. Being older, though, she went through a long and rigorous process of evaluation, psychotherapy, and staged transformation. The Wait, the convo was so fucking bizarre when he came on after you watched the video, it sounded like he was mad that you agreed with him? Wait, I don't think I talked to that guy, did I? Am I crazy? I talked to the big Joel dude. I don't know if I talked to the economics guy. Okay, gotcha. The current explosion of trans activism is urging a removal of almost all the robust systems through which candidates for sex reassignment were once required to pass. So that's what she wants. She wants robust systems of medical gatekeeping, which is the same thing Janice Raymond wants, just Joanne's more polite about it. I want to make a drink. Sometimes people ask me if I used to be a bartender. No, just drank a lot. Ugh, we're revealing leg again. The scandal. Putting a wet, white chiffon thing over it is, is that that much more chaste. Well, I'm an extremely chaste woman. I try to honor God with my body. That's why I got a sex change. <laughs> I'm honoring God with my sex change. <laughs> I'm not drunk enough for this. So I also want to point out that cis men and cis women are often transphobic for different reasons. A lot of cis men are transphobic against trans women because the thought that a man can become a woman threatens the certainty of their own manhood. It's similar to the reason a lot of straight men are homophobic. They feel their own masculinity is threatened by it. And of course, a lot of straight men are attracted to trans women, and they feel that that attraction threatens their identity as straight men. Back in my comp het days when I dated men, for a couple of straight guys I hooked up with, going down on me was like crossing the fucking Rubicon. This is it, Mr. Frodo. If I take one more step, I'll be the farthest from heterosexual I've ever been. Okay, Samwise, whatever you need to tell yourself. And afterwards, they go into this whole Cartesian spiral. What have I done? What does this mean? Who am I? I think for a lot of cis women, the very existence of trans men sends them into a similar identity crisis. I think a lot of women have had to fight a really difficult internal battle to make peace with their own womanhood. And for some women, confronting the existence of transgender people seems to open some old wounds. Like I've noticed in particular that some of the most virulent and obsessive TERFs are older lesbian women on the more butch side of things. And these women see hyper-feminine trans women in makeup and dresses and they say, that is not what being a woman is. I had to fight for my own identity against the idea that that's what being a woman is. These are just misogynistic stereotypes. You are a parody of womanhood. You're a fetishist. And when they see trans men, they say, you're a traitor. You're a self-loather. Why can't you learn to accept yourself as a woman the way I've had to? But this is all projection and misunderstanding. Trans women do not think that wearing dresses is what makes us women. And trans men do not think that not feeling pink, frilly, and compliant is what makes them men. These are meanings that JK Rowling is assigning to trans people's actions in her own brain because she perceives our lives as some kind of commentary on gender with an implied ideology about what it means to be a man or a woman. But that's your interpretation, Joanne. That's a meaning that you are imposing on us because it seems you have a lot of traumatic gender baggage of your own and it's interfering with your ability to genuinely empathize with trans people. You know, at the end of your essay, you say that you never forget the inner complexity when it comes to trans people. And that's a nice thought, but until you're actually able to stop seeing trans people as some kind of like abstract theory of gender or as a projection of your own adolescence, then you're not really seeing us as distinct individuals with our own experiences and stories. And since you're a self-appointed spokesperson on trans people, sorry, gender issues. I think it would be good if you listened to the experiences of trans men without, for instance, superimposing your own troubled relationship with your father. Now I should probably talk about the book, since I did go to the trouble to read all 900 pages because 
unlike certain other YouTubers, I do in fact know how to read. Troubled Blood was published in September 2020 by Joanne Rowling under her pen name Robert Galbraith. You know, for someone apparently so concerned about her womanhood being erased by the transsexuals, the fact that she publishes under a male pen name is... it's interesting. It's... A choice. God, this thing is huge. It's like the infinite jest of turfery. So Troubled Blood is a detective novel about the simmering heterosexual tension between two investigators. And that's really what Rowling does best, isn't it? Simmering. There's a lot of simmering in the Harry Potter universe. And a lot of fans who'd like to raise that simmer to a boil. Hello, Daniel. I love you, grown up Harry Potter. Let me show you my love, the only way I know how. Can I just say real quick, for those that disagree, the fact that Ron and Hermione were the two that ended up together is fucking unbelievably stupid. discourse about this. Look, if it's in wrong to have compact feelings about Daniel Radcliffe, I don't want to be right. I will not be shamed right for my shameful drag fantasy. Drag Get out of here, Daniel. This is a final farewell to my heterosexuality. Goodbye, Daniel! And your little arm, too. You stay out of this, Linda. So the prime suspect in Troubled Blood is Dennis Creed, a cross-dressing serial killer who dresses as a woman to lull his victims, whom he abducts, tortures, rapes, and murders. Interesting. Now I enjoyed this book because, like most women, I enjoy books about dangerous perverts. But a lot of trans people, literate trans people, have called this book transphobic. And you might think that's unfair since the character Dennis Creed, this serial killer is a he's not a trans he's a cross-dresser this has nothing to do with trans people why so triggered snowflake well precious there's a couple of things i think are worth taking into consideration here one is that the transvestite or transsexual serial killer is an old transphobic trope it's a cliche that goes back decades and I take great offense to the suggestion that trans women are serial killers because i for one they haven't been caught yet. <laughs> the trope seems to originate in 1960 with Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. That's just my guess though, I haven't researched this. Who do you think I am? Lindsay Ellis? So I don't think Psycho is transphobic. The movie ends with a psychoanalytic summing up where the psychiatrist offers the pseudo-Freudian explanation that Norman cross-dresses because the personality of his dead mother takes over and out of jealousy, kills the women Norman is attracted to. Therefore, the psychiatrist explains, Norman is not a real transvestite. You're a fake transvestite, Norman. Trender alert. But I do think that even if Psycho isn't explicitly transphobic, movies can subconsciously implant ideas and feelings into our brains. And I do think it's worth noting that the most famous and most terrifying murder scene in cinema history is of a man in a dress attacking a woman in a bathroom. To quote a popular film critic, you might not have noticed it, but your brain did. The cross-dressing psychotrope became explicitly transphobic in the campy 1980s psycho ripoff Dressed to Kill, in which Michael Caine plays a transsexual psychiatrist who, yes, dresses as a woman to kill women he's attracted to. He was a transsexual. What? A transsexual. You see, there's some men and women, too, who think they're born in the wrong body. They're called transsexuals. And all they want to do is have their sex changed. It's all they want to do. The transsexuals. Dressed to Kill also ends with a psychiatric summing up, where the doctor explains that Michael Caine is a case of opposite sexes inhabiting the same body. But it's the female Michael Caine who kills, because, and I quote, Elliot's penis became erect, and Bobby took control, trying to kill anyone that made Elliot masculinely sexual. There's often a misogynistic trope hiding behind the transphobic one. It's the woman in the man who does the murders. It's the mother's fault. His mother was a clinging, demanding woman. 
the most mature iteration of this trope, the crown jewel of transphobic movies, is of course The Silence of the Lambs, which is honestly one of my favorite movies because Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins are just radiant in it. And uh, also, I hate myself. <laughs> Silence of the Lambs is the story of Buffalo Bill, an animal lover and innovative seamstress. <laughs> Buffalo Bill is a trans trender. A trans trender! Who kills women to make a suit out of their skin because his application for sex reassignment was rejected because, according to Hannibal Lecter, Billy is not a real transsexual. Hannibal Lecter is a true scum. There's so much gatekeeping of trans people, I just want to use this opportunity to reassure my trans audience that even if you've only killed one or two people, you're valid. <laughs> I entertain myself. That's how I continue to struggle onwards. Billy hates his own identity, you see, and he thinks that makes him a transsexual, but his pathology is a thousand times more savage and more terrifying. More savage and terrifying than being a transsexual? <laughs> Is that even possible? Okay, it's definitely getting brighter in here because the sun is rising. Silence of the Lambs differs from its male gazy predecessors in that it kind of feels like a radical feminist movie. Clarice is a perfect blend of strength and vulnerability, and every man in this movie is a pig, except maybe Hannibal Lecter, the only one who actually respects Clarice, the only real gentleman, with his Goldberg variations and his sketches of the Duomo. Chilton's a pig, the entomologist is a swine, even Crawford's kind of a pig. The pigs are pigs, Migs is pigs, and Buffalo Bill is the ultimate pig. Do Uberschwein. It's in the original Sherman. The fuck am I talking about? <laughs> and he's obsessed with death's head moths. This demonization of the most self-congratulatory metaphor for gender transformation. I can't believe I finally emerged as a beautiful butterfly. Show don't tell, Lily. Oh my god, I can't wait till trans people have so many rights that it's okay to make fun of us. There's a lot to work with. So Silence of the Lambs is a good movie. I'm not saying it's inherently wrong to make a movie or write a book about a transgender serial killer, but there is an issue of representation. You know, for decades there was close to zero good representation of trans people in movies or TV, but a whole host of cross-dressing serial killers, and that has an effect on the way people think. When it comes time to debate bathroom bills, and people are subconsciously remembering Psycho, that has serious consequences for trans people. It's getting so bright in here. The sun has like, the sun has risen. And it's also not psychologically good for us to grow up only seeing monstrous caricatures of ourselves in media. Like even as late as my early 20s, I didn't know any trans people, but I'd seen these transgender horror movies. I think the most positive approximation of representation I knew about was like Frankenfurter and Divine. And both of them are also psychotic murderers, just, you know, in a fun way. Should've just gotten her those cha-cha heels. So I knew back then I was some kind of a trans, but I guess I felt that it was basically the moral equivalent of being a serial killer. Not something you tell other people about, that's for sure. And things have changed in the last 10 years. I mean, it's a different world for trans people than it was. And there's trans people now who are 10 years younger than me who don't even hate themselves, can't relate. So this takes us back to 2020 and troubled blood. Joanne has written a book about a serial killer who dresses as a woman to kill women. Groundbreaking. Now this is such a cliche that you'd kind of expect a seasoned writer like JK Rowling to subvert it somehow. Give us a remix, turn it on its head, humanize the monster in an unexpected way. You know, give her a little half-blood prince moment, or at least do something new with it. But she really doesn't. It's just Buffalo Bill all over again. Uh, I guess I should read you some passages. I'm reading it on my phone. I'm not bringing the book out and pretending to read on the book. You can see from my little bookmarks that I, I, I read the physical book. Yes, I'm a YouTuber and yes, I read a book. So here's the psychiatrist. There's always a psychiatrist, isn't there? Here's the psychiatrist's diagnosis of Dennis Creed. He's a classic sociopath, you see. A pure example of the type. He scores very highly on the dark triad. Narcissism, Machiavellianism, and oh, psychopathy. No. Devious, sadistic, unrepentant, and extremely egotistical. You see, he's what we in the medical profession call the baddie. Uh, quote Dennis. It excited me to watch a woman who didn't know she was being observed. I'd do it to my sisters, but I'd creep up to lit windows as well. If I got lucky, I'd see women or girls undressing. 
adjusting themselves or even a glimpse of nudity. I was aroused not only by the obviously sensual aspects, but by the sense of power. I felt I stole something of their essence from them, taking that which they had thought private and hidden. He soon progressed to stealing women's underwear from neighbours' washing lines and even from his grandmother, Ina. These he enjoyed wearing in secret and masturbating in. <laughs> Remember when she wrote books about wizard school? <laughs> Oh, how dear readers. So Dennis Creed is characterized as a narcissistic male fetishist who preys on women. And like, okay, there really are men who fetishize women's clothes, for example. I mean, Freud talked about this, right? Partialism, where sexuality focuses on a body part or an article of clothing. And Freud theorized that fetishes emerge from the unconscious trauma that occurs when men discover that women don't have a penis. Boy, have I got news for Dr. Freud. <laughs> but considering that Joanne has been doing a lot of gender critical reading over the past few years, it's kind of hard for me to ignore that narcissistic male fetishist who plays on women is exactly the way a lot of TERFs characterize trans women. Remember, the whole gender critical feminists with concerns about trans youth routine is obfuscation. These people are bigots. And it's a pretty common canard among TERFs that trans women are hypersexual and hyper-aggressive, right? These inherently pornographic sex demons. But can't we just have a reasonable debate about this? Are trans women sex demons? Why, yes. Yes, we are. The bigots are simply correct. We're sex demons. <laughs> you can't even talk to these people. Like, how do you engage with this level of villain? Wait, the, no, the sorter can't be closer. What, you're lying. Wait, or are you lying? Hold on. Vacation. I used to take the bait and argue that no, actually I'm not a sex demon. <laughs> unless you want me to be. But it's counterproductive to make that argument. Why? Because my not involved in human trafficking <laughs> is people asking a lot of questions already answered by my shirt. So I have a hard time believing that the character Dennis Creed has nothing to do with Joanne's beliefs about trans people. And I also want to note that Dennis's cross-dressing is described not just as part of the sexual satisfaction he gains from invading women's privacy and invading women's bodies, but also as a deliberate strategy of deception. Dennis says on page 854, so you know I actually read this fucking shit. In a wig, a bit of lipstick. They think you're harmless. Odd. Maybe queer. You're the nice man who's safe. And earlier he's described as Dennis Creed had been a meticulous planner, a genius of misdirection in his neat little white van, dressed in the pink coat he had stolen from Vi Cooper and sometimes wearing a wig that, from a distance, to a drunk victim, gave his hazy form a feminine appearance just long enough for his large hands to close over a gasping mouth. Wait, so longer distances are quicker? From Joanne's Point seven five cross dresses trips a, a second. Oh no, trips his victims. They mistake him for a woman, or as you know, and that causes them to lower their guard. And this reminds me of one of my F4 starters allegedly transphobic tweets. Mm. Pronouns are a hypnol. Important article by Harry Lektarpi. AKA Volfamort. <laughs> She who must not be named, followed by J.K. Rowling. Because, of course, pronouns are Rohypnol. Rohypnol is roofies. And there's a picture of a pill with she on it. Pronouns are like Rohypnol. They dull your defenses. They change your inhibitions. They're meant to. You've had a lifetime's experience learning to be alert to him and to relax to her. For good reason. These instinctive responses keep you safe. It's not even a conscious thing. It's like the hairs standing on end. Your subconscious brain is helping you not get eaten by the saber-toothed tiger that your eyes haven't noticed yet. I want to be alert. I want others to be alert. I want people to see the real picture and I want those instinctive reactions that we feel when something is wrong to be unblunted, undulled by this cheap but effective psychological trick. I feel like I owe this to myself and I absolutely owe it to other women. And more than anything, I owe this to girls. I don't want to play even the tiniest part in grooming them to disregard their natural protective instincts. Those instincts are there for a reason, to keep them safe. They need those instincts intact and sharp. 
and that's why I won't use preferred pronouns. Using Rohypnol on others isn't a courtesy. Okay. So, these are the thoughts of someone who's been hurt. Speaking of which, let's return now to the other reason that J.K. Rowling feels her interest in trans people is intensely personal. Born is a fucking idiot. I made a gin martini because I'm 200 years old. It's kind of an Agatha drink. Well, I'm a 200 year old witch. That's the plot. Pay attention, it makes sense. Also, a martini, what is a martini? It but an excuse to drink a glass of gin. I should probably, um, probably eat an olive or this is gonna go straight to my fucking, my brain. Okay, we have to be serious now. In Turf Wars, Joanne writes, I've been in the public eye now for over 20 years and I have never talked publicly about being a domestic abuse and sexual assault survivor. On Saturday morning, I read that the Scottish government is proceeding with its controversial gender recognition plans, which will, in effect, mean that all a man needs to do to become a woman is to say he's one. To use a very contemporary word, I was triggered ground down by the relentless attacks from trans activists on social media. I spent much of Saturday in a very dark place inside my head as memories of a serious sexual assault I suffered in my 20s recurred on a loop. I couldn't shut out those memories and I was finding it hard to contain my anger and disappointment about the way I believe my government is playing fast and loose with women's and girls' safety. Okay, so for Joanne, her traumatic experience being attacked by a man is psychologically related to her concerns about the legal recognition of trans people and about trans people saying nasty things about her on Twitter. She feels intensely about this issue because the discourse around it literally triggers her PTSD. In her own words, The scars left by violence and sexual assault don't disappear, no matter how loved you are and no matter how much money you've made. My perennial jumpiness is a family joke, and even I know it's funny, but I pray my daughters never have the same reasons I do for hating sudden loud noises or finding people behind me when I haven't heard them approaching. A common symptom of trauma is hypervigilance, a constant alertness to danger. This is described in a very wise book called Conflict is Not Abuse by Sarah Schulman. The traumatized person's sense of their ability to protect themselves has been damaged or destroyed. They feel endangered even if there is no actual danger in the present, because in the past, they have experienced profoundly invasive cruelty and they know it is possible. I want to respect that having a trauma trigger response is a real experience of suffering that is not the victim's fault, even in cases where that response is irrational or politically incorrect. For example, if you got mugged by a black teenager, I wouldn't judge you if you felt a little jumpy around black teenagers for a while. However, if that jumpiness motivates you to become a campaigner for more militant policing of black neighborhoods, then you are participating in anti-black racism, and that I will criticize, regardless of your trauma. I hope it goes without saying that trans people gaining easier access to legal recognition in Scotland in 2020 is completely unrelated to Joanne Rowling being assaulted by a cis man in the 1990s. This is a non sequitur. So it's a little odd to me that while Joanne is self-aware enough to recognize that her hypervigilance is the result of trauma, and she's self-aware enough to realize that her hypervigilance is often irrational to the point where she herself finds humor in it, she's somehow not self-aware enough to realize that her fears about trans people are an irrational manifestation of that hypervigilance. And again, it's not that I'm unsympathetic to her trauma, and I would be nothing but sympathetic if her feelings about this amounted to simply being triggered by, for example, perceiving someone as male in the women's bathroom, which is something most- Wait, Hutch arguing with someone about you on stream right now? Fuck! Pause on this for a sec, I gotta hear uh, this. 10 hours collectively? Uh-oh. Okay. 
right? Like we have, but, we have okay. talked about this. I, I mean, like, let's, I, okay, okay. I get that. Okay. I that's get, not the issue here. Oh, first of okay, all, do you, do you want to like, I want to, I want to uh, just like invite you to, do you want to have this conversation off stream? Would you feel more comfortable with that? Or do you think that might be a little bit more appropriate? Because if the goal right now is to not like light up your, your whispers or whatever, then I have like some concerns that that may happen again. And I don't want that to happen. Honestly, honestly, like I had a brief discussion with J15 about this. Like, I really don't care about my whispers. Like, I'm not intimidated right. by having my whispers be lit up. I'm not, like, disillusioned by having people, like, freak out about me. Right. Like, I, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm not I still fucking think, I still giving think, I still pressure. think maybe um, this might be... This might be better to have this conversation in private, I think. No. Hutch. If you think that's it's better to have this in, in private, that's fine. Hutch ruining our content. Like, is, there, is there I'm something? Than... Is there a way that we can have this conversation without like relitigating things that we've already talked about for like ten hours or whatever? I think if like we just need to accept that we're not going to agree that we're going to have to agree to disagree on that. Uh, Sorry, I'm just not used to being on stream. That's okay. Um, Maybe it might be better to put the the chat private or something. Is that that might? I, I'm not even. Them. I'm oh. not even looking at the chat. I'm just oh, okay. Okay. like it. Just knowing that people are like listening to me. Uh, just um, we just have to agree. Oh, this is the Sulio person. Well, oh, that piece of shit. Another's opinion. Why don't we put it in like um, sub only mode for like a little bit? Why don't, can we do that real quick? Hold on. Yeah. Might be a good uh, idea to do that. It's like I don't even know. I don't even know how to do that. To be honest, is it is, is, is it forward slash sub? Hold on, only? this guy. <laughs> just just, subs, just subscribers. Okay, there. Like, what are you? What are you like? Oh, you did it wanting already. Wanting oh. to hear like, what are you comfortable like? Comfortable, I just like I, I just having. Need, I, I, I need like I need there to be an understanding that we just we don't agree on this, and this isn't something that we need to like. Because I feel like the same, the same arguments just keep happening over and over and over again. Yeah. And I, 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 like if if you truly feel that to watch a stream of mine with him on it or something like that, it, it like goes against your morals. Then, then, then I would encourage you to like if if, if you don't feel comfortable in the chat to don't tune in during those times. If you feel like you want to take the sub away, if you feel like it just doesn't line up with, if it's that much of an egregious offense to you but, i'm not going to talk like, about okay. doing that i just don't want to i don't want to have the same arguments over and over again I mean, like has he had this argument before you with this guy? affiliating with destiny isn't going to make me on sub like i'm what? not going to go that far but um like some people might that's fine that's entirely within their rights if they feel like that's justified in their mind that's perfectly fine i'm not going to do that i enjoy you as a person I do my ball jokes. I think they're fucking funny. I don't think they're because, funny, for the record. Well, you know what? That's just your bald opinion. Um, the fucking balls on. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, but um, I'm not going to unsub for that. What I will, I will however, for. continue to voice my opinion no. that I don't think... I'm just looking for Destiny a way. Destiny is. Hmm? I'm just looking for a way for that. Maybe it's unavoidable, but I'm just looking for a way. I would really love to live in a universe where it's possible that <laughs> we can have disagreements and discussions about a certain individual in the chat, and it doesn't just like pff, nuke the entire chat for like 30 minutes with you know so people telling, think telling me that I'm I now look bad and like I I have thought about this it's not a flippant decision I've, I've, I've carefully considered all the relevant so facts and I've decided for myself that nothing that destiny has said or done so far is enough for me to be like I'm never gonna fucking talk to this thing the guy again so what I will say I I think that today like I could be wrong in this I think that today was okay so actually i would recommend looking at uh what picasa just uh linked in chat Fuck. um because that actually is no. what i'm talking what do you link in chat is this him? that is exactly what i'm talking about um Aza? i don't see anything it just looks like a cartoon screen or something there's not a timestamp. it just goes to the front of the bod if it's him uh, pulling up your whispers or whatever then it's not my whisper 
Or if, if it's him pulling up your chat logs, I mean. It is pulling up my chat log. Well, okay, right. so. Yeah. Oh, so that is like actually not a correct time link. <laughs> If, so, like okay, so, so let me, let me your just say, VOD like, when you showed me, his messages. Example, if, if it, Wait, who if cares? Came in and gave me the chat logs of somebody in another person's mm -hmm. chat, and then and then and then claiming that this person was saying some things that were maybe a miscategorization in their opinion or something like that. I probably would not pull it up on stream just for the reason that you already mentioned because even though you're not directing people to do it, it could still like invite that. And with somebody with like a much larger platform, there is right. sort of like a power imbalance there. So like, okay, I do so acknowledge that. But it's being linked now, right? But but you being like you, you're you typing are, in a public chat while I'm in you there, are opening yourself up to, <laughs> to criticism by voicing your opinion on these things. I don't know. Okay, if Destiny should be the one to pull your chat logs up, but you're putting okay. stuff out there on the internet and, and, but, and stating your opinion. Okay. For, uh, first of all, uh, it's in the chat now. Uh, but, well, I think I got the gist of it, right? But, like, or, or, like, yeah. But. Okay. But if you are pulling, like, so my issue came from the fact that, like, um, like, before we get, before we evolve and uh, go into that, um, let me just say, like, um, I could be miscategorizing this and I could be misunderstanding it. Um, and it, I don't think that, uh, this, stream is indicative of other streams i think uh, like i could be wrong i don't think that every stream kind of gets out of control on a destiny take like whenever destiny is brought up i don't think it gets this bad um i think it's this bad right now excuse me uh because destiny is on a political panel that uh is the and topic of the stream and today opened the like, stream with a conversation with them so it's gonna, yes. you know, it's gonna come up more. So it's like these. kind of a big, so it's a big deal. Like right. every other stream that is just like, hey, Destiny's brought up. It's just a passing conversation that lasts maybe five minutes at most, and then I say my typical fuck Destiny whenever he's brought up, and then we move on, and I continue with my bullshit. Um, but that's about it. That's at most what was going on. Today was different, however, because again, he's yeah. prominent in the discussion like he's part of the discussion mm -hmm. and uh in this situation like it's a big deal like for me like i'm a prominent player in the situation right now because like i was targeted in this case by his fans from him because he pulled up my chat logs on his stream and his fans came into the chat and started attacking me and started whis and sending me whispers and just like, you go onto his stream and go, like, go into his Discord and fucking debate him and bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And just like sending me bullshit and whispers and just trying to attack me and belittle me and shit. And just like calling me a simp for Hassan. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Don't mean to get you in trouble. Um, An S word. A yeah. simple man who appreciates Hassan. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um and just like like and i make it very clear that i really don't like hassan even though lately like i actually kind of enjoy his content um and just like i and like it's pretty cool like a lot of what they were saying very very off um wow yeah, i wonder what that feels say, like, like just, for, just on the uh, just on the n-word topic and i don't want to fucking oh man Oh boy, we're gonna I, go I won't. On the, on the on the yep. on the N word topic, with the, I think what you said earlier in the chat was something like he believes that he should just be able to say the N word whenever he wants. I did not say that. No. Oh, you said can my you tell, the can one you I said it. I, the one thing I said was that. Uh, yeah, well, I think you t I think maybe it's not whenever you want, but you definitely said. Are you talking about the guy who thinks you should just be able to say the N word and then da, 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 and then you went on mm -hmm. another, another thing as well. Yep. But when you say I like said, when you say it like I that, I said was uh, okay. I said that um, uh, the same guy who uh, who wants to use the N word and advocates for the mowing down of protesters. Right. I think there's a little bit of context missing from that critique, though. And 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 again, <sighs> and again, I don't want to get like really bogged down because we we you, you and me have had this conversation before. I think right? we had a we and had in the an Discord, hour long. We talked about this yeah. yes for like an hour. So we've yeah. and and I and I th it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I got you to 
sort of you, come around you to the, to... sort of come around to the position that certain words in a purely comedic to- in a context in a, in a, in a, in a in a confined space of people that you know are not like raging fucking racist or bigots or whatever while may not it may not be ideal or something and you can make that case it is different from a bigot going down the street and calling people that because they think that they're racist superior to them or something in that debate, you did have me acquiesce a little bit to your side. I'm not denying that, and I'm, I'm not, not afraid you... to admit. I'm not. I'm not afraid to admit that you did have me kind of come around a little bit. I'm still not advocating for the usage. Who's advocating I'm still not for going the usage? To say like, oh, well, then I'm going to just entirely say like, well, in that case, fuck it, Destiny's okay using the word. He's a fucking good guy. It's like no, like he still ruined a friendship just because he but wants didn't to. Didn't they use reconcile? The word. Aren't they friends now? Aren't they friends again? I don't know. Yep. I don't keep up with Destiny I lore. Think I good apparently games, enough. I think well, I keep and, up I... with Destiny the game lore, but not Destiny the person lore. I, well, I think him and Trihex are on good terms now. I don't know. So there's there's that whole thing. I don't know. I just maybe we should maybe we should talk about it more off stream or something like that because I am I do I don't want there to be a situation where. Someone in my chat is feuding with someone in their chat, and all of a sudden there's fucking back and forth with the fuck. I'd like to avoid but that when I can. So I it, suppose, like, I guess the the core of the argument that like started like going into having this particular discussion was when you said that. Uh, okay, <laughs> I don't know if that's accurate, Slum. Uh, oh boy. No, no, you got the chat uh, up. You're getting distracted here. Uh, yeah. Let me. I'm gonna just do that okay let's um uh, let's let's uh, let's wrap yeah let's wrap this up i'll you can you can you know ch- take your time yep. make your final point here True. try to wrap this up just let a me just bit. i'll just say this like having I, what made this discussion was just like when you said like um uh, like if the issue is that uh is having destiny on uh on uh on the stream uh if that's the issue then uh that's not gonna happen that was kind of like that kind of sucked to hear because it's like, well, he just sent. Wait, could you, I'm sorry. Could you? I, I didn't re- really quite understand what you said. Can you try to clarify? Uh, when, like, in the midst of, like, after he, uh, after you guys finish having your discussion, um, like, okay. during the whole, like, okay, in the midst of all of his fan base, like, kind of coming in and being shit lords at me, um, like you, like. J15 was kind of doing damage control a little bit and you were wondering what was going on and you said and you were you said something to the effect of like if the issue is that having destiny on the stream is an issue that's too bad that's not going to happen Mm -hmm. um right and that kind of sucked to hear because it's like well he just sent his fans to attack oh my god myself to be a pretty loyal viewer like I'm no. around pretty much every stream, and uh-huh. he just like, like, just like you're just like, well, too bad. Just like, really, dude. Like, so in, he, in, and like in, not only that, and like Katie just told me that like you just kind of told her like at one point like you just told her just kind of the same thing and just like too bad. And it's like, Hutch, come on now. Like what these I'm are saying, viewers what of I'm yours, s- and you're just saying okay. too bad. And it's a streamer that it's you can actively say like you can actively prevent this by just saying like you can actively prevent it by saying like I know that I like this guy but you guys don't like this like this is just causing more issue than it's worth. What a I, fucking loser, dude! Do. Jesus I Christ! Reach out to Destiny in in the DMs and ask him to not pull up chat logs even if that happens again. I don't That's like, not I, going to happen. Absolutely think, right, it's I not going to happen. Nope. Nope. On uh, some, somewhat decent terms, but and we'll <laughs> we'll we'll see where that goes. But what I'm saying is, when you say that I simply am just responding by saying too bad, again, I think you're I think you're removing a lot of the important context right here. What I'm actually saying is, I have heard your concerns and I have come to my own conclusion about what sort of content I want on on the channel and what sort of content I'm never going to allow. And what I what I don't like is the idea of like constantly sort of like 
I, I don't like this. Th- I don't like the idea of like constantly coming in and telling me like, well, you know, this is a really bad look, and you really kind of turn your turning your backs on all of us when we've when we've brought you these concerns. It's like, no, you brought me the concerns. I've heard what you had to say. I have come to my own decision about this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can, can I can I just read what Katie just said before you miss it? He literally just he literally did it to multiple people from multiple streams in today's stream alone. He regularly does that. He's not going to respect that request. I agree. Yes. So, so, like, what does you well, what reaching is, well, out to him wait, do? What, but what is it? Is it a request or is it a demand? Like, what you what, requesting let me try to... him to not pull up chat logs is not going to do anything. Oh, I misunderstood what she was saying. She was talking about Destiny? He literally did it to multiple yes. people from multiple streams today alone. Yes. Really does it. He's not going to honor that respect, uh, request. I don't, I don't quite agree with you. I think if I reach out to him, he will, he will honor that. Hutch. Wait, 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 no, no, no. wait, wait. Why are you Hutch. just? Wait, why are you? Why are you doing that? Like, I think if I reach out to him and request that he don't do that specifically with people in my stream, I think he will honor that request. Hutch, he literally ruined a friendship well, okay. because he wanted to I, use the N word. He doesn't even care about the friendship. He doesn't even know if we're friends ruined. anymore. I think they're on good terms now, and I, I like this. Will just have to be something that like I'll check back with you in a day. If he says no. I'm going to do that, then I would be surprised, but I'll let you know. But I do think that he will respect that. I I mean, can you can we just see how it plays out, right? Like, wouldn't that be the way to do it? Just This guy just is like crying. I suppose, but what the I, fuck? I have to say that hearing you say that is extremely disappointing. Oh my god. Yeah, Okay, well that that sucks to hear that. I do value your presence on the stream, but you brought a concern. I mean, I appreciate you, you that. brought a, you brought a concern to me, and I'm telling you, I'm going to address that concern. I mean, I appreciate that you're going to address it. I do, but when a pattern and a history well, presents what? itself, and you ign- and when a when a pattern and a history presents itself against someone that. Just but, well, no, but the problem is with the, the, the patterns and the, and the and the characterizations that a lot of you guys in the chat have 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 given when it comes to Destiny. I don't agree with them. That's the whole point. I don't think just because I don't, you, I, I'm not saying but, I don't agree with every single one of them, but for many of them, I don't I don't agree, and we just Hutch, don't have the same opinion Hutch, on it. Hutch, I you're just wrong. I'm Hutch. sorry, but <laughs> well. I know that I, I know that I'm repeating myself here, and I know that I'm getting hung up on this one point, and I know that I sound like I, I and again I know I sound like I'm repeating myself. But if you seriously think that you saying, "Hey, Destiny, pal, friend, buddy," a, 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 a viewer of mine, uh, I mean, I got do. a little bit of, a, a viewer. Of, hold so on. if you don't know what a happened, view? I'm in Hudges chat. Every time I go to other people's chat, their community goes insane about me. Like, calling me like a shit stain, saying Hutch is gonna suck his dick, and I brought his logs on the stream, like, Jesus, this guy fucking hates me. And now he's fucking crying like a little baby bitch to Hutch because I showed his logs on stream. What a fucking loser. I, I, no, no one in the chat, and it doesn't mean that I'm not grateful for people that have been longtime supporters and, like, really positive people in the chat, people that I value. This is literally people like destiny derangement like syndrome. Like, holy it shit. Where it's like, you know, if you don't, if you don't disassociate yourself from this individual, I don't like that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I think me and a lot of like other like older ad- adults maybe. Oh, like, oh, don't. Oh, 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 destiny said he won't stop showing logs. He said it on stream. He's watching this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> well, destiny, I'm going to reach out to you. We're going to have a conversation. Maybe we can talk Ooh. about that a little bit later, but you asked you i mean you brought up you brought a, a, you, you presented a problem so to me and you and saying that you saying that what him acknowledging that what like what are you going to do with that information what does that accomplish for people you? they're odd damn is this why it's so people's audiences even if, i can't even have a good relationship with other streamers because of their audiences it's unbelievable like a fucking eight-year fucking sub or whatever is trying to like bl- like not blackmail sorry let me use a non word it's like threatening to like fucking unsub if hutch talks to me 20 minutes every six months like we barely even fucking talk to each other what the fuck not advice um this is insane uh, just like um sorry Okay, sorry, Katie. Uh, 
Well, listen. I, my I, point is, no, like, no, 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 hold on, wait. A minute. I do think at this point it would, I'm so it would be sorry, much Solio. better for us to, to take this off stream because, like, I don't, I am, I don't right. want that. I don't want that problem that at you brought point, up to, to at, like yeah, get at even this worse. Point, I'm getting way I, I think, too much I think, attention I think, I think that this, I don't want. Okay, uh, and that's not something that I intended for, and I don't want that. So why don't why don't we have this conversation off stream? If you guys are willing to talk about it, I, I'm down to talk to you guys about it. But some conversations I think would be better to have in private because I because I because be I, I get I get really fucking pissed talking about this stuff too, and I don't want to I don't want to have that kind of an interaction with you, especially like in public. I don't think that that really. I helps. would be happy to have a conversation about this off stream. Right. Okay. That then I'd love to. Yeah. Let's figure out a time where we can we can do this and other people can be be involved too and and we can really hash this out in a better way but this is just this is a topic that keeps coming up and it's just i don't want okay. that to like dominate the chat whenever this topic comes up in the way that it does which is why i said the thing that i said to you before right okay so okay well i hope yes all right let's 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 figure it out and and set up a time then cool okay all right all right take it easy have fun I just, guys, I want to get to a place where, like... I messaged him. I don't think he's going to respond on stream. Like, for example, like, now. Destiny said something, like, if you're still watching right now, Destiny <coughs> says some things that I don't quite agree with sometimes. Hassan says some things that I don't quite agree with sometimes. I know that those two guys fucking hate each other, and I'm still, I still consider myself friendly with both people. Uh, because I, I want to, because uh, I think it's important to hold those, you can hold those beliefs about these individuals despite whatever else is going on simultaneously. And... And uh, much of what happens in the chat over and over and over again is just not something that I want dominating the chat. So he said he messaged me. All right. I'm going to talk to him off stream. No, uh, I, I don't. I don't think it's productive to do this in a public format. God I just don't it. really. I don't think it's really helpful right now. OK, Anyways, so let me let me re, -re clarify and go back to the panel. I think, yes, okay, okay. I'm gonna stick to that. This is gonna be something that I talk to people off stream. Why about. are you friends with people who publicly cuck you out so hard? The problem is that like, if you are like publicly associating with me in any way, you get huge pressure from your audience, from other people's audiences, and then from other content creators. Like a lot of what you guys don't see is like anytime somebody might mention me in a stream, their audience is incredibly fucking hostile against me. But there are also a lot of people behind the scenes that hate me as well, that constantly try to push messages about me as well. So like, it's very difficult to ever, I usually tell people straight up like, oh yeah, like that's cool that you're like friends with her, but you probably shouldn't mention anything about it because publicly it's incredibly hard to bear that because of shitheads like this fucking entitled little piece of shit that doesn't even really hate me for any real reason, but instead he has like these caricatures your ideas in, in his head of like the positions I actually represent like Garen fucking teed that if I talked to this kid for like 13 seconds he would be like oh shit I actually one I don't understand any of your positions at all initially and two actually I agree with most of them because that's what happens every single time I confront anybody like this it's like oh like because uh, none of my positions are even that radical but the problem is since I don't like cuck out to like the hardest fucking most dipshit neutered lefty take on everything people think that I'm giving some like radical extremist fucking take on things when in reality like most of my positions are actually like fairly moderate. That's cool, but uh, I don't remember asking. Cool story. You in a shitty mood? Um, not yet. Oh, Get that good. kid on. I I don't think that kind of guy would never talk to me on stream. Obviously, the guy's like already on the verge of tears, like trying to beg his favorite streamer to never fucking interact with me again. Like, there's no chance that he would ever want to chat with me. Yeah, it's really rough. Like, my audience especially, they're like so upset whenever I'm on here. They're like, Dan, what are you hanging out with Steven for? I'm like, yeah. dude, what do you want? What am I gonna do? So they just, you know, they threaten to unsub. They say they're not gonna watch me anymore. It's just, it's brutal. Like I say, you're a very uh, confrontational person. It's rough. An acquired taste, like a fine wine. A 30-year-old Napa Valley red. Deep with cedar flavors. And the peat from the grapevine. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Hmm. How much money would it take for you to never allow Mr. Mooten on stream again. Like if someone in your audience just hated Mr. Mooten with all of their soul, 
and they wanted that to happen. Jeez, Just I, never. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Why? Do you I mean, kind of sure pay for Mr. Moon to get kicked off stream? No, I love Mr. Moon. That's why I invited him to live closer to me. Um, I'm just curious if there's a dollar amount that you put to that. I mean, obviously there is. But is it over or under a million bucks? I mean, I assume it's under, but... Probably would be under, I would imagine, yeah. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. The real question, though, is would it be higher or lower than the amount I'd need to never have you on stream again? Mm, I assume that would be a higher amount, because he puts in more effort than I do. I just come in here and give you a hard time. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, um, maybe, oh yeah, maybe 75 cents a day. Maybe that would be <laughs> what I would need. <laughs> Jesus, okay. God, what a fucking piece of shit. Did you catch any of that conversation? The one that he, I just saw the tail end. Someone that is Hutch's viewer is oh, kind of no, 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 no. It was with the stock guy. Oh, I saw, I saw the tail end of that. Uh... There was a funny meme about that. It was like, uh. You know the the meme emoji where he gets angry. And it's like, oh, because I asked a question. <laughs> asked a question. Angry face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good one. Well, what have you been up to today, Disco Dan? Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to fix my scooter, and um, the one Mr. Mutton get back or whatever. Yeah, it won't start. I don't know what he did to it. It doesn't have spark. I've already replaced the spark plug. The the spark plug wire. I, I, now I, I think I have you to turn the key. It's like nothing happened. No, it turns over. It's just I'm not getting a spark. So it's it sucks because there's two options. It could be the wiring somewhere because you know it's salt air here, so I guess it could get corrosive. So it could either be some of the wiring, like maybe the kill switch or something, or it could be this thing called the stator, which is a giant pain in the fucking butthole to replace. And I'm hoping it's not that thing. So I'm gonna tomorrow. I have to go spend more time on it. But my back hurts and it, leaning down doing that shit sucks. Well, damn. Mm. Good luck, Dan. Sounds rough. Yeah. I also went food shopping today. Yeah. I found... I'm telling you what, man. I don't know if there's any people out there that actually go shopping, because I imagine a lot of you guys are young kids that just eat whatever mom brings home for you. But I have discovered a new frozen meal. It's a, uh, a Boston market. Carver's Cuts, okay? And this chicken meal, goddamn, I can't believe it's under 500 calories. It's unbelievable. It's really good. It's not chicken tendies. It's the whole... Yeah. It's good. Well, you, oh, you got some drama we gotta talk about? I oh, know, just making fun of that kid again. That's awesome, Dan. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you. What's his, what's his Twitch name? I have access to uh, something. Um... I feel like if we get too far into this, you're gonna get like banned for harassment or something. Well, I'm not a streamer. Well, you are, aren't you? Well, I mean, I'm just curious what his Twitch handle is. Um, ask people in chat. Okay. Oh fuck, he found Dyson's Fear Simulator. No, Goodbye to any good content for the next five months. True. If you hold shift while placing certain buildings miners, you can ignore the grid and rotate more or less than 90 degrees. Yeah, we know, dude. You, you can no fuck! Oh, all my homies hate RTBA. At least I won't be white anymore. The moving speed will increase by 100%. You can no fuck! Get more energy consumed under flight mode. Pressing the alt key can return the mecha to the ground during the flight. So this doesn't look like cyberpunk. Did you just kind of assume that you could like fuck your audience and they would take no, it? No, I have two days. I need to set up my whole other computer. I don't have time to do it. I'm not going to set it up on this computer. I'm setting it up on the other one. Shouldn't the facts over feelings people agree with the why? radical feminists why, that what? men are evil since why statistics? Why Because I have... Why would I play a new game like that Robert using my Brown, 1080 Ti when dollars. I have a 3090 and a computer sitting next to me? Hey. Calm down, okay. okay? I'm not the one who called you like a liberal cuck. That was someone else, okay? okay? This is me, Robert your best Brown, 
ten dollars from Miami. Given transgenderism, I have to ask: Is female consciousness truly a different form of consciousness? Can one know that their consciousness is actually male or female? Ben M C five pounds. Debate Hutch's simp. Imagine if you snuck into their call and said your usual hey buddy. I think he's detonate. True. This kid, I said something in a public forum and now I'm mad people are looking at it. Ben MC, five pounds. Will destiny do it? Lucas Jordan, five dollars. Can't anyone see logs? You gnome fuck! Destiny. So anyway, what's up, Dan? Uh, that was a lot of don donations there. Oh yeah, they're still going, sorry. Destiny, you being moderate is the problem, bro, da lol. When is, uh, where are you going? I heard you're going somewhere for a week? Um, I'm going ben to CanCon for five days, pounds. or four days, I think, and then I go to Omaha Don't to do the canvassing Don't speak to Dan shit. again and Terry's more where this came from. You planning on streaming? Uh, Melina will, I don't know Steven, if can you ask Dan what short positions he has so we can fuck over another millionaire? Finish the video. You gnome fuck! Okay, here's the rest. Trans women are sensitive to. Like, I've spoken to trans women who are worried they don't pass or who know they don't pass and who do everything they can to avoid using a public bathroom because they don't want to make cis women uncomfortable. So these trans women go through life every day compromising their own comfort and safety to protect cis women's feelings of comfort and safety. But Joanne's transphobia has so outgrown the scope of an automatic trigger response. It's become a fixation for years to the point where she's written a 900 page novel about a serial killer who cross-dresses to trick women into being less vigilant. And now the primary political cause she's decided to use her superstardom to champion is opposition to trans liberation. And past trauma is just not an excuse for that. Like if you're against gay marriage because you were traumatized as a child when your father left your mother for a man, you're still a homophobe, right? You're not less of a bigot because your bigotry has a tragic backstory. In fact, bigotry often has a tragic backstory. Bigotry involves feelings of being threatened or attacked, so it's often rooted in trauma. After the collective trauma of 9-11, Americans felt threatened, not just by Al-Qaeda, but by the entire religion of Islam. And this was used and is still being used to justify wars, discrimination, travel bans, hate crimes. Feelings of victimization are often used as a justification for aggression. And when the target of that aggression is a marginalized group, the result is bigotry. Now what TERFs say is that Destiny, it's actually the when trans are you going to debate Trumpers about media disinformation? Who are the real your mom wants me to. Trans women are men. They're agents of the patriarchy. Creepy perverts demanding access to female spaces. TERF is a misogynistic slur designed to silence women. It's biological women you who are the no real victims. The Scott real Bradley. victims. Two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, I gotta pause these again. Here's all the money I made from stocks. Oh no, I'm overdrafted. Oh no, my trades didn't clear. Oh no. Thank you for the sub. So often in debates on social issues, we're faced with two opposing sides, both claiming to be the victim. And we're often told to believe victims, believe marginalized people. Well, if only it was that easy. So often, the exact point in question is who is the victim and who's the oppressor? That book I quoted earlier, Conflict is Not Abuse, describes the way the overstatement of harm is used as a justification for cruelty in situations ranging from romantic relationships to international affairs. Bullies often conceptualize themselves as being under attack 
when they are the ones originating the pain. Throughout Joanne's essay, she frequently represents herself as taking a defiant, free speechy stand against accusations and threats from trans activists. The trans activists who declare that TERFs need punching and re-educating. Huge numbers of women are justifiably terrified by the trans activists. And in her subsequent tweets, she frames herself as the victim of a witch hunt. Sometimes a t-shirt just speaks to you. This witch doesn't burn. This is the new Salem. Women are being attacked online for taking a stand against the transsexuals. This witch doesn't burn. Let's see what else we have for sale at wildwomenworkshop.com. Fuck your pronouns. Trans men are my sisters. Sorry about your dick, bro. That's a good one. I'd wear that. Don't call me sis. Sis is a vile slur against my tender normality. Must be really hard for you. Not being a tr War is peace. Freedom is slavery. Ignorance is strength. Trans women are women. Got the sense of persecution. This is Orwell's nightmare. This is how Nazi Germany started. First, Hitler told the transgenders they were super hacking valid, Ulu. Then he burned their books out. Wait, oh no. That's actually the opposite of what happened. Slurs, feminist t shirt. Nice trilby. It's very dapper. Slurs. Man-hater, feminazi, prude, witch, bigot. Wait, bigot? Are we reclaiming bigot now? Is bigot a slur used to silence the females? <laughs> Joanne wrote in her essay that she was standing up in solidarity with women who have histories like mine, who've been slurred as bigots for having concerns around single sex spaces. Slurred as bigots. There's something so revealing about the claim that bigot is a slur because so much of indirect bigotry is an attempt to reverse the roles of victim and aggressor. Isn't calling people bigots the real bigotry? It's good, it's very clever. A white racist will hardly ever use the phrase white supremacy. No, they say white genocide, always on the defensive. And now transphobes are bemoaning lesbian extinction. The same conservative media who 10 years ago were portraying lesbians as like angry, mannish have now created this mythology of lesbians as these virginal damsels in distress who are threatened with invasion and now extinction. On one front, by the dark cabal of endocrinologists who are somehow coercing them into becoming men. Elliot, no, you can't possibly be doing this because you're 33 years old and capable of autonomous thought. Clearly, you are tricked by the transgender lesbian extinction agenda. And on the other front, oh, I remember talking with us, lady. We are told are slurring as bigots. Lesbians who won't sleep with them. Joanne claims that none of the gender critical women I've talked to hates trans people. On the contrary, many of them become interested in this issue in the first place out of concern for trans youth. And they're hugely sympathetic towards trans adults who simply want to live their now lives. The but the only gender critical the women right she mentions screen. by name are my horse daughter, who I would not describe as hugely sympathetic to trans adults. And Magdalene Burns, about whom Joanne says, Magdalene was an immensely brave young feminist and lesbian. Magdalene was a great believer in the importance of biological sex and didn't believe lesbians should be called bigots for not dating trans women with penises. Okay, so I agree it would be awful to call someone a bigot just because they don't want to date a woman with a penis. But are you sure that's why people call Magdalene Burns a bigot? Are you sure she hasn't said anything else about trans women that might lead people to think she's less than hugely sympathetic? You are fucking blackface actors. You aren't women. You're men who get sexual kicks from being treated like women. Fuck you and your dirty fucking perversions. Our oppression isn't a fetish, you pathetic, sick fuck. Hugely sympathetic. Yikes. Hugely sympathetic. Because Joanne claims that TERFs are hugely sympathetic to trans people and just don't want to be called bigots, and because she constantly frames herself as the victim of terrifying trans activists who say mean things online, I think it's fair for me to mention 
that this right here is how I'm used to being spoken to and spoken about by TERFs. When you're a trans woman online, TERFs pin you to the vivisection table. They dead name and misgender you. They mock your genitals. They describe your surgery results as necrotic mutilated wounds. They interpret your every feeling and experience as the manifestation of a sick woman-hating fetish. You know, in an unrelated video last year, I mentioned being sexually assaulted by a man. And I've since been told by TERFs Essentially, trans-identified males get sexual kicks from being treated like women. Nathan probably enjoyed his so-called rape. <laughs> I hope I don't even need to say that the idea that trans women can't be raped because we'll just enjoy it is a violently anti-feminist thought. And it's a thought that could only be believed, and believed in the name of feminism no less, by people who have spent days and weeks absorbing the dehumanizing propaganda that turf forums exist to promote. Now I think if Joanne Rowling was in the room with me right now, she'd say, I'm so sorry you've been treated that way, but I too have been cruelly victimized online by the trans activists. And you know what? I'm sure that's true. When I listen to Joanne talk about being victimized by trans Twitter, it's easy for me to sympathize because trans Twitter has treated me the same way. The vilification, the obsession, the fantasies of violence. It's a pretty common occurrence for me to look at my mentions and see people with trans flag avatars posting things like, Point of view, your true scum and Yoshi is gonna beat you to death with a golf club. Hashtag yes all gamers. Uh, here's a thread where first they call me an anti-Semite because three years ago I made a joke about reptilian overlords and then they get Get mad because I said I wanted to understand non-binary people instead of just dogmatically believing things, and they conclude. So basically, but contrapoints, I want to bash her over the goddamn head with a metal bat over and over again. So this is the level of antipathy that I attract from trans Twitter. So when Joanne says she's been overwhelmed by abusive messages. I'm inclined to believe her. I'm sure her mentions are overwhelmed with anime avatars saying things like, JK Rowling is hypocritical trash who literally wants millions of trans kids dead. Harry Potter was always neoliberal. Garbage and we should have seen this coming. This dumb bitch doesn't deserve our empathy. She deserves a backhand slap to the face. And tweets like that are abusive. It's not okay. And I don't make any excuses for it. I wanna make a dark and stormy. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be right back. Back. Good. Um, so I also think that there really is an element of misogyny to them. I had to put the drink down, it's making me laugh. <laughs> you, can't, you cannot talk about misogynistic cyberbullying <laughs> while holding a tropical drink. It's just not possible to do with a straight face. So I agree there really is an element of misogyny to this. Misogyny is the most universal prejudice and trans people are not immune. Angry Twitter mobs are generally more vicious to women, regardless of whether their anger is justified. There is a witch hunt impulse that's still alive in our culture. To be a famous woman is to constantly have every part of your body and soul subject to endless critique. You know, if you're one pound overweight, they call you a fatty. If you're one pound underweight, they say you have an eating disorder. And if you're exactly the right weight, they call you a fatty with an eating disorder. You know, it's a kind of crowdsourced abuse. There's a reason Taylor Swift is obsessed with her haters. When you're a famous woman, it's hard not to be obsessed with your haters because the haters bring the obsession to you. But it's important to remember that haters are not the same as bigots. Being mean or rude or even abusive is not bigotry unless it's tied to a history of oppression or a backlash against a movement of equality. So no, Mike Huckabee, homophobic is not a slur. And no, David Silverman, the word racist is not like the N-word. And no, Joanne Rowling, bigot is not a slur. Turf is not a slur. And being canceled on Twitter may be a form of abuse, but it's not a form of oppression. And I say this as someone at this point, most known for complaining about cancel culture. Oh God, is this my legacy? A lot of trans people have been very mean, verbally abusive even, to JK Rowling. But most people criticizing Joanne, or criticizing me for that matter, 
might be hurt and angry, but they're not violent. But when you're receiving hundreds or thousands of messages full of hurt and anger and hate, you experience it as one huge tidal wave of loathing crashing over you all at once. And that 0.1% of messages that really are violent, they become emblematic of the way the whole experience feels. And if you've been the victim of abuse before, the experience can be pretty triggering. So it's just not always as simple as the victim and the abuser. Sometimes victims are also abusers. Sometimes abusers have a history of victimization. Sometimes righteously angry people cross a line into abusive excess. And not all abuse comes from a position of power. Why are so many trans people on Twitter so easily driven to extremes of rage and aggression? Well, there's a passage in Conflict is Not Abuse that I think applies just as well to trans Twitter as it does to TERFs. People living in unrecovered trauma often behave in very similar ways to the people who traumatize them. Over and over, I have seen traumatized people refuse to hear or engage information that would alter their self-concepts, even in ways that could bring them more happiness and integrity. The undiscovered traumatized person's refusal is rooted in a panic that their fragile self cannot bear interrogation, that whatever is keeping them together is not flexible. Perhaps because supremacy in some produces trauma in others, they can become mirror images. And of course, many perpetrators were or are victims themselves. A lot of TERFs have been treated very horribly by men, and they misdirect some reflection of that abuse at trans people, a vulnerable group who they can mostly get away with hurting. Unlike standing up to powerful men, right? Which would be dangerous and difficult. And a lot of trans people have been very horribly treated by men, by TERFs, by strangers on the street, by their own families. And for some of those trans people, canceling celebrities on Twitter is the one kind of power they have. Plus a lot of extremely online trans people really don't have a strong sense of conviction and their own identity, which is why they need constant external validation to prop them up. They need to constantly be told that they're valid, that they really are the gender that they say they are. And if someone even obliquely threatens or questions their fragile self-concept, they lash out, Twitter being their only weapon. You know, Joanne, you say at the end of your essay that all you're asking, all you want, is empathy and understanding. And I've tried to extend that to you in this video, but trans people also deserve more empathy and understanding than you've given them. Sometimes you should look at some of these Twitter accounts that are always raging against you and raging against me for that matter. In between the raging, look at what they're doing. They're begging, begging for money to pay for healthcare, begging for money to pay for housing. You are worth hundreds of millions of dollars, Joanne, or pounds, or gringots, or whatever you people have. And trans people are out here literally begging for health care. They're begging, Joanne. How powerful could the trans agenda really be? Joanne, you have so much power and influence, many, many times more than what I have. And I have much more power and influence than most trans people. You know, I am in a very different situation than most trans people. I have a lot of other things going for me in this world, but a lot of them have nothing. They have nothing, Joanne. And I just I think you should take that into consideration next time you decide to speak out about how trans activists are oppressing you. <laughs> Get it together, Gorge. Are you listening to yourself? What are you doing, Joanne? You know, a lot of trans people have gone through life being rejected and humiliated and excluded over and over again. So they're traumatized. They're easily triggered by anything that reminds them of past betrayal and abandonment, which is something I think you could empathize with. True. Joanne, you are famous for writing a book about a neglected and abused boy who lives in a closet until he's whisked away to a magical world where he and his freaky friends find acceptance in each other. I remember when I first met you all. Biggest bunch of misfits I ever set eyes on. We're still a bunch of misfits. Well, maybe, but we've all got each other. So many trans people have found comfort in this story and an escape from a world that 
doesn't offer a lot of comfort to trans people. So for you to use your fame and influence to rally the backlash against trans acceptance, it feels like a betrayal to a lot of people. And I don't blame them for feeling that way. I feel it too. So Joanne, Joe, mother, I'm sorry about the Twitter mob. I know how much that sucks. So if you ever want to take me up on it, I'll buy you a drink to apologize for that. But otherwise, I think we're done here. As a trans person, I like to believe in the power of human metamorphosis. But I realize that at this point, you're being constantly love bombed by transphobes and constantly trashed by trans people. So it would be pretty difficult to change tracks at this point. You'd be one in a million if you pulled that off. And I don't know, Joanne, maybe you are one in a million. I mean, you wrote The Prisoner of Azkaban and that shit got me through fifth grade. So who knows? Maybe you have another miracle in you, but I'm too old to believe in magic now. So I'm not gonna sit around waiting for a letter to Hogwarts. <sighs> okay, I guess that's it. Uh, mischief managed. Is that what they would say to get rid of the map or whatever, to make it go back to being a normal piece of paper? I don't remember. <sighs> All right. This game's kind of boring now. Or it's not boring, it's just not. Dan, where's Dan at? Dan, it's Call of Duty time. Oh, it's Lycan. What's up, Lycan? Hey, buddy. Hold on one second. Um, you know, one thing that I wish I had gone through was like a change of perspective on trans people. Because even before I changed my views on gay marriage, I was always accepting of trans. I don't know why. So like, I think that's the only thing about me I really consider in the moral luck category because it, it makes me very hard for me to like talk about my transition from this perspective to that perspective when trying to convince someone else to have a different view on trans people i can do that with a lot of my other views that have gone from right to left but that one's i lack that experience okay so you wish you hated trans people that's what you're saying no <laughs> no i just wish i had um i guess some sort of like frame of reference to understand the mindset better because I can understand the mindset of like the even mindset I of never, people that hate trans people. Uh, the mindset of people like that that were against gay marriage, right? And oh, that so were you not wanted to be against gay marriage and trans people? No, listen, Stephen. Huh? You think you know someone? I understand what you're saying, though. <laughs> Dan, it's time to provide content by dying in Call of Duty. You know, I don't really appreciate you assuming that I'm bad at the game, all right? I don't, I don't think you're bad. You just die a lot. Yeah, because I'm doing a lot of the stuff that needs to be done, like reviving people and going to buy stations. I'm putting my ass on the line so that you guys don't have to. So you're a bullet sponge. It's an important job. Fuck, my food's gonna be here in like 10 ish minutes, I think. So I'm just gonna wait wow. for it. Okay. We can wait for it. That's fine. Let's talk shop. Talk shop? Yeah. Well, um, what positions do you ever know in GME? <laughs> uh, I don't I don't have any wow. at all. I didn't buy into the meme. I'm wondering what I am interested in is how possibly, how long can like it actually stay at 300? Like, people are going to give up eventually when they it's realize, be like, like, a week or two tops. Everybody keeps... I keep hearing new dates for when other short positions are supposed to close. The problem is people don't know what any of the numbers mean, so people are seeing the short interest as being very high, so they think that's evidence that, like, Melvin still has a ton of outstanding shorts that they haven't closed yet. But eventually, when people start to realize it, basically, a couple big people are going to drop, and then everybody is just going to fucking, like, sell their shit immediately. So my... Also, my understanding was it, is that people are like, oh, this stock is 130% shorted mm -hmm. um so like that's only like what's currently traded like as far as i know like there's actually a lot of stock that like um like i, I think this is the case assuming there was 100 shares total mm -hmm. for gamestop like 100 total shares only like 10 percent of those shares 10 shares are actually traded at all on the stock exchange the other ones are just held by um large majority shareholders so any one of those shareholders, I believe, could just sell, if they have a relationship with a hedge fund, sell them at a discount to one of the people that held the short 
um, with the idea of, hey, we don't want to crush the market, so I'll just sell you. you know? I don't know if you can do off exchange sales like that. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. Why? Why not? That's got to be mega illegal. To sell stock? I mean, you, isn't you can to actually sell have... stock off a market through, with no regulations or whatever? I mean, isn't that what a, uh, a bearer certificate is, which is actually removes all anonymity of it, which is essentially just whoever possesses the bearer certificate has the ownership of the assets below it. I do know that large shareholders that are uh, integral to a company do have to report when they sell stuff. But if you were, for instance, let's say that you were Silver Lake and you had... Mm -hmm. 10% of, of GameStop, I don't think you have to report to anyone besides maybe your shareholders if you wanted to, if you sold those in a private transaction. Um, I don't know. You can drag and rage probably if you want. I would be surprised though if you were allowed to just like do direct offerings like that or direct sales like that off market. It seems like it would be like ripe for abuse or something. Let's find out. Wait, you can actually get stock certificates that are bearer certificates. Okay. Right, like remember back in the day, if you had stocks, mm -hmm. they would give you a stock certificate. Okay. And if you gave those to someone, they had the stock. And no transaction happened at all, like publicly. Uh, I don't know, ask Rage Pump. Doesn't that just seem like it could be ripe for abuse, though? Like a stock is worth $500, but I'll sell it to you for like 200 and, and owe you a favor or something? I don't know. It just seems like it would be. Um, well, I mean, with anything, uh, like, for instance, there's there's oversight with this stuff. Like, for instance, let's say I have a property and I owe you a million dollars. And you're like, dude, or, or a better example of a car. Hey, I'll sell you this car for a dollar. There's no warranty. You're like, all right, fuck it. That means I only have to report a dollar to sales tax, right? Like, that's a legal transaction, but the government's going to be like, hey, wait a second, <laughs> you're only reporting a dollar. So I think things Yeah, but I think it's be different because when we talk about, like, stocks, like, there's not, like, a car commission that regulates the sales of cars. Like, there's a Securities and Exchange Commission, right? Like, I think stocks are treated a little differently, no? I don't know the answer to that. Like, I think I found something on it. So it's saying, uh, this is on Quora, of course, to take up the grain of salt. Uh, you can sell shares in an off-market transaction that is without going through the exchange. Both the transfer and the receiver are likely to have a DMAT account, uh, which can be with any one of the two depositories, the National Securities Depository or the Central Depository of Services. Um, off-market trades can take place between two individuals who have the same depository participant or different depository participants. So it sounds like you can, but it can't just be like a direct... Wait, I'm not talking buy. about like, if we're just talking about like over-the-counter trades or whatever, I'm, I'm not talking about that because those still have to clear up market rates, don't they? No, I, th I think you could sell for whatever right, amount Just ask Rage Pope. He should know. He knows all this shit. Well, he's oddly not here. He's in chat. Make him type in chat. Rage Pope, get in chat. Rage Pope, oh, just tell me minutes. that I'm right, bitch. Can the government interfere... If I want to sell a hundred shares of Apple at a dollar, can they stop me? The answer is no, because you can do that right now. I mean, it's on it's on chain, and whoever no, gets no, no. It but first if you want, it. yeah, but that, but if you go to sell that now, then your order would go on. You would have to follow the flow of the books, right? Like those orders are already on the books, and it would just go to wh whoever has the order on first. No, I don't know. Well, it does. I think, I think I, on, I think I think I'll be back. I'm, sorry. I'm pretty sure I'm right. I'm like, I'm 95% that I can do an off-market transaction. If I have 100 shares of something, I can sell it for half price to you privately if we're both sophisticated business cats. I'm I like, think that, I think you can, but I think there are going to be certain stipulations about it. Like to the, whether who you are, like with a relation to the company or who we are with relation to each other or with any sort of other market factors. I just, I don't think it, it's like as black and white as, hey, I have 100 shares and I want to sell them to you. I'm, I imagine that there's something that has to be involved to track that. Like, it's not like Bitcoin that just allows shit to float around randomly.
because like, I mean, my company, like I've worked, you know, you've worked for companies probably that or have given people shares in your company, I assume, right? Well, that's another thing you could do. So let's say that I set up the corporation Cringe Crew LLC. Okay. You mm -hmm. with me so far? I set up yep. this corporation and through Cringe Crew LLC, I buy a billion dollars worth of GameStop. Okay. Mm -hmm. You with me? Yeah. So now Cringe Crew LLC has a hundred shares. It's a private company. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, an LLC. I've created. And when you create it, you can assign those shares to whoever you want. Exactly. At whatever rate. So, yeah. so, so Cringe Crew owns a billion shares of stock and I can actually go without selling the stock itself or transferring the stock. I can just sell the ownership of Cringe Crew LLC bypassing completely any things that you have because it's a private company. So I can be like, hey, Lycan, do you want to own Cringe Crew LLC? You'd be like, Pog Champ, I do. I'd be like, here you go. Here's all hundred shares in my company. You can, yes, but I imagine that like there are certain things in place to make sure that you're not, you know, subverting anything crazy. And so what are you guys talking about? What is well, why thing? were you why were you not listening? You know, in fact, I don't, I don't believe you. You know, playing stop. Games with my friends. No, <laughs> you you know what we were saying because you were responding in chat. Don't act like you didn't. Yeah, give so me an I answer for three minutes, and you're saying you're creating a company to do what? No, like, don't worry about. It. Just say that I was right because I am. I have no idea about what you're right about. Are you talking about ways to go around like shorting companies? No. Listen. Let's say I'm BlackRock. Okay. That, that's a that's a big company, right? A big investment. Yeah, about thing. nine trillion. Yep. Okay. Let's say I'm BlackRock and you're Silver Lake. Okay. We're two mm -hmm. big we're two big dicks in the in the world of the internet, are we not? Giant mm -hmm. throbbing penises. Okay. Now I call you up. I'm like, yo, what's up, Silver Lake? You're like, not much. I'm like, dog, how would you like to buy one of our small portfolios that has a billion dollars worth of GameStop in it? And you're like, man, that shit is so overhyped right now. You see that? It's at $300. I ain't paying that. You're like, okay, listen, I'll tell you what. I'll sell you what on the market right now is going for a billion dollars. I'll sell it to you for $500 because I know it's not worth that. And you're like, all right, fuck it. Send it over. What yeah, we're trying I, to determine if that is legal. Yeah, it, it happens all the time. They're called block trades. So basically, instead of going through an exchange as the counterparty, we use each other as counterparties, and then we re report it as a block trade to the exchange, right? This happens all the time. Thank you. Is there any regulation on it or anything that would make it so you can't do that? Uh, I mean, not that I can think of that would be pertinent to just wanting to trade between two willing counterparties. The big difference with that is now I become liable if Dan doesn't deliver to me, right? And so most people want to go through clearing houses, but it's a lot cheaper, especially when you're trading in mass to do it, right? That's a lot of what Buffett does as well. Are these essentially block trades or over the counter? swaps oh, so the, the reason this came up is just a question is i'm wondering because everyone's losing their shit about like oh these guys who, who shorted gamestop are obviously going to have to get it on the public it's possible that these guys bought some shares yeah privately and that we just don't know because uh, that's not reported so they would get registered at the end of the day as block trades um even if they're coming through liquidity pools or whatever they'll all be like settled into their names but they you, you won't necessarily see it but you never see any market participants trades right i can't go into the market and see that blackrock has bought any of these shares the only reason that we know it is because BlackRock is a large enough institution that they have to report that they bought those shares but the only people that know who makes a trade are like the person who bought the share knows that they bought a share and the person who sold a share knows that they uh, sold a share. And then their, I guess, broker and clearinghouse and the central repository know, but th those people are bound by secrecy. They can't go out and say, oh, whoever bought like a ton of stuff. Do you think it's likely that um, these big people, these giant dicks that have these shorts, do you think that they went and bought the coverage that they needed or whatever thing that they did outside of how the Wall Street bets people think that they did meaning well i shit, mean the thing, I have there's to... no way for the wall street bets people to even know whether or not who's like shorting more or who's covering their shorts there's just no way for them to possibly know unless they've like hacked into like the central repository right uh mm -hmm. we'll get the uh, i guess statements the 13 f's in like you know 120 days or whatever uh but yeah there's no way for them to even know who has any position besides what people publicly say and they can just 
buy about what they have as uh, long as it's not on like their 13F form, right? So, so are you are you one to believe that Melvin, who said, "Hey, we got out," you know, we we took a beating, but we got out. Do you believe that they did indeed get out, or do you think Melvin, they were? Yeah, I'm fairly certain Melvin got out because so. Uh, one, uh, Bloomberg very rarely publishes like rumors when it's like who's buying these stocks or whatever. Like they they don't really do much of the rumor mill reporting. Uh, and two, I would guess as part of the deal for point uh, seventy two and Citadel to come in and save them, uh, essentially uh, it would have been like you have to have these shorts uh, closed out or enough uh, put options uh, or sorry call options purchased to like get that stop loss in. Otherwise, we're not coming in because we don't want to just get blown out by whatever's happening in the market. That would be my best guess as to what's happening there. So. Good. Well, okay. Well, that's good. Thank you for clearing up that I was correct in my assessment. Wait, and so I can always... you you can do totally off the books, off market trades? Well, well, hold on. The thing was, could so... I buy from you? If you had a billion dollars at today's market price of GameStop, could I approach you and be like, yo, Destiny, what's up? Let me get all that shares you have. You know it's overpriced. Let me get that for $100 million. And you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't want to move the public market. I'll buy it for you for $100 million. And the answer to that is yes. Yeah. The answer. These are also, like, these are, like, dark pools. These can just happen. Swaps between, like, specific, like, desks at different things. You can mm -hmm. just call up another firm and say, hey, do you want to buy $100 million? Uh, at, like, a 90% discount? And someone sometimes will hit those, and then they'll get uh, published as block trades. Wait, Wait what so are, I have a question. What do you buy? Wait, so these are all published publicly? Uh, yeah, the, the trades get put like 100,000 lots sold, but it doesn't say like A sold to B the same way that when you sell a stock, no one knows that you bought or sold that stock, right? Weird. And they don't know the price, right? It just, it was transferred. They don't know the price. It'll say like 300,000 shares traded at whatever. Oh, okay. So that's my question. Can I, can you sell stock to someone without it ever getting registered somewhere? Can I literally have like the paper certificates for the stock and say here you go buddy or do we is there a repository where we have I mean, to register so you can create like a special purpose vehicle so let's just say we have rage pope llc and dan llc and then we'll just call it like holding corporation so what i can do is like i can just buy up a bunch of game stock inside of holding corporation and then sell dan the right to holding corporation so he becomes like the beneficial owner of all those game stock corps through the holding corporation um, but I'm, I have no idea how the sale of corporations are reported. So like theoretically, I guess that holding corporation would still be the name in kind, but that's usually like a huge pain and no one wants to deal with it. And it looks like fishy to regulators. So, so basically you have, there will be a record of pretty much any stock transfer in some form or another. Well, no, not under that circumstance. Under well, that. It's not, but when you're trading stocks, no one knows the only people who know are the brokers, the clearing houses, and the central like uh, repository for all the trades, the central clearing house. Mm -hmm. None of these places like report that like Lycan's buying or selling stocks or BlackRock's buying or selling stocks, right? Oh no yeah, right, right. That. Yeah. Yeah. I have a Wait, slightly. So how do topic. people know what hedge funds own? Oh, so uh, every quarter, well, forty-five days after the end of every quarter, um, all. Uh, all investment companies larger than a hundred million dollars are required to file a form 13f to give americans faith in the market and show what the big people are buying mm -hmm. and so on their 13f they have to report all the long positions that they own all of the uh all of the options that they own all of their bonds that they own and all of there, there's one other security type but they don't have to report shorts and they don't have to report futures so you know generally what they had 135 days basically uh, in arrears. What does it mean so, to report a long? Like, what is is that like any security you've held for longer? Like if I own a stock, I have to report that I'm long that stock, right? If you so, want the stock, if I own a stock, I'm long the stock. Okay, you don't have to own it for a minimum amount of time or whatever. Uh, no, um, but the 13F just is like a snapshot in time of what people are owning. But like I can take a snapshot and then sell it off the next day and then change my portfolio up for the entire like quarter. Mm -hmm. And then right before the next snapshot, I can sell everything off and get back to like the same boring portfolio to like hide everything that I'm doing. Um, it's just like a quarterly snapshot that is required for all these companies, $100 million. Are. Why would people ever do public options markets if you're allowed to trade like secretly? Why wouldn't somebody like Melvin Capital just create like kind of like private positions with other companies to secure whatever it is they're doing? So like, let's say, for instance, they're shorting these stocks. 
Why wouldn't they go to another <laughs> firm that they know holds that many of that security and say like, hey, we're taking this position, but like if shit gets crazy, like can we pay you a little bit and then like have the option to like buy, like do like private options or whatever. Why wouldn't people do like stuff like that? Uh, well, so you still have to report like those types. So like if you, even if you're not trading an option, like through the exchange, you have to report that you're doing those. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't make a difference you're if the contract is exchange traded or not. Just uh, back away from the microphone a little bit. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so it, you still have to report that you're holding these type of things. Just because you're coming up with something like weird and unique mm -hmm. doesn't mean it doesn't have to be publicly reported. Um, hmm. And then for the final question, why couldn't Melvin just find somebody else that's holding these securities and then offer to buy it from them? Well, I mean, they 100% could, and then no one would know that they bought it. Like, right, you, you can see all the trades that happen all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not really... No one can look at Melvin's portfolio besides the people who own Melvin Hedge from themselves. Even the LP investors mm -hmm. uh, won't be able to see in. Maybe Citadel and maybe Point72 have some visibility into the portfolio, but no one has any visibility into what they have and what they're buying or selling besides the snapshots that they provide uh, in arrears uh, and then uh, their regulators, right? So no one knows what the heck they have, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's not possible for anybody to know. Mm -hmm. I have a slightly off topic question. I don't know if people know this. Um, if I have an LL, like if I have an S core that has like a certain amount of debt, you know, because that debt, like not debt, I'm sorry, that uh, the loss compounds year over year. Could I merge when you merge companies? Does that debt stay on? Or I'm sorry, not debt again. The, do those losses stay on and then can be used when that company files their first um, taxes? I think so. I'm not a tax lawyer, but my guess is yes, because basically if if this wouldn't happen, well, what I could do is I could just like create Rage Pope LLC. I could get five hundred million dollars in loans. I could buy five hundred million dollars in assets, and then just uh, you know merge into another one. Say, up, oh, I'm discharging all my loan liability. And now I'm plus five hundred million dollars, right? Yep. Like that. That's it. and it's the same thing with the losses, right? You, you wouldn't want to get rid of something that might be beneficial to the owner in the deal, right? So you can get a better price if you have losses that you can write off your taxes. Um, okay. That was my question. Yep. <clears throat> True. Oh, man. Oh, uh, how was uh, that thing with Hutch? I saw some dude was uh, really reaming into you, Destiny. Yeah, just every person's audience fucking hates um, me, so. Yeah. Huh. Oh, there is um, a place where... Okay. There's some meaning behind stating. The, the Snapchats I, could be complete bullshit, that... yes, yeah. <clears throat> Hold on. There's some meaning behind stay dangerous. I, I think that everybody has the potential and the capability to be um dangerous and not in the sense that they are hurting people or uh doing awful things but rather that they are upsetting the status quo that they have an amazing amount of individual power within themselves that they can use to change the world around them and i think that more often than not people that affect change and um upset the status quo are oftentimes viewed as villains. Um, I think I like to go by antagonist. The traditional definition of an antagonist is that it, it is something that makes things happen within the plot, right? Antagonists are people that make things happen. There's some meaning behind state danger. So speaking of capital markets, uh, Dan, have you uh, reached out to uh, get capital for redact.dev, or are you still waiting until your beta comes out? What? I didn't. wasn't paying attention. Either, are so. you fundraising oh, yet for your company? Uh, no, not yet. I'm going to wait until the beta's done. Pretty risky. I'll be all right. 
Oh, I mean, Dan's an uh, experienced venture capitalist. He's uh, gone out to the real world, so I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Listen, payroll right now is only like 20 grand a month, so we'll get a little bit more worried if he gets above that. It's uh, actually surprisingly reasonable. True. All right. <clears throat> Hold on. E4 C6, D4, D5, E5, C5, C3, Knight, C6, Knight, F3, takes, takes, Bishop, G4, Bishop, E2, E6, Bishop, F4, takes, takes, Queen, B6, um, Knight, D2, Queen, D4, Bishop, E3, Queen, E5, short castle, Bishop, D6, oh, yeah? G3, okay. uh, Queen, F6, A3, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, yeah, motherfucker, I know that shit too, H, I, J, K, uh-oh, this is the hard part, L, M, N, O, P, so you think you can flex, me too, pussy, and then, the queen and then and then queen c3 and then take on f3 and then d4 e4 c6 d4 d5 e5 c e6 bishop f4 just give the rest of the jcg clip <clears throat> if i don't look at it he's not there would you look at that no. just look at it no just look at it no No. Okay. All right, who do we have? We have a ninja with some claws. We have another ninja with swords and four sun. Okay. All oh, right. Got it. Swords and four sun. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all good. Okay, all right, let's call let's call the wife. Um, you guys you guys are going um, on LTT little, store, right? You're buying stuff on LTT store. That okay, you can uh, sure. maybe share with her is that you are now uh, potentially the world's biggest gamer because you spent more money at GameStop than you have on your car. Thanks for that. All right, I'm just gonna <laughs> put everything on. Okay, you ready? What the fuck? <clears throat> Good one. Billionaires are getting smoked. So we're Hi, my name is Carla Shaw. You can stop at five or six stores or just one. I don't need friends. They disappoint me. Hi, I'm Todd LaRue. You could stop at five or six stores or just one. I feel like a deer in the headlights of love. This is Tim and Eric, right? Honey, you've got a big storm coming. You could stop at five or six stores, or just one. No? Wait, what is this? <clears throat> you could stop at five or six stores, or just one. Can I ask you kind of a weird question? You could stop at five or six oh, stores. Oh, casting calls. Or just one. I am the queen. What happened? I thought I was going down. You are now 
<laughs> Why are you dressed so funny? Your insolent remark is an offense to my dignity. You should never question your betters. What's wrong? I defeated you once, and I shall do it again! No, Magneto. I let you in before, in order to learn your plan, to trap you. But now the victory belongs to the Fantastic Four. Fool! Have you forgotten my invincible magnetic power? No mere weapon can stop me. With but a gesture, I can destroy it. Or turn it against you. Behold! I'll make it leap from your hand and make you its target. Now! Not this time, Magneto. This time I'm fighting for real. It's impossible. It cannot be. Nothing can defy my magnetic power. The Fantastic Four can. You're finished, Magneto. Surrender. You have no other choice. Why? Why will the gun not obey me? My power is gone. I, I'm helpless. Magnetism! It was my greatest weapon. And without it, I am lost. It's over, Magneto. You're having a chance. I surrender. I give up anything, anything. Without my power, I cannot fight. And the battle is ended. The signal. Orders from the Fantastic Four. Close in. Take Magneto prisoner. Here come the police. You won't be lonely much longer. Okay, Richards. We'll take care of him now. First, tell me. How did you do it? How did you take away my power? I didn't, Magneto. I merely tricked you. You lie. I couldn't control your gun. You made me lose my magnetism. You're wrong. I just guessed that you'd overlook one simple thing. Your magnetic power only works on metal, like all magnets. But my gun isn't real. I made it out of wood, specially to fool you. Wood? A wooden gun? That's why your power didn't work. And it's why you're a prisoner of the police now. Take him away, man. A wooden gun. He tricked me with a wooden gun. <clears throat> Cringe. This video is brought to you by viewers like you. This guy is so good. I didn't good. know Christopher Nolan wrote movies <laughs> or cartoons. Oh, no. I misspoke. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, fuck, okay. Dan, are you here? Metal great rage. Well, <clears throat> I think people are just would love to hear a song that reflects some of the tensions that they're experiencing in their daily lives, and we're, we're very excited about it. Holy it. shit. This guy sounds a lot like Louis Rossman or whatever, doesn't he? Do you think? The Apple repair guy? He kind of does, right? There's something about, um, you know, the, the, the real tensions that people are experiencing uh, all over uh, the UK and the United States as well. <clears throat> and I think people are just... He does. Would you love to so hear wrong. a song that reflects some of the tensions that they're experiencing in their daily lives. Honestly, I can't wait when Solid Snake enters Night City and has hallucinations about Zero because he loaded the wrong hey, firmware okay in his codec. Again. That yeah. dumb fuck. The Lali Lululu are gonna screw with Snake's brain by showing him weird Good visuals day, huh? projections. Uh -huh. <clears throat> ben MC, five hey, pounds. Dan language? is wrong. He's just a thrower. Sorry, Buster. You ain't allowed here. Take off. Hey, lighten up. We're just throwing. Oh, yeah? Let's see you throw one. Oh, my God. You just embarrassed him. Holy shit.
thought you'd get lost. What do you mean? I mean it. Move out. Now. <clears throat> Jeez. Kai Brown, four dollars and ninety-nine cents. You should talk to Louis Rossman. Hey, Colleen. Got a great ass. So do you, Pilgrim. You don't look so hot to me. Oh, yeah? You didn't catch this. Hey. Hey, let's have it. This is for the Molokai cops. God damn, you just fucking crushed him. Hey, Caro, congratulations. Um, maybe first the, the first classical game. Where do you think That might be the first there? example of Chekhov's gun that just wasn't used. Wait, what? Because he showed the gun and he just didn't use it. He had a razor frisbee instead. Wait, what is Chekhov's gun to you? Stop with this dumb fucking meme. Stop. Do you actually not know what Chekhov's gun is? You wait. You know that this movie takes place in the U.S., right? <laughs> You're so stupid. Wait, no, no. I'm curious. Do you actually think that guy's name is Chekhov's? I'm not falling for this bit. You can't get me with it. I notes I had uh, this Rook C8 C5 might have been the <laughs> critical mistake. What, what What do you think? I mean, I'm, I'm not so sure. I think it was more or less uh, close to equal, maybe a very slight advantage for me. Um, uh, wrong with 20. And, okay, I think if I go Rook D1, probably it's, it's a better version, maybe quite a bit better than the game instead of going E6 first. But even after E6, I thought it was a small advantage. Um, and I mean, Mickey was also a little bit low on time, so he kind of uh, went wrong. But I have found the correct play. It's probably a draw, but there's always a little bit of uh, an issue, a little bit of pressure. So it wasn't that easy. And uh, fortunately for me, uh, you know, Mickey didn't quite find the best way to defend. And, uh, and I was able to win the first classical game, which, of course, I mean, it's very important in general, especially when you're white. Um, yeah, and then today, I, I, I don't know what was going on. I mean, I, I thought it was completely fine, and then um, Mickey found this great B4 idea. I, don't, I, I mean, I completely overlooked it, and I thought it was a very nice idea to at least uh, create some play. Um, but uh, maybe 92 was wrong for Mickey. I think if it doesn't go 92, maybe 93, or there, there's some, maybe some other ideas, perhaps. It's still maybe a game, because after 92, it just simplifies, and, and there really is uh, nothing, nothing left to, to play for, for, for White. Okay. And of course, I have to go back to, uh, to the other day, the Armageddon, and, uh, and the appeal by your opponent. Uh, you know, sometimes maybe to reflect on it. What is your comment on everything that happened there? Well, okay, I mean... For, for starters, uh, well, let's be clear. To, to the people who, who want to say that you know it's, it's some way of messing with with uh, Jan, that's not the case at all. <coughs> frankly speaking, uh, people have to understand that you know I come from America, and according to American rules, uh, as far as I know, it's still legal even to castle with both hands. So uh, there's there's no ill intention certainly from that. I mean, the, fa the fact that Jan chose to take it beyond that and, and you know think that I was you know intentionally trying to mess with his head or do something crazy is just uh, you know a little bit disappointing, honestly. Because I, I thought you know we played a great match. Uh, we both did actually. Um, you know the critical moment in the second second uh, uh, ten minute game, I think it was when I won the first one. He found this brilliant rookie two idea, and, and I lost. And then you know then he took the advantage of the blitz, and I, I won a very uh, you know I played a great great uh, second blitz game before Armageddon. So um, you know it's a bit disappointing that, that he, he took it that way. But, but that being said, of course, uh, it was not intentional, and, and uh, just a matter of the fact that I'm, I'm used to playing in the U.S. And, and to go further on that point, you know, there, there's, there's another example. It wasn't a castling, but there's a game I played against uh, Boris Gratchev in the World Blitz Championship, and I think it was 2011, where I, I pushed upon to the eighth rank and, and I lost the game against him. So, you know, if the people who think it's some kind of intentional thing, or you know, it's, I'm trying to gain some advantage, that's not the case at all. It's simply that I'm used to playing with U.S. rules, and of course, I, I should, should, know, should know the rules are not the same uh, for FIDE events. But this is how people always talk about Hikaru, and I knew that he was like a fucking piece of shit, <clears throat> like castling two-handed. That's a mega illegal thing, and the fact that he would even try to do that in a competition game is just unreal. Like, jeez. <clears throat> fucking shameless and then he defends it out here unreal unbelievable <clears throat> dan are you here yet if dan doesn't come back i'm going back to the dyson sphere Fuck, where is Dan? He's actually not here. <clears throat> Didn't you have a game called Darkwood? Listen, okay. We're not playing Darkwood. We're fu when we play Darkwood, we're going to fundraise for it, okay? We're fundraising for every game on this stream for the next two months, all right? <laughs> Get That's what we're doing. Until then, we're playing boring fucking games. <clears throat> Mm. 
Besides, we still have Cyberpunk and um, I think Cyberpunk. Is there another one? There's Cyberpunk, the hair dye, the Mutant Shortcut, and the VTuber thing. Plasmophobia, if you still care about that. Did we, was it Plasma, oh shit, there was Plasmophobia or one other game, or Welcome to the Game, I think. I don't remember. Ben MC, five <coughs> pounds. How much for Fortnite? Um, ask your mom. <laughs> Where the fuck did Dan go? Ah. Uh. On mute linkers? No, you guys are done linking for a little bit. <coughs> Am I using my new fancy PC? No, it's sitting down here. The thing is, is I have to set up, <clears throat> I just have to do a bunch of shit. I need to make a list, because I need to connect my, I have to plug in the PC, it hook it up to everything. I need to set my network drives up. I need to reconfigure Synergy. I need to reconfigure NDI on OBS. Um, I think it's just those four things. And then I have to re-download and reconfigure everything to make sure that my shit is separated up. <clears throat> oh, and then I also need to swap all my drives around too. Or do a three PC setup? Yeah. Stargazing. Just be lazy and put everything onto an external? Fuck, I can't do that. I have to use my SSDs, right? Play Kenshi? We already played Kenshi. Tell me when Kenshi 2 comes out, okay? Stargazing. How long did it take you to get past like the first um First area in Bloodborne. In I want to know if I just have some like genetic disability for it. In Bloodborne or in Sekiro? In Bloodborne. Uh, I just started playing it. I'm not sure. The thing is, is that like I always played Dark Souls like in a really weird way. I would never level my vitality, so everything would kill me in like one or two shots anyway. So I had to learn like iframes from all of my Dark Souls playthroughs. So Bloodborne wasn't like as hard for me, or Sekiro wasn't as hard for me as it was for other people. Um, just because of that. So if you're used to like blocking more or stuff like that, then I think Bloodborne is going to be a lot harder. Okay. Whatever. It's my first one, so I don't have any experience with Oh, in that case, yeah, it's probably going to be fairly hard. Yeah. So far, it's similar to fucking Metal Gear Revengeance. <laughs> yeah? How's this thing? Yeah. Just that it's way fucking slower. Gene Adam, five dollars. <laughs> oh, I love this track. It's like a demo of different genres. Cool. Sagado was definitely hard for you. Uh, maybe hard means different things to different people. Um, if it takes you like five tries to beat something, maybe you consider that hard. Hard for me is usually if something takes like four or five hours to do like one thing or like hundreds of deaths for something. I think the longest we spent on Bloodborne on a single boss was two or three hours. I think on that second owl guy, or not Bloodborne. Sorry, on Sagado. But for the most part, like, I think I first timed a few bosses in that game. Scott Bradley, five dollars. Hello streamer, hello streamer, look at my link, look at my link, it's a funny meme, 700 and... Yeah, the near tutorial, that was hard, okay? I remember that shit. The that near was tutorial a... was probably one of the hardest things in gaming I've ever done, okay? <laughs> okay? That was an ordeal. Holy shit. Oh. Speaking of games, did you enjoy Faster Than Light? Yeah, I thought it was cool. Alright, there's a game very similar called Crying Sons, and I'm sure it's going to trigger the hell out of chat if uh, mm -hmm. you play that one. It's uh, very similar. You fly basically <clears throat> a spaceship through sectors and kind of upgrade as you go through. It's mm -hmm. a lot of fun, extremely similar, but uh, I'm sure you're going to get the same rage posts on that. Oh, maybe. Think about yeah. it. Chat's gonna make fun of me for this, but I'm ready for it because there's no way they can make me feel any worse than I already do. But Braden I am on wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Dollars and ninety-nine cents. My father Brian Muldrow is running for senate. 
The link was too long, so I couldn't send, but it's a Google search away. Cool. Okay, go for it. I'm muted, Jonas. Well, oh, I'm just I'm on hour nine of Bloodborne, and I have not made it to the first boss more than once. And it, oh boy, damn. My family the doomer. How did you make it through the near tutorial? I don't know. That was the true test of our gaming mind. <laughs> Remember when we bet Bad Bunny six hundred dollars to see if she could beat it? <laughs> oh shit! Or five hundred dollars or three hundred dollars? Oh my god! Is there a video somewhere? About it? I don't know if my near playthrough is on it. The, so the the hard part about the near tutorial is that on the hardest difficulty I don't think the near, on YouTube, I've looked for it. Oh, the hard, the thing about near is that on the hardest difficulty, everything kills you in one hit. So if you get hit by anything, you're dead. And there's no save points throughout the entire tutorial. So it's so if you die at any point, you've got to go through the first, the whole dumb shit in the beginning, the whole fucking flying scene again. Like, oh my god. I think it took... It was either six hours or eight hours it took us to beat it. Or it might have been longer. Holy shit. <clears throat> that, was my, that was my crowning gaming achievement. Do you uh, miss video games that, like, when you run out of life, so you just start from the beginning? Like, it feels like games are so much easier because of all the checkpointing now. No, fuck no. Fuck that. Those were the worst games going up. Ghosts, ghouls and goblins and fucking Contra and shit where you run out of lives and you're like, fuck. It's funny if you're doing, like, a challenge mode, I guess, but... Yeah, it's fine yeah. as, like, a extra modifier or if it's, like, a roguelike that's built around that. But, mm -hmm. like, if... Like, if, for, if if Doom Eternal, if every mode had the Ultra Nightmare rule, like, that would just be cancerous. You did cheese? I don't know. Cheese? I think it's just uh, the simplification of video games for today's youth. You did cheese significant bosses? Wait, and near who? And I'm pretty sure I anti-cheese some of the bosses here, because apparently people were saying there are ways to cheese some of the bosses in um, Sekiro. But like I killed the I killed the hated demon dude or whatever what the whatever the fuck that guy was without you guys kept talking about some finger whistle I didn't use that and I killed him while I was fucking debating people okay <clears throat> you can push the demon of hatred off a cliff too holy shit. For Neo, you cheesed Eve? How did I cheese Eve? When you say cheese, was there like she got stuck in a corner and just killed herself? Or do you mean that there was like an exploitable loop in her attacks or whatever? Because one of these I would consider cheese and another one of these I don't think I would consider super cheesy. Like it depends on... Eve is a guy? Oh fuck, I don't even remember the fight then. Wait, what was the name of the other evil android lady? Was it Eva? Do you consider summons in Dark Souls to be cheating? Absolutely. I hope I did. I don't think I did that on my playthroughs, did I? I might have on Dark Souls 1. But summons are absolutely cheating. Summons make the entire game pointless in Dark Souls. Summons are like, I want to beat the game, but I don't actually know how to, so I'm just going to summon a friend and, like, destroy the bosses. Eve is one of the dudes that's one from the robot ball. Okay, I don't remember at all. Did you invade people much in Dark Souls? Um, a little bit. In Dark Souls 1, it was fun. I, a little bit. It was dumb. I don't know. All I remember about Dark Souls PvP, and everybody that did it a lot, I guess, gets mad at me when I say this, but maybe because I was a shitter. The only thing I remember about Dark Souls PvP is you would both run at each other, and you'd be locked in, like, an anime standoff where you're, like, running around each other in circles, seeing who can, like, lag backstab the other person first. That's all I remember about Dark Souls PvP. <laughs> Apparently, it got better in 3 or 2 or some shit. The netcode got better or something, but yeah, I don't know. Dark Souls on land seems like it would be a really fun game, though. There was a game that I played, I mentioned this once growing up, um, called Bushido Blade. And Dark Souls like on land seems like it could play similar to that. It would be pretty cool. But... Okay, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing in this game. Probably like... 
Researching and upgrading shit, huh? <clears throat> How did you, did you like Sekiro compared to the other Souls games? Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I think I liked it. I think it was okay. I like the combat mechanics. I think it was pretty cool. Okay, I need to make the red signs shit. That's what we need to do. I'm curious whether um, Elden Ring is going to be just like Dark Souls 4 or if they're going to have like a new gimmick thing. No clue. Do you think Sekiro looked better visually than Dark Souls 3? Maybe. Um, Sekiro looked really, 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 really good. Whether it looked better? Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. Supposedly, it's open world. <laughs> oh, fuck. It's never ending. The plague. It took you six hours, 20 minutes to beat the near tutorial. Oh, okay. Not as bad as I thought. Okay, not bad. What caused you to initially stop playing Psycho? Um, I don't remember. I really end up, I really don't like, I don't really like the characters or the stories in any of the Souls games. I find them to be like, ironically, very soulless in terms of like the presentation and everything. Um, so I don't know. And then if I'm not like super drawn into the combat or whatever, I just don't care as much. But. Do people make like buses and shit like they do in Factorio? Play some music? Oh, sorry. Man, I made a small comment on Reddit. It's so funny because like the Souls Defenders will always log in. Um, oh, thanks. Cause some, oh, because somebody made fun of me. He's like, oh, Destiny says that he doesn't like modern games and that they have checkpoints everywhere, but he won't even figure out how to go through Sekiro or like Dark Souls. And I was like, okay, these games are... Can somebody tell me where in the lore would you have figured out that you needed to go behind things to eavesdrop on characters in order to progress the plot? Is there is there like a thing that tells you that? Because I know that in Dark Souls, like 1, 2, and 3, where I would try to read the shit, it was fucking impossible. It was impossible to know the weird convoluted shit that you had to fucking go through. It reminded me of, um, like, Dark Souls, like, took... Was it in one of the Castlevania games where you stand next to the wall and you, like, fucking kick it, like, three times and then you get, like, tornadoed off to some other part? Like... Like, it's so stupid. You have to eavesdrop on Emma with less than one third of your health and facing no oh no shut up. Right. You only need to eavesdrop to get some of the endings? Yeah, sure, but that still feels kinda dumb. Like how the fuck would you ever figure that out normally? In Dark Souls 1 there was a whole zone hidden behind two invisible walls and a treasure room and a random treasure room. Nice. It kind of reminds me of like the Call of Duty Zombies Easter egg shit where it seems like originally it was just a cute little Easter egg and now it's like a purposefully designed like overly convoluted puzzle just to on purpose be as fucking stupidly obtuse just mm -hmm. to try and one up the last game. <laughs> yeah. Is there a way to pause something from mining for a little bit? Disconnect everything.
Why do you think you're owed anything besides plot progression? What are you talking about? Why do you have to make it so weird? Why do you think you're owed anything? What do you- Because it's a fucking video game that I'm buying for entertainment, you fucking moron. Why would you gate content that's impossible to find without having to read a walkthrough? It's not about being owed something, it's just that, like, you'd like to explore and enjoy, like, the entirety of something without... Like, if you made a movie with a deleted scene that's encrypted and it's, like, important to the plot, but just... No. Nobody ever gets to watch it. I'm trying to think of, um... I don't know if all games were like this, but like, I don't even know how I did this. I remember as a kid, I did every single thing there was to do in Final Fantasy VII without um, without a walkthrough. But like, I think you could find everything. Like, so for instance, if you wanted to get a golden chocobo in Final Fantasy VII, um, you could, um, you just had to keep visiting the Chocobo Sage and like the northern, the Winterlands over and over again. And he would tell you how to do it. He would tell you how to get all the way up to the Golden Chocobo. You could miss enemy materia. Wait, like what? Enemy skill materia? Oh, I might have missed one of those. Oh, actually, I did miss, I did miss one thing when I played through Final Fantasy VII, which was crazy and it blew my mind when I did a second playthrough. The first time I played through Final Fantasy VII, I missed Vincent. I never got him, ever. And when I unlocked him on my second playthrough, my mind was blown. I was like, what the fuck? Because the area where you get Vincent, if you're just walking like left to right on the screen, if you don't go up in a little crook or whatever, you could, you could miss the room to get him. Um, and I was like, oh my God. Did you ever discover the 7,777 HP Easter egg? I did, and the Galinka ship, actually. I actually thought that I dreamed it, because I only ever hit it one time naturally in my life. But then when I replayed the game when I was like 19 or 20 or something, I was like, wait a second. If this 7,777 thing is real, well, one, I could look it up on GameFAQs. But um, also, you could just use potions to get your HP like right there anyway. Because I think you could start battles off with, that, with the Lucky 7s all running. What happens if I try to destroy something, but I don't have inventory space for it? Is something gonna happen? It's deleted? The item is deleted? Wait, that sounds super spooky. No way. It won't let you delete it. Uh-oh, we got disagreements. Well, let's find out what happens. Ah, can't dismantle, okay. Oh, so who, all the people saying deleted are literally just making shit up. You guys are literally, literally lying. Items on conveyor belts get deleted. Hmm. What I miss at the morning call? Um, <clears throat> if you don't make the morning call, like you just don't make the morning call. Like that's fine, but it's kind of rude or disrespectful for me to tell you to summarize the morning call if you weren't there, so. I mean, if you don't miss it, that's fine. Just show up tomorrow, like, you'll be okay. But, um... Put it back to me. Uh oh, I, I don't know why I keep moving. Sorry. Okay. 
There's nothing I can like research right now, right? I don't think so. <clears throat> oh, wait. Will it consume? Oh, cool. If I like have some of these in my inventory, does it make it go faster or something? Do you think Souls games deserve their hardest fuck reputation? I feel like anyone who understands dual analog stick games could beat it. Um, it's probably pretty difficult for a lot of people to. Do you think obtuse and shit works with games like Bloodborne because of the occultic and mystic themes? No, I think it's bad game design. But some people will get mad as fuck if I say that, so stay mad. Well, consume the most uh. in your inventory, but if your power is low, things like garbage, 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 garbage. What? Oh, I was gonna say, have you thought about a date for the next uh, Olympics? I guess the Pepe versus Dinosaur. Um, not yet. Not yet. Why have you? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I hit uh, GM uh, this last season, so I'm thinking that uh, we can lead the uh, Pepe's to uh, victory if we can get rid of some of those. Uh, Illegal European players, then uh, you know we'll have a resounding victory this time. Wait, Jim and Starcraft, what race? Yeah, careful. Uh, uh, random on the ladder, but uh, Protoss is my best. You're banned from the server, by. <laughs> Disgusting. Fuck. Is GM still ninety-eight percent Protoss players, or have they let a few other races in yet? Uh, I have no idea. I'm not really too worried about that. Mm -hmm. All I know is that uh, beat a bunch of noobs, and oh, uh, we're back. Gotcha. Wait, you're NA, right? Uh, of course, yeah. Ooh, damn. I mean, I know it's uh, not Korea, but, you know, don't want to... I live on the East Coast, so the lag over there is pretty big, so... What do you think about... Um... What do you think about every country in the European Union being forced to use the same currency? Uh, well, so there's a bunch of pros and cons to it. Mm -hmm. I think it's generally pretty good. I think a few of the periphery countries who don't have similar economies are getting massively, massively fucked. Yeah. Because what they need in terms of uh, economic stimulus is just night and day different than what the core countries kind of need mm -hmm. so while it may make sense for a lot of like the free trade agreements and things like that mm -hmm. uh they're just getting entirely screwed um yeah that's so my do you do you think that is it is the financial integration worth every peripheral economy getting fucked by sacrificing having any monetary policy is it do you think that's like a feasible thing going forward or do you think they're gonna have to abandon i think it's called the eurozone right for yeah, so I don't think the Eurozone as a whole is going to go down. Mm -hmm. um, maybe like maybe some countries might need to get kicked out, um, but I don't even know mechanically how that would work anymore mm -hmm. uh, be because it's just like so... It it's so like integral to these places, right? They've been essentially in the same currency union for two decades, and you're just kind of um, SOL. Yeah. Like, uh, and then like... So the biggest... Uh, problem that I, we have is like basically Greece. So Greece basically started their big spiral at the end of World War II. Um, they basically practiced MMT. Uh, they were when they were taken over by the Allies, the Greek government could pretty much only collect taxes and you know, the capital and they couldn't really do anything else because the whole war was going on. Mm -hmm. So instead of um, raising taxes to pay their bills, they just printed more and more currency. And so that kind of led to perpetual kind of spiral of inflation, which lasted throughout the 80s and 90s, uh, even like early 2000s. Uh, but they wanted to get in on the Eurozone because of all the other economic benefits that would happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they basically destroyed their economy in order to do it. And they still have just massive, massive, I guess, reliance on tourism, which they can't really inflate their currency to bring money in because they're not really much of an industrial center. Mm -hmm. 
So it, it's really problematic for them. But I don't know if they would even be able to like reissue a drachma or something, or how they would go about redenominating everybody's accounts because no one's going to want to hold drachmas, right? When they can hold euros. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's. Uh, and then I guess the other thing is kind of uh, the free labor zone, um, I, I think is generally a good thing, but for whatever reason, people just don't want to move to get jobs. So generally what should be, we should be seeing is like a much greater exodus from these like periphery countries and towards like core countries. Mm -hmm. But doesn't you, that happen on a, isn't like, um, I thought like seasonal labor was actually a huge thing that a lot of people will seasonally move from like Eastern Europe to go and work like in the UK and stuff like that. Yeah. But Germany or France. You would want to see like permanent movement, right? So mm -hmm. I mean, we don't even see it here in the United States. So Puerto Rico is, you know, mm -hmm. pretty close to the United States. I think a construction worker there makes like 28,000 a year. And then in the continental United States, they'd make like 44,000 uh, a year. Don't you uh, think? just moving. Don't you think having like that, the Schengen agreement, doesn't that actually discourage permanent resettlement if you can travel back and forth so easily between countries? Or could that mm -hmm. in a roundabout way do that? Like if you say like, for instance, like, okay, well, if you want to move somewhere else, we're going to make that really easy, but it's not going to be easy to go back and forth, like the no passport thing. But if we make it really easy to go back and forth over and over again, then like, well, why the fuck would you move anywhere when you just like go back and forth? Well, because I guess like if you're traveling for work every day, you, you mm -hmm. would think it would be harder for people to move if it was difficult to go back to visit their parents in the countries that they're in. I would assume the other way, right? Where if it's very easy to go back and visit your family, then you're more likely to move close to a better job. Uh, I guess it depends if the work is seasonal. So I know, for instance, in the United States, um, is the term remittance? Or is there another word I'm looking for where when you work in one, you work in the native country, but then you ship the payments yeah, back? Yeah, those are remittances. Yeah, yeah, that's perhaps like if stuff like that, it might work that like it might be cheaper to live somewhere for six months and then go back and live in the cheaper place for six months with the money that you remitted rather than maybe, I don't know, I'm just guessing. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I guess, but there, there's like still more year round like labor, like low, low wage labor, I, I guess that you would expect to see more movement towards. Mm -hmm. Um, if everything was just as easy as oh, everyone's just going to go to where the optimal amount of pay per hour for the same job is, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so which is just like something that's like interesting and uh, it's being looked into and it, I, I have no idea, no explanations behind it, but that's just like one of the phenomena that you see. So you're seeing a lot of people in Greece tend to stay in Greece, even if there's a, not a lot of economic uh, opportunity mm -hmm. that you would generally expect for those citizens to kind of go take advantage of. However, you can still obtain some by smelting stone And then the other problem that you kind of have is financial contagion, uh, I guess. Uh, there's been like a perpetual European debt crisis um, of sorts, so to speak, that's uh, been kind of just like a massive, massive hangover from like the 2008 recession. You can try to view um, the, whole planetary the, the big thing about that is uh, at the very beginning of the European Union, mm -hmm. when everyone was put onto the European, uh, I guess the Euro, everyone got the same interest rate that Germany would have got, right? So Greece went out and took a lot of loans at very, very low interest rates. And even now, uh, the spread between the euro bonds between the different countries mm -hmm. is pretty negligible. Like we're talking like 100 or 200 basis points, um, which isn't something that you would expect to see with given the credit worthiness of uh, some of the pigs countries. Mm -hmm. And so th the other thing that kind of happens with that is the ECB has like a limit to the amount of currency they can kind of print to kind of backstop some of these loans. And so you're seeing these periphery countries kind of take excessive loans and then repeatedly need to get bailed out and then fail to raise taxes. There's like all the austerity memes and everything. But at the end of the day, there's like not really other mechanisms besides like kicking them out of the euro or like going to war with them or like levying taxes on another country, which I don't really think they're going to be able to do, which is like really dragging down a lot of the growth of the European economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, this is probably not, you agree that 15 and out, any kind of national minimum wage is probably pretty dumb if it applies to every single worker, I'm guessing, yeah? Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I guess you could put it like to what it should be in the absolute lowest location if you wanted to have a national. So if like the cheapest place to live is like rural Montana, then mm -hmm. you set that as like the national, the national minimum, minimum wage, minimum. I guess. Sure. Yeah, yeah the, the whole point of a minimum wage 
law that a lot of people don't understand is it's just to say like, hey, what's the lowest level we can have an employer pay an employee without 100% it being exploitative, right? And we even allow a lot of laws to get around the minimum wage. Um, so an example of this is like, uh, so for disabled uh, individuals, mm -hmm. uh, you can pay a disabled individual less than minimum wage if you know their labor output isn't going to be that of like a full-time employee. Goodwill mm -hmm. got in trouble for a lot of this. They were paying like their disabled uh, employees significantly less uh, than minimum wage, mm -hmm. uh, even though they were getting pretty similar or should have been paying them like a higher wage dependent based on like what they were doing, right? We accept that it's okay to pay people below the minimum because there's other mechanisms for poverty prevention uh, that we should have in place. Yeah, wait, so here's a question that I've had on this. So some people would argue that like, sure, we can have them pay lower minimum wages, but um, okay. Um, let's say that we have Let's say that in society, we have like a baseline level of benefits where you're guaranteed like a house, food, healthcare, clothes, like the bases are covered, right? A car, right? Mm -hmm. If you have that baseline, and then on top of that, you have like companies that pay wages, at a certain point, if it isn't every company just incentivized to pay like one cent an hour until like a certain wage, because it's like, well, why the fuck should we pay them anything? Like their baseline is covered anyway. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is that you don't want to do that, I guess, because you want everybody, uh, the you want everybody to be working like what, whatever you think is fair. If it's like everyone mm -hmm. has to work 40 hours a week or 50 or 60 or whatever, uh, then that should be made up, I think, to whatever the minimum uh, livable uh, ends up being, right? Gotcha. So uh, then you're, so your goal for, if you were to design a minimum wage, your goal for the minimum wage should be that like anybody working a 40 hour a week job um, should be making enough, including the benefits that the state is providing to live, to have like these minimum yeah, needs. Yeah, well, made. it's basically that the person is like, isn't getting exploited. Like you're not running some guy in basically a slave farm for like mm -hmm. one cent an hour. Or the, whatever, I don't like, right? I try to stay away from that word exploited because it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. so. Because uh, uh, when you say exploitative, well, I mean, some people would really say like all a, wage labor, yeah. right? If we go Marx is all wage labor is exploitative. Well, I, I just don't engage with those people because sure. there's no point. But then on yeah. another hand, somebody yeah. would say that like, there's no such thing as a bad wage. It's whatever somebody's willing to pay for it. So by definition, wages can't be exploitative because you've consensually yeah, well, entered well, into a I guess we, they, they can be because we can go back to the example of the company towns, right? Mm -hmm. Where, uh, so this is like early, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, where there would basically be a mining town where the only employer in town was the mine and then they would own mm -hmm. all the stores and like all the housing and everything in that town. So they'd say you're going to get this wage and it looks like a pretty good wage but then they pay you in company dollars and then just the fact of living just like literally leaves you in debt because the only place you can buy things is basically the company store with the company well, dollars sure. and no one wants that that's yeah. a more extreme example right that yeah. reminds me of um was it walmart or some other company that tried to pay people in like gift card not gift cards but in some type of card or whatever i want, I want to say it was like mcdonald's and they gave them debit cards i think with yeah. money on it yes yeah, so, um, and if you didn't use it all they would start charging interest against it or whatever like it was some, yeah, it was well, yeah and they would like to charge you like a couple bucks a transaction and everything mm -hmm. yeah dude the, i don't know if it was mcdonald's uh, i don't think it was mcdonald's it may um, be but that sounds crazy if that was the case uh um, but, but regardless of this, some people would argue that like, um, or, or hold on, I'm gonna stop saying that. I would argue, okay. So like, I would argue that like, um, we could talk about that being exploitative. Let's say that you take a city where somebody works in an area and they earn $10 an hour. And the only reason they're able to earn that money is because there's public transportation available. Let's say that you take that public transport available and the only jobs that they're within range of pay them $8 an hour. Is it exploitative that some people might be able to pay you a lower wage simply because you don't have the public transportation that allows you to get the higher paying jobs? like? Couldn't you consider that exploitative in that like your workers are literally only limited by it? That's why I'm saying it feels like once you start saying some wages are explo exploitative like or what about people that are only making certain amounts because they can't move to another city or move to another part of the United States or whatever? Yeah, well, let me let me get the economic definition of exploitative. I know there's one. Uh, I just don't remember it from my books. Um, really? I, uh, that's I'm sure I can find it. Yeah. Because that, that yeah. feels like it would be less of an economic one and more of a, but maybe there is like an actual economic definition of exploitative or under well, like our so, current like Keynesian so the models. So thing like economics is like people, or I guess the big thing is just being able to define things for words that people intuitively understand, mm -hmm. but in a way that everyone can think is fair, right? So there's definitions for utility, there's definitions for savings and things like that. Well, even for uh, like utility. Of, yeah. Is there really a definition for utility? Isn't the definition for utility literally like there is no real definition for utility? Because it's like, it's such an 
abstract well, concept? Mean, it, it, it's literally that the, the uh, a unit of utility is the, the total satisfaction received from consuming a good or service, right? So mm -hmm. you can compare utility levels in terms of like five utility is better than four utility, but there's no way to say how much better five is than four. We just know five is better than four, right? Sure. So but then it, even so it, like it measuring like that is almost like arbitrarily difficult. Like for instance, like the, the yeah, level of utility that somebody might get from consuming a certain good or service, that's going to vary from person to person. And even for a particular <laughs> person, that might vary from point in their life to point in their life. And then even at a point in a life with a particular person, the same good or service might be different if it's consumed in like a different way, right? Like it seems like an incredibly... Yeah, yeah. Well, and then it's also really hard to tease out what people think is like their true utility for items, right? It's very difficult to actually... Because measure. sometimes people are just stupid and don't know. They'll answer questions incorrectly for why they like a particular thing or why they consume a particular thing and they don't actually even understand and why they like it yeah uh, or they may yeah there's all sorts of things uh, especially when you're trying to design um, things around it but uh, we do have a definition even if it's like really unsatisfactory sure okay right? well in that case because what i'm worried about is like if you give me a definition of like well what is uh what is exploitative wages well exploitative wages are when wages are paid that are unfair <laughs> and it's like okay well i'm begging the question a little bit sure but uh let me see So for, uh, I guess, economic exploitation, I, I guess it's just traditionally used for like forced labor, right? So anything mm -hmm. where I, I guess you would have some sort of coercive relationship. For sure. Like it, like yeah. some kind of indentured servitude or something. Yeah, that could be, or like slavery, yeah. yeah. So like in our current yeah. economic system, maybe we can describe like prison labor as exploitative, right? Yeah, but I, I think you're not really looking at it from like, you know, are, are they are we enslaving the prisoners right the question is well they have a debt to society and if they can work a little bit to pay off that kind of yeah debt, that's why i said well, then, arguably they, yeah. Because, yeah, 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 you could yeah. make arguments one way or another sure yeah. yeah um but yeah but other than that so under the, if that's like our economic definition then almost no wages paid in society despite a person's inability to um seek employment out of their firms is going to be considered exploitative right yeah but yeah. then obviously well, that's also like that's a very unsatisfactory from like an analysis of like, how do we improve society? Cause there are going to be wages that are probably paid below what somebody should get. But since a company or firm knows they don't have the ability to, you know, move to another area to, to seek a different offer, it, it like inhibits our ability to negotiate, right? Yeah, well, that, that's the other thing too, is like there are frictions and everything's like not perfectly seamless, right? You can only improve things like incrementally. Mm -hmm. You can never just have perfect control over everything at all times. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, some of those things of like, well, I can just come up with some of these most extreme examples of like how, well, there's still a little bit of exploitation left. I, I don't think you're ever going to find anything that's ever going to do that, right? If you look at most of the stuff that we do with like physics and thermodynamics and everything, uh, and even like designing like your cars and everything, well, mm -hmm. we say, hey, um, we know that there's a bunch of errors. Here's like 50 assumptions we made, like making your car. But you know what? That ends up being good enough. It passes our safety standards uh, for, you know, 99.999% of the time. Mm -hmm. So that's just what we have to live with in, in all of our systems. And a, a lot of people just don't find that satisfactory that you can't get everything exactly perfect. And they say, well, the cars work and the planes fly and whatever, and the engineers can do that. But they're making the same baseline uh, kind of assumptions of like, you know what, once we hit this margin of error, well, does it, is it really a problem anymore? Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess that's unsatisfactory to a lot of people, but that's basically how the entire world works. It's just kind of bootstrapped together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also why you see like big divisive uh, debates over um, what what's happening during like uh, recessions, right? Well, should we interfere with the economy uh, or not? Uh, so, I mean, you have like the Keynesian and then the, I guess, Neo-Keynesian or Post-Keynesian or whatever, and a lot of the other ones saying, yeah, we should have big government spending. And then on the other side, you have the Austrians saying, well, you know, the big uh, government spending is actually causing all these bubbles and things of that nature. But uh, the answer is kind of somewhere in between, right? Sure. Well, the economy may be better off 30 years down the road if we don't intervene, but like, shit, I'm going to be an old man by then, right? I don't mm -hmm. want to starve in the streets uh, between now and then, even if I'll have more money later on. 
And, and so the question then becomes of like, what trade-off are you willing to make? How much suffering are you willing to take today to have a better life in, in the future? And when you go to school and you get, you know, your debt, well, you're trading off a lot of your future to have something today. Mm -hmm. uh, or the same thing when you put things on your credit card and you don't pay it off for a couple of months, or when you go and buy your house and you get a loan, well, you are trading some of your future happiness for your happiness today, sure. and that's a trade-off. <laughs> Economically, yeah. this, you're talking about like time discounting yeah. kind of, right? Uh, well, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's basically like, when do you want to consume, right? And everyone yeah. has their own preferences. Uh, and so it, when you're doing this on a national scale, well, you have all sorts of people with all different time preferences. Uh, of like what they would rather do, right? A mm -hmm. lot of people are like, well, we need we need help now. And a lot of people are saying, well, dude, it's gonna cost us all this money in the future. And at the end of the day, you're making one choice for every citizen. Sure. I think that the disagreements in reality between people that vote at least is not quite that nuanced, but I can understand that from yeah, well, a higher level. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think people should be voting on policies. I think people should be voting on outcomes and then we should leave it to the people who actually know what's happening. Yeah, that would be cool, but that would be a totally different way of... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, the, that's very frustrating to me. Well, the frustrating thing to me is that if people voted that way, I think that most Americans would be like 90% unified in terms of like what they actually wanted. Like, yeah, yeah. If we look at like healthcare, like I, I truly believe that most conservatives want all Americans to have access to healthcare. They just think that like the free market and being able to work and pay for your own is like the best way to provide that. I don't think, I don't think most conservatives like think that like, oh, fuck Americans. They don't deserve healthcare. Let them die in the streets. Like, I don't think most of them truly well, I believe mean, that. I think, I think there's definitely some of them that are like, oh yeah, if you're like obese or a smoker or whatever, you're making these poor choices. Like those need to be burdened with you. I would say, mm -hmm. like, and sure, I'm sure there fucked. are. I'm sure there are some, but I, I think that the vast majority of Americans would be far united when it, if we were looking at an outcome-related thing. I, I think that yeah. most Americans want most other Americans to be like happy, healthy, take care of their family, send their kids to school. Mm -hmm. I think that most Americans are united on that front. Yeah, I think a big thing too is a lot of the individual issues we look at, they're, they they don't see the broader picture of like, well, in order to fix this, well, there's like 80 fixes that need to go on. They just hammer like this fix, this fix, this fix, mm -hmm. and we can get this done. And then it messes up like so many other things. And now they're saying, oh, well, this is now a problem because we did this fix. And it probably was the right thing to do in the long run. But because we don't have the rest of the system in place, it just like tears itself apart, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the most annoying thing when it comes to like, when it comes to like jobs <laughs> or anything. Yeah. There's like, there's a whole chain of like, we need people to get better jobs, but in order to get better jobs, they need to be better qualified. In order to be better qualified, they need to go to school, but in order to go to better schools, we need to make the schools better. In order to make the schools better, they need to come for better households. In order to come for better households, we need to still like, it's like a whole chain of like shit that has to be addressed. Yeah, and you know? a lot of it is just gonna take generations, right? Unfortunately. Like, and that's, that's an answer that people just don't wanna like, I mm -hmm. mean. Or not maybe not necessarily generations, but if it wasn't generations, it would have to be like, like pushes in like 15 different areas, all working simultaneously, understanding that there's gonna be a lot of friction. There's gonna be a lot of initial sunk cost. Um, there might not necessarily be improvements immediately. In some ways, things might get worse first. Um, and that's well, just I mean, like really hard, I think, for a lot of people to buy into. Yeah, and I mean, for education, right? If you're investing in like a kid going to pre-K, well, that's not paying out for at least a decade and a half, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe two decades before you start seeing those returns. And then those returns are like paid out over that guy's working lifetime so yeah yeah so uh, th th these are really bad numbers and these are from old studies but basically for every dollar that we're putting in education we're getting something like 20 to 30 like or for like pre-k education we're getting like 20 to 30 dollars back in mm -hmm. time adjusted dollars and taxes yeah. from all these things right same thing with like a lot of the basic science uh, things like we, for every dollar we get between four and twenty dollars back in taxes over the next like two or three decades mm -hmm. the problem is a, a lot of these things like aren't profitable now and there's a lot of emphasis on making sure the budget is like balanced every year um, instead of over like cycles right mm -hmm. and that's kind of problematic well they say well you're deficit spending now so we can deficit spend now so that's good there's like a, a concept of like a full employment budget of basically how much would you spend if the economy was fully employed? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and like, that's kind of what it should be. And so when the economy is fully employed, 
uh, and you're spending that much, well, you should be taking a little bit of money in. Mm -hmm. And when the economy is not fully employed, well, you should be borrowing. The yeah. government can borrow at really, really low rates, and that's fine. Which is funny because in two other levels of finance, we would we understand this as well. For instance, when it comes to individuals, we finance <laughs> our working capabilities by go, taking a ton of debt to go to school before increasing our earning potentials later in life. And then on a corporate level, we finance with a fuck ton of debt until a company has reached a certain scale before we say like, okay, well now it's time to make money. But for some well, reason, when not, it comes to- uh, What? That's uh, not always the, always been the case with businesses, right? It's been focused on like turning a profit first and then kind of expanding. There's uh, sure, the but Amazon that trend has really changed. That yeah, yeah that or at least in the past like ten or fifteen years, that trend seems to be like very different. That you want to well, take on it's a... super profitable mm -hmm. if you can get it on the beginning because basically you, you pass off the risk to all of your investors. Well, if it goes bankrupt, well, it's not a problem because you've already made tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. Sure, it, it doesn't really matter to you. Uh, and I think that's kind of problematic and you can't really run a country that way in terms of like, well, if we just spend too much, we end up bankrupt. Like that, that's not really something that I, I, don't, I think we think we should take with like the leader of the free world or what should be the leader of the free world. Sure. Because I mean, if a company goes bankrupt, yeah, there's a few thousand people looking for jobs, but like, let's say the US goes like bankrupt, right? And we tear ourselves apart and we have to form a new government. Well, where does that leave? The rest of the world in terms the of the rest of the world is fucked yeah of course yeah and then where does it leave us in terms of authoritarianism right like not to play like up like maybe all the threats but like if china or russia was leading the world i, I don't think we would be we wouldn't have a place at the table could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah I, I think a lot of it is like kind of scary because we've kind of seen it grow up under our noses. I think that was the one thing that Trump was like accidentally right on was being tough on China. And well, I think he just needed it with his base. Yeah, I think that being tough on China and Russia is good. He, he just didn't have a good concept of doing it. Like, Are you saying Trump was tough on Russia? No, 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 no. I'm saying that like having okay, the yeah. rhetoric of, well, he said he was Trump, Trump on Russia or whatever, right? <laughs> but he also said he was tough on China. But like, I think that like, being tough on China, I, I think, involves more than just like tariffing them a little bit, right? Like, I think you need a, it feels like you need a lot of like a lot of different countries to pressure an entity like that, and you need a lot of really strong relationships to apply like good pressure on that. Um, just like yeah, slapping well, yeah, tariffs on people isn't really like, applying pressure. Yeah, uh, if you have unilateral sanctions, they're one, they're very ineffective, and two, uh, it hurts yourself. Uh, just as much uh, as it hurts the other guy mm -hmm. uh, and when we're two comparable economies right it, it's really no skin off their back because again china's an authoritarian state if anyone dissents with what the state's doing well they're just gonna get disappeared right where in the united states democracies can't sustain that much like unpopularity over well, that long period of time but only only during like periods of war right mm -hmm. where, where there's really something to rally everything around uh no one's really too worried about the cyber intrusions happening because like that doesn't affect them on a day-to-day -day life right they're not too worried they're like oh man these big corporations had their secrets stolen well good fuck those corporations right that, that's that's basically the rhetoric that's coming out and it doesn't affect people really mm -hmm. the same way that it would be if they're saying all right well you know they bombed an american factory and did 10 billion dollars of damage to like pennzoil or mm -hmm. whatever right it, it's not the same and we and we can't sustain it and that's problematic yeah, and the cyber shit is like a pretty big deal. Like, uh, it's like very untalked about. A lot of people are very unprotected against it, and there's like a lot of damage that goes on relating to that. Yeah. Well, but so China was responsible for the Equifax hack, right? Where they basically took every single American social security number, mm -hmm. right? They're not going to go out and impersonate you or uh, or do any identity theft. What they're using it for is to just monitor what everyone uh, is doing, and then they can use that to find patterns of behavior. So they can identify like, all right, well, these guys are working for like the FBI. These guys are like sure, whatever. Sure, can they compromise yeah. or whatever, yeah. Yeah. And then same thing with that, the, they were behind the SF-86 hack too, weren't they? I believe so. Uh, I, I know the SF-86 was hacked. I'm not sure if it's them or Russia, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of uh, intelligence sharing between the two. But then it doesn't even matter anymore because no one gives a shit about solar winds. That's the biggest fucking disaster that, that we've had, like... That basically, imagine if you had a spy in every in, in the senior levels of every single U.S. agency. That's effectively what SolarWinds was. They were able to read every single communication between every single department. They were looking at everything that was done in the Treasury. They were looking at everything that was being done in the Federal Reserve. They were looking at all sorts of uh, flows and payments to all sorts of vendors. 
they literally saw everything. It's like if we caught like a thousand Russian spies all at once, th th there would be calls for blood in the streets to bomb Moscow, right? Mm -hmm. So why aren't we seeing that same level of response? Uh, and, and they've kind of there's kind of in this pattern of non-escalation from the cyber domain into like the real domain yeah because right? it seems unreal it seems like a different like thing like who cares it's just yeah. computer shit yeah well, yeah well because we just haven't had a uh like a, a a response doctrine right so for the united states like army well if you know the russian air force fighters come within x then you scramble fighters if they come within this distance mm -hmm. then like you start like uh warning and then if they come within this distance then like you shoot them right so we have very clear like rules yeah. of escalation the problem like, is uh, how do you even begin yeah. to do that for cyber related stuff yeah exactly and we haven't really had those policies and procedures uh it, trump did another okay thing in creating the space force which is essentially cyber command and splitting that out to its own thing mm -hmm. But uh, again, I think it's just tangential rightness rather than um, him like seeing into the future. I'm sure this is what's brewing under Obama as well. But that's something that we need to have something very clear. We did get some of that with NATO. But uh, yeah, uh, I mean, NATO now has a cyber command. I think we made that in 2020, but we're just starting to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of these things are very damaging to our economy and we're just not really realizing it. Um, I, I guess uh, another thing uh, is reliance, uh, I guess, uh, inner reliance of different uh, of a lot of countries is starting to become very important uh, in terms of getting people to do the things that we need, at least with Russia. They're so reliant on like natural gas exports to Europe that mm -hmm. it's been pretty good, uh, I guess, economically keeping them relatively tame, uh, I should say. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, they basically have like a noose around Europe's uh, neck, right? They're, they're not energy independent. They, I think they get about a third of their energy from Russia. So where does that leave like their economy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it just feels like we're just losing out on a lot of influence that we otherwise could be having because we just haven't progressed in technology. Are we increasing the amount of exports that we've been doing for oil to Europe? Uh, yeah, but you can't really, you can't really send uh, LNG over like tankers. It's just not energy efficient. It's incredibly expensive to keep it cold enough to be compressed enough to be worthwhile. And, and we don't have. You the, can't build like pipelines for that stuff, or. Well, you can, but you can't build pipelines across the oceans, right? Why not? Uh, Is it just way too it, it, much? It's far too expensive. Um, it's like the easiest, yeah, it's just way too expensive. Uh, it would be so vulnerable as well, right? Mm -hmm. So like, let's say we got into a war with Russia. Well, how many hundreds of thousands of- uh, Miles of pipeline you know, would you have to defend or anything like that? Yeah, and all you need is one sub to just like go down there, one torpedo dropped off of a drone. Like it would be relative, yeah, it, it's just, yeah, it, it's kind of unfeasible and it's uneconomical. No one wants to put out the cost for like a nuclear reactor. Mm -hmm. uh, because of how long it's going to take to start paying back and to be the same thing with those pipelines. Hmm. Um, people are saying Turkey's trying to do that in the Mediterranean. Yeah, but that's a far less distance. Probably not as deep to cover as well, I would imagine. Yeah. And a much uh, easier I mean, area to defend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and I guess that's the other thing too. Like all the other dictators that are kind of rising up. Like Turkey, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure... But we need Turkey because it basically controls access to the Black Sea, and you know it's on the south side of Russia. So there's a place that we can mm -hmm. theoretically shoot missiles at them, and that's just that much more land they have to defend. Let's see if I can find the World Bank. How, what do we, why, where does the support come from for the war on drugs right now? Is it just old people or when does the DEA well, so, shit change? So I think one of the big things when people talk about the war on drugs um, is there's a lot of like really bad downstream effects that, that are, it's, it's, it's really complicated because there's so much environmental damage being done by a lot of these narcos. Uh, there is a lot of damage that are being done to communities. 
uh, it, it's not good. But yeah, I would say it's mostly conservatives. But and there's like pretty good rationale for that, right? There's people getting murdered all throughout the Central and South America from this. Mm -hmm. So even if like an end user, it may not be that harmful for them for a lot of these. The money that flows through down across the border is pretty bad. And because we're not in a position where we can just like legalize uh, or uh, decriminalize a lot of these drugs, well, that's, it, it seems I, like the best thing to do. I mean, like these things would go hand in hand, of course, right? Like if you were to yeah, talk about yeah. like ending the war on drugs, yeah, it would have to come alongside the legalization of this shit as well, right? Yeah, but the question is like, should we be allowing people the decision to like massively harm themselves and others, right? I mean, if you look at our right to drink alcohol mm -hmm. for every, I want to say it's like every 12,000 people that have a right to drink alcohol, well then, you know, someone dies in a DUI accident, right? Mm -hmm. So th there there are trade-offs that are being made and yeah, it's a question that we kind of have to have as a society. And I think there's a lot of people on the right who says, no, we need to stop people from harming themselves with these I mean, illicit substances. Right? So while I agree with that morally, um, this, is very un this is a very unsatisfying thing to say morally, mm -hmm. but I think that at some point, I think you do have to look pragmatically at what's going on. So for mm -hmm. instance, like maybe well, there's something that's pretty harmful, but if it's actually fucking impossible to get people not to do it, maybe at some point well, you gotta be like, okay, yeah, fuck it. Like when we well, tried to like- The other with, moral um, answer then yeah. comes to, well, why aren't we intervening in Central and South America, right? We're, the, we're America, we could just go blow up all those cartels, but it's because we respect the sovereignty of a lot of these like partners in the regions, right? Well, wait, like, I think it's it, because it, why, wait, why would we do that? Why? Why would we go kill off all the narco traffickers? Yeah, like in order to stop that, right? Well, why would why we don't have an interest in those countries, right? Generally in well, South America right now. I, I mean, we don't. But if we really wanted to, I guess, stop this, like, uh, I guess, overall moral harm, sure, we would have to go down there. But if we have no interest in like what happens down there, mm -hmm. then yeah, it wouldn't be a problem, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah sorry, because I don't. I don't think that the U.S. would generally intervene just on the better of a country if they're trying to help people, right? Usually there needs to be some secondary interest or primary well, interest for us involved, yeah, right? Well, I mean, yeah, there has to be secondary interest and everything, mm -hmm. but for the most part, it, it seems like a lot of the world wants America to intervene when there's like definite moral wrongs happening, like uh, Darfur or North and South Sudan or, or Bosnia, Somalia or, or yeah. Bosnia. Yeah, but at the same time, when we intervene in other places and it goes bad, they'd like to blame us for it. Um, so like Iraq is a pretty good example of us shitting the bed and the world getting really mad about that intervention mm -hmm. and for to a certain extent the iraq war is a little bit justifiable uh, or was a little bit justifiable obviously the prosecution was like horrendous um, but, but i if you when you say the iraqi war was justifiable this is so, what, what you're really saying is he should have been kicked out after the first gulf war right uh, well, no, in that we should have actually intervened in 2003. There is a very strong case for it. Mm -hmm. So he was continuing to uh, maintain his uh, chemical munitions programs. He had acquired dual-use technology from France. Uh, he was uh, spending a lot of money to keep the technical know-how to produce a lot of these WMDs around. Mm -hmm. And he was actively trying to avoid sanctions in order to get more chemical weapons. Uh, or get the precursors and everything to create it. So, and he had the intent and the willingness to do it before. He had literally genocided like thousands and thousands of Kurds. He openly used these chemical weapons against Iran. And it appeared uh, as if he was going again to get these chemical weapons. So that is a justifiable reason, I think. Yeah, I guess it's just, it's hard to justify going in after leaving him there after the first time. Like what did we really expect was gonna yeah. happen, right? Well, I guess the thought was after leaving him in the first time, there would be a power vacuum and then he would stop going like down the road to these programs, right? Obviously the PR campaign of like, well, we don't want the the warning to be like a mushroom cloud. Well, that's kind of insanity. I don't think anyone actually thought Iran or Iraq was capable of putting together a, 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 that type of WMD. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Oh, oh but, real quick, hold on, because this gets argued about before on stream. Is it still mm -hmm. thought that like you can't enrich um, you can't enrich uranium secretly right now? Can you? Uh, no, not anymore, because we have a lot of really good satellites and sensors and stuff. Back then, I don't know how the mm -hmm. technology is, but when you're doing a lot of the enrichment process, well, 
Let me think. You need, like, my understanding, because there was a nuclear guy that emailed me a while ago, and he, the way that he phrased it was that as of current technology, without, like, future space shit, like, you can't get around the massive number of massive centrifuges that you need to produce this yeah, stuff. You well, can't just build it underground You, you or could theoretically do it, but you would need, like, a multi-decade long project to build, like, secret manufacturing plants, and then those secret manufacturing plants, like, you, you can't have, like, the satellites tracking the things coming in and out. And so nothing can get nice leaked on an intel level yeah. or anything, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so like you could do it, but it would be dramatically difficult to sure. do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so it's obviously like we, we totally shit the bed in Iraq and, and everything else. But people will say like, well, we shouldn't intervene. But at the same time, again, looking back at all those other examples, people want us to. They just want us to be right. And I, I don't think you're ever going to be in a position where you're going to be right all the time, and mm -hmm. then it's going to be used against you as propaganda. Sure. Um, because that's kind of, I mean, the easiest way is to say, look at the American failure in Iraq, because it was. Sure. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It's getting kind of late. You have uh, any uh, last minute questions or anything? Um, not that I can think of. I don't know why Dan fucking abandoned us. Uh, yeah, I have uh, no idea either. I was uh, hoping to talk to him a little bit, but we um, can talk at a later date. I appreciate you having me on and thanks for the shout out. I, I literally doubled my Twitch channel and got like 50 subs and shit, so I really fun. appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, have fun. Okay. Be careful. Stay safe. Rip on, my dude. Right, sounds good. Take care. Bye. Yep. Fucking nerd. Wait, did he actually leave? Key artosis alert. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ooh. Oh, he didn't even kill one. <laughs> oh no. Oh really? Okay. Yep, lost my vessel somehow. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Where the fuck is my vessel? I just lost 20 Marines! <laughs> It takes oh. two irradiates to kill a burrowed lurker, right? This guy doesn't deserve oh, anything. No. Rip. Oh, is it just one will kill a burrowed lurker? Oh, okay. I thought sometimes they'd survive with like one HP or something, but maybe not. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, 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 Nice. So I don't, we're not, we're never talking about this type of stuff again on my stream, okay? It's too much, too triggering. But you know what? I'm sure it's a great video. Which video Nick posted on your subreddit? Which video? Did you watch Get Out or Us? I watched both actually. I didn't really like Us that much. I really liked Get Out though. Holy fuck.
This game is getting boring. Uh -oh. I hate to say it but I rather watch 30 FPS Cyberpunk 2077 on a current computer or Mr. Mouton getting triggered and screaming in League Ranked. Uh oh. You gnome fuck! Lady Blade G. You gnome fuck! Hey Rage Pope, where did you learn economics and stuff? Can you link the wiki article? Pepe wins partner. Alan A, $5. Hey Destiny, I've been thinking a lot about the ocean lately. It even made me wonder how hot the sun is. What? Hey, just curious, did you think much about whether or not to include Nathan in streams slash videos? I see some creators go to really great lengths to keep their children's identities slash faces private, etc. Um, yeah, I mean, I tried to, um... Nice. Um, I, I, I tried in the past to keep it, like, relatively chill. Um, like, I don't mind if he's on stream sometimes, but I don't want him thinking he's gonna be, like, a fucking pro YouTuber or whatever. But now that we don't live together, it's... Oh, that separation, obviously, is quite a bit easier. Finish season one of SNK. I sure did. Why did I name my emotes after him? Um, oh, it was a mistake. Twitch had um, when the partner thing first came out for doing emotes or whatever, they're like, "Oh, name a prefix," and I was just testing. I was like, I typed in Nathan. I was like, "Oh, Nathan." And Dono it, Dubs yeah, I got stuck that way. So. Wait, hold on. Dono feels okay, man. What do you think of Attack on Titan? Uh, it seems like cool-ish. Destiny, do you think any US intervention in the Middle East was bad slash immoral slash unjustified? Or was all of it good? Doesn't North Korea have a brutal dictator attempting to get nuclear weapons as well, so why did you shit on Trump for escalating with them? Um, I... Okay, let's take this one thing at a time. Do you think any U.S. intervention in the Middle East was bad, such as and justified? Um, the U.S. intervention over there is very, very, very complicated. Personally, I don't think any of the kind of interventions we did with Syria, I don't think any of those were good. Um, that seemed to be a little bit bullshit. Um, or was all of it good? So no, probably not all of it is good. Doesn't North Korea have a brutal dictator attempting to get nuclear weapons as well? So why do you shit on Trump for asking them? So North Korea does have problems. Um, Trump didn't escalate with them. Trump tried to kind of sort of de-escalate, but he didn't really do anything. My problem with Trump was that he did nothing. He went there, he gave him a photo op, he didn't secure any like concessions from him whatsoever. And yeah, we gave them things. Like that was stupid. That's why I was opposed to that. I don't. Are you watching official translations or fan subs? I'm watching whatever is on Netflix. Oh, I was actually gonna mention this though. Either either the writing on Attack on Titan is really kind of bad, which is, it's an anime, so I don't expect much, or the translations are fucking horrible. Because a lot of the subs are really, ugh, not that good. Like, yikes. But it could be that the subs aren't bad, maybe the translation, or, or maybe the actual, I'm sorry, it might, I don't know if the writing is just bad or if the translations are bad. Or if there are better subs out there, maybe, I don't know. Everyone asks where's Dan, but no one asks how's Dan. How's Dan's back after I blew him the fuck out? You can now periodically return to the miner and pick up a stack of iron already to turn into useful stuff in your fabricator. 
Now that's what I call. Your next step is to craft all the components cool needed for bro. the remaining four texts. Wow. So in this order you should craft. Would you have supported any actual any attempt to actually topple Assad, or do you not see the point? Well, it seems like if the U.S. had went in, or and actually was like, yo, we're marching and we're gonna fucking topple Assad. I feel like we just move into all-out war at that point, right? Because Russia is probably not going to be happy with with us doing it. So Russia is going to have troops there. China, for sure, will have troops there as well. So instead of doing proxy wars, now we're actually just like all out in war in that region of the world, which is scary. Um, and then propaganda-wise, feels like America loses the propaganda war on that because... Um, it feels like America would just lose the propaganda war on that because now we're literally just marching in and like attacking another country like Shamelessly, right? Hutch is the coolest man on the planet, Dusty. Hutch is pretty cool. Netflix anime translations are horrible. Evangelion is a good example of that. Bonus meme, Gundam Unicorn Ost Attack on Titan. What? Since we're on the topic of anime, did you like Steins Gate? Um, Steins Gate is one of my favorite animes in the world. China isn't touching this at all, has no capacity to deploy, Russia's Alan involvement. A. Five dollars. Here's five dollars. Treat yourself to something nice. Bonus Thanks. meme. Destiny is a girl's name. China's not just at all. They no capacity to deploy. Russian mom would be restrained to supplying them. The real push would have been actually supplying the FSA, including um, with anti-aircraft weaponry. Other countries might not like it, but I think sometimes unilateral action is warranted. Moral underpinnings are provided by Assad releasing jihadists into Iraq, using chemical weapons on his own people, running torture prisons, and so on. So my understanding is that China actually did deploy like some sort of special services to um, to Syria in order to assist with like troop training and like ongoing operations. I thought that China did have people on the ground that were doing that in, in Syria. Um, and then I also thought that there was a belief that Putin had a very strong commitment to Assad, especially after Gaddafi's death, that, that, that Putin wasn't going to let Assad just go down without a fight, that that was going to be something that he draws on a lot of support for. Um, so like, I feel like, it, I'm not saying that we couldn't do it. I'm just saying that like, we, it feels like there would be a fight over it. Um, Nico, you need to calm down. Holy shit. Um, okay, what am I doing? You always ask yourself this question. What's up, Ninu? There it is. Have we seen past season one of Attack on Titan? No, I'm gonna have to download it, I think, because I don't know where to watch it. Legally, unfortunately. I watched season one on Netflix. Oh, Crunchyroll. Maybe I'll do it on Crunchyroll then. Yeah, and then also I think the series of like strategic importance for Russia as well, so. 
But yeah, I don't know. I don't know how things would have turned out at that point. What do you think about voting for things like the NPD, essentially third party in Canada? Um, listen, as long as you're not first past the bus, vote on whoever you want. I don't think I've ever heard you taking the death penalty at you for it or against it. Um, I believe that justice should be rehabilitative, like, I think that should always be like the essential thing that we shoot for. So in that sense, I'm kind of against the death penalty. Seems kind of dumb. Um, pragmatically, there's probably going to be reasons for maybe if there's like literally somebody that's impossible to rehabilitate. And then... Canada's first past the post, isn't it? I have no idea. Do you think rehabilitation works for white collar crime? I mean, you need to have, provide incentives for people not to commit crimes, and then you need to provide some level of disincentives for making people think they're gonna get caught for committing a crime. So yeah, I mean, I don't know, there's probably a lot that goes into it. Okay. best old school RPG that isn't Final Fantasy? I don't know. I played all the Fantasy Star games. I played some Shining Force games. Or I think there were two of them. Um, I don't know. Those were all fun. <laughs> Sorry. Spec Ops insertion for training is a far cry from open conflict with the Chinese forces in the scenario where we invade. Uh, but real involvement is about supporting the FSA and ensuring they operate as a viable alternative. Russia was invested for TARDIS and generic partnership, but TARDIS is not existential like Crimea, and we can out-resource them with escalating to, with with escalating to danger, dangerous conflict. You mean without escalating or with escalating, like we could threaten more dangerous conflict? Isn't TARDIS literally the only warm water port they have access to? Um, and then I understand it wouldn't be, I, I understand that it wouldn't be open conflict, but it feels like, um, it feels like it's just so scary. Like there, it seems like there's so many unknowns for what could happen. Like the FSA, there were a ton of other groups besides just the FSA that was active in that region. Like, there's always the possibility that there could be more radical members of the FSA that start to become more influential in that group, that some other group could grow as well. Um, that there, like, so one problem I heard was that the United States was shipping a lot of weapons through Turkey into, into Syria through back doors. I don't know if that's true or not. I remember reading this in a couple different places, but it was really hard to get information about stuff like this. But like, if that's true, it's possible that a lot of resources that were intended for the FSA could get co-opted by other extremist groups. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to know how, it's hard to know like what Turkey would have wanted at the time like, and how Turkey might have intervened in certain areas. Like, I, I don't know. Um, I, I just don't know. I don't know. Like, it seems like there's so many potential ways that that could like go so horribly fucking wrong.
Damn, mountains really fuck you up in this game, huh? Oh no, come on, this doesn't connect automatically? Oh, okay. Do you think Wes has gotta be like permanently banned, huh? What did he do? Well, he was, I think he was trying to make fun of booby streamers, but he, so he's like in a bathtub, I think pretending to like cover himself with shit or something. Wes was in a blow-up pool with brown liquid and was throwing kitty litter around. Yeah. And then his argument was like, because apparently he got banned for bodily fluids because he was pretending, but he said he was just pretending they weren't actual. Some of these people can get banned so many times. They're so brave. I am so paranoid, dude. I feel like if I get banned like one time for some shit like that, I feel like I'm fucked forever. I feel like I'm just gone. Wait, why the fuck is it trying to go over there now? Remember the video is how West lives? Would you be surprised if he was actually if it was actual shit on the top? <laughs> I don't think he would go that far, but yeah, his life, his home or whatever was really fucking disgusting. I don't know how streamers are so gross. Holy shit, people are insane. Streamers are crazy. Dude, hills, like, fuck you up so hard. Wait. Okay, hold on. Up. Okay, if we go up here, do we think the connection will be better? You can't connect on ramps? Okay, this is a little bit rough around the edge of this, my dude. Do you think the rhetoric Biden and Dems used around the 2K stimulus checks following up to the Georgia Senate race is bad? I know that the 14600 but the 
Yeah, that was probably not good. I don't know why they said $2,000 checks. Destiny stock me. I could convince you to be anti-death penalty in like 10 minutes. I stalked you and it just says stalk me 20 times with fish faces, so get fucked. Um, Courage Eagle, can you do it without the two most common arguments are it's more expensive to execute someone and the second one is that sometimes innocent people are executed. Do you have anything besides those two? Because I've heard those two a million times. My pro death penalty? Um, not, I don't think so, not really. It's usually not very compatible with my view of justice. So I, I don't know why he would try to make me anti-death penalty when I'm not really pro death penalty, but. Why can't I like build this up here? This is kind of annoying. Like I wanna make this point down, but I have to go past this. Is there a way to do this that I'm just like fucking up? From a morality standpoint? um. From a morality standpoint, it depends on what you mean by that, right? Like, from a morality standpoint, I'm not like a huge fan of like revenge. I don't know if that's like a very, not, not revenge from the state. Now an individual enacting revenge, mm, I think I can understand, but probably not condone. Haven't there been studies to show the death penalty has little to no effect on the rates of crime? Correct. I think there were two big reasons that I'm familiar with for why it doesn't really work that way. And I think it's because one is because some crimes are crimes of passion, meaning you're not really thinking about it. Like you're not like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna do this and like now I'm blah, blah, blah. like usually it's like a more extreme thing than that. Like you're you're in a, you're in a passionate moment. You're not like being very rational. And the second thing is that like when people get caught or, or when people commit crimes, they don't really think about what's gonna happen if they get caught because most people don't think they're gonna get caught. But I think like for deterrence to work, for for deterrence to be an effective means of like punishing, or of, of for punishment to be an effective deterrent against people, they have to know that they're gonna get caught and they have to know that they're gonna get punished. Like both of those things have to be there. Like it's really important. Are the financial arguments against the death penalty legit? No. To me, if it's more expensive to keep dude alive for him to do absolutely nothing with his life, then the death penalty makes a lot more sense. It, I mean, it just, it doesn't matter because you wouldn't use the financial argument in the other way. Like, what if I said, well, actually it's cheaper to kill somebody than it is to keep them alive. Would you be like, oh, well in that case we should kill them. Like, that's not really, I don't think that's a good argument. Wait, what? Probably also need quick punishment too. Yeah, sure. It's like punishing a dog or a kid. Yeah. Fuck, 
Ik ga het Punishing dogs and kids works, though? Yeah. Oh, fuck, hold on. Only certain types of punishments work. Like, a punishment has to be swift, like, at least for dogs. Probably for kids, too. Um, the punishment has to come, like, right after the thing, right? Actually, humans can probably deal with delayed punishment a little bit better than dogs can. But, like... You can't punish something, somebody for something they did, like, like really from the past. Fuck me, I'm getting triggered as fuck. <laughs> Where the fuck were you at, Dan? Yeah, I have my own life. I don't revolve around you. What okay. the fuck? Sorry. Are you, you though? Were, you were watching a video or something, and I was, did not- Do you guys think he's sorry? Past. You know what, you're right. I'm not sorry. At least you're honest about it, Dan. True. What did you build in there? My dumbass factory shit. Do you want to, um... Do you want to play Call of Duty? Yeah, we can do that. But listen, as a long-time viewer, I'm gonna have to ask you to uninstall League, okay? Um, yeah, I've been watching for a while, and I feel like I have that right to... Put that demand on your stream. Do you know? Well, I mean, I was watching the Hutch stream, and that dude said that he had the right, so I figured, fuck it. True. You're speaking some big truths there, Dan. Mm. Let me ask this. Are you playing in the background and just not on stream, or have you completely given it up? Playing what? Well, League. Like, have you just not played at all, or...? No, I don't have time to play shit in the background. Hey, listen, don't get frisky with me. I was just asking a fucking question. And all this shit, like, oh, I don't have time. I'm so fucking busy. That doesn't work on me. I know that you're on the computer all day, every day. When you're not streaming, you're playing games or jerking off or whatever it is you do. So. What are you talking about? The only games that I ever play in the background <laughs> might be those dumbass fucking idle games. But I don't have time to be playing up, like, huge fucking things in the background. You know this. Fuck you. Why are you acting like you know that's the... The you know, I wouldn't be—I don't know—I wouldn't be surprised if you're playing like that Final Fantasy or whatever fucking weird turn-based game, the anime shit you're doing in Hawaii. God, that game! You're an addict. You know what? And also, I you're not a good friend. Me. When you go out to dinner mm -hmm. or you go out with people, you don't bring your fucking laptop like a degenerate with you and play games in the back seat. That is the most neat, not a normal person thing ever to do. I, I had to beat that game. Okay, that. listen, I had to beat it. What am I? What else am I gonna do in the back seat, Dan? I don't know. You're part of the conversation. You get involved. You do shit. Instead, you're well, there. You like, guys have something good to talk about. Well, I'll listen. What was, what was the name of that game, anyways? Fell God, Sail. it was so. Oh my God. It was just, it looks so cringe. And if anyone looks over, there's you, like, with anime titties jiggling around and shit what like that. What are you just, talking about? It was sprite based. There was no jiggling, Dan. I don't Whatever. He's mad. <laughs> He's super mad. So. Super mad. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I tried to make a filet mignon today, Big mistake. and I feel like I'm fucking it up. Okay, let me tell you what I did, okay? I, I genuinely want to do a good job. I tried to do a good job, and I didn't. I'm not, like, a particularly good good cook. So, I bought a filet mignon, mm -hmm. um, like one of the prepackaged, like, grass-fed cups, okay. you know? It's yeah. like a little cup. So, I got that, brought it home, whatever, a few days ago, brought it out of the fridge, let it get to room temperature, okay? So, I let it sit for a little bit under... Um, you know, it was all sealed in plastic, so I put it in some, like, lukewarm water mm -hmm. until it got to room temperature. Um, then, you know, it's sealed. The, the steak's not touching the water, just to be clear here, in case anyone's... Okay, so steak is room temperature. Un... Unwrap the steak. Uh, put salt and pepper on both sides of the steak. And then I get my frying pan. Okay. Hot, 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 hot. Put some oil in there. Put some thyme in there, and uh, yeah, and then you put the steak in. And it says you're supposed to do like not long on each side, like 45 seconds to a minute on each side. And I did that, but it's like the thing is like it's not like medium. It's not like medium rare. This thing is like blue beyond. So what the fuck am I doing wrong? That it's it's not like 
cooking it to the level it needs to be cooked there. Wait, so what the fuck is your problem? I don't understand. How Forget it. Never, why, why am I asking you for anything to do with food advice? This is really my I, Cook it longer, place. Dan. I don't know what the fuck the problem is. I don't need any food advice from you. I was just yeah, telling okay. you what well, I did. Well, if you guys need to help, pro tips in chat, so I do the line cook. Here you go, guys. If something is not cooked, then you need to either turn the temperature up or you need to leave it on the pan longer. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck else kind of you know, advice you're looking for. Fuck okay? off. Just, I, like, I don't know. Like, you, it's a very difficult thing. I used to, you know what? Fuck off. Yeah, is I, it? I is it difficult? You know, it is. It oh, is. Yeah? It's not so easy. Yeah. Okay. Um, you I know, like if anyone wants to come over to my house and show me how to cook a filet mignon and, you know, do all the steps for me, you know, just uh, just let me know, and uh, you guys can show me. Thanks. We'll have a we'll have everyone here. All right. But if you do a bad job, <laughs> you get disappeared afterwards. What? What do you mean by that, Dan? Just like it sounds. Not in a video game. Jesus. What does it mean when it's showing me like 20 different ways to make this? I don't know, dude. Fuck. Why does it only show me one way to make it down here? Because this is the only way I can handcraft it, I'm guessing. Okay. All right, I'm logging off. Here I come, Dan. Uh, I'm loading. You gotta, you gotta make a new gun. The gun you're using right now is not good anymore. Wait, no, not rust. God, no. <laughs> It's not that funny. You just accidentally started the wrong game. Yeah, that's hold on. I look spectacular in this. I was walking on the beach earlier today, right out there. See that? Everybody wants to buy this off me. I got this from the official AOC site. Now let's talk about gross margins. Check this out. Yep, official AOC shop. I paid sixty-seven twenty-two for this. I'm gonna guess she lands this, or you know, basically for I don't know six bucks. It's fleeceware and five bucks for shipping. That's 85% gross margin. That's spectacular. Listen, you know what this proves? Inside of every socialist, there's a capitalist screaming to get out. AOC, call me. We could blow this thing up together. We could make a fortune. I only want 7% royalty. That's being reasonable. Call me. Wait, is this being sold by AOC though, or is this being sold by her like political campaign? Because if this is being sold as like a campaign thing, then the margins are high, but she's not personally making all of that money, right? Can you just let us have something? No, nice? I'm not done. I'm tired of all analyzed. the dumbass fucking information. Jesus, People have no be. idea about what is anything going on in the world. It's just fucking annoying because the problem is somebody will see this as a meme. He might know that it's a meme, and you and I might know that it's a meme, but then dumb fucks will unironically run around and be like, why do campaign people overcharge for their merch? You guys are the true capitalists. Well, no, these go to fucking fund their fucking campaigns. Like. <sighs> God. I'm tired of all the misinformation online from everybody, okay? Just living with you must be so exhausting. Like It's not. Hey, just uh, stop M Melina, lying about everything. Some cereal. All uh, you have to do here, is not lie about cereal. everything. Actually, this is not cereal. This is, uh, if you go back to the Roman definition of cereal, this is wheat that has been shredded. Uh, and this has not been shredded. Why are you lying? Why are you doing Okay, what's the, best, what's the best What's the best gun, Dan? The Amax. What do you have? Show me what do you have leveled up. I guess the M4 is still surprisingly decent. The M4 A1, Hold which you should on. have. Some guy with. emailed me a huge thing. This was in December, so it was a month ago. I don't know if his thing is still up to date. Okay, he says to make a kilo. No, the kilo got nerfed. How long ago? Listen, I'm gonna tell you what to do, okay? Oh I am a god at this game. All right, make a new class with the M4A1. 
Okay, assault rifle. Why not the fear? Because you don't have it leveled at all. It is a. You could buy one though. Hey, you want? Well, you won't like it. I'm for a one. Okay. Okay. Now what? Okay, so you want to go ahead and, and edit that puppy. Yeah, go. Okay, so you want to put on the grenadier barrel? I don't have that. But go ahead. Wait, you don't? It's the second unlock. Oh, you're right, I do. Wait, is this for a noob tube? No. Monolithic suppressor. Oh. Okay. Uh, commando foregrip. Okay. Uh, 60 round mags. Okay. And you can either keep the iron sights or you can put a optic on it. Or you can put a uh, pack laser on it. It's kind of your, your call. The VLK is very popular. Tack laser is... Okay, now I'm going to shut that. VLK optic. It's a 3x, yep. All right. Is the and then what do I use instead of the Renetti's? Um, you're not gonna have it yet, so just just tell me what it is. I can level it up. What? No, no, no. no. Uh, it's the uh, the one all the way at the top, the Diamantes. But I don't think you're gonna have it if you don't have. Oh my god. But they're not that amazing anymore. Can I just buy this shit? Um, don't don't buy it. I think we just need to get an SMG. You just pick one up off the ground. I'm out of CP points. Fuck. Okay. All right, join on me. <sighs> Coming, babe. Okay. You know my favorite part about telling anyone anything about any fucking Everybody game or anything? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like, Dan, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> you're so stupid. I bet... Oh, God. Just really fucking grinds my gears. Who's out there in chat? Let's see. Hold on. Who's awake? Let's see. Anyone I want to make fun of? Uh, hey, hi, Nighter. When you see this, just know that you're you're a, a dumb fuck, and you smell like old newspaper. And now everyone in chat knows that. Wait, it's not even true. I smell really good. I have really nice cologne. What he the fuck? Like Why didn't I join? Wait, you're not joinable dead. now. What'd you do? What'd you, oh. you're, you're, you're in with me. You're done as fuck, man. I love, just kidding, I love you. You ready to see who's the bigger dick this game, Dan? <laughs> I already know the answer to that. It's me. Gotcha, RTBA. I kind of figured as much. Without telling me you're a millionaire, I'll go first. The last four digits. Hmm. This looks like a fun game. Let me try. Let's get this Monet, man. I'm gonna leave a little up to the imagination, but you can just picture what you need in order to get a secure login like this, where you need to put a 64 character off a numeric ID, an RSA key that changes every 30 seconds, a password. And then you can only log into this account twice a day within two 30 minute windows that changes every week to email you. So if this blows up enough, I might show you what's behind the little door. We keep it to the Monet. Tell me you're a millionaire without telling me you're a millionaire. Oh, my dick is way bigger than yours by two inches by my count. Damn, I don't give a fuck about warm ups. Dropping into the 
Destiny, it's loud? Yeah, war is loud, dumbass. <laughs> oh, got him. All right, pay attention. This is a win, okay? You will you will do as I say. All right, you know where we're going? We're going to the farmland. And we're going to push our way backwards. You know what that means? Yeah. Wait, there are no gonna... contracts there at all, Dan. Fuck contracts. Contracts are not based. We're landing there. And then we're going to make our way to here. Got it? Go. What, what are you doing? Hello? Where are you going? Exactly where I need to go. Do you want to fucking let me know about that? I, I don't even know where... Go to your ping. Why did you jump out so fucking early? Because you pinged on two different areas. I don't know why you did that, okay? But I'm going, okay? You're dumb fuck. You're dumb fuck. Dan, you're dumb fuck. Hey, Dan, you're dumb fuck. I had to hover in the air for you. No, you don't have Parasite. to hover shit, dumb fuck. Why does Dan choose the most cucked landing spots, guys? Right, I don't know. I'm sorry. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> Shut up. Hey, remember that last game where I carried us to a fucking W? Yeah, that's right. Okay, calm down, Dan. Just remain silent when you speak. To okay, now let's go and push our way. Wait, that where's way. the what's the auto run? Oh, it's out you, this is not the time the to auto run. <laughs> it's the most Stop. important key in the game. Stop. Okay, whatever you're doing, because I'm sure that what you're doing right now is like. Hold on one second. Reading Hello, fucking Reddit. Dan yeah, no, Mom, no. I love you. Please. Stop. Pay attention, okay? I'm tired of your bullshit. You always get us killed. Dan, I am the kill leader, okay? I am your fucking god, all right? Oh my god. What are you doing? I just am <laughs> finding so many good guns. We're looting, we need to be looting. I am looting, you dumb fuck. I'm gonna die, and you're gonna be over there eating do you want me to UAV? How do you have a UAV? Well, Dan, sometimes when you yes, open loot box- Yes, use it. Yes, use it. Requesting recon. UAV okay, good. Let's oh, push the let's air. go. Let's go. We don't have our kits. I we do. have a lot of money. I got kits. I've got kits. No, you're going to get us fucked. You're spastic with this shit. Like, going out there and, and just going after people. Do you want- Like, we have a buy station here. Hello? Yeah. I see him, Dan. Don't worry. I know what you really want. You want blood. Me too, Dan. We're gonna die. Be advised, UAV is bingo fuel. RTB for resupply. Look, they're running. Let's just loot this house. Too late, right I'm here. already on him. Going this way. I hate you. Okay, I lost track of him. Wait, that right, live chicken me. fighting is still going on on Twitch? What the fuck? Come here, let's loot. Going in. I'll take this, you take that. Going in. Thank you, Dan. Well. All right, we definitely have enough for loadout now. Wow, good math, good. Dan. We got over 10,000, nope. don't we? We sure do. <laughs> That's enough for a loadout. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Dan, Dan, right, the basic go. addition, Bye, man. Eat a dick, bitch. You know, I just shit talked to you like that, you took it. You know why? That's you're the type a of man you are. No. Come on. The difference is, Dan, is that if you bully me, all I'm going to do is bully you back on stream, but if I bully you, <laughs> there might be one less Dan in the world. <laughs> okay. That's not true. I have very high self-esteem. Hey, Dan, how mad are you that I'm about to grab this most wanted? No. Hostile dropping in. You see him? No. Do you? Are we going to a buy no. station or what? Yes. Here. I'm moving. Wait, there's people here? Oh no. Yeah, there might be. I heard running. Going this way. Shh. I hear it. Why are you making so much noise? They're inside. In this house? Yeah. Do you want to bust in, Dan? <sighs> Dan? Okay. We're inside. Oh my God. This is a stupid idea. We're gonna die. 
Do you hear him? Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Dude. Don't Was, worry. Oh, team life? Okay, good. All right, let's go by. Come on. Right here. Going up. Oh, here, fine. Do it. Load out right there. Moving and by armor. Load out, drop heading your way. Um, armor plates on the ground. I'm good. All right, let's go kill some motherfuckers. Here, do you have a good SMG for your secondary? Do not use your pistol. No, but I got a heavy assault rifle, which is what I uh, like. Go, 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 go! All right, let's go kill people this way. Did you, wait, did you not need any of that armor? No, I'm full. Cringe. Come on. Wait, I should have bought a UAV. Why'd you tell me to buy fucking armor that we didn't need? Fuck. I wanted you to buy it once. I don't know why you bought it twice. You're a crit. What? Why? I, that what? was a mistake. Well, how go pick it up. Huh. Wait, how do I use my... How do I use my one thing? Wait, Dan, watch out! Wait. Oh my god, I forgot how to play this game. I'm getting away from you. Wait, how the fuck do I use... Oh, wait... How do you use my hard weave sensor? T? I thought it was G. Oh, apparently not. Q. Oh, shit. Oh my god. I did too much LSD. I fried my fucking brain, Dan. Dan, no one is out here. In fact, we have to wait for circle. I just received the... communication that this area is cringe. Oh wait, I got somebody. Where? Movement. Down. Dead. Okay, look for his ally. Heartbeat is empty. Moving up. Our beat's still empty. Our beat's still empty. Oh, I got someone. Where? Right in front of me, 50 meters. Right in front of me, 30 meters. Maybe in that building. Yeah. Oh, Enemy UAV overhead. Enemy UAV. Hold out, drop headed your way. All right, we should go get that and get Ghost. Okay, I already have that. Enemy team is tracking oh, I don't. We're being tracked? Yeah, come on, come with me then. Let's go get Ghost. Wait, why are people saying ban? What did that guy even say? Marking you safe zone. Oh, oh, the chicken thing. You guys are weird. All right, just cover me while I get this. And shot some more this is... Okay, ready? Yep. Fuck this way, fuck it. Oh fuck, it might be across the... Bullshit, I think it is. Yeah, I don't know if I want to cross that, that's like... Not where we need to be going right now, bro. Do you want to wait here for the circle then? Yeah. Do you have a good secondary or no? I'm fine, man. 
because I dropped a good secondary. Don't up. worry. Fire, don't worry fire about me, Dan, okay? What are you doing? Oh, checking some tinders, huh? No, I don't think my... Black oh, is oh, crap. Hold on. Is my screen still black? Yep. Don't let me die, okay? I might let you die. Okay. Okay, we're inside. Scan for movement. Was it lagging before at all, guys, or does it not matter anymore? Okay. All right. Are we good? I'm moving. Uh, yeah, we're just chilling, waiting for circle. Fuck, I'm getting all my hotkeys mixed up from like other games now. I'm trying to like minimap and rust. Okay. Dan, I need to kill. Okay. Okay. Do you want to try to get on that oh. building? I'm moving. We should go towards prison if you want to kill motherfuckers. Oh my. God. Wait, where's the? No, wait. Actually, the circle. Oh, Ah, oh, we gotta get to a buy station. Where's the closest one? Oh, let's go, Dan. Uh, there's We're literally fucked. none right here. Let's go. Wait, I'll take that. Careful, because there's gonna be some motherfuckers on that thing. Almost guaranteed, bro. Whoa. Heading this way. Moving out. When you get there, just fucking spam by UAVs. Wait, I think you only buy one thing on a fire cell, right? No, you can buy many. Is there anyone there? I think we're alone. Alright, bye, bye, bye. Just spam by. Oh my god, do you have to go up on a platform? Oh. Right, Wait, no. Why are we Enemy spam by? Because we can use them. Enemy, are... I, use one? I used one right now. Yep, I'm using one. Okay, and I'm using I'm one using... more. There we go, there we go, there we go. UAV the okay, look, look. So there's other oh, station here. Let's go, let's go. Save it for me. It's just one. Okay, so everyone, there's only one dude left. UAV is bingo fuel. RTB for you see him running? No, I. UAV is bingo fuel. RTB for resupply. Fuck. It's happened him a few times. I don't know why I shot a short word. Where is he? You see him on the map, Dan. Yeah, I'm looking for him. Dude, this is not my gra. Movement! Fuck. Shit. God damn it. Great. Oh, you, oh, you're super dead. I'm super dead. Dude, this gun is ass. Holy shit. How many bullets hit? Oh, no, I was one shot for killing him. Fuck, I feel like with the, I feel like the kick on this. It's so much worse than the Graw. Alright, then use the Graw then. Well, no, no, then the Graw was before the nerf. Maybe there's nothing that's supposed to be like that now. So is that guy dead or no? No, I didn't kill either of them. Alright, I'm landing here. I'm gonna load out then. Pay attention, you'll be out there soon. Get yourself sorted, you're up next. Is the Kilo the M4 or are these two different guns? Okay, looks Got like you got to buy that one. 
Where's this buyback? I don't need you saying anything, okay? And if you're going to say something, be helpful, okay? I did. I was letting you know trouble was brewing. That's why I said, uh-oh. All right. Just, just shut up, okay? You, you, like, distracted me. I would have been fine. And then I was like, okay, he must have saw. I, you know, I think I'm getting shot from behind me. All things line up. But he said, uh-oh. Why did he say, uh-oh? Is there someone in front of me that I didn't see? You fucked me. Now go make your fucking gun, then, if you don't like the one you have. No, this one is great. I'll... No! <laughs> Go make what you want to make. Chat knows so much more than me, so go listen to fucking them. What's the best gun right now, guys? You don't have any of it leveled, so you can't use it. I can what get I'm... it and level it, though, in-game. That's the whole point. It's the Amax. The Amax is the best gun. The CR-56. CR-56 Amax. Yep, that's the best gun. All right. All right. There we are. That's all I needed, baby. All right, ready when you are. I'll just drop you. Um, I'll drop it too. I do so many emails when we play Call of Duty because we're dead. Well, maybe if you played better, it wouldn't be an issue. No, it's good. Check your gear and weapons. Planes are making ready for deployment. Okay, I will be uh, trying this one up then. Oh, I'm not. I'm hanging out on top of this one. Cool story, bro. All right, we're going here. We're getting the bounty contract and we're hunting people. Hell the fuck yeah, Dan. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Battle Royale. Oh. Gas is closing in fast. Get to the safe zone.
It's not showing me distance down. Oh, now it is. Okay. Ready? And meow. Ready, set, meow. <laughs> yes. I'm down. Get it? Enemy soldier incoming. Eliminate all targets in the AR. You got someone in one of the buildings. Need help, Dan? No. Oh. Get gunned up. I am already gunned up. Objective is to eliminate the Ready? Target. That's our bounty, baby. Yeah, Ready? I don't have a gun. I'm going. So no. I'm going, Dan. Let's go. I would you do? I don't have a gun to kill them. I kind of have one now. Oh, I'm dead. Well, oh, it's been fun. Yep. Why would you camp this early into the game? How fucking bored must you be? Holy shit. Where are they? They're just hiding in a window in one of the buildings of Shaman. You can always have a go at these bastards while you're waiting. Give them some choice words or smash their mugs with a world place stun. Fight's kicking off. You're up next, mate. Get ready. Turn to the front line. You lose, your fight is over. <laughs> Time to earn your freedom, soldier. <laughs> what? Stand by for redeployment. Did you kill those guys? No. Oh. Oh, they're oh, still up there. Are you ready? Oh, boy. How, who plays like this? Oh, my God, dude. Can you pick me up? Can you come back here and pick me up? Don't die, please. Oh, my God. Dude, what a bitch. I can't. I don't know how people can play battle royales where they camp from fucking thirty seconds in in the same building. Oh my god. I hate this game, dude. Why do we play this game? It's such a shit game. <laughs> if we're not winning, it's garbage. It's someone else being shit. If we win, it's pure skill. And that's a fact. That's not. Un that's that's not irony. Oh, great crossbows, my favorite. Guys, I a new game. You're the party leader, aren't you? It was close, Dan. No, just just stop. It's fine. It's like it's so cringe. It's so fucking cringe. I get a like get a gulag with an AK or an AR or LMG. Fine. Now for you, Dan, uh, fist fights or. Um, a shotgun with a sniper scope on it, or uh, a crossbow, or we got another one. It's like a guillotine, but you kind of throw the blade at the other person. Yeah, but that's what you get.
Intel sorted. We'll be deploying we'll shortly. Here. Owned. Good. <laughs> he's mad. God damn it. Enemy dropping into the AO. Playtime's over, mate. You're going to the war zone. All right, ready? Yeah, I am ready. Battle Royale. Okay. Trust me. No, 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 no. This. I say we land here. Ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. Why Dan, did you wait so long? Try to keep up with me on this one, okay? I'm literally in front of you. Okay. But try to keep up, okay? That's all I'm saying, man. Identified. Are you ready, Dan? Right, lads, let's get it done. Oh. Well. Don't have a good gun. Don't have a good gun. Don't have a good I'm gun. ready and I'm Why going. Would I? Please don't be fucking roof camping already. Oh, they will be. There we go. Oh my god, they are not moving at me. Why are you so far away from me? What is wrong with you? I need action. Oh. They're up. Jesus. What are you shooting at? They're on the other side of this building, Dan. I'm going up top, breaking butt fucking. Why? Yeah, right. Alright, fine. To the left. That wasn't the bounty. Careful, careful. I'm going up top. Did you finish the guy down? Yes, yes. Okay, let me know when you're up top. I'm up top. See anybody? Oh, there he is. Where, Mark? What do you mean, where? What are you looking at? What? No big deal. They call me Jason Bourne. Yeah, do they? Yeah, they do. You don't even see what I did right there. I saw. I was waiting for you to just run in and suicide, so congratulations on not dying, Dan. Fuck oh, off. I'm legitimately impressed. Yeah, because I'm a good player. There's something, all right. Let's go by. Right here. Right here. Are you ready? Yeah, I don't know how to Bye. get the fuck out of here. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, this is the danger zone. Right here. Found a vendor. Get you supplies. Oh, I hate this place. I'm take you. I I have to move. I fucked him up. I fucked him up. I'm I'm armoring. Did you get the buy nope. thing or no? Okay. I fucked him up, but Gas is moving. 
Can I trust you to cover me while I buy? Yeah, go for it. Be quick. Then let's get the fuck out of here. Come I'm, on. Oh god, I fucked up. <laughs> you It's okay. Up. All part of the plan, Dan. Okay, cover me. Yep. Okay. Okay, cover me. What? I got the wrong gun. All right. Come Hold on, on. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm armor or healing. Wait, can we kill them? You don't believe in us? No, man. No, I don't. We can, we can. This is, this is beyond. You just gotta be like good, we can, Dan. No, we can only you gotta see be a good. portion of their head. Yeah, I broke his armor, left tapped. He's cracked, Dan. I just need you to turn. I need you to turn up, Dan. Oh, fuck, Dan. Pick me up. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Yeah, this is why we can't fucking do this because now they can yeah. push us and we're fucked. No pushes. We just stop. Are we gonna run? Stop. Yes, we're gonna run over there. Look, blue. Ready? I'm going. Okay, great. Shoot at him. You stupid fuck! I hate you! And you're. Oh my god, I hate that's you so much. That's why we had to run. I hate run. you so much. I right, hate you so fight. much. That's why we had to fight, so Dan. We can't just much. run. Why do you put us in these fucking situations? You're the, the one that wanted place? to go to that buy station. I didn't want to fucking be there. You threw the fucking loadout drop there, so we had to stay there. God, I hate you. <laughs> Dan. Look, I'm gonna go buy you back on the cheap now, okay? No, I have to wait. I have gulag. <laughs> God, you fuck me. A, I'm gonna go buy you back then, don't worry. Oh, at least I'll have my uh, perks and all my guns. Oh, wait, I won't. Uh, we'll get a loadout, Dan. No big deal. You guys, so stupid. I, like, I, just playing with you is the opposite thing of fun, honestly. I need. You, are you dead yet? No. I'm just go to the buy station and chill. I'm going to the gulag. Well, I've got like oh, a... Oh, great. Fist fights, my favorite. Yes. <laughs> You can if do it, I'm blaming you, okay? You Alright, I'm coming to you. Really? Oh, God! Taunting your enemy is an effective way to get inside their heads. So is a well-placed stone. Time for a bit of argy-bargy. Get yourself sorted. You're up next. Listen up, soldier. Win here and you return to the front <laughs> What line. is this if fucking... You lose, you're done. Time to earn your freedom, soldier. It's not even a one-shot kill? Are you serious, dude? What a fucking meme. Oh my god. Unreal, dude. Okay, good luck, Dan. Doing some emails. I hate this game. No? I'm moving. I think I'm there forever now. Perfect.
Holy shit, you have more damage than me this game. Good job. <laughs> this game. Every game. Aid station marked. As a solo to a fucking cluster strike, boom! I kill a guy. Another cluster strike. It's so, so stupid. It's so. What am I playing with? Fucking. Oh, just, just go. Just whatever. 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 That's okay. We tried. Melina, stop distracting us. Okay. We're trying to focus. Careful. Squad double. What is this? Well, that's a computer. What? We have to like rearrange this whole fucking room, and I need to like take apart all these computers and put them back together. Tonight, maybe, yeah. Tonight? Uh, maybe. We're gonna bat! Yeah! Oh, and then you can have my other computer, too. Yeah, I'm excited so I can actually play games because this laptop sucks! Whoa. Dan? Yeah, not helping her anymore. It'd be like, Dan, can you help me with this? No, never. I'm not helping you or her with anything ever again on anything. It's like, hey, Dan, I know you're really good at real estate. You know what I'm gonna say? Fuck off, figure it out yourself. For anything, anything, it doesn't matter. If it's like, Dan, I need help fucking your wife. I'd be like, tough shit. Go figure it out for yourself. No advice for you. Nothing. Nothing. I hate them. You okay? Sorted. We'll be deployed shortly. I'm driving. On either. Enemy soldier incoming. I didn't hit. Whoa! 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 <sighs> okay, then. Fine. Oh my god, those are all misses. Holy shit. Wait time's over, mate. You're going to the war zone. Okay. Now. Yeah, that's a good drop. I like that one. Save it for me. No, orange. Battle Royale. You've got gas closing in fast. Get to the safe zone.
Unpin it. Stop. Unping that. We're not going to that one. We are going to that one. Fine. We're going to Fine. the close one. Why not go to the close one, Dan? Because that's where all the rats are going to go. Ah, and so you're no scared. You're sca there will be guns. Watch. Boom. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. That's what's going to happen. When I land, there's going to be three people in front of me. I'm going to go boom, boom, boom. Big check. Taking all three out. Oh, my God. What? Um. Oh, what a surprise. No guns. Have fun. Be careful. Nice, I got a pistol. I got a pistol, nice. Going in here. Does anyone need this? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Kit it up. Oh yeah, you're ready? Yep. Okay, well let's go. Let's go. Go here. Going this way. We're gonna die crossing, so just be ready. They're in here, Dan. Yeah, no shit. Shh. All I have is a one RPG, okay? Wish me luck. They're above us. I'm checking left room. Why are you making noise? They know we're here. They're red hot. Shh. Damn, they're upstairs. You ready? He has a fucking mall pop in his hand. Wait. They're not up here. Shit. They're on the roof? Oh, god damn it. Do you see him? Yeah, they're outside. Both of them? I don't know. They're in our building now. Down below us. Wait, careful that. Oh my god. This is what I get when I fucking try to do bounties with a goddamn machine gun. What? What are you doing, Dan? How do you do how do you let that guy just push you and kill you? Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm just bad. If you survive, you earn your freedom. Fight's ready. You can practice your aim while you wait. Taunting your enemy is an effective way to get inside their heads. So is a well placed stone. Fight's ready. You're up next, mate. Get ready. You win this fight and you return to the front line. But if you lose, are you? Oh, you're, no, you're in Gulag. Great. So we all failed. Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to kill that most wanted. Stand by for Oh yeah, are we? I'm yeah. going too. Let's go, Dan. Wait, nope, did they just? Never mind. He's, he's dead now. Oh, that means someone killed him. Let's kill who killed him. Uh... Oh, super. Nice. They're all that's left. Get it done. <laughs> I'm, I, I don't want to play anymore. I don't want to play anymore. This is not fun. Damn, listen, it happens, okay? Look, you got more damage than me. That was good. I, I don't want to... Uh, this is not fun. Okay, one more. We're going to win this next one. I can feel it. Let's go. Either that, I'm going back to Dyson Sphere, Dan. Do you want to do that to my audience? Oh, my God.
Destiny, dear Destiny, can you please play League of Legends on stream but play mid lane as Annie? Thank you. No, come. <sighs> Warm up's done. Time to kick this off. You ready, Danny Dan? Yeah. Okay, let's try this again. Can you stop doing your emails? That's probably why we're, we're dying. I, what, I'm doing it during one. What the fuck? No, that doesn't matter. You're thinking about doing that. Three, two, not... one, go! Boom! What? Big oh, shot. The DM? Big shot. Where's the contract? Oh, it's me. That's People are here, you know. Objective is to eliminate the bounty target. Okay. Like, in here with us? Yep, right here. I see him. I see him. I see him. Right there. I don't know why you would follow me. We we're gonna flank him. That's okay. I'll just die. I'll just die. I'll just die. As usual in the fucking video game. It's totally fucking <laughs> legit. Fine. How does that even happen? Like, if you see my POV, I'm fucking emptying. I'm unloading clips, bullets into this man. He has more bullets than man at this point. He turns around, one shot, I'm dead. How? Why? I don't understand. Am I like getting invalid projectiles or something? I don't. I just. I don't understand. Is everything okay at home, Dan? Oh, it was. Damn it. Ah, uh, the gulag with my favorite. The fucking crossbow. Yeah, that's cool. Don't give me anything good. Everyone, Call of Duty developers. Hey, what do you want to do in this? Uh, dude, I need you to stop screaming while I'm in the middle. What does this guy have? A little a fucking hundred mound fucking mag. Ah -ha. I'm like, no way did he have so many bullets. He had so many bullets. He had hundreds of bullets. Get out of my house! Get out of my house, bitch! Sorry. Ugh. Okay, where are we going? Go kill our bounty, then. Finish our mission. Complete right. your destiny, okay? The, the bounty is on the other side of the map. I can't. I can go here. You can always have a go at these bastards. Uh, Give them some choice words or smash their mugs with a well placed stun. God, I hate the fucking crossbow. Actually, no, I'm just gonna loot here. Nice. Chill, get some money. Can get my fucking loadout for the first time in six games. To the oh, car 98, of but course. You lose, you're, you're up, soldier. Now go sort this yeah, you kick 
their ass. Stand by for redeployment. Oh, do you want to kill that guy? Or where are you already landed? I already landed. Oh, clown. I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood. But damn. Okay, let's run a nice and easy. This will be a fun damn contract, Mark okay? Wait, oh shit, there's people near me. Where? How close? Movement. In that building? They must be. I heard windows breaking, I think. Wait, I just broke a window. You sure it wasn't me? Yep. Might have been you. Do you hear anyone in there? No. Maybe it was you breaking windows. Here, I'm dropping ammo. Fuck it. If you need some. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't. But okay. Mark some gear. Get, get this. Move to the next yeah, area. Secure the perimeter. Don't yell at me. Who do you think you are? The better player. Pick up your own goddamn yeah. contracts. Oh, that seems like a familiar spot. Head in this way. Primary objective accomplished. Recon intel secured. We need three hundred dollars more. Marks. I know just where to get it, Dan. Do you? Move to the next area and secure the perimeter. Yeah, let's do another recon. Okay. Wait, where's the buy station? Oh my god. We have to go here to this Found one. Oh, I missed a cell for five? Hold on, I thought it was a fucking med stim thing. I, the cell for fives look like the little like stim pack thing, so I always ignore them. Yes, they do. Shut the fuck up, Dan. You little cock boy. How much armor do you have? One. one. Alright, I'm throwing this box then. Actually, no, I'm not. This might drop armor. Vendor marked. Recon intel secured. Solid work. Alright, let's go. We have to go to the, um... Yep, let's station. go. I pinged it. That one. There's only one way there, Dan. I'll try. Oh, can we get out now? We can get out now. I'm getting out now. Oh, free loadout. Free loadout. Go. I'll take that center. Gas is closing in. Free 
relocating the safe zone. How many boxes? One. Oh, thank fucking you. Oh, I see people right there. I'm running away. Oh my god, my screen went black when I picked this up. Why? Yeah, I see oh, they got a vehicle. Downed. Oh my god. Oh. It's a fucking vehicle exploding. Their car? Yeah. I kind of got to get the fuck out of here, Dan. Oh, there's another guy right down there. Where? Yeah, on the mini map, Dan. There you go. He's running? Got him. That was probably the teammate of the other guy we killed. Are we running? Um, yeah, we have to go on zone. I'll just be chill, okay? Play this like a smart individual. We need like a buy station. Um, I need armor. Yeah, me too. Okay, there's one right here. We're gonna run into it on the way. Come on. We should head to the safe zone. I'm buying a UAV. UAV? I'm buying and, armor. Uh, I'm buying self revive. Oh, you have a cluster strike. Fuck. I'm gonna use it then. Bring the UAV over here. I have a cluster strike, what? Okay, there's one guy right here. Going in. And do you wanna go kill that one guy? On stadium? I need or... to get Yeah. There's two on stadium right now. No no no, not on stadium. The um orange the guy on or he's in a gang in the car, I think. Vehicle here. Oh my god. What? I, did you just throw a C4? No, I'm just chilling. Okay, he's in this house. Mark out, moving. Yep. I'm moving. I'm moving. I think we go up the right over here. Do you want me to UAV again or? Um. Do you see him? No, I'm down here. Okay. Many UAV, okay? Or no, I'll wait. I don't know where you're going on that side. How are you gonna get up? This is I can get up shit. anywhere, Dan. I'm a fucking god. Yeah, UAV. Friendly recon's online. What the fuck? UAV entering the AO. Did he drive away? There. I'm moving. Orange. Oh, they're we're. Do you want to try to run in and kill those people as they come in? Um, what people? We're follow me. Come, can you follow me? Oh, there's three people to the right. There, yeah. Yes, I know. That's who all has to come in. We should kill them. Uh, okay. Be advised, UAV is bingo fuel. RTB for resupply. Somebody like right in front of me as well on the UAV. This is actually just bad for us. Hold one of those buildings. Enemy launched an advanced UAV. We're exposed. Enemy vehicle! 
If they're coming, they're coming. What, our way? Well, no, I'm saying if they're Just pushing in. Right? Get to the new safe zone. The pushing orders are fucked. We gotta go, Dan. I just got an assist for eliminating someone, but okay. We're just gonna run it in. There's a car we could take. Found a ride here. Mark some gear. And grab it, fuck it. Objective oh, car close? Yeah, I see it. Enemy. Down one. I'm armoring. I'm on the other side. I'm self reviving. He's coming for you. Nice. Pick up the um, satchels. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, ready to go? Yeah. Losing ground. I'll take passenger. Don't mind me. Oh my fucking god. Do we want to go to the left and try to intercept that bounty? Yeah. But I don't want to stay in this car for long though. Okay, we don't have to. We're gonna probably get blown up anyway, so. Right now? Out? Yes? Out? Hello? In the hangar, we'll get out. In a, okay. Out. To our left? Yeah. I'm looking for them. Is that a person? No, that's just a... Hey, I see him. I, I see... Right here. Contact. Enemy UAV overhead. Down one. Contact. Fuck! UAV you gotta kill him, Dan. One dead. There's another one more to the right. Okay, yeah. Because you could have UAV. Or not UAV, sorry. self revive. Oh, he's trying to go real far. Can you mark him? Oh, I see. No. We just see that he's going wide. Well, he has to push to us, so just keep going. Right. I see him. Movement! Movement! Fuck. He actually made it. He's probably going on this side. Stop. Yeah. He went below. He went below. Okay. We can fuck him. Are we going to fuck him or is he going to fuck us, Dan? Um. Contract time expired. We lost the target. Ready? Enemy UAV overhead. I'm holding the exit right here. Push slow. Planting explosives. Wait, I can maybe I'll come from below. Come from below. Yeah, there's a way out. All right, I'm below. Start pushing down. Gas is moving in. New safe oh, zone fuck. located. What? This is a bad idea. I'm in the gas here. I have to. I have a gas mess. I should be fine though. Enemy UAV overhead. I'm just holding the stairs. Are you? Yeah, that was me. I'm okay. I'm okay. Can you get upstairs or no? Okay. Armor at once. Okay, I'm waiting for you. Okay. Okay. Wait, is he above us? I don't know. Can we push down here and check? Is he above us?
Yeah, okay, he's not there. This is fucking AIDS. We're in a really bad spot. Guy's like a fucking magician. We should head to the safe zone. Enemy UAV overhead. Let's uh get on that building. Piper, was that at you? Here. No, but I heard it. Are you? Thank you. Are we sure this Enemy UAV building is safe? Oh. No. Alright, shut that door. Oh, I see someone coming in. Movement. I thought I did, did I? Gas is inbound. Marking you safe zone. Maybe I didn't. That might be crazy, sorry, never mind. Ugh, this building sucks for sniping. Wait, someone's running up. Dan. Yeah. Okay. Which door? This. Door I don't know, but door? I hear him running up. Yeah, I'm watching that. Get behind cover. Oh. Is someone coming your way? Can't hear shit. Team wipe? Uh, yep. It says on the thing. Oh shit, we We're gotta gonna go. Have to go do you need armor plating? No. Armor plating and gas mask over here. Really? Oh, I do need a gas mask. Okay. This sucks. Ah, uh, fuck me. Shut it? No? Yeah, yeah, the fire station. I can snipe back at him. Where are they in the fire station? Up top, I think. Downed him. Nice. Enemy contact. Hold on. Armor plating again. Enemy UAV right, keep overhead. Going. Enemy, enemy UAV overhead. Enemy UAV overhead. Looking at the fire station. Ready? Wait, someone just bought back. We gotta go. Gas is coming. Right here. Someone has been here. Stay on the net. I just I cracked the guy's armor. He's right next to you, around this wall, I think. Oh my god, he made it to the train. Did you get him? Yeah, can you pick me up? Depress, you'll be okay. Nice job. I have two armor plates left. Do you have any extra? I have seven. Oh shit, I'm getting shot at from... Behind, behind, behind! Oh, Your team is KIA. It's up to you now. Why'd you leave, Dan? Because they were shooting at me and uh... You're losing ground. 
They're pushed. Oh no, it's yeah, you're fine. Okay. Go get my my gun if you can. It's better than yours by far. Are you serious, kid? You playing again or are you done? Um, go one more, fuck it. I left the train because I was getting shot consistently. That's why as soon as he got me up, I went back down again. So I figured, fuck it, they're shooting me from I one side. I need you to turn, the train I need you to turn up, Dan. Be safe. That's why, okay? Thank you. Dan, 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 we got a top five finish, right? We have to do what? We got a top five finish. Oh my god. Warm-up's done, Dan. Yeah. All right, this is my last one, okay? Okay. So, you know, let's make it a super store drop, then. What? No. Let's make it a W, okay? W, this is the W zone. I pinged the W zone right here, okay? All right, you get that contract. I'll go here. Battle Royale. You've got gas closing in fast. Get to the safe zone. Fuck, Why did you... fucked up super hard. Melina just tried to. Oh, you have to climb for this? Oh, you're going after it? Or no? I'll, okay. do, it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Go get guns. Wait, what the Enemy. fuck was that? We're gonna take him out, right, Dan? Uh, no, I'm gonna get a gun because I have a pistol. Push inside this building. You're pushing? Yeah. Push right on top of me. Wait. One's down? I'm stuck in here. Good luck. What are you doing? Hello? Your teammate has entered the gulag. 
Surviving earns them redeployment. I, I mean, Shh, where's the down guy? He's probably oh, fucking back him. up with his fucking wife no, and kids at this point. Done. That was ten years ago. <sighs> I'm not with you. Okay, pushes anyway, dies. Destiny, where are you? Okay. It's all good. It you got, we got the gulag in. Hey, don't put that on me. No, okay, we got the gulag I, I was going in there. We got the gulag then. That's all that really matters. We win from the gulag anyway, every time. You're up next. Get fucked on. Win here and you return to the front line. You oh lose my your God. fight is over. I mean, God, what? I don't even know where that guy shot at me from. You gave him a proper I'm a fucking god. Wait, what the fuck are we doing here in the middle of fucking Nowheresville? Well, I figured that everyone else was going to have a giant penis right now. Monster. And that my penis was going to be small and shriveled. Because I'm spawning into the game late with a useless fucking teammate that fucks me and doesn't show up on camera so motherfucker. Mel? What the fuck was that? She like slams every fucking door. I don't know why. It must be a Swedish thing. Well, I'm glad we uh, used our gulag because, you know, it's for a good cause. And... Well, you can't gulag on this, like, third to last circle anyway, which is how far we're making it, so. Does it really matter, Jim? Just closing in. That was you just broke a window, right? Yes. Use your ears. I did use my ear. That's why I asked if you broke that window that I heard break. Yes, but then you would look and use your eyes as well as your ears. Oh, yeah. To, to know that it was me. Okay, Dan, you know what time it is? No. Oh. I'm still looting. I'm looting. Here. Oh my god, am I losing my mind? It must be on the roof, right? How do you get on the- how did you get on the roof? Don't worry about how I got up in here. Oh my god, there's a fucking- Alright, no, we still don't have enough money. Collect money. Alright, let's push over to there. Going in. Uh, there's a buy zone over there. Come on. That's clear. Is that some money I hear? Yeah. Okay, we have enough. Let's go to that buy station. I'll even give you the good gun. Dan, I don't want your gun. Come on, come on, come on, come here. Hold on, I'm trying. No, stop, we're done. We're going to the buy zone. Okay, coming. Up there. Going this way. You're still in the building. Nope, I'm, You're running, still I'm running there right now, Dan. I'm totally... Oh my god, I'm running right there, right now. Are you fucking with me? You haven't ran at all. You're literally lying right now. Literally? Or... Yes. Oh 
You ready to buy now? Oh, is it convenient for you? Here, take I'm this not gun. taking any yeah, guns. Take it. Doing? You'll actually be able to do something. I have decent guns. Hello. Listen. Stop. I'm trying to right level here. my shit, it's Dan. It's the I'm not same. It's it. the Amax. Oh, you fucking God. degenerate. So it's the same dumb. gun. And just say that next time instead of trying to be all fucking cryptic about it. You're I not, wasn't you're not being... a fucking secret. You're not just Jason Shut the Boyd. fuck up. You're not a God, secret I... agent. Okay. Just say like, hey, it's the same gun. You'll still level it. Easy. I didn't know you were saying. You're just being difficult. Jesus. What is wrong with this guy? Where are we going? Moving out. Kill this guy. Contact. Oh, load out, drop inbound. Oh. Um, okay. I don't I don't need ghosts for right now, that's fine. Wait, vehicle behind us? Really? Or it's, um in the direction? Yeah. He's headed towards the loadout. Gas is closing. Hey. Get to the new safe zone. Care package marked. Ooh, there's a bad boy there. You see him? Being bad? Yep, they're fighting. One down. There's one on the loadout, I believe. Yeah, there's one far left as well. Cool. Keep your eyes on. I'm him. going. I'm going high up. I got a fucking Tonka truck approaching. Oh, never mind. He's leaving. Coming down to you. There might be a guy behind me. Easy. Okay, ready? Yep, let's go. Oh my god, in that thing? Okay. Can we get out now? Ouch. Right here, let's fight. Fight him. Okay, get out. No? Down one. Mm -hmm. Reloading. Ouch. He's got a sniper. We're getting shot at from behind. We have to Are leave. We? Yes. Okay. I'm down. Take the pain. You'll oh, that was fun. Alright, until tomorrow. I love you, Danny Dan. Be careful, okay? Yep. Bye. Dan, you're the man. I fire. Don't I let fire. anyone tell you different, okay? Okay. Sometimes, guys, sometimes your memes become dreams. Look at your new video. Love this fan begs Hutch to disown. Di no shit. I don't know if this is good. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Thread. Damn, dude. This guy's people fucking. Or this dude's uh people. This guy's people hate me. This guy's people. This dude's fans hate me. Jesus. <laughs> it 
This dude's fans. That's what I was looking for. How many weeks do you set up your computer? Um, I'll probably do it tomorrow or the day after. But I'm leaving on Monday, and then I'll be gone until Monday, so. Oh, no. Don't wolf. Don't <laughs> Fuck, I want this load. Destiny interviewed MTG's dem opponent whose life fell apart and was forced to drop out of the race. Democrat Kevin Van Ostel suspended his campaign for personal family reasons on September 11th, 2020. Later emerged that he opted to move in with relatives in India after being forced to get his house in terms of a pending divorce. Reportedly, his wife divorced him because of death threats they were receiving. He did not have enough money to pay for a place to live while the divorce pending, and federal campaign finance laws does not allow candidates to. Uh, as a result, Van Ostel was forced to move out of Georgia, which made him ineligible for the seat. House candidates are required to at least live in the state they wish to represent. Oh, jeez. Fighting. Rip. Was this guy favorite to win? No, most of the congressional candidates I talked to were pretty big underdogs. That done, find another iron ore patch and get that set up too, but this time you're not smelting iron ingots, you're smelting magnets. Magnets take 1.5s instead of 1s to smelt, so you'll need 9 smelters instead of 6 to make a full belt. Wow. You should watch Jujutsu Kaisen after Attack on Titan. Alan A, $5. The problem was that I only had one snake which means the birthday cake was very old. Breathe out completely and have some sips of water slowly. 100 hiccup curate. Nice. Destiny what happened the other day when you made chicken on stream? Did you eat that little bit and throw the rest away? You gnome fuck! Javoy Ingram, 10 Canadian dollars. I actually know him personally. He's kind of low-key weirded out by the whole thing because he's kind of a person that doesn't understand, that just doesn't understand why we're stressing about ones that interview on. I guess it is when I'm in it, but he's got the self-awareness by understanding of stuff he doesn't get, which seems based as fuck. 
there are so many people that post on these message boards that always say they like, oh, I'm a personal friend of him. Some guy on Kiwi Farms was doing it too. What the fuck? What does he like outside of his streams? He's pretty much exactly the same. Honestly, it just feels different when he's acting that way to you personally and when he's talking about different kinds of stuff. Mostly I'm talking about privately. It's funny on camera, but it takes some time to be able to handle it one-on-one. -on -one. He thinks he's some kind of feckless sociopath that everyone can tell it's Stanley or Toxico. Wait, who is pretending to know me? <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? Molina, do you post on 4chan? Shut the fuck up. It's Dan. Damn, yeah, January has been pretty insane. Holy fuck. Should I make a manifesto about the stock guy stuff? I don't want to, like, start more shit. I don't know how many things I need to be writing down carefully to document everything. If this is the era of <laughs> unprecedented manifestiny. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wait, for what? Oh, just somebody, people, there's a lot of people that like will talk shit about me on the internet or say good things about me on the internet and they'll always be like, oh, like I'm a personal friend of Destiny, blah, blah, blah. Like one guy on Kiwi Friends was pretending that he was friends with me in high school and that he was like talking about how I wasn't high, but everything he was saying was wrong. It was just really funny. I had like two friends in high school and one of them is dead. So I like, I don't think that, <laughs> I don't think there are very many people that could be posting out there about me. So it's just like, it's very interesting. I'll play, we're playing the one to meme game for 30 minutes, okay? Stay mad. How was I the meanest little kid? Bully with a capital B, my friend. Stop. I was not the meanest little kid. You guys are ridiculous. I was never mean to anybody. If anything, I was a victim as a child. Actually, you were the one that came up with that stupid joke. Is your hands bigger than your face? No, I did not start that. Yes, he Jesse, $5. I want to point out that YouTube was sitting at 2.3K viewers for most of the day. Because YouTube chat best chat. Thanks, YouTube. You guys are fucking awesome. TB, quite honest. Not about that. Wait, why, what is that? Wait. You've never heard about that? No. Don't. If your hand is indeed larger than the size of your face, you have cancer. Is it's, that a joke? It's not true. It's a joke, basically. They're going to make you put your hand in front of your face. <laughs> Just, you know, humor us. My hand is not bigger than my face. How do you know? I'm going to say this one last time. If your hand is, in fact, bigger than your face, you have cancer. No, you don't. It's a scientific fact. You can't joke about cancer. You can joke about cancer, but only to a certain extent. If your hand is bigger than your face, you have cancer. 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 Uh, Stephen, how are you today? I'm, I'm good, Beth. How are you doing? We got the test results back. And I'm sorry to say, your, your hand is bigger than your face. I, I don't 
don't understand. Well, we did x-rays. Let me show you. The data shows clearly that your hand is bigger than your face. You have cancer. No, this doesn't make any sense. What, what kind of test did you do this day? You need to be informed. Now, I don't know how this wasn't caught earlier. Those children, you know, do a pre-examination in grade school. Hi, Stephen. I'm just here to get all your info so we can um, talk about possible treatments, you know, radiation, chemotherapy. I don't have cancer? Uh, oh, we, uh... I actually have to talk about that, Stephen. We have prostate cancer. I mean, I know we had a good laugh. But prostate cancer is no joke. It occurs in about one out of every five men in America. We've had about over 200,000 cases in the last year, and this is not something you take lightly. So ask your doctor about regular prostate exam. Okay. Hey, how can I help you? I'm I'm just, I'm just looking for a faucet. Okay. I know you have a big selection. Yeah? But I got a picture of what I want. Oh, perfect. Let me take a look. I was hoping you could tell me if you had that because I've been shopping. Destiny, wait, no. What? Around and no one seems. Does this not safe for work or something? Just to have this one. I, I think we've watched this before. Be moving toward that weird. Oh place yeah, place. and we had the same thing. But it's like covered with tape. This isn't TOS. I don't know. Not in stuff, but. So you guys had that online, and it just looked perfect. You know, I'm not a big fan of this shabby sheet craze, but I was hoping you guys could tell me. I, I can't. I don't want to risk it. I'm so sorry. I love you guys. It's too spooky. Because if I'm banned, I'm getting banned forever from this shit, okay? I'm never coming back. They're never letting me back on. Be back one sec.
Well, well, well. What the fuck did you do to that Hutch fan? I don't know, dude. People are fucking insane, man. in your latest YouTube video. Yeah, I just, I don't know how that dude hates me so much. I don't know how anybody hates me so much. Whatever. Did he ever post a screen grab of the whispers he got? Were any that bad? Usually when people bring this up, usually they're just lying. Now, I'm not saying this particular guy is lying, although I am heavily implying it. Um, but like, cause I know that like in the past, I know that uh, especially with transphobic stuff, like usually whenever somebody says like, oh, I got a bunch of transphobic hate from Destiny's community. It's like, oh, we'll send us screenshots and we'll ban the people. Like RTD has reached out to people and said that and nobody reaches out. So it makes me wonder sometimes like, is anybody doing this or are you just like, Victimizing yourself to try to like get fans or some shit. I don't know. Means they don't care, and the only thing they cared about is getting you canceled. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but hey, what are you gonna do? Well, I guess you get canceled eventually, huh? Which is so scummy, the guy kept bringing up your relationship with Trax is ruined and ignored Hutch every time I tried to correct him. Yeah, he went from like bringing up like he would rather turn on his friend than stop seeing the And then when Hutch was like, oh, I think they're still friends, he's like, I don't know what their relationship is. I don't care. I don't know anything about that. And I was like, oh, okay. Did you listen to Kraut and Vosh talk? No, but I heard Kraut was drunk and said a bunch of dumb shit. Okay. First president that lifts. <laughs> Good one. Has Hutch reached out since? Um, he uh, talked to me a little bit and asked me, but I'm trying to be like, um, since I get fucked by everybody, I'm gonna be a little bit less generous this year. So I'm trying to like think of things in a different way. Cause I, I've had to develop kind of like more strategies personally to make sure that people aren't like taking advantage of me. Cause it's something that I let people do quite a bit, um, ironically enough. So like, um, so basically my response to him was like, hey, listen, if there was somebody in my chat that was super publicly shitting on you, I can't imagine asking you not to bring it up publicly. I would never do that. So like, I'm not gonna honor a request asking me to do the same. That's basically what I said. Okay, hydrogen. 
He had solid points somewhere, but he was so hammered and off his rocker, he just kept rambling and calling Vosh of a fat fuck. Jesus. Okay, hydrogen. So I can make hydrogen out of what? Oil and... This is like crude oil, isn't it? It must be. Oil extractor, of course. Oh fuck, but I need steel first. I agree with you, but what if Hutch felt you talking shit to his shot affected his viewership? Um, it doesn't matter. Do the same thing. Um, I, I would never expect somebody to come onto my stream, have one of my fans shit talk them, and then tell that person not to like respond to that fan. I would never I would just I would never make that demand of somebody. So like I won't I won't let anybody make that same demand of me. You and him are still cool? Yeah, I think we're fine. Does this affect your bridge with Hutch? Um, I'm not sure, hopefully not, but... I think I have to have like some basic level of self-respect, probably. Who is the artist that does the Super Techno Composition Challenges? Lave, I think, or something? L-A-V-V? -V. Have you ever asked him why he defends you so hard? Usually people defend me hard because they feel like people misrepresent me, or they feel like their chats are being unfair. But, like, you can't really defend me. Like, you gotta consider, like, these people fucking hate me. Like, super duper duper hate me. So there's not gonna be much, like, defending. Was the Botez bridge kind of burned because of her community? Uh, I have no idea. I don't know about that. I don't even know if that bridge is burned. I just think that she there were like other people that she'd rather collaborate with. You decided to grip to the lefty and didn't get call it lefty shit. How much bigger do you think your streams would be? Um, I don't know. Good question. I, I actually can't do it though. I'm too weak. <laughs> um, I've I've legitimately thought about it a lot in the past. Where it's like, could I just suck it up and just fucking do whatever, like make friends that I hate or like talk about shit that I don't really believe in and just fucking meme it up for the views or whatever. But I don't think I can do it. It just drives me crazy. When I see people that are just like lying or like spreading misinformation or like not doing their due diligence, like it just it absolutely fucking drives me insane. I can't deal with it. So I don't think I would make it very far. Can you give me the drama note? For Hutch? There is no drama with Hutch. I don't think so. Me and Hutch are cool. Like, the problem is just that, like, so many other people, his community just fucking hates me. Like, with a fiery fucking passion. Okay, where do I find oil? Coal, coal.
Destiny, honestly, same. Oh, wait. Oh, what's up, Anina? Does your community fucking hate me, too? <laughs> the surprising thing was me, even Dr. K's community hates me. It's like, holy shit. I just had a lot of patience and even discussions with a guy in the past off stream, being persuading with someone. Eh. Well, the thing is, is that like, I can never ask somebody to like defend me to their community because I know that that's like an incredibly cancerous position, and that's a really big ask too. And I wouldn't expect people to fight their communities and shit. So. Okay, crude oil. Shut the fuck up. People said if I click him, he'll shut up. <gasps> Wait, did he? Did that work? I didn't expect such a warm welcome here, guys. No. Oh, were you just memeing? Oh. I don't understand how you are so surprised people hate you. There's so much misinformation about you. I guess, like, the weird thing, and maybe it's just the way that people interact with their communities. I feel like if... I feel like, generally, if I like somebody, I feel like if my community doesn't like them, they'll eventually come around to it. Like, I can't think of very many... There have been a few people that I've known long term that my community just never liked, but um, generally I think it's not usually like that. But it feels like I have so many good relationships with so many other streamers, despite the fact that their communities just absolutely fucking hate me, which is like really weird. Do you think it's possible to be super consistent with your positions and not eventually end up with everyone in your life hating you? Do you think requirement to being hyper rational, principle self, blah blah blah? Um, I don't know. Who knows? It probably it doesn't matter as much as that. I think people just really don't like it if you like ever call them out on anything. Like people view it as like a huge betrayal. I think it's that simple. I don't think it's like that much more complicated. Than that. But whatever. I don't. Whatever. I'm used to it. You should talk to talk to Dr. K. I don't know what we talk about. Okay, do I need to build, like, pipes for this? Talk about why all internet communities hate you. I feel like it's a very in-depth conversation that would be very difficult to have. <laughs> the problem is that, like, if you're hated by that many communities, then you must be doing something wrong. That's what I would instantly assume. It would take so much to, to convince me otherwise. If somebody were to tell me like, oh, like it's, so, it's a huge problem, like so many different communities hate me. It's like, okay, well you're probably doing something that's making people hate you. <laughs> like, I, I don't think that's, that's like much of a productive conversation to have. You can use regular conveyor belts. Wait, really? For oil? I think Dr. K could help you, plus it would see, help the way communities see you. I mean, I've already been on Dr. K, I think twice. I just need to be able to like, I just need to practice, I need to practice my fake tears. I think that would help people see me in a better light. Cause I think I come off as like pretty cold. Maybe, and maybe if I like came on and I like cried and I was like, oh, I'm so sad the internet hates me. Like, I just wish people would be nicer. I'm trying my best. Like, maybe people would see me a little bit <laughs> more, more humanely or something. I don't know. I feel like there was some situation. Like, I feel like there was room in the Bob Seven stuff. If I was a different type of person where I could have, like, cried in frustration and people would have empathized with me more. But... You were also on with Anita, Lily, XQC, and Devin. I've been on Dr. K on my own either once or twice. It wasn't always with other people. Is there a way to combat people who play the victim without looking like a complete asshole? Um, rhetorically, yeah, there might be, but I don't, I'm like not, I'm not a very big optics person. I don't know. I just don't really care much to like, trying to make, like, the problem is that, like, I've, I'm a pretty big loner in my life in terms of, like, how I've always lived. If somebody's not going to like me, I'm usually just very upfront with that. Like, hey, listen, like, I'm a very particular type of person. Like, a lot of people don't get along with me. Like, that's just the reality of it. But I'm okay with that. Um, 
so like spending a lot of time trying to get people to like you that might not otherwise like, it's just like, I just, it's not something I'm very interested in. When I rated you in the past, a bunch of people asked me not to raid you, but none of them would say why. I think sometimes people just jump on a bandwagon. Oh, nice, Anita. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, that's another thing too, is that like a lot of people, I think the most frustrating thing for me, one of the reasons why I said I was gonna try really hard to combat misinformation this year, like the whole Bob Seven shit or whatever. Um, I've thought about doing this stuff in my personal life too, although it feels a little annoying. Um, is that like, the annoying thing is that a lot of people don't like me for reasons that like are actually just completely fake. I, dude, I've been so gaslit about my own past. I was asking Melina the other day, I was like, oh, like, how old are you now or whatever? Because I, I don't remember or whatever. And I, I thought that when I met Melina, I thought she was 18 because I've read so many times on the internet that it was, but she was 20 when I met her. And I was like, wait a second, what? Wait, what? <laughs> I actually got so fucking gaslit on her own fucking age. I was like, wait, she was 20 when I met her? Holy shit. Because so many people say that I look fucking like date teenagers and shit, even though every girl I've dated basically has been like my age. Just fucking Jesus. I thought she was 19. Was that a meme? Yeah, I, yeah, that was a meme. She was 20 when I met her. It's just, I don't know, I'm not. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Have you ever thought about making videos slash live streams, debunking the common memes, put it against you? The problem is, is that like I thought I thought about doing that, um, but um, the, it's just like I don't know like if there are any fights worth having there. And the problem is that, like, while correcting the record, you're always going to give people, like, more stuff to attack you with. So, like, it's hard to know, like, what's worth it. So, because there are a lot of common things that people say to me. So, like, for instance, like, a lot of people thought that I, like, left Nathan to go hook up with Melina. And it's like, okay, well, I made the decision to move here. First of all, I decided to move away, like, years ago. I just wanted to wait till he was older. Um, and then, um, and then secondly, I, I didn't even know Melina when I moved here. <laughs> like, it has nothing to do. She had absolutely no, no play whatsoever in me moving here. Um... But then I, I feel like, but like if I put out a video like that, people are gonna be like, oh, well, you're still a horrible deadbeat dad for like moving away from your kid. It's like, okay. Like, is it like is it worth it? I don't actually know. That's the problem, you know? Um, Vosh did a video covering all his shit. Yeah, maybe. Wait, where the fuck am I going? Okay, I need to go over there. Oh, I'm trying to build in straight lines, but this is like a fucking globe. I'm not really thinking about this very well. It helps to split the blame onto the mother for remaining in Nebraska. Yeah, but I don't really want to, I don't ever want to make his mom look bad. And then there's also like a lot of stories that get conflated. Like people say that like I shared nudes of like Nicole who was 15 years old or whatever. And it's like, okay, firstly, th none of this, like, first of all, I've never shared nudes of somebody underage, number one. And then number two, Nicole was never underage. <laughs> and then number three, like the issue that I had with Nicole wasn't that I like shared her nudes with anybody, it was that I called her ugly. There, it, but like the problem is that like my defense of these things still puts me in like a bad spot. Cause it's still like, I've done like shitty stuff. Like I've done like bad shit before in my life, obviously. Um, so like, I, I don't know if it's worth it to, to like come out of like, okay, well, hold on. You think I did this bad thing, but really I did this bad thing. I, I don't know, it's just kind of annoying. Is Nicole Bad Bunny? Well, her name is Nicole too, but. But it's easy content, it helps you rap, and when people Google your controversies, they can get both sides. Yeah, maybe. I'll probably do it. It's funny that lefties attack you over Nathan. Are you supposed to take Nathan away from his mom by force? Well, I, I'm guessing is that what they should say is that I should just continue to live in Omaha in a separate house from them. But like, I mean, like I could, but damn, first of all, I hate that fucking city for a variety of reasons related to my past. Um, and then secondly, like, Man, I have to pay for a whole second place to live in a place that I fucking hate being, like, when I can't live with my kid anyway. Like, I don't know. Like, that's, like, really shitty. I don't know. Or, like, it feels shitty. Like, it sucks that, like, I'm a horrible father, degenerate piece of shit because of that. Like, but whatever. I'm surprised more people haven't brought up Blue Tea. Well, Blue Tea is Nicole. That's who I was referencing.
That seems notoriously bad when talking to other people, so it'll happen whenever Contra reaches out rather than when he reaches out. I reached out to Contra two or three times and she hasn't responded, so I assume that she doesn't have an interest in doing it. Um, I'll never message somebody more than like two or three times. Like, if you're not responding at that point, then I figure you probably don't have the interest for it. But the problem is, like, I'm a really, really, really polarizing person to talk to online. And if you do engage with conversations with me online, you're gonna get a lot of pushback in your community. So, like... Gene Adam, five dollars. Well, I think you're a great dude working hard at always being better wow, like we all should. Destiny, my sexy commie mommy milkers and dripping, please clean up this messy he. Now, you mean about the gaslighting? A lot of people with turrets get called fake on the platform. Most of them end up doubting their own condition because of it, wondering, am I fake? Oh, sure. That's rough. Does it annoy you that 90% of the people attack you for leaving your kid aren't a parent and probably don't know shit about what it's like? Yeah, sure. I don't know, it's whatever. At least you kind of have a free filter for spineless people. Those that get through probably tend to be more real. Yeah, but the problem is almost everybody is spineless. <laughs> Like, especially in this world when you kind of like live and die by your viewership, right? Like people aren't usually gonna take a strong stand against something if it's gonna hurt their viewership. Like that's probably the thing that I've learned like the most through all of this is like people will always protect their, people will always protect their viewership or like the connections that they have, you know? Okay, hydrogen is made, okay. Production, chemical plant. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, Anita. I don't read Twitch chat that much. I'm not reading any chat because I have to focus on this fucking game. Oh, but I read her last comment. Chill out. I'm trying. Okay. Have you ever had a streamer apologize to you after big drama? Um, almost never. But I don't like apologies. I actually, I actually really, really dislike apologies. Generally, if people reach out to me to apologize for something, I usually tell them that I don't care or I don't want to hear it or like I immediately just tell them to fuck off. Um, if you, if 99% of the time when somebody is apologizing, they're trying to like alleviate their own conscience. Um, I don't give a fuck, and I'm not here to give anybody the satisfaction of feeling like they didn't do anything wrong. Like if you fucked up and you did something dumb to me, like just don't do it again, and then we're probably chill. I don't usually hold grudges, um, but like don't don't sit there and be like, oh, like I did this thing to you. Like the problem is that like. Anybody can apologize for anything. Like, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make you a good person. It doesn't make you a better person. It doesn't make you, uh, it, it doesn't mean anything. You, there's no virtue in it whatsoever. Like, congratulations. Like, you realize after the fact that something you did was wrong. Like, the good person wouldn't have done it in the first place, okay? I don't care what realizations you come to afterwards. Now, if a situation comes up again and you don't repeat that mistake, oh, well, good job. Now I feel like, now I have, like, a, a lot of respect for you. What the fuck, Destiny, just give them an olive branch? No, nope. nah, I don't care. Nah, it's way, it's way, 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 way too easy to, to fuck up and then just apologize for it afterwards. Fuck that, I don't care about that shit. It, that's not the measure of a good person to me. I'm too old for that shit now. If we were in high school, maybe, but nah, fuck that. Isn't there something to be gained from someone humbling themselves in before you? I don't think it is a humbling. I think people, when people apologize, they just want to feel better about bad things they've Destiny done. Destiny is just hated cause he's cyberpunk Socrates. Yeah, true, yeah.
don't you want to let people know you still care? Um, yeah, I mean, I usually I'll tell them like, oh, cool. Hey, if you fucked up, just don't do it again and we're chill. That's it. It's that easy. Just don't fuck up again. But don't sit here telling me how sorry you are, blah, 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 blah. Like, you did what you did, and you got the reward for what you did. I don't give a fuck how you feel about it afterwards, okay? That shit means nothing to me. Especially if you benefited off of whatever fucking lie you told. Like, I don't give a fuck about you wanting to feel better about yourself so you fucking apologize for it. Fuck that shit. I couldn't give a fuck less. Just don't do it again. Wait, what the fuck is happening? Oh, God. Oil refinery refines oil and creates hydrogen. Wait, well, what the fuck is this then? This is a chemical plant. Oh, I need an oil refinery. Sounds like you have a few specific apologies in mind when you say it like that. No, I really do feel the same way about every apology. I don't care about any apology ever. It just doesn't mean anything. What, like, well, give me an example of an apology. Like. Like what, 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 what is an example of apology that I would care about? I, ca I can't think of a single one. Well, actually, hold on. Actually, there is one category of apologies that could make sense. If somebody does something and they legitimately did it like by accident, then that's like an apology that I could accept. So like, let's say you like step, like you run into someone in the hallway, like, oh shit, sorry. Like I didn't know that. Or let's say that you like, let's say that you make a joke and you had no idea that like, um, it's something that I'm sensitive about. I, that wouldn't be me, right? But like, it's something like that. If you like, if the person legitimately didn't know, then I could understand like, oh yeah, you said, oh yeah, no, it's cool. Like, that would be like one thing, yeah. So like most apologies, no, most apologies are somebody did something and fucked up and they knowingly did something and they knowingly fucked up. And then afterwards they want to feel better about it. So they come to you and they apologize and say they won't do it again. You don't care about statements of apology, but you would care if someone changed their behavior to actually address the defendant. you. Yeah, 100%. If somebody changes their behavior, that's cool. I don't even need an apology at that point. I don't care. You don't have to say shit. As long as you don't do it again, I don't give a fuck. And I don't usually hold grudges. So like, that's fine. Um, okay, oil refinery. Do you think most people fuck up on purpose to fuck you over? Yeah, 100%, of course. They think they can get away with something. I think most people's fuck ups in life are usually just them being kind of selfish and inconsiderate about other people, for sure. If you can think of an example for something that's happened, then well, I might be even wrong on that. I'd be curious to hear it. But like, I think generally like most fuck ups are usually like, um, most fuck ups are usually just like somebody's being selfish, they're trying to get something they want, and then um, they get caught or they fuck up. This facility will produce multiple products. To divide them, you need to set a filter on the sorter. No one can use tab. He won't shut the fuck the arrow up. Keys. You need to set a filter on the sorter? Wait, oh god, wait, hold on. I actually should have listened to that. I didn't know what he was saying. I don't think that's the average person's experience. Oh, okay. Okay, we've got plasma refining. Wait, no, wait, what? I don't want to do this. Oh, wait, yeah, I do. Okay, so crude oil is going to make refined oil and hydrogen. Is there anyone that is irredeemable for you? They fucked up so much that they can never be friends with them again? Um, if I could know truth, like objective truth, like I could truly know what existed in somebody's mind, then nobody would be irredeemable. But there are some people that are irredeemable insofar as like, I know that I, if like, I know that I can't trust them again. Um, so like people that can lie convincingly and then people that have lied to me, but have lied in a convincing manner, I don't think I could ever trust again. I, I'd probably be friends with them, but I don't think I could ever trust them with anything. Like there are some people I know, I can think of three people off the top of my head, where, um, where like I can be friends with you, but um, I, like I can never trust anything you say. <laughs> like, I don't know if you're like, I'll have to fact check everything. I'm never gonna take you at your word for anything. And I'm never gonna like provide you with any information that would fuck me over unless I had some sort of leverage on you. Um, yeah. Okay. So this thing is getting, all right, let's see.
Why does it matter if you could see into a person's mind? What would you be looking for? Oh, to see if they were genuinely going to be truthful in the future or not. I would say that you apology is an indication that. that they really understand what was wrong about Shout it. Shout out to our cutest chatter, Tuck underscore which, my sexy guy friend. Welcome back, and enjoy your blue name. Bonus meme, Pepe wins delete the new dinosaur emotes. I would say that apology is an indication that they really understand what was wrong about it and are prepared to change. When people don't apologize because they don't care about the damage they caused, uh, maybe. I'm just, just based on the experiences that I've had in life and the experiences that I've had with other people, I talk is cheap. I just don't, I really don't, I really don't care about anything people say ever. Like, I'm so much more interested in how people act um, because so many people are capable of saying so much and doing so little. Um, so, I, yeah, I just, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm so much more interested in, like, how a person acts rather than... Isn't the issue that most people don't even know how to apologize? As in, I did it. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I, I, this is like a unpopular take. Like, I don't expect to be like uh, like a ton of people. Like, oh, I totally agree with your take. I understand that. That's just it's just how I view it personally. None of you should like live your life by my views on shit like this. Okay, these are. Can anything be like an input or an output? I think so. Right. Good game, Igabi. Mm, okay. Ten dollars. Pro tip. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. If you're calling people dumpfs while you criticize them, they aren't going to be as open to you or your arguments. Um, I You'll very just rarely bridges. do that. That's incredibly rare, but I'm glad you're repeating the Reddit memes, my dude. Um, <clears throat> you never hold grudges, but do you forgive people? Um, I don't, no, I don't usually hold grudges against people. As long as the behavior is changed, I don't really care. Like, I don't, I don't, like, the thing is, is that, like, holding grudges only hurts you. Like, what if there's a person that could be cool you could be friends with again, but then, like, you hold a grudge against them? Like, why the fuck would you do that? Like, why would you waste your time and, and mental energy on, on holding a grudge against somebody? That's so stupid. Is there a link somewhere opinion. to these sick bangers you have playing? Bonus me me. Um, yeah, these are all competition How's challenges. the Cold War going with the X or fling that has your nudes along with some guy? Bonus meme, fuck Mr. Mutani. No, I don't even know how to interpret that statement. DMV Baus, $4.99. Hey Destiny, love you bro, been watching you for a long time even when you were a Republican, lol, I'm 32. Wow, cool. Fuck, I needed way more of these, um meteor things. Fuck, I need like three of these. Have you ever apologized then? Um, sometimes, yeah. If I, some people feel like they need apologies, and if, I, if it's somebody that I like, I'm like trying to salvage a relationship with or something. Like mo most, most, most human people, <laughs> most people like like to get apologies. So if I fuck something up, like I'll try to apologize. Um, I, I just I don't care about getting them at all. But if somebody if it feels like somebody needs one and it's a relationship that I'm trying to like maintain or whatever, then yeah, I will of course. Okay, refined oil can also be made into hydrogen, right? Oh wait, refined oil and hydrogen can be made. Do you have autism? I don't know, maybe, dude. I think you're projecting a bit when it comes to this. Most people aren't self-aware. Those fuck-ups are subconscious and aren't done with ill intent. Okay, I'm trying to be very clear here. I don't think people are messing up with ill intent. I think most people are usually just selfish, and they think they can get something 
without Let's considering another you person's have two feelings. People that beat the shit out of your puny white ass one day in middle school. Ten years later, one of them tried to contact you to apologize for what he did, and the other one never did. Are these people morally equivalent? I don't know. I don't care. Like, even when I fuck up sometimes, um, usually my fuck ups are usually just me acting selfish or thinking I can get away with something or whatever and not considering somebody else's feelings when I know I probably should be. Do you find it necessary to apologize when you did your best in the moment but the outcome ended up bad? For example, did you apologize to Pokemon when you figured out Fed was lying? Um, uh, I think I did. I don't remember, actually. Do you think it's important for people to know that you're somewhat autistic? It seems like other people label you socio. I don't know if I'm autistic or socio. I don't know. I try to stay away from fucking meme labels like this. I have no fucking idea, okay? <laughs> and self-diagnosing shit like this is cringe, so it's fucking. But any value in people acknowledging their mistakes? Um, very, very, very little. Jeez. Wait. Um. Fuck, these are gonna get really old really fast, huh? I, like I said, just listen. Everybody can live their life the way they want to. Don't, you don't have to follow my shit, okay? I'm just saying that for me personally, talk is cheap, okay? I don't really care what people say. <laughs> I've had a lot of people say a lot of things to me, and I've had very few people that I think have acted in, in ways that I think are admirable based on things that have happened, okay? That's all I'm saying. Hey, Twitch is trash, knowing that inside and reward of the community to raid a streamer with the soul is causing harm. This two minutes alone has countless reasons they should be off the platform. Go in there and spam. Fuck me. Y'all find me no, I think we should raid just a random person. Y'all just go in there and spam. Fuck me. What? Yeah, I think we're gonna do a random person, y'all. Right. Y'all just, y'all just go in there and spam. Fuck me. Y'all find me somebody to raid that has no, like, barely any viewers, and it, y'all don't, we don't know who they are. The goal is to y'all go, everybody in there from my chat, go in there and get banned. What? <laughs> yeah, you just gotta keep spamming. Fuck me. Find me somebody new. I don't want no one y'all fucking know, bro. What's his fucking Say, name? Check me out. Check me out. Tay, check me out. Uh, the Michi Michi Goo. Oh hell no! Nah. What the fuck? So did how did you say? That yeah, sounded like a goddamn uh thing you get off a Chinese restaurant menu. What the fuck was that? What did you just call me? <laughs> what the hell? His name is Michi Goo. Bro, I. Oh. I ain't trying to spell that shit, bro. Wait, Dimitriko special combination with the egg one. Gamer Earth Gen. Earth Gen. Oh, let me see. Six viewers. Oh hell, this is a female, bro. This is about to be bad. This is gonna be bad. Never mind. Do it. Let's do it, bro. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, y'all go in there and get her, Dan. This is about That's to be bad. Little... This is about. I don't know who this is. Gamer Earth Gen's about to meet T times chat, y'all. So. Oh lord. <laughs> Bro, that is a that is a Thanks for keeping Holy me shit. entertained. I love y'all man, I appreciate all the subs. <laughs> we can't spam that in a female chat. Hey yeah you can, Deadpool. Yes you can. Sure, and hey, let's all go in there and be like, fuck me, baby. Hey, I give you permission, Deadpool, just this one time, bro. Oh, Lord. <laughs> this is one time, bro. <laughs> if y'all get banned, I swear to God, everybody that's a streamer, I'm gifting subs in your chat, bro. On God. 
Wait, just this one you time. Real, real. Just this one time. Look at you. You don't, you don't come to my chat. I, I love all y'all, man. I appreciate all the subs, wow. all the bits, all the new oh, follows, I mean, man. Y'all go on this girl's chat. <laughs> spam up the T top ray, T cock ray. Y'all say, fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. I love all y'all, man. We'll see y'all tomorrow, dog. Peace, fuckers. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I got hit all the gamer check boxes. Okay, let me try one more. Let's say two different friends trip on you and land on your balls and it hurts like fucking shit. Immediately afterward one of them says sorry my bad while the other one ignores your bitch ass. Are they really the same to you? No, I think that I think that there's the one category of things you could apologize for is if you did something and you didn't actually know what you were doing. Like if you do something that's truly like on accident. If you fuck up though, and you know you fuck up and you normally go through with a fuck up and then you apologize afterwards, I don't care about those apologies. But like if it's like some like actual accident or whatever, then sure. Okay, for refined oil. Wait, can we make hydrogen out of refined oil? Hold on. Components. Oh, fuck, is there a place where I can see like recipes anywhere? You can make hydrogen out of refined oil, but you might be better off just trying to mine more crude oil and doing that. Do you find it weird how some people will be accepting of mental illnesses just to pick and choose which ones depending on the illness? Yeah, the, yeah, I guess it just depends. You need a fuck ton of refined oil later on, so it's not worth it. Huh, okay. Wait, Anita, what the fuck time is it over there? You're always up at like crazy times. I still don't understand why you would forgive Vosh. Um, I mean, it's more, that's just more like a person. I mean, like, he's still like a decent, no, what would I say? I just don't usually hold grudges. Um, I mean, it is what it is. Like I said, like most people will do what they need to do to protect their personal relationships. It's just like, I, like if there was some like serious shit that came up in my life or something, or if I like really needed to like trust somebody, it definitely wouldn't be him. <laughs> but like, other than that, it's whatever, it is, it is what it is. Um, my expectations for people like minimum level of decency is very, very, very low. So it's whatever. I would expect as much from most people. Okay, filter. No? Yes. There, okay. Yeah, I haven't slept. Oh, you're still awake. Holy shit. Use the storage tank instead. The boxes don't hold very much. Oh, shit. You speak of the truth. You built a storage tank. Shut up. It is more suitable for storing fluid than the storage. Each storage tank can only store one single type of fluid and can be built vertically. However, once it has been removed, 
all the stored fluid will be devastated. Tanks have to have belts going in through it. Are you serious? Hop into Discord and destroy Destiny event. Oh, if you ever want to chat while I'm streaming again, you can always hop on. Hop into the Thunderdome. <laughs> I don't think there's anything to like, debate about. Okay. Storage tank. Hop on for a bit if you like. Um, yeah, if you want to, just call me on Discord. Uh, there's got to be a different way to connect this. Oh, I bet you just run the belt right into it, huh? That's what you do. Okay. There we go. Is there any way for me, how do I get this refined oil out of my inventory and into this? Is there a way I can do that? Press delete when in cursor? Whoa, hold on. I don't know if I want to delete it, my dude. Oh, it's just gone forever. Jeez. If you want to move or find oil and out of fluids, you probably need a normal storage box conveyors. Hold on, let me get a drink of water and we'll chat with Anita for a second. I need to get off soon too. Hmm. Am I supposed to know how much this can hold? It says capacity 90. Oh, I see, it's filling up. You can deposit from your internet belts. Okay, RTB. RTB, what? Do you play dumbass games like this too? Holy shit, were you a Factorio player? Oh no. Not good, guys. You apologize to Anna yet? She messaged me on Instagram after I blocked her on Discord. <laughs> oh shit. I probably need two of these running, huh? I thought y'all were cool again. We were a little bit. And then she actually unironically triggered me. I, I couldn't I couldn't deal with it anymore. I'm trying to like, for this year, I'm trying to be, if people want to be cool, I'll try to be cool with them. But, and so we were, we were back to an area of normalcy and then I was going to slowly get you guys to stop harassing her. But then she just like fucking went off. What happened? Somebody sent her a clip basically of me. So I talk in hyperbole a lot, okay? I am very crazy about a lot of things, okay? 100%, right? But 
somebody basically sent her like a clip of me talking about my um, the abusive relationship I had with my uh, kid's mom, which is which was like really fucked up. Uh, but I joke about everything, okay? And I I think in the clip I make a joke about like, oh, you know, sometimes you just gotta choke someone out, you know? And she messaged me with this. She's like, you are choking out your ex. Don't you know that you could kill someone doing this? How dare you ever pretend that you were a victim of domestic abuse when you're actually trying to murder her? This is one of the most important things we look for in domestic abuse victims is whether or not they try to be, and I was like, what in the fuck is wrong with you? First of all, why are you, how dare you even say anything like this to me? You have no fucking idea. Like what the fuck you're talking about? And then like, what, like why are you going off of one, like obviously hyperbolic fucking clip and, the, and then I like, I, I actually got triggered and I was like, okay, I'm blocking you. Like this is unbelievably fucking like inappropriate. I don't know why you think you would should ever message somebody like this. <laughs> Holy shit. Like you're insane. Okay. Hold on. Oil refinery. Buildings refinery. <whistles> Hi, what's up? Hello. How you doing? Um, pretty good. What do you stay awake so late doing? Or you no, know, you don't have uh, uh. to reveal if there's like some secret occult shit going on or something, of course. I had, I, well, it's common for people with ADHD to not sleep often or to, uh, to be very nocturnal. And mm -hmm. I also am a very busy person. I look after my mom, I look after animals. Mm -hmm. I, you know, run all the usual stuff. I have a very close relationship with my YouTube editor, so I'm a bit more hands-on with my content. So I just keep busy as all. Well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, time, do you find that you lack sleep or do you just sleep later in the day? Sometimes I lack sleep. Like sometimes I'll stream and then I'll do loads of shit, and then I'll go, oh shit, I've got a stream again. And I'll not realize that I've slept, I haven't slept in a few days. <laughs> so sometimes it's like not sleeping, and other times I do sleep, I just sleep during the day. Damn, all right, well, be careful, take care of your brain. I do try. Um, weirdly, I function just fine on no sleep. Most people don't notice, so mm -hmm. I'm doing okay so far. Sure. I mean, I'm 30, and I still manage to, you know, play computer games and things, and you know, yeah, hang out with the kids on Twitch and everything. Yeah, staying hip. Indeed, indeed. What time is it for you? Um, it's only eleven, or getting to be eleven o'clock. Oh, it's nice and early for you then. Mm -hmm. That's like my morning. Yeah, jeez, <laughs> yeah. I remember when I used to be in those those degenerate gamer sleep hours, but I've tried to try to be relatively normal. I used to have a really bad habit too of falling into the. Uh, Oh god, like if, if I fuck up, like it used to be like if I would just fuck up even one time with my sleep, I, I would just be fucked for days and days and days. Or weeks, I, I would be like waking up at 6pm and going to sleep at like 9am. Uh -huh. yeah. What a cut. Yeah, I, I, what I want to know is why if I get a normal sleeping pattern for like a day, I feel mm -hmm. really proud of myself and it takes months to work up to getting my sleeping pattern straight. It'll only take one night of yep. gaming yep. to fuck it up for like months. How does that work? <laughs> I, so I don't know if this is a thing or not. Um, I, I I wikied this once, so I don't know if it's real or not. There's something called delayed phase syndrome, and uh, to avoid self-diagnosing, it seems like pretty fucking spot on. So basically, the idea, I guess, is that there are some people that just, I guess, some people get feel more energy when it's um, when it's morning outside. That's like a normal human thing. Like you have a circadian rhythm. When there's sunlight out, you feel like, uh, oh, I've got energy. I'm ready to do shit. And then some people feel the opposite. Some people just feel the same at night. Um, so like mm -hmm. for me, like I, I would have the thing where I would get my sleep schedule in order and it would take a monumental amount of effort and I would finally get it. And then one night I would stay up to like, like 11 or 12 and then it'd be so easy to just stay up until like 8 AM and then I would just be completely fucked for weeks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I heard about that. They, they theorized that the evolutionary reason why some of us are genetically like this is that if you have some of the tribe that's awake and on guard during the day and others during the night then there's never a time of day where we're too particularly vulnerable to predation. And that that might be the reason why some of us are more nocturnal than others, because it seems to correlate with our genes to a certain degree. Yeah, maybe it's possible. So who knows, maybe we were just useful at one point, but now it's uh, very, very difficult. I, I like, I live in a tiny little seaside town and uh, nothing's open. So I don't get to have takeout on the sleep schedule, unfortunately. <laughs> oh my God. One thing that I'm so grateful about um, for all of our problems, America has so many 24 seven places. And I feel like when, as I've been around Europe, that doesn't seem to be quite as common. Um, like I'm from, the, the city that I'm originally from is not like the largest city in the United States. But like, it, no matter what time of day it was, there's, there's like a ton of restaurants that are open. Like, I have so much choice. Um, yeah, I don't think I can handle living in a place where after like nine o'clock, everything is closed and you're just fucked. That would drive me crazy. Um, 
Yeah, well, I've, I've slowly grown to adjust to it. I mean, I used to be able to walk out of my front door and straight into the water because I, I just lived on the beach. So I was like, yeah, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. um, but I got kicked out because uh, my, my next door neighbor was my landlord and I have Tourette's and she doesn't understand Tourette's because she was like 80 something. So I had to go and now I don't live next to the beach. So it's slightly less worth it. Did you um, did you end up having like a like an altercation kind of where or did you just like say something and she got like really upset or? Wow. So basically, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure she could just hear me through the wall, mm -hmm. um, which was a problem. But on top of that, and having, you know, the added confusion of like someone shouting about fisting through the walls when you're like a very Christian, very stiff upper lip British old lady. Mm -hmm. um, I think another aspect of it was uh, I had uh, a flatmate at the time and uh, she just assumed that he was my husband for some reason or another. Mm -hmm. So when it came for time for him to move out, because, you know, he, 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 um, he could afford a place on his own. Um, she was like, well, I just don't know how a single young lady is going to manage the house alone. So in interest of keeping the property ship shape, I think it might be time for you to move along. I think it was like a bullshit excuse, if I'm honest, because she was always weird jumping me. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have any that. protections like that in the UK or whatever for... I, I know well, that like in um, the United States, you can't kick somebody out for like familial status or whatever, but I, I don't know if it's the same in other countries, but... I think um, if you don't state it to the housing association, there's no real way to prove mm -hmm. the reason. So if she says, oh, yes, I just want to, you know, move some family into the place or whatever, then there's no real way to prove that it sure. was any kind of discrimination, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, damn. Do you like where you're at better now or was the move kind of shitty or what? Certainly bigger. Uh, I There were only like three places to move to available in my town and I have mm -hmm. to stay close to my mom because I care for her. Mm -hmm. So um, I ended up in a four bed place by myself. <laughs> so, uh, but I've just filled it with animals, so. Okay. I mean, a lot, someone in your chat, I laughed as well because they were saying that I'm very brave for so closely associating with you apparently. <laughs> I just have a lot of anti fans on the internet, I guess. <laughs> Do you uh, get that often? Like, um, I don't know if this question is off limits, so you can let me know in chat if there's anything that you know. We should yeah, I'm an open book. Don't worry. Okay, that's cool. Um, so I was just wondering, like, how do you, when you, when your whole content is quite often notorious for being controversial and about politics and dick, um, what what do you do when? Like, how does that work with collaborations and stuff? Because I'm sure that must be incredibly inhibiting. If people disagree with you, the thing with putting opinions online is it's the most risky kind of content. You know, you can halve your relatability to your community in a sentence with opinions and with politics and stuff. And that can make it such a barrier for collaborations and everything. It seems like the hardest kind of genre to be notorious for on the internet and how do you establish friendships beyond that and not let it intervene like n interfere yeah i mean i you just you don't basically um i guess like my my desire would be that people could recognize that um like people yeah. seem to think sometimes that i only have one mode um that like if i'm involved in anything it's going to be like a screaming shouting match but i would say that like the majority of the stuff that i do is not that um, I'm not normally like engaged in like screaming matches with people. Even when it comes to like the political debate stuff, usually like most of my conversations are pretty cordial and pretty chill, pretty tame. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you have that reputation, I guess everybody's like a little bit afraid that things will turn into shouting matches or so yeah. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, I, I guess I don't really do much collaboration. Most of the people that I collaborate with actually come from within my community, which I guess in, in the long run has kind of turned out to be okay. Because um, mm -hmm. then like I've been involved in a lot of pretty dramatic altercations with people. <laughs> Um, but it hasn't really affected me in terms of like my growth or my streams at all because I don't usually collaborate with those people anyway, so yeah. Also, most streamers are worthless human beings, so fuck them, regardless. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm half joking there, but yeah, I, like, yeah. I don't know, it's cool. Some people don't mind, like, I'm on a Train Rex's podcast sometimes, which is cool. Um, Austin mm -hmm. will bring me on as like a fucking merc, I guess, to fight with people on his show sometimes. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I just kind of keep to myself, basically. Hmm. Yeah, I, I worry about just being a general inconvenience. I, I can't always prevent myself from interrupting people. And I know that uh, I know that a lot of people probably think, because I'm not neurotypical, that I'm 
uh, I don't know how to put it politely, but, you know, just generally not smart and not very capable. Um, I've even had people who are very nice to me and been friend befriended me from like YouTube and, you know, YouTubers and Twitch streamers who are like, so what are you going to do if you like, you get a boyfriend and stuff? Because your whole audience is just perverts who laugh at your Tourette's, right? And I'm like, what? So I, I don't, I don't really see myself as a very valuable person to collaborate with. And so I just assume nobody wants to come on my stream. <laughs> I feel like most of the, uh, to be fair, I don't have time to watch streams, so I'm only going by what I see on clips. I feel like most of the clips I see, usually people appreciate your collaboration with other content creators. Like usually there's like funny moments that come out of it. Um, a lot of it sometimes revolving around the Tourette's of course, but like it, it seems like most people appreciate it. Mm. Well, I guess it, it's, it's very easy to only see one side or the other. Mm -hmm. Um, so I often end up seeing a lot of people who are making fun of me or telling the streamer not to associate themselves with me and, for sure you know all that sort of thing and yeah a lot of people don't know how to handle me because uh, uh they don't know uh, uh they don't know how mentally disabled i am mm -hmm. they don't know how how far my condition reaches and and they don't know what's polite and what's not and it's just awkward and scary i see my streams um uh, uh, get clipped and played on larger streamers streams and I watch them really awkwardly sit there and make a really straight face because they're worried if they laugh at me oh, they don't that they'll be or... yeah they'll, they'll, they don't want to seem like the kind of streamer that laughs at disabilities mm -hmm. so people send in the clips and they just sit there with a straight face and awkwardly move on and don't say a thing mm -hmm. and you know I, I just kind of feel like uh, 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 it's 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 not I'm not like playing the victim or anything. It's just I. You have to be very tactical when you have a very visible disability. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, I understand for sure. I, this sounds really dumb or, or really weird, but ha, do you have you ever considered creating a guide to dealing with you? So like, say you're gonna collab with a streamer <laughs> and you've got like a little fucking two page PDF and it's like, hey, like, you know, my name is Anita. It's okay if you laugh at this. It's okay you bring this up. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. I don't like to joke about this. I do like to joke about this. Like, otherwise I'm like a normal human being. Like you don't have to treat me like an alien or something. Have you ever, I don't know if that would seem even more alienating or? What I often let people do is fumble and ask at the beginning mm -hmm. because it shows lots of very socially awkward people in chat who don't know how to relate to anybody, mm -hmm. let alone someone with Tourette's how to politely ask and what kind of answers they can generally expect and what the best way to navigate it is. Mm -hmm. And it also gives people a window into my daily experience because obviously people who drive me in a taxi, I can't drive because of my condition mm -hmm. and things like that. They, uh, uh, they ask the same questions and stuff and some of them handle it terribly and some of them handle it really well. Mm -hmm. So no matter how that discussion goes, it shows people something. It mm -hmm. shows the people in, with Tourette's like, this is how you handle these questions. And it shows people who don't have it, like, you know, it's fine to ask these questions. This is how they'll respond. This is how to handle this situation. So I just, um, maybe this is a terrible thing to do, but I just let streamers fumble <laughs> sure. and ask. Here, something I'm curious about. Um, do it, when you have like ticks, do you prefer that people not acknowledge them at all? Do you think it's funny when people respond to them and laugh at them? Like in your perfect world, like I, how would people wow. respond? Yeah. So uh, uh, for me, I, I didn't get diagnosis till really late. I, th mm -hmm. I was like 26, 27. This meant that uh, everyone just weird champed me and nobody really understood what was going on with me and they were awkward and quite often angry. Mm -hmm. I used to get punished a lot as a kid. And uh, when people laugh it off or joke or acknowledge it, I know how they're feeling. I know that they're not uncomfortable, they're not mad at me, and mm -hmm. it's reassuring. When people keep a straight face out of respect, I sometimes wonder if it's because they're mad at me or offended or don't understand what's happening. I don't mm -hmm. know what's going on in their head. So I find it less concerning when people respond in some way or another. I don't want people to force it every single time just to constantly reassure me either. So I just let people react however they want. As so long as they're not mad at me, I'm happy. Gotcha. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> Damn. But I didn't... You didn't know, get like, this diagnosis until you were 26. That's really crazy. Uh-huh. I went into the doctor first time alone when I was 13. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, I, I, you see, my, my, my arm just moved then. I didn't ask my hand to do that. Why is it doing that? And they're like, well, do you hear things that aren't there? I was like, no. Do you think you have magical powers? I was like, no. And they're like, well, you're probably just attention-seeking, and you'll probably grow out of it. 
Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, and I was really upset with that answer because I couldn't control it. I was doing it when I was alone, but I now knew that if anyone saw me do it, they'd think I was attention seeking, which made me terrified of being near people and them seeing the tick. So I hid and it made me really struggle at school because I was getting in trouble with people as well as teachers and had no way to tell them what was going on and that I didn't mean it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it meant that uh, I used to enrage other students quite often by saying offensive things. Obviously, you just can't offer another 13-year-old boy a fisting and expect things to go well. Mm -hmm. So it all ended with me being beaten unconscious and waking up in the kind of medic area of the school thinking to myself, you know what? I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be worth getting an education if I'm not gonna survive to use it. So Mm -hmm. I went back into home education and I was agoraphobic and just scared of how people would react to me. And I just kept pushing. I kept going to the doctor and getting the same answer, probably attention seeking till I was 21 ish. And I went, um, I went to the hospital and I was like, God damn it. I have this thing. It's not about other people. It's not attention seeking. Please just test. Like there must be something. There must be some answers. They tested me Mm -hmm. and they figured it out. They put it on my medical records and just didn't send me a letter or tell me for another five years. So I I checked in like when I was 26, like, yo, is there any progress on that? Should I get more tests? Do we know yet? And Mm -hmm. they're like, oh yeah, you've, you've had Tourette's. You you have Tourette's. We've known for ages. I was like, cool. Could have told me that. Yeah. And that was my life, and uh, 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 that's how I found out, and that's uh, uh, when my life started. It's when I started getting a job, it's when I started having friends, it's when I started developing my social skills, which I've only developed in the last, like, three or four years. (laughs) So, yeah, it basically was a life starter for me. Gotcha, damn. You're, um, the physical tics are so bad that you don't think you could ever drive safely? I actually gave it a try and I made a video about it on YouTube. There are plenty of people with Tourette's syndrome who can drive, Mm -hmm. but the problem is a lot of people don't know how it feels or understand it. The best way I can describe it is, uh, it's like if I have an urge, if I don't indulge the urge, I'm in intense physical pain. Like it's like, it's like someone stood over you with a hammer and they're smashing your hand every time you don't do as they say. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I, my brain has the urge so fast and the my response is so fast that I end up acting on it before I even realize that I have the urge at all. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I know a tick is coming and other times I don't. And I've already indulged it before I even realize I have the urge. And this means that uh, 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 if, if, there, if I have any anxiety, if I have any extreme joy, any kind of extreme emotion can trigger it as well, mm-hmm. one of the triggers. So if I'm in a car full of people, I worry about hurting them or crashing, immediately slam the brakes or slam the accelerator. Um, And so I had a driving instructor with his hand on the brake the whole time and he basically had to save everyone in the car quite a few times. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Because as soon as I had an intrusive thought about crashing the car, I I would end up doing something that could potentially crash the car. Gotcha. Well, damn. Mm Mm-hmm. But there are some people with Tourette's syndrome who can, you know, ride motorcycles and operate, you know, heavy machinery and drive and all sorts. It depends on the severity. Mm -hmm. Mm. I mean, I don't know if you know many people who aren't neurotypical in any way. I mean, you know a lot of streamers. You must know a lot of people with ADHD at least. Um, yeah, probably. Uh, but I I would say that, like, there's... We're on a spectrum of, like, neuroatypical, and you're definitely farther along that than most, even people with ADHD, right? Yeah, I mean, most people with Tourette's syndrome have ADHD, Mm -hmm. really severely. It's really Mm -hmm. hard to tell the difference between the symptoms as well. Sure. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. And OCD as well, because they're all caused by an underdevelopment of a specific region of the brain, and it's a similar region of the brain. Mm Mm-hmm. For executive function Uh or something, for... Yep. Do you know much about the brain? Do you know much about the regions and what they control and things like that? Um, like very basic stuff. I know like amygdala is emotional shit. I know hippocampus is for memory. Um, prefrontal cortex is for advanced shit. But I, I, I don't know, like, I'm not like a neuroscientist or anything. My uh, yeah. my son has ADHD really bad, so I did a lot of reading on that. Um, so I know a bit about like executive function control and, what and whatnot. And then my mom has Alzheimer's disease, so I know a bit about like the hippocampus and stuff related to that. Um, mm. in memory, but, um, yeah, I, I just learned stuff as I, I guess I need it. I'll just bring up the Wikipedia and start reading shit if I, if I need to know something, but yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like that's the best way to learn. I retain stuff so much better if it's in relation to what I'm presently experiencing, the knowledge I need to apply immediately, than if I just read stuff to find things out out mm -hmm. of curiosity. Yeah. I yeah. heard an interesting thing about the hippocampus. It's apparently the area of the brain where the most zinc is stored and utilized, um, and that it has a very huge function in relation to empathy, apparently, if I remember correctly. I might have it. It might not be the hippocampus. It might be another part. I swear it's the hippocampus. What made me really interested in that is that specifically men release a lot of zinc when they wank, and mm -hmm. I wondered if it had an impact on their capacity to empathy to deplete their zinc if it's used specifically, mostly, in that region of the brain and in relation to, you know, empathy and empathetic response. So I wondered if there was any studies conducted on it, and there isn't any. This is why I wish I'd gone into science, because I want to know this sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know. It'd probably depend on the amounts needed for everything. Um, in terms of mm -hmm. releasing stuff when you have a wank, it's probably used to create like suitable environments for sperm to live in. I don't know if that's like like if that needs way, way, way more than like small amounts of zinc stored in the brain, or maybe the brain uses more. I, I'm not entirely sure. The brain uses the brain uses more. I tried to find out the amount of um, zinc lost from a kuma, mm -hmm. and it's it's negligible if you're only coming once a day. But you know, we know Twitch chat. We know they're probably doing that a lot more than once a day. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and also, I wondered if this had any relation to, um, as we normalize, you know, I don't think masturbation or watching porn is particularly wrong. I think people can have a fine relationship with it and take it or leave it. But mm -hmm. I know that a vast majority, statistically, of all pornographic material ever made includes violence towards women, which is really interesting. So I wondered if there's a relationship between that increased appetite and the increased desensitization to that kind of context and zinc loss from, you know, over -cuming. But it's something I would love to do research on, but never really got the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> it's possible. Um, desensitization sounds like it could be a thing, even regardless of the zinc thing, because I know that, um, for instance, as upset as people get, um, playing violent video games does lead to desensitization of violence. It doesn't seem to lead to an mm -hmm. increase in violent behavior, but it does lead to a desensitization of violence, so... Yeah, it seems yeah. something that's really unfortunate that I kind of discovered in life is there's a lot of stuff that I enjoy that's kind of taboo. So whether it's humor or porn or whatever, um, but mm -hmm. it seems like it's really hard to responsibly promote that because I don't know how many people are capable of responsibly enjoying stuff like that sometimes, which is pretty frustrating. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So like it yeah. might it might be the case that like like I'm I think that porn is awesome. Obviously, um, I think there's even cool things you can learn from porn. Obviously, you have to know like what is like realistic and what is you know just filmed for uh, effect. Um, but it seems like I don't know if most people can do that. You know, it might be the 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 truth that porn has like a net negative impact on society because it negatively influences people's views of sex or sexuality or the opposite gender uh, or sex. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but I um uh -uh, I spent years helping people who were addicted to porn. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, you know, people who are doing no fap. Um, so could I, I name them fly yet? I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Some of the, the no fappers are nuts. crazy. Oh, okay. Faps. Are, holy shit. Okay. So you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it's it's an area which is very has very little research in relation to it because it's a relatively modern problem. On so whether or not unknown... non fappers can fly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> no. Okay, no. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Go ahead. I'm standing for no. masturbation. I understand. Go ahead. Yeah. So, like, there, so there isn't much research into reliably how it affects the brain because there isn't a large enough sample size of men who don't watch it to mm -hmm. measure them up against. And so, learning how porn affects the brain is hard from the get-go. But then, learning how to reset your addiction to it and how it, you know how you change the way that your brain is structured after porn mm -hmm. addiction is not a very well researched thing either. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I've, I've learned that a lot of it can reduce homophobia. Exposure to porn can reduce homophobia. People who've watched porn are less likely to have homophobic response to yeah. questions regarding it. Um, but it can also desensitize people towards, um, you know, regarding violence towards women. Mm -hmm. um, it has uh, an impact on the way that we perceive things. Um, and it can normalize things to a degree where, like, you know, it's. I'd say it probably is impacting society. I, I exper experience that on a personal level, but I think I'd rather rely on mass data. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stuff saying that 
a lot more young boys are pressuring young girls to do sexual things very early and are modeling it off porn which isn't very representative of what actually is pleasurable to experience and mm-hmm. so a lot of young boys are expecting and pressuring what young girls to do very extreme sex acts from a very young age especially underage um, as that's now heavily fetishized and that one of the biggest impacts it's having on women's sex life even though up to about 43 percent of women tend to watch porn as opposed to most men um is it still affecting their lives because uh uh, they're having very unsatisfying and aggressive first experiences of sex Mm -hmm. like that's becoming an increasing thing is that guys are pressuring them to do things that they don't want to do and don't like and their first experiences they're not coming and they don't know that that's not normal um they think that if they don't compete with porn in terms of sex acts and the way that they look that they've somehow failed and now you know girls really really young girls young 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 teens Mm -hmm. um are very commonly saving up for um, labiaplasties because they find that they're incredibly ashamed of their genitalia. Fewer and fewer women are going for pap tests and smear tests for cervical cancer, which you're meant to do um, fairly regularly because they're ashamed to show anyone their vulvas and stuff because porn has distorted their expectations of themselves and mm-hmm. how they should look. And so it definitely is having a highly reported impact on women which is odd because they are the group less likely to watch Kai it. Brown mm-hmm. $4.99 <sighs> Holy crap I did not expect you So yeah you I to feel like it does have an impact but I don't think that makes porn necessarily wrong it's like sugar isn't inherently bad but some people harvest it in some pretty unethical fucking ways I think um it's not usually a substance or an item or an object or a context that's wrong in and of itself. It's usually how we use it in our relationship. I don't think that drugs are inherently bad, but our relationship with them can be, for example. And with your response to like being interested in taboo porn, I think that that's incredibly normal. There is a strong correlation between what we find most arousing and what's most socially unacceptable. If you look at the top 10 searches for porn in any country, they tend to have a direct correlation between that and what's most societally taboo and that's why you'll find that some are more interested in scat porn and others incest and others you know underage and others overage like huge age differences i think all of these things are are um are in direct correlation with what we find most taboo Mm -hmm. and so often i see a lot of hope in seeing depraved things in porn hub searches because it's an indication of what people don't want to see in society often what we want to see in the bedroom is not what we want from society and not what we want in any real context there's a strong relationship between disgust and arousal um so yeah i find it quite promising it's a direct relationship it's a direct kind of way everyone's dicks are basically telling us where we want society to go and what we want society to get over on the contrary yeah i guess we'll almost like a moral compass (laughs) i guess we'll see Um, sorry that was a hell of a rant yeah no it's all good um even only surface level yeah, um, something that's very hard for people to do that I notice when you have conversations about anything is um, it seems very hard for some people to recognize that things can be simultaneously like beneficial and uh, not beneficial, detrimental. Um, it feels like sometimes people need things to be all or nothing. So with like the conversation around pornography, um, some people will get like incredibly upset if you bring up the idea at all that it, it might be detrimental in some ways. Like people will lose their fucking minds over it, um, which means that you can't. Like, nobody's saying that it should go away completely, but it seems hard to have a conversation about it at all because people take up, like, really extreme positions on both sides. Like, mm-hmm. you've got groups of people that, like, truly do believe that all porn should be banned from society and that it's, like, destroying men. Um, and then you've got people that, like, refuse to acknowledge that, you know, like, anything can be bad for you. Um, they, they just take, like, really extreme points of view on the other end of it, too, yeah. I hear a lot of people, there seems to be, like, a lot of hot talk around, like, the whole, like, dopamine stuff that certain things that we do in society are like hitting these receptors way too much and it's like poisoning our ability to get like normal enjoyment out of society. So I know that dopamine mm-hmm. is brought up a lot when it comes to point consumption. Um, I mean, I know that it's brought up a lot when it comes to like the consumption of like certain social media things. So like Reddit, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your take on that? Um, <clears throat> something that I am very disappointed in in general is it seems like we have made like really big, huge strides in certain sciences. Um, so like things like physics, um, but it seems like in other sciences like biology, it feels like we still know very, very, very little um, just because of all the restrictions on a lot of the research related to that um, over the years. So neurochemistry is still something that is like such a fucking mystery. Um, and it's a little frustrating that it's still such a mystery. Um, mm-hmm. 
like even insofar as like what does dopamine do in the body you know what does serotonin do in the body um you know like we have like we kind of have vague understandings of how some of it works but like the the underpinnings are not well understood at all and like even the way that we test like medical drugs is basically that like uh, oh like well we're just going to give this to a bunch of people and we're going to watch them over time and see what happens and that's really all we can do um and i think that's yeah. kind of sad I, I hope that we learn more about the human brain um as time goes on that would be cool i, have I don't my hopes know so. if any of these what are these restrictions? I didn't know that there were restrictions on what we can research in terms of new chemistry. Yeah, so a lot of the research that we have for like SSRIs comes from like the fucking 60s and 70s and shit um, because we've like banned the research of like ketamine or psilocybin or um, LSD or whatever. Like all of these drugs have been just off limits to researchers because of how the United States schedules um, uh, dangerous drugs. Um, so like a lot of the, uh, so like it's taken so long to get like any of this research legalized, which is like incredibly sad. Um, because it's possible that maybe some of these substances can be utilized in therapy or can be synthesized or used in other drugs that, that could help people um, in, in whatever ways. Yeah. yeah, basically it is a very cock, yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that. I wonder if we have the same restrictions here in the UK. Um, I would imagine so, yeah. Mm. Europe as a whole is pretty shitty when it comes to drugs as well. I know that America gets a lot of flack for shit, but <laughs> I, think, I think in a lot of Europe it's pretty hard to find anything too, um, depending on what you're talking about, but yeah. Hmm. I know that you're quite open about your, um, or at least, it, am I mistaken? I'm very tired. Have you like openly talked about drug use personally? Like, uh, yeah, I'm I'm super open about literally everything in my life. So yeah. Cool. So, like, uh, uh, how have you found being open about that on? not just on Twitch, but also when you have a highly political community. Like, is that a difficult thing to do? Does that come with backlash? Um, surprisingly, I'm not sure if the drug stuff yeah. has. There's like so many other things that people can attack me for. Um, mm. If somebody's going to like personally insult me, usually it's going to be something related to like sexuality or it's going to be something related to like my personal life or it'll be something related to like a political position. Um, it's not normally related to drug stuff. I, not that I can think of that that's happened, so, yeah. Mm. I find it really, really hard to care about people's personal lives because I kind of feel like we all fumble and nobody's given a straight up guide on how to navigate every situation perfectly or become a perfect person. And mm -hmm. so most of us fuck up, make mistakes, do dumb shit, hurt people and either learn better or end up really traumatized and condemned to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. I think Freud called that initially repetition compulsion. But anyway, mm -hmm. the, the thing with all of that is that I just find it so hard to, and exhausting to need everyone who ever teaches me anything, ever, anyone who ever makes me think, anyone who ever does their job, anyone who serves me coffee, anyone who makes my content, you know, to, you know, anyone who cleans a fucking toilet, you know, to to have an absolutely perfectly respectable, squeaky clean life history, sex life, you know, mm -hmm. diet, all the rest of it, in order to provide that and be a presence in my life. I kind of feel like it's a weird expectation that we put on streamers specifically that we don't put on, say, the person who sticks shelves at the supermarket or anything, where everyone watches them and their life and makes judgments and needs them to like date the right people, say the right things at all fucking times, never say anything dumb on Twitter. Like who else lives under that much scrutiny? And since when does that become a requirement of people being funny or making good content? Yeah, I think that streaming is pretty unique and that you have like an unprecedented amount of access to a person's life. Like nothing like this has ever existed in all of history. Um, and so like, I don't think we're used to having this level of access to a person. Uh, I think that mm. humans are very quick to make judgments about other humans. When you find like some bad pieces of information, we're very binary in terms of how we view people. It's, you're either bad or good. It's very hard to have a nuanced view of somebody. Um, and then all people make mistakes, like we know this, right? But if you're a streamer, mm. your mistakes are broadcast to the world, you know? A lot of people mm. have done a lot of shitty things. Every shitty thing I've ever done is publicly available on the internet. So like, um, and this happens, it's funny because every time I get into a dramatic event, um, people have like this like little like anti-destiny toolkit where they can break out like every single fucking argument that has ever been used against me to, for like mistakes that I've done in the past. And it's like, okay, well, um, and you don't really have the ability to do that or have that level of access to most people's personal lives. So it, it's definitely like an extra stressor when it comes to streaming for sure. Yeah, I do. I do like you say most streamers are a piece of shit, but I wonder if they're just a lot of us are very 
Um, what's the best way to put this? Uh, 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 a lot of us are just different because we have to be different than the norm. No normal brain would ever be able to cope with this level of scrutiny and invasion of privacy and pressure. It Absolutely. definitely has an impact on me. Yeah, like, there's definitely like a selection bias that occurs. Like only certain types of people are, are going to make it in streaming. And I think you have to have like, there's something somewhat wrong with you, I think, to to be able to make it in this industry like it's very everything we do is very inhuman um this level mm. of scrutiny this level of there are just there are like there are so many like little quirks about being a human that just make this such a horrible fucking job um like one example of this for instance is that like if you read through a ton of feedback um you can read through so much positive feedback and one negative comment will stand out more than 100 positive ones like that's like yeah. a feature of every single living human being um and it, yeah. it makes us very incompatible with the, the, the really hostile environments that we end up like working in so um yeah it's this is definitely like a, a rough thing for most like normal people like people pretend that they could like do this but i i don't think most people could handle uh the level of scrutiny that that the average streamer person is involved in not not by a long shot yeah i mean uh uh for me uh, uh i i think I, I i've got two points there one of them is that i've stopped being able to have relationships and close friendships because i stream like i feel like I use the money I earn from streaming to make sure that my mom gets care, to make sure that my animals get to live. And I feel like if I lose that, then I lose my capability to take care of them. So it almost feels to me like their well-being is held hostage for my success. Mm -hmm. And that really makes me feel like, yeah, I could have a partner, but um, like if things fuck up and they try to cancel me or they like, I don't know, take pictures of me in the shower or whatever and put the post them on the internet like that fucks with my life my reputation and my stream i reckon i can handle being lonely for a few more years if it means that my mom gets to live you know and so like i've started to end up rationalizing distancing myself from everyone and being super careful everything i ever write i'm like am i okay with millions of people seeing this as a screenshot before i click send mm -hmm. and it's really hard like this it really heavy pressure on me to uh uh to uh, uh to not to to um kind of be incredibly cautious of people and i i don't know how like i've spoken to some streamers most of the guy most of the streamers i know who've been doing it for like 10 years or something have are all men because i feel like this this level of scrutiny is so much higher if you are a woman because already we shame women for ever having sex, ever having a partner, ever making mistakes. Uh, if, if they age, it's considered a failing. Um, and you know, you see that with people like the actress from Star Wars, I can't remember her name, Princess Leia. And like yeah. the way she's treated just for the crime of getting older and not being quite as nuttable anymore. You know, all this ridiculous shit. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel uh, 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 like I just have no idea how people handle it long term and stay normal and it looks like people don't <laughs> yeah yeah that's definitely possible yeah um yeah i'm not sure how lo how long have you been involved in streaming now two years i didn't know what streaming was before that so i jumped in before i really knew what i was laying myself in for <laughs> mm -hmm. gotcha do you um how about you? i've been here for a long time i think like 11 years now that's um, insane yeah. Do you, how much longer do you think you want to do streaming? I don't know. I, I, I am not very good at planning. That's the executive function part of my mm -hmm. brain. <laughs> so I have just been running with whatever opportunities land on my feet. That's how I ended up streaming. That's why I'm still here. I thought everyone uh -uh, made me go viral because of my ticks. And I thought, you know, me shouting cock is going to get old pretty fast. No one's going to be here in a week. Mm -hmm. I saw lots of other people who went viral, just everyone gets bored of them and leaves after a short period. When I went to all of the VIP parties and stuff, everyone came up to me and they're like, save your money. You're going to get a wave of money going viral, but then everyone's going to leave and you'll go back to where you were before. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So don't get into debt and remember to save money for taxes. Mm -hmm. And I'm still here. And the numbers have pretty much stayed stable. And I'm like, how? Mm -hmm. Why are people still here? And I keep thinking that everything is going to fall apart tomorrow. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it happens to a lot of people, but I, from what I've seen, it seems like your audience is relatively stable, yeah? Yeah, I I don't know why. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't feel like I have much content, if I'm honest, but people still keep coming, um, and I'm still kind of figuring out 
I know that stream is meant to have a formula. It's kind of weird that I've been doing this for two years and I don't know what mine is. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What do you... How do you go about, like, figuring out what you want to do on stream? Do you, like, ever plan this out in advance or just turn it on and hope that, like, content comes to you, or...? Uh, so, some days I just talk to my chat. I look at what they want to ask, because for some reason people think that I've got good advice. Um, and I, 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 I thought as soon as these people see the inside of my house, they're going to stop asking me for my um, contribution. Mm -hmm. But they saw, like, my, my bedroom and said it looked like a crack den, and they still ask me what to do with their lives, so... I think we're good. Um, so I, I that's pretty stable content. I'll come on and I'll be like, yo, what do you want to talk about? Anyone need any help with anything? And people will ask me about relationships and all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, 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 sometimes I plan vaguely um, and I bring people on or I choose a game or I change something, but it's rare because I really struggle with planning. So most of the time I'll occasionally play a game or just talk to chat. That's most of my content with the odd exception. Gotcha. Did you ever manage to hop onto that Rust server and do any of that, or no? I thought about it. I mean, I feel like the drama made me a little bit nervous and tentative too. I was mm -hmm. like, if someone invites me, then yeah, sure. But I'm not going to try myself actively to get on. So I never did in the end. Someone did end up inviting me, but that particular person got banned straight after, so I never ended up playing with them. <laughs> Um, and then that was that was all it was. Um, I kind of feel like I'm not a drama content creator. I think the minute you start fighting with someone, mm -hmm. all of your tweets and all of your response videos and stuff become your content. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of want people to feel, I want my content to leave people wanting to do better and having more reasons to connect with each other, being more accepting. Those are the sorts of things I like to come of my stream. Mm -hmm. I don't think me complaining about someone else's behavior is going to result in any of that. So I don't want to get bogged down in it and end up having to justify every little action, releasing like Google documents on every word I said and what I meant by it and shit. Mm -hmm. just seems like not something I ha -ha -ha, really, ha -ha -ha, really want to bother with. So... I'm sure there's money in it, but I'm not here for the money. Sure. <laughs> not entirely. Well, okay. Have you ever lived anywhere besides the UK before? Or have you always been? Dude, I couldn't, most of my life I couldn't afford food. So I have like, I only started, I flew in a plane for the first time when I was 28 to go to my first TwitchCon <laughs> oh, <laughs> to okay. Germany. Uh, so I, I've only been to Germany and the US a couple of times and only for a few days. I don't know what anywhere is like. I know nothing of the world. I was home educated, never did geography. I found out where India was on GeoGuessr like a year ago. So <laughs> I'm, all I know is the UK. Gotcha. All right. What, what about you? Where have you lived? Um, I don't know. I've lived in a few random spots in the US. Um... I lived in Poland, I guess, for three months. Um, yeah, and then I've just like traveled around to a bunch of different areas. But I, I don't, I don't think I've lived in too many different areas. Um, was Was Poland for Melina? I don't remember where she lives. I'm sorry. No, um, Melina lives in or is from Stockholm, uh, Sweden. Um, okay. So yeah, so I've been up there a couple times um, for a month or two. Um, yeah, I've been to South Korea for a month, I guess. Um, Poland was fun. Uh, the the biggest difference I noticed when the the number one thing I noticed when being in uh, in any European country is the uh, public transport is really good, so um, that's always fun I guess because um, mm -hmm. I lived in Poland for three months but I didn't need a car to go anywhere at any time of the day which is really nice. But other than that, mm -hmm. um, like other than getting food, I basically spend all my time indoors anyway, like playing video games or talking on stream. So um, it doesn't really matter much where I live I guess as long as I have my computer. <laughs> True. I mean, do you find that the uh, uh is limiting? Like, that, that having to come on stream r restricts your ability to really go out and explore and, and, you know, see the world in the same way? Um, it, not really. I think being, well, just because of where, I, where I've come from, I'm similar to you in that I had never really had the money to travel or anything before getting into streaming. So I think that probably streaming and doing this has unlocked the ability for me to go to a lot more places. Like, I've traveled around a ton. Um, I'm just not like, I'm not much of like a, I don't get much out of traveling. It sounds really bad. I've seen like some really amazing things and scenes in my lifetime. I just, but I don't care that much. Um, it's just not something that is that interesting to me. Um, yeah, I'm really into like music. Um, I like arguing about politics and philosophy. Um, I like playing video games. Like these are like the big things that are, are like my huge interests. So stuff involving that is really cool, but just seeing cool scenes, um, I just don't really care as much about it. It's not like a huge thing for me. Hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, what I've found from talking to you so far is that uh, uh, you can put things into, you can take big concepts and put them into more succinct terms. And that's something I miss about debating is that there are all these terms for certain concepts, everything, like the language used is so much more efficient and I miss it because it helped me to learn about things and also explore concepts so much faster. Um, I kind of I, I I kind of let go of debating uh, years ago, mm -hmm. and that's I think one of the things that I really miss about it. But I I also really really have a wanderlust. Like I I want to go and see the world because I kind of feel like on a universal scale there's so so much internet and there is so much crap and stuff. People just buy stuff after stuff after stuff. It just doesn't make me happy, but there's only this tiny little speck of life that we know of in all of the known universe. Life is rare. Every little shape it comes in really intrigues me. I love insects, I love animals, I love, you know, different environments and ecosystems and stuff. Always have. Uh -huh. So I really, really want to go see it all. I want to see whales and I want to see loads of different animals and forests and deserts and stuff. I do. I just don't think I can do it as a streamer. Yeah, well, I mean, if it makes you feel any better, you're not missing out on any of that by not being involved in online debate, because online debate is just a bunch of people screaming at each other, so you're, there's <laughs> literally nothing there that you're missing. Um, Do you have, like, a favorite topic that you like to debate about? Um, there's tons of stuff that would be fun to debate about, but most debates usually come down to, like, somebody not knowing how to read a graph, or people just lying about, like, studies, or people just not... Like, the big problem, I, I guess, like, the debates that I have are kind of a microcosm of the overall kind of, like, political reality of the world, and that nobody really agrees on, like, what is real anymore. So, usually, mm -hmm. debates are just screaming at each other over, like, did this happen? Like, is the deep state real? Is... Did that person say that? Or is this fake media? Blah? Like, usually, that's, like, what every conversation is about, so... There aren't very many fun conversations that, like, re require a lot of brain power. Usually, it's just a matter of, like, can you read a news article, or do you know like what this means yeah yeah but um yeah, yeah. yeah that's how it goes do you is there like a particular I, place you really want to go do you have like a huge like i always want to like visit like the, the caribbean or i don't know or some i don't know where british people go to <laughs> uh well british tourists have a really bad reputation for um like pissing in public, having public sex, getting way too drunk, causing chaos. Like, they're horrible, horrible tourists. They t tend to go to places like Magaluf and they like get blindingly drunk and just do just the most ridiculously debauched stuff you can think of. And so, um, unfortunately, the UK is just not very well uh, liked. Most people don't want UK tourists. <laughs> oh, well, damn, okay. Yeah, um, but I wanna go to this rat temple in India because I really like rats, so. Wait, rat um, temple or rap temple? Rat temple. Rat so, temple, okay, gotcha. Uh-huh, so breakfast. Um, they think that the rats there are the dead, dead reincarnated ancestors of the town and that some of the particularly blessed souls become albino rats. And so people bring offerings to the temple to feed the people that they think are like grandma and stuff like that um mm -hmm. that have come back in rat form so you can sit there and they'll just crawl over you and you can be rat swarmed and i really would love to do that interesting gotcha mm -hmm. you you mentioned you have a lot of animals what animals do you have so far well at the moment i have the least amount of animals i've ever had so i have a few rabbits um a giant african land snail a few mice and that's it at the moment because I'm narrowing down my time and saving up for things like incubators and stuff for the next baby bird season because I take in a lot of wild animals and things and it's been really hard to do that on stream like when you have to feed a, a baby pigeon like every couple of hours or so it means mm -hmm. that I've had to like whip him out and have him tucked under my arm and like syringe feed him whilst I'm talking to chat about philosophy or whatever and it's a bit of a multitasking nightmare mm -hmm. um so yeah, now I'm just getting kit ready to make it much easier next year. I rescue a lot of seagulls and birds and things, but I particularly like helping foxes and badgers and um, you know some of the larger wildlife. But I mainly do pet animals and either rehome them or look after them and keep them. I think the most animals I've had at once is 200. Jeez. Wait, like yeah, what? I was heavily in debt. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> um. But yeah, I had chinchillas, rabbits, rats, mice, um, a few cats. Uh, what else? There was more. Uh, what 
else do we have? I can't remember anymore. Oh, fucked out of blackbirds at some point. Some pigeons. Um, I looked after some parrots for a while. And also, I've lived at a sanctuary for a few months where I was looking after pigs, sheep, um, geese, ducks, um, also parrots, and donkeys, and ponies, and that sort of thing. Damn, where do you find the space for all these things? So when I worked at the sanctuary, I was I just went and stayed there. There was an army cot and a place to dump a sleeping bag and some mm -hmm. toiletries. And that was where I stayed. Uh, 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 at home, um, it was just bedrooms. I just give my bedrooms to my animals. So, gotcha. Well, damn. Yeah, I think I think uh, in depending on where you live, it's cheaper to rent places here. Mm. Um, that can be true in the U.S. as well. Yeah, just depends. Yeah. Yeah, so I could afford the space to fuck to find some, so I can afford the space to look after animals because it's a little bit cheaper if you live in a dead town. Mm -hmm. Do you have any Do dietary you, yeah. things? Are you like vegan or vegetarian or anything? Or? Yeah, I'm vegan. I've been vegan for 16 years. Gotcha. Is I was raised vegetarian before that. You said, um, you said you live like in a smaller-ish town now. Is it hard to find like food sources for your diet? No. no, no. Um, so I have been in and out of homelessness and I've been incredibly poor and had very little money. Mm -hmm. So that can be far more limiting on your dietary options than location for sure. Mm -hmm. But what people fail to realize is that rice, beans, lentils and vegetables are incredibly cheap. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was living off 20 pounds for two people for two weeks. That I would go for a 20 pound food shop every two weeks to feed me and my boyfriend. That worked out for, with us having three meals a day that were really good and snacks mm -hmm. and treats. So there, it's it's very cheap and easy if you're building things from scratch to make food that's good for you and very, very cheap. My, my meals were like 20, 30p each. Mm -hmm. So ha ha ha. So ha ha ha. So I never really struggled in that sense. I don't care where I live. There's going to be those basic cheap foods available, potatoes and things like that. Um, so it's just a matter of knowing how to cook. I, uh, another limitation is that I can't. I, it's dangerous for me to be cooking for more than twenty minutes at a time because I will burn myself and hurt myself with knives and things if I hold them too long. Mm -hmm. So I, it's about making recipes that are very quick and easy, and that's more limiting than being vegan, to be honest. Gotcha. Do you get I any still kind manage. of? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, oh, you I still just, manage? I still manage, yeah. Do you get any kind of, like, state aid? Like, is there any kind of disability or anything paid out if you have Tourette's since you have, like, a medical diagnosis? Or? Huh. So, for most of my life, I didn't have a diagnosis, so I couldn't access that. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a tricky situation. So, what happened with me is there is government assistance. You get disability checks if you have a uh -uh, dis d determined disability. Mm -hmm. um, but I could tell you some really fucking fucked up things about our system here, if you're curious. <laughs> um, yeah, go for it. Um, so, okay, my mom was not diagnosed for many, many years. She had a tumor growing in her womb that got so big because it wasn't diagnosed mm -hmm. um, that to remove it would mean removing so many organs now that it's better just to leave it where it is, even though that has absolutely debilitating consequences. Mm -hmm. She also has a few other cu really chronic illnesses, which means she's bedridden for about two weeks out of every month, confused all the time. Um, she passes out a lot, has absences, um, and it's just generally not able to work at all, and that won't ever get better. And mm -hmm. the thing with this is, she should be receiving disability money, which would be enough to live on, and it would pay for her rent, and that's normal. However, because the doctors kept going, because um, uh, because chronic pain is underdiagnosed in women, if women report di chronic pain, it can still take five to ten years on average to get diagnosed, especially with women-specific diseases like mm -hmm. um yeah, so basically it was very difficult to get a diagnosis. She did it in the end, but too late. And this meant that the whole time she was being put on job seekers allowance instead of disability. Job seekers allowance is when they press you to get work, they require you to be looking for work, show evidence that you're looking for work, show what jobs you've applied for, and only if you've been looking for work do they pay you. If you look like you're being lazy and not trying, they cut it off and they sanction you for certain behaviors. So she was put in that circumstance, forced to look for work whilst reporting all these symptoms and barely being able to come into the job centre. The job centre, the person she was assigned to, to help her find a job, mm -hmm. was a man who we listened to talking to the security guard at the job centre, saying specifically um, that he had threatened a woman with sanctions 
unless she applied for escort jobs, which is basically a euphemism here for prostitution quite often. Mm -hmm. um, and that he had had a go on her and she had nice tits and was recommending to the, um, bo the bodyguard guy, yeah, the guard at the place, that he should give her a go as well. And so we were basically hearing an admission from him that he was coercing some of his clients to go into jobs for his own benefit in quite a creepy and disgusting way. Mm -hmm. um, they also did this to my mum. They tried to pressure to, her to be an escort at one point and she just was like, fuck this, <laughs> and left. Sure. Um, and so, you know, they, they're very, they can be very dodgy and take advantage of you. There are a lot of horror stories. They constantly, when she finally did start getting a disability allowance, they kept constantly reassessing her and saying, are you better yet? Can you work yet? Are you better yet? And if they think that, you know, if you can hold your arms above your head for three seconds, if you can stand for five seconds, this sort of thing, then technically you're considered fit for work, mm -hmm. which means they'll cut your disability. And many people who have terminal cancer, people who have literally no limbs, have had their disability checks sanctioned or stopped because they've been deemed to work out of the blue unexpectedly by one of these random tests and they died or ended up homeless and then died and it's a big scandal it's constantly happening in the uk it's horrible so being on benefits here is really really bad and people have a bad view of people on benefits so uh, -uh if you're claiming this money people think you're lazy you're scamming the government you're working off you know leeching off taxpayers so you are ostracized by society making it harder to work and the people who are meant to be giving you the money are constantly putting you in perilous situations and kind of like um you know just it's a horrible vulnerable place to be in and this meant that we were in and out of homelessness because the money was not consistent and you know because it was really difficult to rely on them i spent my childhood you know going, there was a time where I, I went two weeks without food literally um there was times where we had five pounds between us to buy food for the month things like this it was really a struggle when i was growing up mm -hmm. it's a horrible position to be in and um yeah my mom um she, you know she had to really fight tooth and nail to get that and as for me i tried to go to university because i didn't want to be on benefits my whole life mm -hmm. um i didn't have diagnosed Tourette's, uh, 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 uh but i did have uh, clinical depression 13 years and um, severe social phobia agoraphobia and so I used to put that on a note and that would allow me five thousand pounds a year to live on um, so I was living on five thousand pounds a year from the age of I think 22 or 23 but before that I couldn't claim it because I was going to uni Jeez. so yeah, um, uh, 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 I didn't have very much money at uni and I went from nine and a half stone to six and a half stone because they were delayed in giving me my student loan. Mm -hmm. So I just couldn't afford anything to eat for like the first year. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Do you take um, medication now for your Tourette's or to manage any of your symptoms or anything? <gasps> yeah, that's a pretty personal question. Obviously, you don't have to answer. Right? Okay. That's fine. There's not really anything off limits for me either. But um, uh, 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 I don't take Tourette's medication. Um, the side effects are not worth it from my perspective. And also, uh, uh, a lot of people who take the Tourette's medication feel drugged, kind of feel dopey and not themselves mm -hmm. and tired all the time. And it's hard to engage with the world. And I kind of feel like <whistles> if I have a choice between being less than an average person in terms of how much I can engage and connect with people and think clearly or about an average person just with different advantages to most mm -hmm. I'd rather go with the latter so for me uh, 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 I feel like people with Tourette syndrome have lots of strengths they're just rare strengths they have lots of weaknesses where most people are capable mm -hmm. so I don't feel like I'm at a disadvantage enough to s s s try and fix it I don't feel broken I just, uh, uh, I just feel like the world isn't used to players with my stats. Mm -hmm. You know, in if you see it as like a stat tree, I've got max level on that certain things that most people don't, but I also have no points on things that most people need. Yeah. That's where I'm at. And I'd rather be that than just drugged up and low stats all round. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, that's how, that, I think that's a pretty typical view that a lot of um, neuroatypical people prefer is rather than viewing the atypicalness as like a disability or a pathology, it's more just that like, well, in some things you're better and in some things you're worse and society is kind of geared towards the things that you're worse at at the moment. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong or broken or messed up about the mind of a neuroatypical person, just that they're not necessarily suited for the society that we build around neurotypical people today. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree, but I think there's an evolutionary advantage to having non-neurotypical people. I think there's an evolutionary advantage to having autistic people, for example, in the community. Um, I think that having lots of different minds that are very, very, very highly attuned for specific tasks, coming at all the problems that we face makes me makes us a more adaptable species. So, like, if one group of people in the tribe remembers where all the fruit bearing trees are for the year mm -hmm. that's useful whereas if another can't remember anything for shit but can come up with creative ways to reach those trees if there's a flood or whatever then they're useful and so it's about uh, 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 having diverse minds to compensate and come at challenges because we are a species that it's really squishy and pathetic and easily smushed but we get by because we adapt our environment and we adapt ourselves to our new environments. We make clothes and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be possible for us to survive this long if we all had exactly the same carbon copy brain. Sure. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah, that the byproduct of like the differences in our brains produces like different types of people. It's not necessarily a bad thing for sure. Yeah. So, I'm kind of. I, d I don't want to speak for other people with disabilities. I'm sure there are people who think, uh, uh I'd rather not be like this, and it is a disadvantage in disability, and I am less able. But that's not the attitude I have towards myself and mm -hmm. others who aren't neurotypical. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well. Damn. How many times when you're talking to somebody do you have to spell your entire life story? Because people ask you so many questions about the about your history and everything. It's like the seventy percent of my average conversations is mm -hmm. answering the same questions over and over again nice oh well actually then you're basically getting the debate experience so that's basically all <laughs> um have you ever have you ever debated anyone about veganism i know that a lot of people <laughs> don't we don't talk about that here okay yeah it's fine yeah. like don't worry i i know mm -hmm. like nobody respects vegans i'm so used to people getting really enraged if you're anything if you're any religion or anything like that the minute you're a vegan people can spit in your food mm -hmm. shit on your life hate you forever and feel fine about it. Mm -hmm. So I don't care about your stance on veganism. Yeah, no, it's fine. We, I, I personally, I'm not a vegan. Um, and I think that I have the philosophical, ba philosophical backing for it. Um, mm -hmm. However, I think that most people should be vegan. Um, and I think I, I'm kind of known for a lot of vegan debates on my stream because I usually argue in favor of veganism against people that get really, really, really mad every time there's some stupid fucking animal in the news that gets killed. Um, and that's usually the thing that will trigger me the most. I don't know if you remember like, um, like Cecil the lion, um, or there was that fucking, there was that ape or that gorilla that got shot or whatever. Um, and it's always really funny to me that like meat eaters will go onto Reddit and they'll get so upset or so mad when they hear about like a cat being abused or like a chicken yeah. being abused or like a lion getting killed and then they'll like go in the order like chicken nuggets and cheeseburgers and it's like well do you actually give a fuck or is this, do you just care about like the cute ones or do you just care about the cute ones you can see so um, I think the, the usually when veganism comes up on my stream it's either it's usually because we're making fun of like people that eat meat they get like incredibly offended or sad when some animals are killed but seem to not care about other types of animals generally yeah. yeah i remember my friend was watching um an advert for a, a, a charity that saves stray dogs and it was like pulling that sad story of like the abandoned dog and stuff and they were shaking their head eating their dinner like oh god that's terrible i don't know how anyone could do that to an animal i was like you're eating a cow's ass like, i totally get that stance i i'm very puzzled by it myself i mean i understand why i very much understand why but it's still very i don't know it's even though I know why people do it, I'm always so incredulous. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, and I don't care, honestly, and like, this is why I, I, I have a level of respect for people that are just like, that are very forthcoming with their beliefs. Um, this is true of like bad political beliefs or social beliefs um, or, or things like veganism or whatever. If somebody is just gonna outright be like, listen, 
I don't give a fuck about animals, period. Um, like, if dogs are dying on the street or whatever, I just don't care. Fuck it. I respect that person more than people that get, like, selectively outraged against the cute ones that they happen to come across in the news while turning a blind eye to everything else. Um, because it shows me that, like, they don't actually give a fuck about anything. It's just whatever's, like, the most convenient thing for them at the time. And that usually drives mm. me more crazy than anything else. So you like people who are very morally consistent and very um, cognizant of all of the implications of that. Yes, yeah, the, the consistency is a really, really, really big one for me. And people that are honest and understand themselves as well is also like a really big thing for me. Like, I would rather have a frank conversation against like a Nazi who's like a race realist that thinks that black people are genetically inferior or whatever, than have a conversation with somebody that is like hiding behind it or just uses a lot of weird euphemisms or isn't completely forthcoming with how they feel, but they think that there's something wrong with blah, blah. Like, I, I, I wow. prefer people that are just like very upfront about what they believe and understand what they believe and don't like hide behind like, yeah, like dumb phrases or whatever. Um, mm. Even if I even if I disagree with those people, like I can at least respect their consistency. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 I'm reading books right now. I like to read a lot of psychology books, and ones about neuroscience and things. And mm -hmm. I'm reading one right now about how we tend to have a vain brain that carefully selects information, forgets the stuff that challenges our present worldview, and remembers things or just their memory of things mm -hmm. according to how much it's self-serving and that this isn't always a conscious decision and that it's such an automatic mechanism that we all struggle with on a, con on a daily basis that even those who who specifically study for years in in regards to confirmation bias and this this sort of thing are still falling prey to it unconsciously and have to catch themselves whenever they do it and so i try to be more understanding of people and their inconsistencies mm -hmm. because it's a real battle to remain consistent it's 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 not just a flip on and off choice and i don't think that in excuses hip hypocrisy but understanding it helps people to deal with it better so I yeah, acknowledge sure. that I'm probably very inconsistent to mm -hmm. some degree, but I wrestle with those inconsistencies whenever I spot them and try to align them and redirect them towards something that feels right. For example, uh, 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 I have, and I like my my philosophy is if you can choose not to cause harm, that's the right choice, right? Mm -hmm. But that is in direct conflict with the fact that I have a giant African land snail because she has mites and if i don't clean those mites off her and wash them away she will die but there are more mites than there is african lands now i only have one so in order to keep her and take care of her i have to kill thousands of mites and that seems like hypocrisy <laughs> but um the way that i rationalize it is that I took her on, I'm responsible for her welfare and well-being. I made a promise to her previous owner that I would keep her alive and do what it takes to do so. I'm now her guardian, and as such I have to live up to those responsibilities regardless of my personal moral views. Um, and so I do what it takes, even when it doesn't feel right. And that's how I've rationalized it, and I'm going to stick with that even if it doesn't sit well with me. Sure. Um, if you, yeah, I mean, if you feel bad about it, um. I think most vegans usually start from the from the axiom of like the the only life worth defending is like sentient life, regardless, right? So you ignore things like mm -hmm. insects or whatever. So I mean, it's not the worst thing well, in the world. Well, to me, insects, um, because I know enough, there's enough evidence scientifically to suggest that they have an emotional capacity. To me, they are sentient enough to be worth regarding. If I can choose not to kill an insect, I will. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, I feel like insect life has value. Um, hmm. So for me, because like if they can feel stress, if they can feel trauma, that we've proven that fruit flies feel trauma, that they have memories, that they have unique personalities. To me, that's sentient enough for me to regard them as an individual. If they have a person, a personality, they're a person to me. So for their life has value to them. That's enough to give it value and for me to not want to harm them if I can choose not to. Hmm. Okay, well, okay, well, in that case. <laughs> Wouldn't you have then a moral obligation to like destroy these types of creatures? Um, if there are creatures that necessitate the harm of other life forms, um, so like you, so w one fun thought experiment with vegans is uh, talking about like cat genocides. If you have creatures that are obligated to consume um, like animal protein, mm -hmm. is it is it immoral to keep these things alive? Would the more moral choice be to eliminate all animals that necessitate the destruction or murder of other? beings, I guess, to, to sustain their life. 
or, or how do you deal with that conflict i guess well cats would be a bad example for that because they are obligate carnivores but the cat food we presently give them has artificial taurine in because we process um, cat food so much that it removes essential taurine which allows them to get protein out of the food yeah so, i've seen people well, go back and forth on whether the yeah. vegan cats I, I i don't know 100 percent if that's true it, it might be true um it wouldn't surprise me but like but we can substitute cat out for any other type of creature that would like necessitate okay. the destruction of any because uh, i assume that if we could recreate everything in a lab then theoretically all of that consumption would be ethical and moral right yeah um so my perspective on that is that so with the the decree of like the moral the moral stance on veganism is to cause the least harm possible wherever you have a choice now the reason why it's wherever you have a choice instead of it just ending at at least harm possible is because we consider self-preservation a justification for harm so for example a lion can't go on a tofu diet and live they'll die Mm -hmm. So they are forced by necessity to kill in order to survive. So from that perspective, because they're only causing harm when they have to, they're technically vegan. Mm -hmm. um, so I might go outside tomorrow and step on a snail by accident in order to go outside, get food and all the rest of the things that I need in order to live. Um, it, I, I'm, I still regard myself as vegan because I have no choice but to risk causing harm, but I will choose actively not to and reduce it wherever possible. And so my my idea of veganism, and it's quite a well accepted version of veganism that most live by, is that because these animals need to eat meat in order to survive, that they are causing harm when it's necessary and mm -hmm. not when it's unnecessary. Um, Would it be more moral to like slowly like eradicate the existence of these creatures over time? So slowly breed out or prevent from breeding like castrate and neuter like all animals that necessitate the destruction of other life forms? Um, well, that kind of flies in the face of all ecosystems because most ecosystems rely on predation as part of their maintenance. Mm -hmm. And so in order for all of the life that is killed by, say, a lion, um, it also facilitates all the life that comes after their death. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, wolves, everyone uses the Yellowstone wolves as an example of how their predation actually, you know, it, it creates further life. And sure. therefore, it's essential harm. It's not a recreational thing that could be avoided and is therefore unnecessary. I sure. don't think there's any logic or any lives would actually be saved. I think it would just cause death in another respect. Mm -hmm. Like you take away the Yellowstone wolves and yes, they kill a few animals in order to survive, but they facilitate um, like millions of lives essentially over the course of the entire existence of Yellowstone mm -hmm. to exist. By Could, their role. Sure. Okay. Tell me when you want to stop on this. Okay. <laughs> so we've done a lot of these vegan <laughs> streams. So my next question, there, there's two branching paths from here. So the first question mm -hmm. would be is if there is an ecosystem that can be created that sustains life but necessitates suffering, is that ecosystem a moral one? Um, so for instance, we could talk about how like, well, if we stopped consuming cow meat, that would mean that less mm -hmm. cows would be produced and eventually all cows would probably cease to exist because they wouldn't survive naturally in their current form in the wilderness. So mm -hmm. if that's an example of an ecosystem that only exists and is self-sustained because of the suffering needed um, for us to consume the meat of the cows, is that like a moral ecosystem or should that be gone? And then the other branching path is like, is there any moral value at all in defending any ecosystem that necessitates the suffering of other sentient life? And if that's true, um, what puts like the moral value of sustaining an ecosystem above the moral value of just sustaining like hedonistic human happiness for consuming meat, right? So you, so one person might say, well, we need to, we need some animals to die because it sustains the ecosystem. And someone else is like, oh, sure, I agree. We also need some animals to die because it makes me really happy and I like to eat meat. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. We, and we can stop this anytime you want. Okay. <laughs> these, are, these are really That's like. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're not going to alienate me or upset me by having this discussion. I gotcha. feel totally chill about it. Okay. Um, and I don't. Well, take I, that's because I haven't started all. screaming at you yet. So, no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> so, from my perspective, um, so I feel like with the cows example specifically, my answer would be in order for a cow to exist, um, we need to burn down a fuck ton of rain rainforest and destroy a fuck ton of ecosystems. Most of the natural ecosystems and habitats in this country are lost to animal agriculture. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have cows, many more lives would get to exist. Um, but we would still have cows if we didn't eat them because people keep them as pets. And also they are selectively bred from a species of wild cow. Mm -hmm. um, 
So there are there would be wild cows that would continue to exist and live their lives regardless of whether or not people eat them. We don't need to eat them in order to, for them to exist. We're not doing them a favor by um, by uh, 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 you know harvesting them the way that we do. Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, hedonistic happiness and its value doesn't have a higher value than the amount of happiness achieved by allowing millions of lives to exist. So for example, if we stop selectively, because we breed cows, they don't breed themselves. We buy sperm, we artificially inseminate them. It's much cheaper to keep sperm on hand than it is a whole ass bull who doesn't produce anything that is equal to the value of food we give it. Mm -hmm. So we artificially inseminate them. They would not overbreed without our consumption. They don't need us to maintain their numbers. We are literally artificially creating their numbers. Mm -hmm. So we are creating them for hedonistic pleasure, which is fleeting. These are moments. So a cow lives their entire life, dies in a slaughterhouse for three minutes on your plate. Mm -hmm. If we take away that entire system and replace it with an ecosystem, yes, there is predation in that ecosystem. Yes, there is suffering in that ecosystem. But every single one of those lives, from the predators to the prey to the insects, all get to enjoy multiple moments several times throughout their lifetime, several every day mm -hmm. for years. And that equates to way more happiness achieved than the hedonistic three minutes on a human's plate for the millions of lives that don't get to exist in a cow's place. Because one cow represents the loss of a fuck ton of lives and habitat, as well as the loss of the cow's life itself. Could um, you make an argument? Required... Yeah, I, I, and kind of like in, in that vein, could oh. you make an argument then that like almost all ecosystems are immoral or because all of them necessitate the massive destruction of sentient life or would almost all ecosystems become moral because they create opportunities for um, sentience to flourish or experience like well-being, I guess? I think it would be a way too reductive mm -hmm. to say that it was only one or the other. Um, I'd say that uh, 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 the thing with ecosystems existing is that they facilitate life, mm -hmm. they facilitate sentience, and they facilitate advancement. And with advancement comes the possibility of life on other planets. I think ultimately, um, every single ecosystem is an opportunity for sentient life to happen and then spread to other planets. Mm -hmm. And this means that that all equates to something incredibly important, which is for the opportunity of matter to experience itself, which is the rarest and most important thing I can know of in the universe. I don't know of anything else that is more important because it's the opportunity for the universe to have sentience, know itself, experience itself, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, I don't necessarily know that animal agriculture can ever facilitate the development of sentient life because specifically we we specifically breed domesticated animals to be stupid. We specifically domest um, make them stupid, obedient, and um, we we reduce the amount of fight or flight response in them so they have less self-preservation. And a lot of what causes us to go into space and advance and develop is our sense of self-preservation, which is what we rob domesticated animals of. And so I don't think that they can be compared because one is a loop that always leads to the same outcome, which is a death. Mm -hmm. The other is, you know, we don't exist purely to die neither do lots of free animals in their own and ecosystems they take part and participate participate in the furtherment of all the organisms in that ecosystem and so none you know natural ecosystems ecosystems do not exist purely to for someone to die they exist so that everyone can participate and there is freedom to branch out of that participation into other motives and discoveries and I think that that is completely incomparable. Yeah, yeah, you can't call that anything like animal agriculture. Animal agriculture is not an ecosystem. It, inc inc it has suffering, but it also has no other outcome than that suffering. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. All right. How often do you uh, find yourself debating uh, veganism on your stream? <laughs> do people argue about it a lot? I don't let them argue about it with me. I don't, I don't, I'm not vegan to convince anyone mm -hmm. that they should or shouldn't do anything. So people can ask me questions about the way that I live my life, but if they try to argue with me, I'm like, I'm not gonna justify my sandwich to you, dude. I'm just gonna eat it. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're curious about the way I live because you're curious about me, that's fine. If you're trying to bait me into an argument to justify yourself, I don't care. You don't need to justify yourself to me what you want live how you want i'm just doing what i feel is right i'm contributing to the world in the way that i want to do 
Um, so like I take that stance quite heavily, mm -hmm. but before that I used to uh, uh, never tell. I kept it secret for nearly two years that I was vegan because I just didn't want to have to justify myself. A lot of people take it as a personal affront if anyone exists in a way that they don't. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't want people to take it personally. I just wanted to eat my food in peace. Um, but yeah, I've grown very used to people challenging the way that I live as if me just not wanting to eat a specific kind of food is a problem. Like if I said to myself, if I said I don't drink wine, no one's going to have a problem. If I say I don't smoke, no one's going to have a problem. But suddenly everyone becomes a health expert and starts lecturing me on morals and stuff the mm -hmm. minute I say I don't want to eat the same food, like the same meat or the same sandwich. Sure. And I find that like such an overreaction and it's exhausting. So um, outside of like actual debates where I've stepped into an environment specifically to debate about it and mm -hmm. then I only do that to learn like people test my knowledge about my world and my diet and mm -hmm. that helps me to be a better person I don't do it to convince anyone of anything sure okay yeah. people probably find since um since veganism is uh generally not always but generally it's argued from an ethical and moral perspective um they're probably offended or upset that somebody perceives themselves as being morally superior for some lifestyle choice so then they have to take it upon themselves to tell you why you're wrong or they would have to accept that they're like ethically inferior in some way i imagine it's, it's like the driving reason why most people will fight to death with vegans if they hear them bring up their veganism mm. yeah but i also find that a lot of people uh, 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 think that if you live differently they have a sense of guilt and they mm -hmm. want to alleviate that guilt by proving you wrong. So yeah, for you sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, to redeem themselves in their own eyes. Um, and I just don't want to be device for that. They can go Google some shit if they want to do that. Like, mm -hmm. they can find a study that, you know, they can blow themselves with some, like, very um, reassuring study on the internet. They can selectively cherry pick whatever they want from the internet and justify themselves. They don't need to ruin my day or my dinner. They sure. don't need to argue with me. Uh, you know, because, like, people would do it at dinner, like, I'd go to eat a Christmas dinner with someone and they'd try to bait me into an argument and I'd be like, just let me eat my food, you weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very used to that reaction and dealing with it and using people's own momentum to scupper them. So when people get all uppity about my diet, they quite often consider themselves, it's usually dudes, and they usually feel like they're macho and they need their meat and they're a caveman and they're practically a lion. Look at my canines bullshit. So mm -hmm. what I used to usually go is like, well then why are you being so weak and sensitive? Like why does my, why is why are you being so snowflakey about my food? Like yeah. why does my food offend you? And then like, oh yeah, shit. I'm like, yeah, why are you overreacting? Like why are you being a drama queen? And they're like, oh yeah, and they just leave me alone. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I've gotten used to just shutting down things as fast as possible because I have lived my whole life rather exhaustively trying to justify eating greens. And that seems like such a weird thing to have to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. But I don't know if you end up resorting to that when you just can't be asked. Like, you must come across the same things over and over again. Do you ever just, like, find these default arguments that usually shut people up as fast as possible because you just can't be asked today? Um, yeah, I guess my atypicalness is, uh, I really like arguing with people. I'll argue with anybody over anything ever. Um, it's just, I don't know why, it's just very enjoyable for me. So, um, if somebody wants to challenge me on something, it's usually, like, pretty fun for me. And then I've usually thought about the arguments, like, a lot as well. So, it, usually they're stepping into a, an argument that they're probably not going to fare very well in. And then, yeah, I don't know, that, that whole experience is just, like, really fun for me. So, <laughs> I don't mind arguing a lot, but... Um, I, I can understand like why for a lot of people it would be frustrating to do it over and over again. And I guess I do it as a job and for recreation too. So I, I like have a different, I guess, perspective on it as well. But yeah. Do you think that that's like almost like a child perspective, like enjoying people's reaction and enjoying people not realizing that they're biting off more they can chew with you and kind of like the competing to kind of have the winning position and that sort of thing. Is that an aspect of it? Or do you like, is it the emotional reaction? Is it the knowledge? Is it the, what is it specifically that you like debating? Um, well, for, so for actual debating, I think it's really fun to like, I, I guess, um, when I grew up in high school, I, I, I went to a religious school my whole life and I was incredibly religious my whole life. So I went to a Catholic grade school, I went to a Jesuit high school, like an all boys high school. And around the time when I was like 15, 16, I kind of started to lose my religious beliefs. Um, and one of the ways that I found for kind of ensuring the validity of an idea I had was that if I felt like if I could argue an idea with anybody and like emerge victorious in the argument, then it must mean my idea is like pretty good. So I kind of got used to at an early age, kind of like 
testing ideas like, oh, well, you know, this guy believes this and I believe that. Like, okay, well, if I argue with enough people about this and nobody can prove me wrong, like I must be correct on this particular idea. I don't see how I can be wrong. Um, so that's kind of where that, I guess, habit or attitude came from. Um, and so, yeah, so w when it comes to like, if you, if you ask me like, oh, like, why do you enjoy like arguing with people? Um, I, I think that like the, from the intellectual side of things, it's because it's fun to like test ideas in that way. Um, like early on when I was streaming, like if I got into an argument with somebody and then I went to like their subreddit or I went to some forum afterwards and everybody's calling me like a loser, cuck, short, midget, blah, blah, blah. Then I felt good because it meant that I won the argument because nobody was saying anything substantiative. Um, and that kind of stuff like felt good. Now that's like from, that's like from the like, oh, like this is my intellectual approach to debates. Now on the other end of things, like I grew up on the internet, like trolling people, making fun of people. Like this is just what we were horrible people in the early days of the internet. It was a very disgusting, very horrible place. And I loved it and I thrived in it. And it was just like a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, so uh, uh, because my debates are completely worthless endeavors uh, when it comes to like intellectuality or like actual substantive debate. Um, and they're all just like screaming matches with like people waving their dick around. Um, the, the typical enjoyment I get is that like, yeah, like if it feels like somebody's just being like completely stupid on something and I know they're gonna get really frustrated um, and I know that they're like completely out of their league, like, yeah, there's definitely like some level of personal satisfaction for that for sure. I did, um, I've been doing, uh, I've been trying to find ways to have like more real world impact on like political things because I think that it's important to, if you can affect your environment to like do that. Um, and I went down to uh, state, the, there's a state in the US called Georgia and there's a city in that state called Columbus. And while I was down there, um, through like just completely and totally random chance, an unbelievable random thing. Um, this lady walked up to me and my friend that were canvassing and she like whips out her cell phone and she's like, excuse me, young man, like, where are you from? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, okay, well, hold on. Like, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, video. and I couldn't believe, it was like the luckiest moment of my life where this lady just whips <laughs> her phone out and wants to have a debate with me about it. Like, she was oh. pivoting so hard, it was so infuriating. I was like, Jesus, mm -hmm. isn't that an admission that she's wrong if she pivots so hard? Yeah, but well, but she didn't, she had no, because I just looked like some random dumb, and like, no, like the way that I dress my hair and everything, I don't look like I, I'm very well informed on anything. She probably just assumed I was some dumb college kid um, or not mm -hmm. even like just some dumb like dropout that was just there to like knock on doors or whatever. So that was pretty funny that to see somebody get like that caught off guard um, for that. Um, so yeah, I mean like there's definitely like, there must be some level of enjoyment if I'm able to do it so often, right? Like it's not all just like, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's not all just like an academic thing. If I can do this for hours at a time every day, like yeah, it's, it's obviously entertaining. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I left debating is partly because after I developed my stance on things, mm -hmm. I found myself ending up having the same conversations over and over again with yeah. no new stuff. Yep. It starts to become like a bingo game. I mean, what I used to end up doing after ages of just like, oh, I was learning and I was a bright, fresh new person. And I learned so much and people introduced me to so many cool studies and stances. I, I developed more of myself through debating throughout my teens. Mm -hmm. But then I just used it as a drinking game where I was, I'd make a little stamp card with all of the common retorts. And then every single time that somebody did this this particular argument or that, I'd take a shot and I'd still end up wasted as fuck winning the arguments. And I was like, this is boring now. Yeah. I don't think I, I didn't think I could do debating as a, um, uh, uh, as a as a streaming thing mm -hmm. in part because it's already wearing on me to have this much vilification for having Tourette's mm -hmm. um, and all of the doubt and aggression that comes with that. But. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, I just, I just don't feel like I would willingly take on as much abuse and as much of the worst behavior possible in humanity mm -hmm. just to express an opinion. I mean, I, I don't, I feel justified in what I'm doing. I'm not hurting anyone. I don't feel like I have to explain myself. Mm -hmm. I don't really feel morally inclined to change other people. Um, yeah. So, I just left. I, I ended up leaving it because yeah i just i don't want to justify myself so it lost its appeal after it got repetitive after mm -hmm. i stopped discovering new things yeah i think that's that's totally fair and that's exactly what happens in all of my debates as well like there are so many times where um like everybody on stream can identify as soon as somebody like activated a trap card like you know that somebody's bringing something up and it's an argument that you've walked down 400 million times before and you know both ends of it better than they know like even their end uh, it happens all the time it's just like usually mm -hmm. the same repeated arguments over and over and over again and it's like oh here we go like they brought up this one now we're gonna walk down this path again and yeah. You know. Can I ask you something, like, this is not really on topic, but... So, you're allowed to stream on YouTube now too, right? Yep. Is that because you're not partnered? 
Uh, correct. I no longer have the partner contract, yeah. So, does that mean you stream these streams on both platforms at the same time, or do you alternate? Um, nope, I do simultaneously. Oh, so we're on YouTube right now? Yep. Huh, that's cool. Um, yeah, getting paid a lot of money from Twitch was cool too, but <laughs> this is the, uh, uh, this is the compromise, yeah. yeah. My condolences. Mm -hmm. Um, do you feel like that's ended up presenting opportunities in and of itself though, because of, um, shedding contracts and stuff, or do you feel like it's over like overwhelmingly been negative? Um, everything in life is an opportunity in one way or another. You have to view things that way or else you'll drive yourself crazy. Um, so yeah, yeah I mean, I've definitely tried to view it as an opportunity. Um, yeah, I mean, in some ways it's been an opportunity. I, I, I want to start try streaming actually. I want to stream to Facebook as well. Um, and then in yeah. other ways, um, yeah, it sucks, but yeah, I, I try to roll with the punches. So I, like streaming on YouTube has been really mm -hmm. cool because during high drama events, I get like a lot more viewers from YouTube that otherwise wouldn't have known about me. And then I consistently carry like one to 3000 viewers on YouTube as well, which is nice. It's just people that otherwise wouldn't have known. And yeah, so. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I'm glad that, you know, it's it's had some perks at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I should probably go, but uh, is there anything else you wanted to ask me before I do go? Um, fuck, can anybody think of any questions? I think we've covered a lot of, <laughs> I think we've covered a lot of ground here. Yeah, well, um, thank you for, you know, being relatively... Wait, being relatively what? Your mic cut out. All right, well, I feel very relative. Steps, <laughs> not that kind of relative. Um, okay. Um. Oh wait, I had done, I was muted. Okay, I'm gonna play through these and then I'm going to sleep. I need a big dickyoplasty if you catch my drift. You gnome fuck! Good to see you streaming with Anita. Just put mass amounts of graphite to power your shit. Mysterian Amalgam, oh. 45 Danish Krona. When you wash your face and clothes, you kill mites. Nice. I'm just worried about, um... Overflowing DMV on this fuel shit over here. and ninety nine cents. Destiny is so short I keep forgetting his shoes doesn't light up. What? 3 a.m. watching your stream and still can't sleep. Switch to something more boring like MGS. Wait, is this not boring to you? What does Foundation even do in this game? You gnome fuck! You gnome fuck! Um, okay. These are playing through, but I'm going to sleep. Well, listen, I love you guys. It's been fun. I want you guys to keep it real. I want you guys to stay safe. I want you guys to be careful. I need more fucking stone. Oh, I guess I'm not mining any stone. All right, I'll do this later. See you guys tomorrow on the morning call. <laughs> For those that know, you know.
Ribbon cappuccino, 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 my dude arenas. Um. Interview with psychiatrist. Wait, is he interviewing a psychiatrist? We, genu we genuinely love each other and have love for. Or is he just watching an interview with a psychiatrist? Hold on. Okay, we're gonna do. Study with me. Okay, we're gonna start. Ho oh my god. <laughs> the meta. Uh, okay, we're gonna start hosting a hundred viewer or less streamers and just chatting. That's what we're gonna do. Okay. Um, we'll do to keep it fair. We'll do boy girl boy girl. Or man woman man woman man woman. So today we're going 100 viewers. Where are they at? One twenty, one twenty. How many people here are just like watching anime? Are you allowed to do this? Jeez, what do we have going on over here? Okay, one hundred viewers. Oh fuck, they need to be English. Yeah, one hundred viewers in English. Sorry. Okay, day three hundred sixty-eight. Drunk in real life, hopping. This is the one. Baby, you're you're, oh, you're doing too good. Don't you talk shit about Chuck Nasty. He just hit a fucking con shot. Like Johnny Walker here? Just no, got a con shot. He swagged out. I gotta... Come and play games with him. All right. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.